from our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Good morning, Metroplex. We are live, as always, 11th floor studios, Odyssey Tower. Odyssey. Here on Sean and RJ, 105.3 The Fan, your home of the Cowboys and Rangers. And we are officially at day two of yes. NFL free agency. I I am convinced. I, I don't know, but the Cowboys do appear to be rule followers. And they take the legal tampering period very seriously. <laughs> and they don't break those rules. <laughs> you think Jason Garrett could still be in charge? I like, think so. Epic rule follower. Maybe that's why Jerry kept him so long is because he <laughs> followed the rules. And Jerry <laughs> follows the rules. You know, uh, Bobby sent a text. Uh, he sent a lot of texts and DMs. I think Bobby may have gotten his prescription filled. I can always tell. Um, but he sent a text saying Cowboys are the only team in the league who have not made a transaction. I did not open that because I spent a lot of time on social media yesterday, skipping the nap, going all in with all the coverage and the signings. It would not... It would not it would not totally surprise me. I don't know if every other team in the NFL made a transaction yesterday, but I know that ones in the NFC East did. Just to recap and let you know what took place yesterday within the Dallas Cowboys division. I, I would have to say that the Washington Commanders were the most active, but we'll start with Philadelphia. They get Saquon Barkley. So Michael Lombardi nailed that yesterday. Former NFL GM, friend of the show. During our show yesterday, said Philadelphia is going to be all in on Saquon. They get him. They get Bryce Huff from the New York Jets. The New York Giants swing a trade for Brian Burns. They give up a second and a fifth round pick. Remember, Carolina got offered two firsts mm -hmm. for Brian Burns yeah. last year. Uh, they go and pick up an offensive lineman as well. Uh, Jermaine Elamanor. I don't know who he is. Uh, Commanders. Raid. The Dallas Cowboys, Dan Quinn, just lighting up the DFW cell phone numbers. They get Dorrance Armstrong, Tyler Biotish. They go and get Austin Eckler as well. And Frankie Louvu, 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 I don't know who he is. He is an offensive line. Uh, he might be a linebacker. Uh, now Dan Quinn wants a linebacker. Yeah. Goes and signs one in D.C. And the Dallas Cowboys, as I tweeted they have an extortion lawsuit on their hands with Dak Prescott. Yes, there, there is. The, they do. There's the cricket. They do. They've got that on their hands. Um, so. You gotta laugh. You, 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 you eventually just have to go ahead and laugh at it. I know RJ is going to defend it. Bobby's probably going to defend it a little bit later on. But yesterday, my strategy was go ahead, get the memes, get the gifs, and just watch the implosion here from Cowboy fans who are used to the same thing every single off season. Uh, at one point, it just becomes funny. It's every year, it's a, you know you can you can. That's the thing, you know, you can't be surprised. No, when when they don't sign anybody on free agency day, and it, it, you can't be surprised. And and if you actually believed Jerry's all in statement, I guess that's Jerry's fault. But it's also kind of our fault for believing it too. Because we knew it was total BS. We knew he was never going to go all in. That's not his MO. That's not their MO. They've never really done that before. I thought maybe, though, that it could have been legitimate. I thought it could have been real just because of the, you know, biggest playoff disappointment he, you could argue, he would argue, that he's ever had. Doing something to make up for the retaining of Mike McCarthy. Um, obviously, clearly, you cannot get over the hump. So I was thinking that they would maybe change their ways this offseason. I did at least fall for it initially until Jerry tried to insult all of our intelligence and say, no, 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 your interpretation is different from my interpretation. You know, the, the way we look at all in is different. And, and then part of me driving in, I was like, is, th is there any way that Jerry Jones doesn't care about being wrong with his statement? We have our 2024 offseason headline to talk about non-stop no matter what happens all in will be attached to them just like no one's dying with jason kidd i was like is that what jerry just really wanted is yeah it, to, to, to throw that out there and have all the we'll be all in. first fake and our shows like that talk about this as a subject seems like that was the plan <laughs> it is seems it, like all uh, you know all news is good news it's the uh that's that's the that's the world they live in it was it was as poetic as possible though because that's this is what this team does every year 
and they could say and do anything else they want. They can they could talk about any kind of movement or all in or any kind of buzzword. It was always going to be the same. That's I'll all it was. I'll throw some numbers at you. Like yesterday, at least with the money that was on the books before making more flips and switches and Zach Martin redos and maybe doing Dak Prescott's deal, they had two point two million dollars of cap space. Uh, so you look at the teams who had the most room and the least amount of room. Miami, uh, well, we know that Washington started with about $80 million. But at the time yesterday when NFL Network put this up, Miami was under by $25 million. The Chargers were under by 21 Buffalo minus 15 Saints minus 11 Chiefs minus 5.5. Uh, and then you have the Cowboys at 2.2. The Buccaneers, 4.8. Browns, 5. San Francisco, uh, $10 million. So those were the least projected salary cap space teams according to Over the Cap. Now, I'll give you I'll give you a little uh, clue as to my counterpoint back for later on in the show when you defend uh, the, the Cowboys not doing anything. ESPN put up the top team in free agent spending over the last eight off seasons and what it did for them. Okay. Okay. In 2016, the Giants spent the most. Their win increase was five. Jacksonville in 2017. Jacksonville spent a lot in free agency quietly. 2017, they spent the most. Their win increase was plus seven. The Bears spent the most in 2018. Their increase was plus seven. Jets 2019, they won three more games. This is in order. 2020, Miami spent the most. They won five more games. New England spent the most 2021, won three more. Jacksonville spent the most in 2022. They won six more. Baltimore last offseason, they won three more. Now, I already know what you're going to say. Uh, I think I do. We don't know all the things that go into that. Was a quarterback missing the year before and a quarterback coming back? Was a star player out the year before and that contributed? It wasn't just the offseason signings that contributed to those win increases. But I was surprised. I was surprised to see a lot of these teams go up by five wins, six wins, mm -hmm. some even seven wins when you spent the most in that offseason. Again, doesn't. Doesn't take into account everything. Right. Yeah, I'm surprised ESPN would uh, you know be so foolish as to put that graphic up. Oh, because uh, what do all those teams have in common? They were all pretty bad. The Patriots were bad the year before. That was the year they lost Brady. Uh, you know, the Baltimore was had a, you know, had a Lamar injury. The Bears stink. The Jets usually stink. But the so, Jets won seven more games the next year. Yeah, they did. Uh, and they've and they've remained bad. You know, it's not right, like yeah. it was a fluky Indianapolis Colts without Peyton. Then you're right, Peyton. Now, it, but it's know. going from like three wins, or two wins to nine. You know, like okay, well, you can make the argument within that that the signings help. They sure, they sure did help, and then they went back to being normal again, right? It's like you know, I don't think the Cowboys. Name me the team on there that, and that's the thing that we're in. And this is what I've always said: is like there's no such thing as an over the top piece in free agency that isn't a quarterback. The Cowboys were not going to get anybody yesterday that was going to win them a title. And that's where we are. Like the Niners didn't do anything yesterday. None of the teams that were in the Final Four did a thing. The, the Lions traded for, they made a trade and they signed, they, they re upped one of their guys, their guard. You know, like that, that's the thing to me is that, you know, if you look at the other teams that were in the conference championship game, they either re signed their own or made a trade, a small trade. Like the Lions got Carlton Davis. I don't. I think San Fran made a trade too, but it was mostly just re-signing their own. Well, San Fran didn't have any money, right? And we, we. we didn't have any money. Yeah. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs don't have a ton of money, and then we saw Buffalo slash everyone the other day. They were forty million dollars yeah. over. So those teams were, for the most part, handcuffed. Right. Yeah. And then I think we were the same in the same situation. You know, with just a couple of million bucks. Yeah. I guess they could have made. They could have flipped switches. I think this team is just like, look, we're. I almost think that they're in a situation where they're we're we're done with this current group and we're just going to let it ride out and then we're going to see what happens from here. A Bobby Belt theory that he threw out a couple of weeks ago, put everyone on a one-year deal and then maybe yep. blow it up. I just, I couldn't bring myself to believe it that Jerry Jones yep. would ever do that. But McCarthy won right now. Dak won, Mike Zimmer won yep. and the coaching staff basically won.
877-881-1053. Truckwreck.com. Text on to hit us up throughout the entire show. An easy one for the Mavericks last night. Luca and my boy Daniel Gafford making more history. And Wyatt Langford continues to destroy in Arizona. We'll bring all that to you next. Tolo Tuesday edition. Jam-packed. And news is going to happen throughout the morning as well. No other place to be than right here on The Fan. Coming up in the next G-Bag Nation. Day two of the legal tampering period. An easy one for the Dallas Mavericks last night. Good morning, Metroplex. We are absolutely packed. Day two of NFL free agency. Cowboys hibernation continues here with Sean and RJ. Bobby Bell, Cowboys insider, is already fired up on the group text. He is not going to be very happy at 6 o'clock this morning. We got Pepe and Ryan in the back. We are live on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. Dallas Mavericks had their biggest Lead after a force uh, after a first quarter of the entire season last night. They put it on the Chicago Bulls. 44 to 16 Mavs after the first. And they were actively trying on defense. It wasn't just Chicago missing a bunch of shots. It looked like the Mavs were actually hustling. 16 points for the Bulls. Uh Luka Doncic gets another triple double, but very disappointing. Very, very disappointing. He did not no. achieve it with 30 points. No, he didn't. But you Come get, on, man. You, Come on. You get Gafford out there Here, doing his thing. Everything. 
Uh, it looked it looked like they actually were engaged in this game, which is surprising because I don't think anybody ever gets engaged when they play the Chicago Bulls anymore. Man, what a boring team. Billy Donovan. I, I didn't recognize Billy Donovan at first. You're oh. used to him with the Florida Gators at Joe Kim Noah, Al Horford with the slick back hair, young, you know, with the Rick Patino, John Calipari suits. And then last night I was like, is that is that is that yeah. old gray Billy Donovan? I, I, I post on Twitter. I said he had this all time great widow's peak and he decided to go with the Mr. Belding haircut. It just didn't make any sense Mr. at all. Belding. That was an all time great widow's peak, man. It was it was What fantastic. is a widow's peak? It's where it like goes down to Eddie Munster, like with the with the, with the hair goes down to a point in the front. Mm. It was all it was all time. It was an all timer. And he just looks like a shell of his own self. This is why you don't go coach in the NBA. I mean, he had it he had it going in college. Well, you know, and now, now it's probably reversed and flipped. Uh with with the NIL. Yeah, yeah it might be. Uh it doesn't seem like there's as much movement in basketball as football, but it uh it, it there definitely is a a lifestyle switch that that comes with coaching in in the NBA versus college. Luca with 27, 14, and 12. The NBA record streak of 30-point triple doubles ends at six. And Jason Kidd was asked, was there any conversation about letting Luca play a little bit longer to continue the record? Yeah, you know, just understanding uh, Luca setting records and uh, it, it becomes tough. Uh, when you are trying, you know, you're trying to win the game, you're also trying to be respectful of the situation. Um, and so uh, to try to get him uh, 30, because this is something that's never been done before. Um, also not putting him in a, in a, a position to get hurt. Uh, so there was constant conversations between the two of us about uh, what do you want to do? And he was like, whatever you want to do. So we were playing tennis a little bit. We gave him a, a couple cracks at it, and then uh, I looked at him and, and told him it's time to come out, and he was he was good with that. And good. that just shows his maturity, his leadership, um, as as well as he's going with records. Uh, he also understood the situation. Good. Get him up out of there. Mavs cruise over Chicago, and my boy Daniel Gafford makes some history himself. He has made 28 consecutive field goals. That is the most since the 1996-1997 NBA season. Gafford last night, 20 and 7, 9 for 9 from the field. The Mavs bigs, it's like the Twin Towers out there from San Antonio back in the day. Lively had 22 and Gafford had 20. So between the Mavs bigs, 42 points on 20 of 21 shooting. They missed Ooh. one field goal between the two Ooh. of them, dropping over forty on the pretty Bulls. Good. That's pretty good. That's uh, that's efficiency right there. Uh, and that's that's a bad basketball team they played. And you're barely f over five hundred at home. You've got to be. You can't lose games that you have to win. You want to get that six seed. You want to get out of the, out of the play in. You can't lose games. You've got to win. Yeah, they should win this game. Bulls aren't awful. They're three games they're under five hundred. Yeah, they're not awful, but they're just they're, they're boring. Yeah, I mean they got they're boring. They got Julian Phillips getting more playing time in the NBA than he got in college. Who's that? He's the he was the follow follow mentioned him a million times. He's the Tennessee kid. I mean he was a second round pick. He never played. He never played. He couldn't get any run in the. I bet you if you look at his tournament games, they played three of them. I bet you he played twenty five minutes in the three games. He couldn't get any playing time in college. Here he is getting major minutes in an NBA game. We are now right there with the Sacramento Kings. Eight and a half games back in the West. One game back of the Phoenix Suns. So the Mavs are sitting in the eighth spot. A game and a half up on the Lakers. Man, I cannot wait for the baseball season to start. Especially if Wyatt Langford starts with the defending World Series champions. Langford continued his spring with an RBI double and four runs scored for the Rangers yesterday. He was two for three, raised his Cactus League OPS to 1,300 over 36 plate appearances. Wyatt Langford has caught fire. Dude, if he's not on this roster, if he's not on this team to start the year. Sandler's got him hitting in the three hole. He better hit in the three hole. I mean, that kid is an absolute monster. There is no reason to keep him anywhere else but Arlington. Don't put him in Frisco. Don't put, don't put him anywhere. That dude needs to be playing today. Like, like make the announcement today that he is going to make the team. You got the uh, bubonic plague or deaths running rampant through the porn industry? Oh, uh, let's do <laughs> 
do the plague. I like the plague. Okay. Um, they found a bubonic plague death. The black plague, the bubonic plague, all those things, all those plagues that... Maybe that's what you have. Grass cutting sickness. Grass cutting sickness. Ongoing risk of a rodent-borne disease. I guess the bubonic plague comes from rodents. But they found a death in New Mexico. I get scared when it's a border state. Any state that borders Texas, I get scared of. If they keep these things in like in Illinois, I'm like, whatever, fine. But this is uh, the state's first bubonic plague fatality since 2020. I didn't even know that was a thing uh, back then. But it's a bacterial disease of rodents. Good gosh. It's, a, it's an election year. It's a leap year. And it's March. This is four years ago. Because yesterday was the anniversary of the last day of the NBA. Remember that? Oh. Yesterday was the was March 11th, yeah. which was the day that the Mavs finished their game. I think it was Golden State. Was it Golden State they were playing that day? I don't day? think so. Thunder? They've been the Thunder. Um, anyway, they finished the game, and the league announces like midway through the third quarter they were going to pause for the rest of the day or for the rest of, you know, for uh, you know, a couple of weeks. Remember, Sean, two weeks to flatten the curve. And now, bubonic plague... On the anniversary, on the four-year anniversary of the world shutting down, here comes the bubonic plague in a leap year. And what does the leap year have to do with it? I know, just every four years. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Just every four <laughs> now, years. Now, how many times do you have to learn that you send these articles, you mm -hmm. freak out over these plagues, and none of them have caught on? I mean, one of them caught on. You didn't send. I mean, I don't remember. I can't keep track. I don't know if you gave us a COVID warning, but... You've given 48 one cents, and not a one has stuck. Guess what? And I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready. How so? I, I mean, I'm I'm aware of it. <laughs> That's all I can do. Because, you know. You should I, worry about your lawn, getting sick from your lawn. You should yeah, worry about it's that. It's allergies, man. I, I got all the grass in the nose. I made the mistake of not shaving the beard immediately after. Oh, yeah. Don't you feel like mentally, even if it's not a physical thing, mentally, it gets all up in your facial yeah, I should facial have, follic, follic particles? Absolutely, I should have shaved the beard. And then, because I showered it after I washed it, but I should have shaved it. I should have shaved it. Uh, I did not do that. That was a mistake on my part. You mean, like, thin it? Trimmed it up, yeah. Trimmed it up. Yeah, that was a mistake on my part. I should have trimmed it up and then washed it. I just washed it instead. There's probably some still down deep in the beard. So are you making progress? You looks satisfied? much better. It looks much better. A lot of the weeds are dying. Now... You know, now you got to wait. You got to wait for Mother Nature to do her trick and green up that grass, the rest of that grass. A lot of the grass is still brown. It's all dormant. That's good. You don't want green grass right now. Green grass right now means you got either got rye or weeds. I don't want either one. Meanwhile, uh, while you and Peyton are busy being men, cutting your lawn yesterday, I probably texted every single lawn person in my new community and city to try to find the best lawn person. But while you guys are putting in the hard work, I was putting in the work on my fingers, man. I was sitting there. I was texting away. Are you, uh, have you found? I found my, my, my leading candidate on one of these community Facebook mm -hmm. pages said, uh, go get these young kids. They're, they're very, very solid. And it was like this, this little sketchy business card. Yeah. And I texted it and they got back to me immediately. They stopped by the new house. They, they scoped it out. They gave me the best price point of anyone. And now I'm just deciding whether to go with these quote unquote young kids to trust them. So we're looking at about seventy dollars a week right now, eighty dollars bi weekly. That's a okay. great price. Everyone else basically uh, one twenty, one twenty five. That's uh, that's a big, you got a big yard. It's a big yard. Uh, that's a big yard. So that's good. That's good. That that's going to be that cheap. Don't know. Well, I don't know whether to go with them or not. Don't know whether oh. to do it because they're like uh, they're, they're the young inexperienced crew. You know. I mean. I'm it's just a good point. Yeah, I wonder. You always, you always ask, can you do a cash price? Is there a cash price? Oh yeah, these ones that want like the credit card up front. We'll just we'll just swipe it every time. No, 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 no. No, I gotta see whether it's raining. Whether I need to skip a week here, go bi weekly. Of course, in the winter time, we're gonna shut that bad what boy down. My, spr my sprinklers yeah. are still not still not back on. At, uh, you're, yeah, I, I, mine aren't either. Yeah. And it's fine. They were on for a while, and that's when the weeds started to pop up. And I was like, nah, we don't need them. You yeah. got rain coming in spring. It's still still uh, cool temperatures. That's how you're getting the same exact water bill for three months Dude, in a row. Dude, I swear to God. That's I, there, crazy. There's I, For the last four months, my water bill has been exactly the same to the within a dollar of, of each month. What are the odds? The, what are the odds? What are the odds? Now, now, granted, the pool runs 
But what are the odds that we're not taking any extra showers or doing any extra dishes? Right. Exactly. Like there's same no amount. chance that's the same amount. <laughs> and it's I saw the bills yesterday. It was literally the exact same number. It's crazy. Bobby Belt is fired up. We have to talk about the losses of Tony Pollard by Dez, Dorrance Armstrong, and are the Cowboys ever going to do anything? Our Cowboys insider joins us for day two of free agency, a.k.a. hibernation in DFW next.
always live on the free Odyssey app. From our fan studios, secured by DFWsecurity.com, this is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. From news and notes to the coaches and players for America's team, let us go inside the stars on 105.3 The Fan. What are we... That's what it sounds like inside the star. I was going to say, there's nothing going on inside the star. Way to mess it up, Bobby. <laughs> Had my dramatic effect pause, and you got to F it up uh, six seconds into your appearance here. Boy, you are aggressive. Chat GPT was right. Tolo Tuesday. <laughs> to- <laughs> More on that later. Tolo Tuesday edition of Sean, RJ, and Bobby here on your home of the Cowboys. They weren't the only team, right? Yeah, really? they are. They're the, they're the only team who did not make a single transaction yesterday. Every other team? Every other team. <laughs> yep, every other team in the NFL, which means the Cowboys literally are saying, like, we know better than literally how all 31 other teams are running their organizations. So, so what they at, decided to do. At what point yesterday, because we know sometimes of anyone on this show, you can take it a little personal. That's that's both good and like bad. Star. That's both good and bad. When did you or did you start getting worked up yesterday at all? When I could see you maybe sitting there being like, just, 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 just screw it. Just, 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 just screw I mean, it all. The, the whole the, the it, it played out exactly the way I figured it would. Like, I mean, we were, what, we were like a, a an hour into free agency, and I tweeted the, the Tiger Woods, like, fist pump meme. And I was like, the Cowboys 13 days into free agency when they sign a five-year veteran linebacker with 170 career defensive snaps and 12 special teams tackles. Like, that's what they'll do. Because, I mean, and, and we get the report late last night from Michael Galkin that, like, $4 million a year for Zach Moss. That just got – the, the term was more than they were comfortable with. Yeah. Like, it was, like, one of these things where it's just, like – it's not that we don't want to pay. It's, like, oh, my gosh, we're really kind of, like, we're uncomfortable when you ta- start talking about $4 million. They are so cheap. And any sort of national narrative about this team, about, like, you know, Wildcat or Jerry and – and boy, the check I wouldn't write. Yeah, right. Exactly. The check you will not write, Jerry. That's exactly <laughs> it. You won't write it. You won't write a $4 million check for a running back. You won't do any of it. And so it's. Yeah, the only one that they were supposedly close with yesterday or really interested in, according to Michael Gelkin, Zach Moss, the running back who stepped in for Jonathan Taylor. He ends up in Cincy. They then cut Joe Mixon two for eight for Zach Moss. That was the name yesterday. I mean, look, $4 million. That's not terrible for a running back. Not now, after they're all getting eight. They're all getting eight apiece. Yeah, I know. At least. At least. All right. Saquon got more than that. Here's the good news. I think we are all in agreement that... Let's talk about the losses. Let's talk about who left the star in Frisco yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all in agreement that none of us are really worked up over any of these departures. We're fine with all of it. Tony Pollard immediately goes to the Tennessee Titans, three years, $24 million. As everyone thinks, Derrick Henry is going to go somewhere else. I was like, fine, go ahead. Go ahead. If the Cowboys would have signed him for $8 million a piece, I would have been, I would have been pissed. Yeah, I would have been upset. I mean, he's not a feature back. This is, uh, you know, this is a C minus D grade from Tennessee. I bet you when the grades come out, they're going to get something like that. They're going to get a poor grade. Uh, there's no way I would have done that. They, 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 what a what a questionable offseason for them. They fire Vrabel, uh, they to hire somebody that nobody's ever heard of, uh, and then they they move on. They they decide to trade Derrick Henry basically for Tony Pollard. It's a questionable. Off-season. Well, it's fine if you're getting rid of Henry. Yeah, but not to not to bring Tony Pollard as your feature at 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 eight million dollars a year. Get that Memphis barbecue back out of here, Pollard family. Yeah. Take that fake-ass barbecue somewhere else. Make Robert Irvine come in and fix your restaurant again, your dirty <laughs> restaurant with the, the gunky Coke machines. Yeah, go watch that. Go look up Restaurant Impossible. Go see how dirty Tony Pollard's family barbecue was. <laughs> Robert Irvine had to come in there and like yeah, run yeah, yeah. bleach through Robert the Coke Irvine machine. Guy? <laughs> He's a food network. You would like, love him. Yeah. He's like j- a jacked weightlifter. Gunky Coke. Yeah, machine. exactly. It was, it was disgusting. Oh, you, man. I like this guy. You, you, yeah. yeah, he speaks with a British accent you would never eat you would never eat at this pollard family barbecue you saw that episode (laughs) so anyway uh eight million dollars yeah that's way more than i would have wanted to pay tony pollard i have no problem with them staying away from that it's and we'll talk about these ones more here in a sec but i mean like it's not 
It's not what they didn't do. Like, I'm fine with what they didn't do. It's or in terms of, like, not re-signing guys, choosing not to, to retain their own. It's the fact that you just you refuse to play in a team-building area that everyone else in the NFL is playing in. Next departure, Dorrance Armstrong. So the initial terms here had me really questioning the sanity of Dan Quinn and the commanders because the initial report was taken at three years, 45 million, 15 a year for Armstrong. The Washington Post came back and said the base package, and again, these initial numbers that come out are all from the agents leaking it to Schefter yeah. and Rappaport because they want to make themselves and the player look, look, look better. The base package for Armstrong is three years, $33 million, according to the Post. So we should be looking at it as $11 million a year for the guy who had the second most sacks last year on the Cowboys. Yeah, that, that's the one, like, I, I could have I could have been talked into that. I could I could have been talked into that one. I mean, you know, it's, it's is it a little high? Yeah, no. I don't know if it's high for the position. I think he's an. I think he's one of the worst run defenders in the NFL at defensive line. Oh. And and I would just. I, I think his his sack numbers are fine, but a lot of it it felt like was just clean up sacks and yeah. stuff like that. The production's fine. I would not. I wouldn't have even brought Dorrance Armstrong back on the deal that they paid him for, which was two years, twelve million initially. So I wouldn't have even brought him up back at six. I, I would have preferred Dante Fowler. Okay. I'm fine with Dorrance Armstrong not paying him yep, $11 million a season. I'm fine with that. Dan Quinn getting Tyler Biotish by Dez is official. That one is the one that at three years, $30 million, like I could have maybe been convinced of, but still is that that's significant. Yeah. I probably would have wanted to, to be more in the range of what Andre James got in Las Vegas, which is like seven, eight million. But that's not like a steep overpay. I feel like Pollard and Armstrong are steep overpay. We should have gone and got that Bill Center. Got Morse. two for ten. Morse. He got five yeah. a year. Yeah. Uh, it, look, he made it, the Pro Bowl. Yeah, I mean, look. If they, uh, to me, this this team should never be scared of losing offensive linemen because they're just so good at at, at finding offensive linemen. Um, now you're going to use a high pick on them because they don't really hit on them in the later rounds. They hit them on the first. But they're pretty good generally at, at at evaluating, targeting offensive line guys in the draft. So I'm not scared of losing this uh, bad days. Uh, but bad I mean, days. if they did it, I wouldn't have freaked that, out. Doesn't that get exhausting though? If you're if you're the, if you're the the personnel guys in Dallas, where it's like, look at all these guys that signed away yesterday. Two of them Pro Bowlers, and I know people say what they want about Pro Bowlers, but still, two of them Pro Bowlers. Biotish and I almost said Biotis like legitimately I because I've been Steven brainwashed. Let Biotish go just so he wouldn't have to keep screwing <laughs> up his name. He's like, you know what? This is making me look bad. Let's go ahead and let him go somewhere else in the East. You let Biotish, Pollard, and Armstrong go. What were all, what were all of them? They were all day three picks. Like your your personnel department did their job and found you contributing players that signed bigger contracts elsewhere. And it's just this constant rotation that has to be exhausting. Hey, can you go do that again? Can you go knock it out of the park on day three all over again? Because we're not signing anybody. John Keim, a uh, longtime reporter in D.C., also put the word out on Jordan Lewis saying this is another name to watch. Can play the slot. Familiar with Joe Witt and Dan Quinn. Sounds like the commanders have shown interest. Let's see what happens in Jordan Lewis. So those were all the departures that took place yesterday. Let's talk about the rest of the NFC East. The Philadelphia Eagles and your boy, Howie Roseman, straying from the formula and going and signing Saquon Barkley to bring him back towards Penn State. Three years, $37 million that could be worth up to 46. He gets $26 million fully guaranteed. He beats the franchise tag number and has a maximum average per year salary of 15.8. That would be the second highest for a running back in the NFL. Again, those numbers are skewed. They're, they have the agents' fingerprints all over them, but the Eagles go and yeah. add Saquon. I, I, It's a total deviation for the Eagles. They traded for Swift last year. They let him go. So basically, the last three years, they've had Sanders let him go for Swift. Swift let him go for Saquon. And I mean, they paid a lot of money for Saquon Barkley. I, I, this is blows my mind. It bl it blows my mind. I don't know what their philosophical shift is. Maybe this is a. And the thing that's really weird about it too, and you brought this up to a point last night. A huge crit, the biggest criticism of the Eagles' offense, second half of last season, 
is that they refused to run the football. They they just stopped handing it off. DeAndre Swift wasn't getting enough carries. That was the loud, echoing yeah. criticism yeah. from Philadelphia. And then you go out and spend the money for Saquon Barkley. And I wonder if this is their way of saying like that we think their best way to win for us this year is to run the ball a lot more. Mm. Uh, maybe that is. Um, without Jason Kelsey. Without Kelsey. Now, maybe this is like, hey, look, without Kelsey, uh, we need a way to make sure the tush push works. And we're going to get a guy who's got the biggest tree trunk legs in the world. It's true. You know, be the philosophy. I mean, who knows? But like, and maybe this is just like, look, look let, let him run it instead of having Hurts run it as much, which I don't know if that's going to be working out well because Hurts is a really dynamic runner and a quarterback that can run is really, really advantageous to an offense. Why do you think Howie Roseman shifted like this? I think, I just think the cult of Howie Roseman needs to end. Like if, uh, everything we've seen, like I, I, they they lucked into so many different things over the last couple of years. The last two years, though, the personnel moves they've made have been awful. Like if you look over the the recent stretch of per personnel moves they made, everybody's talking about did they screw up and go too early on the Jalen Hurts contract? Did they go with too little body of work and pay him too much? Last year he trades a fourth round pick for Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn ended up playing eighty eight snaps for the Eagles, made two tackles, did nothing else. Wow. Goes into the off season, re signs James Bradbury to a massive three year like forty million dollar deal. Bradbury was terrible last year. They make a trade in October, trade away two draft picks for Kevin Byard. They cut Kevin Byard at the end of last month. No month. one talks about Kevin Byard doing nothing there. They completely neglected the departures of all of their linebackers because they're like, we're smarter than everybody else. We're going to draft N'Kobe Dean in the fourth round. This Georgia player that everybody's like, oh, how he's such a genius. Look at all these defensive steals he keeps getting in the draft. N'Kobe Dean was terrible. Their linebackers were terrible. It was the worst position on their football team Shaq last Leonard. Year. The, the Shaq Leonard thing didn't work out. Jordan Davis, who everybody's like, oh my gosh, what a steal. Okay, well, it turns out that the rest of the NFL maybe had an idea because we heard all the WIP, oh, he's a giant bust now, and then you go and sign Saquon Barkley, who says, you know, Kellen Moore doesn't want to run the damn ball. Oh, yeah. I guess he doesn't want to light up the scoreboard. They also go and get Bryce Huff, Jets free agent defensive end, three for 51. That makes Huff the highest paid non-quarterback undrafted free agent in NFL history. Wow. So he made history yesterday. How about the New York Giants? They trade for Brian Burns, who everyone throughout the league seems to love. They give up a second and a fifth, and they pay him. Five years, $150 million, giving Brian Burns 30 a year with 87 guaranteed with Dax agent Todd France. Uh, Burns, second highest paid DN. So now you have Kayvon Thibodeau, Brian Burns and Dexter Lawrence up front. It's a good line. At least, at least with names. It's a good line. And and you know the Panthers, I mean they got to be kicking themselves. Yeah. I mean they could have gotten him. They could have gotten a couple of ones for him last year. Yes. This is the same year where they trade all you know all that for uh, for Bryce Young. Uh, the amount of picks they don't have, and then and that trade now they're gonna lose out on Caleb. They lose CMC. They trade him away. They trade away DJ Moore. Holy cow. Yeah, the Burns, not only the two first-round picks, they refused to put Burns in the trade to Chicago. Chicago gave them the option. Do you want to give us Burns or DJ Moore? And they said, well, no, we're going to keep Brian Burns. So they end up getting rid of DJ Moore. If you're going to get rid of Burns anyway, you should have done it last year to Chicago. And then the commanders, in addition to the Oddish, in addition to Dorrance Armstrong, they go and get Austin Eckler. Two years, $11.5 million. So Dan Quinn... Is it Luvu, Frank Luvu, Lovu? Frankie Luvu, yeah. Frankie Luvu, three-year deal uh, for a maximum of 36 mil. So the commanders were really active yesterday. They were, and that's five and a half a year for Eckler. Um, up to, right? They, they're, they're, there's escalators. Year one is 4.8 million, yeah, but, and, but it can escalate. You know, and, and that's a guy who struggled to stay on the field. So, like, what, what's he going to be? Like, if you get him and he's healthy for all 17 games, that's a pretty good deal. It's a really good deal if he's healthy. It's a good it's a good thing the Cowboys didn't sign anybody that they have to worry about keeping them healthy for 17 games. They just say we're 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 not going to take any shots. <laughs> you know, we, we can maintain our perfect uh, Daniel Gafford shooting percentage if we just <laughs> don't put any shots up. And now let's talk about the other signings throughout the league. Kirk Cousins has his new home and the Cowboys killer is on the loose. What is Green Bay doing, and would the Cowboys have any interest? Plus, Derrick Henry is still out there. We'll talk about the rest of the NFL on Sean and RJ next. But let's talk about
to Sean and RJ right here on 105.3 The Fan segment here brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. The other signings yesterday throughout the National Football League here on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Good morning, Metroplex. Shout out to the 6 a.m. club. We'll get to the Dak Prescott extortion lawsuit coming up at 640 this morning. That was the only thing that the Cowboys basically got themselves involved in yesterday. The Atlanta Falcons signed Kirk Cousins. Four years, $180 million with a $50 million signing bonus. And this had J.J. Watt and others putting Kirk Cousins on the Mount Rushmore of free agency with the way that he has cleaned up and bet on himself. 45 a year, though, for Kirk Cousins. $330 million in money and guarantees that he has made in his NFL career. It's a lot of money. I think that's more than... When the man when, when Eli retired, I think he had the highest, he had the most money ever made. Most more than him. Most money earned in cash value from 2016 on. You want to guess who has earned the most in the whole league? From 2016, uh, oh man, uh, Stafford. Good job, Matt Stafford. Two hundred and thirty-four million. You want to try to guess second, or you just want me to give him to you? Uh, let's go with. Uh, Kirk. Kirk is fourth. Russell Wilson is second at 232. That's right. Aaron Rodgers is third at 230. Kirk Cousins, 228.9 in absolutely cleaning up. Yeah, he is. One playoff win. Wow. Cleaning up. That was a good one. It was a road game at uh, New Orleans. By the end of 2025, Kirk Cousins will have played 11 seasons in a row on fully guaranteed contracts wow. Good for him. 11 straight years fully guaranteed deals now, best age of the sport whoever that is mike mccartney that's who it is yeah. mike mccartney a a name that is synonymous with greatness um now yeah, that name before we truly <laughs> set bobby off rj and i had the same instant thought of oh my god 45 a year yeah could dak prescott maybe maybe take a page out of the Kirk Cousins book here, have $45 million a season instead of 15 more annually at 60 per. Uh, hey, Dak, your PR firm is on the clock, buddy. Mm. It is on the clock. Because I suspect golf will get about the same. Why? That's just the talk. That was the projection that he'll get 45 million. I mean, year. the projection, that's not talk from Spotrack. That's just like their... No, I know. It's just a projection. Yeah. Just, you know, He's 29. It... Oh, so you think he'll get more? It's golf. I mean, I would think so. Unless he really wants to be, you know, Eminem 2.0, the hero of Detroit, <laughs> come out with his own spaghetti yeah. stand. It makes zero. It would make zero sense for him to take and get forty five million dollars. It should be. It should be more. It should be forty five is old Dak money. It is old. I, I don't. I, again, I don't know what he's gonna get. I, I think that that that's around the number, but I could be way off on that one. But let's just if it is. I mean that's that would be you know, that puts other quarterbacks you know Kirk's deal puts the other quarterbacks on on notice like hey you know this guy's getting forty five a year he's basically done doing the same thing in his career that you guys are you could argue he does more than Goff you could argue that he is better he's a better thrower than Dak you could argue that um, whether or not he is or not you can still make the case now he is older and he is coming off an injury yes right and that's thirty five that, and those are big that that's big. Um, but I, I again, I think that you know Dak's PR firm is on the clock. They've got a lot of they got a lot of decisions to make uh, with because he's going to get murdered. I mean, they murdered. really don't have to probably make any decisions. He'll get murdered if he takes sixty. He will get killed, but he'll we'll still have sixty per. Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about the perception. The perception. I mean, he's already he's already dealing with the perception now. He already deals with it every day. I mean, half the half the Cowboys fan base wants him gone. And he'll or at least forty percent of and it. And he'll need the extra money for the lawsuit. Absolutely, he'll need the extra money for the lawsuit. But why is he going to win? <laughs> <laughs> Kirk showed the playbook. He showed it. He showed the playbook. He gave. He showed. He said, "Here, Dak, Jared, this is the playbook. <laughs> this is the playbook right here. What are you guys going to do with this play? This playbook gets you a lot of money, a lot of fans, not a lot of winning, not a lot of winning, but a lot of money." Go ahead. Okay, floor is yours. So what Kirk showed yesterday is that he signed the same deal that he signed throughout his entire career. It's the same thing. He's falling Full directly in line with where he is. $45 million annually is his base salary. At current value is 81% of the top of the market. 
throughout his entire career since he started getting these deals he has signed for 75 to 80 percent of the top of the market okay. by the time they sign for 60 that'll be 75 percent. so all he showed was that the nfl has valued him the same way that they valued him for six years it's an inflation of the cap thing it's that gap is going to widen whenever you talk about like the bigger numbers it's going to look more insignificant when you're talking about a percentage of it it's not going to be the four million dollar gap from the top of the market but percentage wise it's exactly what he's always signed for so in terms what? of percentage of the that, gap. That, that so point is, what so, is that so what, you're talking what, about what is your 30, point what i'm talking about is that he didn't show anything other than what he's always done he's got went out and got the same money he's always got okay but the it's bottom the line same, is the, the bottom line is he's going to make 45 million dollars a season and you think he do you think he cut them a break or so what's the i, I don't understand what we're saying here yeah that that he did cut them a break. He went and got the same deal that the NFL has valued him at his entire career. And it's coming at 35 off of an Achilles. He probably should have gotten less. Okay. Well, Daniel Jones makes 40. So for you to argue that Kirk Cousins is $5 million better than Daniel Jones is, is ridiculous. If Dak Prescott takes 45, we would all look at it as a... I'm not saying that he should. We would all be shocked and stunned. Yes. That's my point. Yeah. Because so, he's not he's not Kirk. Historically, Dak went out and got 40 when he could. And that was above Kirk last year. This, this is way more than Kirk has ever made in his career. Kirk's highest contract value was 35 before this. So I mean he's he this is exactly where he's saddled in among the NFL's quarterbacks. This is what the market has told him he's worth. So you think that Dak Prescott is fifteen million dollars better than Kirk Cousins? I'm saying that the market has told you that that's what he's gonna get paid. The market has already established what the value is. Okay. Okay. I see what type of show this is going to be. What does this, that mean? This, you just <laughs> if you don't if you're unwilling to put Kirk Cousins in in a in a in an area of discussion with Dak Prescott, mm -hmm. I can't really have talks with you. I can't we can't do topics and debates if you want to be that stubborn about it. If you if you want to, fine. Yeah, I mean, it's your airtime. You you you, you, you have mean, your I own mean, voice. I mean, I mean, if you, you don't even want to come in the vicinity of the of the discussion, then fine. Like no, he's 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 eighty percent of Dak. Fine. <laughs> I think he's more than eighty percent. I think Dak's better. Dak is definitively better. If you look at all the metrics that we have, Dak is better. Like if you if you want to take it from the the perspective of winning football games, QBR, raw statistics, whatever else, Dak is better than him. Dak is five years younger than him. Dak is not coming off of an Achilles. The, yeah, the, the, I, NFL, the NFL told you that Dak coming off of a snapped leg was worth closer to the top of the market than Kirk was three years ago. Kirk is three years older and with an Achilles now. This is what Kirk was supposed to I get. I don't view it as the NFL telling anything. I view it as uh, all these teams are held hostage and they have to keep leapfrogging through. So your little fancy phrase of this is what the league is saying that they're worth, uh, that, that that's leave, leave that to like all the executives at the companies who, 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 who use that terminology. The, the get Dallas Cowboys and every other team have to keep leapfrogging they don't believe that Dak is worth $60 million a year. They have to pay him $60 you, million do, a year. Do you think team – You so you think – all right, I'm going to turn around on Let's you. Let's go ahead. You think because you beat Mike Bassett in one crosstalk that no. you can beat me the same way? No, no. no. That's I'm not, say, not I'm gonna, I'm gonna, No, what I'm going to say is that I'm going to – I'll turn around the same thing. What you're telling me is that you think that Kirk Cousins, five years older, off a devastating injury that has been incredibly difficult for all NFL athletes to come back from, that that is the same value. He needs to be in the same general contract value as Dak Prescott, who's – Second in MVP, who had the highest QBR in the NFL so last year. Are you telling me if Kirk Cousins did not get injured, his salary would be significantly? What what would he be have gotten? He paid? probably would have gotten closer to like forty eight to fifty. I would guess. So, but the, three there million is a, more. There's a, huh? Three million more. I mean, that's you're talking about forty eight uh, to fifty with like what the projection was pre cap. I think his I think his age does have something to it do does. with it. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that it's totally even across the board, but I'm saying, and I'm not saying. I, I feel like Kirk gave the Falcons a little bit of a break. You're arguing that that was all that he was worth. I think I, I think when it comes out, he gave them a little bit of a break. He's going to a great situation. They have win now weapons, and this is his last opportunity to legitimately get a championship or close to it. Again, I think Dak is better than Kirk Cousins. I think they're pretty close. I think there is an age separation that does matter in this. And if Dak took 45, I think that he'd be giving the Cowboys a tremendous break 
when yeah, he can push he them for 60, but but save it all with like, this is what the teams think he's worth. They have to pay the quarterbacks. You know that, and I know that. It, just because so-and-so gets the next level deal, like Jalen Hurts is not worth the money when he got that deal at the time. They have to pay it. Cousins has always been a guy who signed deals based on wanting to get like, like he's always he wants been guaranteed more, he money. wants the guaranteed money. Yeah, he wants the guarantee. And so he's got the first two years fully guaranteed. That takes him to thirty seven coming and off because of Achilles, Washington that's... did not want to pay him because Washington did not want to give him his long term deal, right. he, he got his franchise tags and he like set history and precedent with the back to back franchise stuff that came out. Like all that stuff factored now. I was I was alive for it too. Anyway, I'm tired of talking about right, it. Wait, what do you yeah. mean? I'm, I'm just I, I I'm tired of it. Uh, uh, what, uh, what does that have to do with it? the deals that he takes? The, what do the franchise tags have to do with it? Because the market isn't paying him. Okay, we think you're worth that. Like Kirk Cousins cleaned up with that money in Washington, in part because they did not believe in him. Right. So they just kept tagging him. They just kept tagging him. Right. So there's a num. What I'm trying to say is there's a number of different factors that go into all this stuff. But the bottom line, what it boils down to is you don't think that they're close in comparison. That's fine. We can agree to disagree. Uh, what are the Green Bay Packers doing? They trade yeah. out Aaron Jones. Uh, really, you think me and Bobby are fighting. Apparently, you and Will Chambers had the big Man. fight over Aaron Jones. They trade out Aaron Jones, who they outright cut for Josh Jacobs from the Raiders. Uh, this is, uh, look, he Aaron Jones is the most disrespected running back since Curtis Martin. Uh, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. He has never had a bad year. Like, he doesn't have bad years, period. Go look at his numbers. Uh, he was replaced by a guy in Josh Jacobs. Now, while he he, he is younger, he's also just not as good. Like, period. Not as good. Never been as good either. And Aaron Jones' career average in yards per carry is higher than Josh Jacobs' single season high average in yards per carry. Single season. The career average of Aaron Jones is five. 5.0 5 yards per carry. And Josh Jacobs has never had above a 4.9. Well, the knocks, ever. the knocks on Aaron Jones are injury. I would know that having him in fantasy. <laughs> uh, he just played 11 games. And Green Bay could argue he's not a straight-up feature back either. Now, the Cowboys would disagree after he freaking kicked their ass <sighs> in Arlington. But... Who was the who? Who's the big the big running back there? Their little thunder and lightning. Who was the other back that uh, they? Have? Dylan, right? And they have Dylan. AJ Dylan. AJ Dylan. Like, you know, we had AJ Dylan because we couldn't totally completely rely on Aaron Jones. He's had three years in his career uh, of a thousand yards, and he barely got to that. Those are the devil's advocate yeah. points. Now, how much of that though is that they didn't run him as much? Well, why didn't they? Well, I mean, that's that's the, that, that, that that's their problem. Well, they, well, well, the Cowboys proved that they shouldn't have run Tony Pollard so much or rely on him. Maybe, maybe there's a knock against him as a workhorse back. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, look, you can make that knock, but there's no such thing as a workhorse back anymore. Like we don't, they don't, they don't exist. Well, like, Josh you, you Jacobs don't... apparently. <laughs> I mean, I was, yeah, I was sure. Go ahead. I mean, he dropped a 3.5 last year after he had one year of big carries. You have to have two running backs. That's just the way it is. And, you know, like the knock on him with the injuries is, yeah, he's gotten hurt. But, you know, also prior to last year, his previous four years were 17, 15, 14, 16. I mean, that's pretty much playing. Yeah. He's played two fewer seasons than Josh Jacobs, 20 fewer games. Or, or Josh Jacobs has played 20 fewer games, two fewer seasons than Aaron Jones. He has 140 more carries than Aaron Jones. Like that's a, a ton of workload. Ton of work. I, I didn't have. I didn't realize that Josh. Because I was going back. I remember Josh Jacobs. One of the knocks coming out of him, come like for him coming out of school was that he had never shown that he could handle the workload in college. Like he wasn't a guy who got like an aggressive workload. So I was trying to see and see if it was one of those things where teams are just trying to project out. Like, well, Aaron Jones is going to break down faster because of Josh Jacobs' workload. But Josh Jacobs has carried the ball a ton the last four or five years. He has, and that's that means he's going to die. <laughs> He's going to die in the field. Aaron uh, Jones there's no way I'm signing that dude over Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones available. Derrick Henry is still available. And Joe Mixon at the age of 27 is now out on the market. Everything else that happened in the NFL and you thought the Cowboys were silent? No. We have a Dak Prescott extortion lawsuit to tell you about next on 105.3 The Fan. But I want to also tell you about Gimme the Vin.
on Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Dallas Cowboys, no, they did not make any free agent transaction. RJ is going to tell you why you need to relax and chill at 720 during the expressway. But they were in the news as Mike Florio, amongst others, got his hands on some legal documents. Dak Prescott is suing a girl and her attorneys over an alleged $100 million extortion plot. Florio is going to join us at 8 o'clock to talk about it as a former uh, attorney. But here's what happened. In January, a lawyer sent a letter to Dak asking for a settlement over a potential claim of sexual assault. This incident apparently took place in 2017. Dak is like, oh, you're trying to get money out of me? I'm turning the tables and I'm suing all of you guys. The case was filed in Collin County against... Victoria Shores. I don't know whether we have photos or pictures yet. Someone actually did send me photos, but I'm not allowed to repost them. I don't know where to find this girl uh, publicly on the socials. Choppy will have it in about 4.9 seconds. Uh, but it's Victoria Shores and her attorneys. And Dak is suing for defamation, slander, civil extortion, duress, business disparagement, torturous interference, and messing up business relations along with conspiracy emotional distress all of it so basically this woman said i've been experiencing pain and trauma for seven years i've had to go to therapy all the stuff that you usually see and i want a hundred mil in exchange for not pressing charges with the authorities didn't even ask for 10 went straight yeah. for 100 million dollars dak Obviously, saying I'm innocent and you can't sit there and put these types of charges on me. And when we win this case, anything that I get, we will donate um, to different funds uh, for domestic violence, child abuse, like minded organizations, all of that. So that's what happened yesterday with Dak saying someone's trying to extort me for 100 mil. This was very weird. This was very weird <laughs> that it came out yesterday. Uh, it was very weird that it's happened this year, the contract year. It's very weird that it happened, you know, I mean. Seven years later. Seven years later. That's the other thing. This happened a long time ago. Uh, that I don't know what the uh, statute of limitations is on anything. I mean, a civil case, nothing, I would assume. But it's, it's you know, look, it, it, it's something that has to be looked into. There's no doubt about that. And I hope the authorities do look into it. I have no idea what to make of it, but it's just. Timing of it was just very, very strange yesterday. Yeah, now... Because we had heard nothing about this, right? Not even a whisper? No, 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 no. no nothing about this. And, and I mean, I think that was the point. Like, it's one of those things where the the document that was sent over to Dak's team had said that, hey, in order to keep this matter private, like, pay this off. And so that's where part of this, why it would be so quiet, I think, would have come from, was because they're, they're trying to make sure that that's part of their... Their leverage, in essence. Uh, I also think it, it's important to say the date of this uh, notification that Dak got, for anybody who's asking, because I'm sure people are asking, was January 16th. So this was two days after Green Bay. So for those of you that go, was Dak distracted, potentially, against Green Bay because he knew this lawsuit came through? That didn't happen. This was after the season had ended that he received this. This was a couple days after. But this is... I'm going to be very interested to see how this sort of thing plays out because it's, it's something that they... They clearly want a payday, whether it's uh, I'm not saying about legitimate motives or anything else, but I'm just saying they clearly want a payday and it doesn't seem like something they just want to drop quickly. 877-881-1053, chartwork.com text line. Florio will explain to eight where we go from here. Uh, everyone gave me the number and information for Dak's attorney. Sounds like the Cowboys attorney, Levi McCather. And I was like, maybe we should have him on to talk about this. Busy. To talk about... Does he have Michael Irvin's stuff? Yeah. And does he have the locker for Mozzie? He's Mozzie. Yep. Okay. I was like, have you ever heard him on the air on the radio? I've not. I I I, I know of Levi, but I've not I've not heard him do interviews before. Okay. Well, he is representing Dak in this case. Uh, so this is the extortion attempt that 
is coming from 2017. Should have Todd France represent him in this lawsuit. He always wins negotiations like this. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Live on the fan cam, Twitch, and YouTube. Some of the other NFL deals to talk about that happened yesterday. We talked about the NFC East at 6. We talked about Aaron Jones, uh, Josh Jacobs being swapped in Green Bay. David Bakhtiari got released. DeAndre Swift got 80 year like Tony Pollard in Tennessee. Uh -uh. Swift went to the Bears three for 24. Boy, what a loser franchise move that is. I mean, he, he's been cast off now third team in three years. And you're going to give him 80 year? He's not bad. I'd rather pay him 80 year than I'd than pay Pollard 80 year. I wouldn't want to pay well, either. Yeah, that, I wouldn't but, pay either one I mean, of them 80 Swift, year, though. Swift is, I, I mean, you're talking about a guy who, what, last year he put up. 1,100 yards or whatever while everybody he's, was complaining about how bad Philly's run game was. He's five-year. Who's five? You would pay five-year for Swift? Four five-year. What would you pay for Pollard? A, a two, three, four-year. <laughs> okay. All right. Christian Wilkins and their, a, a big loser yesterday. A lot of people were saying the Miami Dolphins, the amount of talent that they lost. D-tackle Christian Wilkins and the Raiders hooked up for a four-year, $110 million deal. So you have Max Crosby. And Wilkins trying to execute the Mahomes rules now there in Vegas. Vegas also brought in Gardner Minshew. Brought in go. Gardner. Little there ass boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that. practices are going to be awkward wow, now. Oh, that's right. Because <laughs> that was uh, yeah, yeah, Max yeah. Crosby. That was Max Crosby's that's line to Gardner Minshew. <laughs> Gardner's, I mean, Gardner's a fine. He's fine. He's, he's fine as a quarterback. He, he'll be a stopgap or whatever. You know, he's he's interested. He's one of these guys, Minshew, is who when you look over his career, it's like he looks like he should get more consistent opportunity yeah. than he does. Yeah. Like, what is – you know what he is? Not not quite exactly because this guy's been a lot better and he just won a World Series. But it's a little Jordan Montgomery-like where it's like, man, he performs better yeah, than everybody really seems is. to think he should. Why doesn't he get more opportunities? It really is. Sam Darnold signs a deal in Minnesota now that they lost uh, Kirk Cousins – to the Falcons, Gabe Davis goes from Buffalo to Jacksonville. So there's Gabe Davis trying to get more help for Trevor Lawrence. Calvin Ridley's name was trending all day long yesterday. I thought I heard Adam Schefter say it looks like Calvin Ridley will be moving on. That's an interesting signing. Michael Pittman stays in Indy, three for 70. Three for 70 for the Colts and the Seahawks getting Leonard Williams, big man up front. With the New York Jets. One thing about the Vikings, you said that you know they bring in Darnold. There's a lot of speculation that they make a big swing on draft day for a quarterback. Well, that seems pretty obvious. But no, I mean to the point of moving up. Oh, not just staying at what are they at eleven? Uh, not just staying there, but the point of moving up. Get Trey Lance. Go 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 go! Throw us a, th a third go. round pick for Trey Lance, baby. Well, Jacoby Brissett goes back to New England. So these teams signed a vet yesterday, but keep them in mind for the draft. Pats at three, Minnesota 11 with Darnold, as you just said. Vegas is at 13 with Minshew. So none of those signings will take those teams or should take no. those teams out of drafting. I, I would I would think that all those teams are still first-round pick quarterback. And if they're not, it means that in the case of Vegas, they missed out because everybody else was taken. This was Max Crosby talking about his brand-new teammate and how Max likes to trash talk. Last boy. Dude, Max Crosby is so damn angry. <laughs> Bro, he cut, he's just. But like the thing is, like he's not really that angry. I know, right? He just calls. He keeps calling everybody little ass boy. Hey, little ass boy. I'm like, I'm little out here, but not always, you know. <laughs> I love him. Not a little always. Not a little always. <laughs> not always, you know. Not, not, not always. Which of these signings did you really, really like or not understand, Bobby? The other ones. Um, Of the quarterbacks or just in general across the league? General across the league. You know, the one that I, I, I was I was really impressed with in the last couple of days was the re-signing that the Raiders had of Andre James. Because that was a guy that I was interested in for the Cowboys. But, I mean, Zach Moss going for two years, $8 million, like getting half of what Pollard did after looking like he was a pretty competent back in Indianapolis and that just being too damn much for Dallas. I, I really like that deal. I, I was surprised. I've been surprised the last couple of days at some of the, the quarterback stuff. But overall, I mean, the the running back market, guys are getting paid. Yeah. I didn't love a lot of the deals signed yesterday. There were a lot of them that, and this is why, this would be the Cowboys' the argument point. as the to why they stay out, point. is because they say 
this is people overreacting and mm -hmm. you're paying too much, but Daniel Jeremiah said not a great running back draft. That is one reason why all these vets are flying off the board. Running backs got money and offensive linemen got money. Somebody told me a couple weeks ago that well, there are some teams that don't even have a running back in the top two rounds. That there are some teams that their highest graded running back in the draft is a third rounder. Best available. Ooh. All right. Who's still out there? Uh, Daniel Hunter, Patrick Queen, Ridley, Derrick Henry, Tyron. Did not go off the board yesterday. DJ Reader, Hollywood Brown, uh, Kevin Zeitler. Well, it might be better names in, this, in the day two than day one. Stephon Gilmore, <laughs> Chase Young, Justin Simmons. I will there say, you if you do lose Jordan Lewis to Washington, um, you you don't have the luxury, in my opinion, of just kind of, well, you know, we, we got to make sure that the money works out for us with Stephon Gilmore. Like, you need to lock in Gilmore if you lose Jordan Lewis because you're not, you're not running back out there with, you, that's either no. going to put pressure on you to take a, a corner earlier than you wanted in a in a corner draft that's not necessarily top heavy, or it's going to force you to say, "All right, we got to put Nashawn Wright out there full time." Oh, because there's no way of knowing what Diggs is going to return as. There's still that. Uh, there's still the unknown. With he could Michael Gallup. He could be Michael Gallup up top in his head with the knee. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's he's he he's pretty. Ed, he, he's got an edge he's that Gallup edge. doesn't have, but I mean, it's still, you're talking about a devastating injury that you're going to have to try and bounce back from. Do we all agree if Zach Moss was too expensive at four a year, Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, that's not happening, or would they save up in the reserves for King Henry? Uh, man, uh, yeah, may, I, I don't know. Maybe this is one of those things where it's like, Four million for Moss. Like we would have paid three for him. Yeah. But either way, like I feel like if you're talking about uncomfortable, that's the problem I have. If the word is uncomfortable, it, or it got more the the four million dollars got more than the Cowboys were comfortable with. If you're talking about comfort level at four million versus three million, that tells me you're not ready to play in the waters of free agency at all. Because that just says that you've got such an aversion to spending money, period. What would they have had to do yesterday to get because they're they're cap they said they're what the two yeah. and change. Yeah. Under like, the they, cap. They, like they didn't yesterday have money to spend. <laughs> no, I know, but I mean, if they wanted to, and and Calvin Watkins wrote about this a couple days ago. Like, if they just restructure Steel and Digs, which they're going to do eventually, that frees up like twenty million right there. Yeah, part of me is well, maybe I'll save it for seven twenty. Uh, my theory on not wanting to have money to spend. There you go. It's like not filing your taxes till later, so oh, you don't crap, have to do, do that, that family vacation for spring break. I don't have the tax return yet. Well, did you file the taxes? No, I haven't, but. Well, I did, but I'm just waiting. Still waiting on my money from last year. Just waiting on it. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks get an easy one. Could Luka continue history and how they already screwed up the Kobe statue? All that next here on Sean and RJ 105 through the fan. But don't screw up your Barbie.
Studios secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Here's a turnover by Kobe White. A catch inside. And it's a finish for Daniel Gafford for his 23rd consecutive made field goal. Was it that hard, Jason? Was it really that difficult to see the injection of enthusiasm, the guy bringing effort, passion, a little bit of a backbone, some fire? Not that difficult. He started off great for you as well. Then he disappeared, and then Jay Kidd said, let's go ahead and put Gafford back in the starting lineup. And he Yo, sets the... we tried everything. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you tried too much. Daniel Gafford sets the NBA record for consecutive field goals, the most made since 1996-1997. He goes 9 for 9 last night. The Mavs bigs between him and Lively combined for over 40 points. Luka gets another Triple-double, although he didn't score 30 with this. And the Dallas Mavericks crushed the Chicago Bulls. This one was over early. Yeah, it's starting to get to a point with uh, Daniel Gafford where you're like, which happens first? Does Daniel Gafford miss a shot or does Jordan Montgomery and Blake Snell sign contracts? Which one's which one are going to happen first? <laughs> that ain't going to happen. Uh, Gafford, I, I mean, this is just this is the value of these bigs that you're seeing, these guys who can finish at the rim. This is what you've missed for years, having Dwight Powell as your starting center that Mike Bassick has complained about for so long. When you have athletic guys with size who can actually finish at the rim and Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford, it makes a massive difference, especially with Luka's game and the way that he distributes. 4-0 as the Mavs starting center. Okay, well, that's that one of those like, well, if he gets uh, you know two hundred uh, or twenty touches a day, then they're going to win the game. It's one of those that uh, just start up in the win. Uh, but he really has been, and uh, this is what happens. It would be great to dunk. I love to be able to dunk a basketball. I know uh, it makes your shooting percentage just so much higher. But this is what happens when you have an interior threat and a guy that 
And they have two guys now that always should be on the floor at some point as rim protectors. They just should. And they look like they cared about defense early on in this yeah. one. Uh, 16 points for the Bulls. This was the Mavericks' largest lead after our first quarter the entire season. Yeah, I mean, the... the Against the reigning player of the week in the Eastern Conference. Luka won it again in the West. DeMar DeRozan in the East. Yep, held him to 13 points in 22 minutes. I mean, this was... That, that's the biggest thing that's been frustrating about the Mavericks on defense is it's felt like at times an effort issue, yeah. like just an intensity thing and a communication thing. And last night they were actually on the ball. It, it'd be nice to see them get up for that and show that level of interest over these next couple of games. When we're getting teams like Denver. You know what's coming up now with this stretch? Golden State, State at the Thunder and the defending champs. Three in a row. Oh. So let's see how you match up. Warriors at the double AC tomorrow night at OKC Denver coming up at the double AC. So that's the Mavs stretch. And then at Wemby, at Wemby Nyama, who has been lighting it up with all the stat lines. He has been. Uh, he's he had a five by five, and he seems like he does that every night now, even though he's not actually doing five by five, but he had, it was the first one in, in several years. And that's just a cool stat because you don't usually see getting. Five blocks, five steals, five you know points, five rebounds, five assists. Other NBA yesterday, the LA Lakers. You and Bobby ah, yes. kind of disagreeing on this uh, in your emails. They messed up the Kobe statue. What is there to disagree with? Are you disagreeing that they messed up the statue? Well, tell the story saying? first, and you uh, could have read his email to I, know. I, but. I'm not. I'm not absolutely <laughs> not wasting my time reading Bobby's uh, the 48 stories about moms. Uh, Whoa! <laughs> so they put the statue up and they noticed it this week uh, about Kobe Bryant and the misspellings. They spelled Jose Calderon. So they had the box score up. Of the 81 point game. Of the game. And they had the box score up and they spell Jose Calderon's last name as Calderson. <laughs> Here's my initial question Was the box score. Originally misspelling, uh, misspelling these things. Like, did somebody hand him a paper oh. sheet from it and it had the typos? Yeah, like, is the paper sheet was the paper sheet messed up and they copied that, or did they just screw up the translation from the I, box score? Great question. Uh, I, I I don't know the answer to that one. Vaughn they're like, Wafer, hey, we want this to be legitimate. Yeah, know, we right? want this to be the box score, and the piece of paper was messed up. Von Wafer was spelled vom. V -O -M. Like he's vomiting. <laughs> so I say when I'm ready to. Earl. They're, they're right there next to each but other. The the N and the they are. They are. It's like my uh, emails. That's right. Uh, yeah, because, you know, Calderon, there's the, you know, there's the S that's kind of near the R, but not near the O. So go figure. Uh, and then Coach's Decision, they spelled decision with two C's and no S's. Decision. Decision. Uh, and that is, those are mistakes. And and this is, like, uh, these this flaws were discovered this week. The team is aware, according to TMZ, but I, this is a, what a way to honor an all-time great. Arguably the greatest to ever wear your jersey. Arguably. Mm -hmm. And you honor him this way with misspellings of the box score? I don't know. That that, that seems like a pretty, pretty egregious oversight. Like, how do you not, as the Lakers, check this out before you put it out there? You think. They claim they knew about it for weeks. I, that, that's what they told ESPN is that they've been aware of this for weeks and they're working to fix it. Here's the thing. If you know about it, fix it. Absolutely. I'm not saying that it should be left the way that it is. If you know about it, fix it. But it's a typo on a box score or a couple typos. About, to me, it's not something where it's like, oh, my, this is, is not this Sean this is not, Taylor. No, that's exactly what I was going to say. This is not putting up an Oshman's display for Sean <laughs> Taylor. Like this is This is not like disrespect to the memory of the legend. This is... If anything, you're, you're, you're showing disrespect to uh, the Raptors. Who cares about Jose Calderon? I don't care if it's Calderson. And uh, Von Illa Wafer, I don't care about him either. Yeah. Like, I mean, who, who's getting worked up about that? So, no, I don't. I think if you know about it, yeah, absolutely. Fix whatever's wrong with it. But it's not something that I think where it's like, oh, my gosh, this is so disrespectful to Kobe's memory. Yeah, I agree. I don't think it's disrespectful to to Kobe. It's disrespectful towards the, uh, the other guys. Did y'all see LeBron? Next to Genie Bus. Dude. This was amazing. Th this made me hate him 10 times more than I ever have before. So LeBron was out for the Lakers win over the Bucks. He's sitting there with his sunglasses <laughs> on the sideline. And at one point, he sits down 
between Jeannie Buss, Lakers owner, married to Jay Moore, ex-girlfriend of Phil Jackson, <laughs> and uh, a woman that is hated by many Laker fans, the wife of Kurt Rambis, who has like been in yeah. the ear of Jeannie Buss for years and years and years. And they, Jeannie, you know, how would you describe it? You know, hands. He, he's he's handsy. In the, yeah, they're 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 two. Uh, it, it looks like the beginning to an adult film. It, it's two. <laughs> it's two older women who are just like, oh, LeBron, you're so great. Yeah. And they're sitting there. They're doing their Ed, the lip readers, the expert lip readers, picked up LeBron Cohen, essentially saying, all right, all right. But first, ladies, before we continue with this, happy International Women's and Sports Day. <laughs> happy International Women's Day. You're the most powerful women in sports. <laughs> And Jeannie Buss is like laying her head go, on his shoulder. Oh, he's so says, sweet. What a simp. Not no, a simp. This what? is what? great. It, no, no. It's great for him. This yeah. is great for LeBron. It's so, no, it's so. Because he did not say anything inappropriate. <laughs> he did not sit there and try to come on to them. Would this you, is nothing to hate LeBron yeah. for. This no, is this, is, this, is, this is so. No, this, <laughs> no time for jokes. This is so cringy. This is so bad. On, who's on part? their part, on not LeBron's. him. No. First what off, it? ladies, have, no. That's just such an obvious, like, fake LeBron persona of like, like that. This is a, a, a he would have been killing him more for trying to come on to them. His like, hands. No, that is tonight. trying to come no, on to them. Not. Yes, it is. His hands and stayed he, right. Yes, it is. You just you can't move off of your narratives. His yeah, once you're yeah. once you're on one, you're stuck to it like gnats on flypaper. His hands were in clear <laughs> view the entire time. Hmm. This is. This is, you could there is nothing you could say about LeBron in a negative light with this. Yeah. Nothing. Yes, you can. It's nothing. cringy, and if you're dropping this, you're you're trying to lay some ground. Maybe you could say that he's <laughs> wearing a soccer jersey. That's the negative thing you could say. <laughs> All right, the most viral clip in the sports world took place with this Utah State head coach. All right, so yeah, this is the uh, former Utah State uh, women's basketball coach, and you said former. Uh, well, now. Now she is the former Utah State women's basketball coach, Kayla Ard. So they finished their season five wins, five of 26. Uh, they finished their season. They lose in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. And uh, she goes to the podium to do her post-game press conference and let this little juicy nugget out. And how do you plan to rebuild for next season? I'm not going to be rebuilding. I just coached my last game at Utah State. I spoke with Diana, and they're going in a different direction, and I respect her decision, and I hope they get a really good coach in. I'm assuming that's going to be the last question. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank that's you. All. Thank you, Coach. Wow. wow. So she gets – so before the she goes to the podium after they lose, it appears that she was informed that they are going to move on from her. And they still let her go up there and speak. Or forced her to go up there and speak. Yes. Poor girl. I felt so bad. Like, so classless. Very. This We need the name of this athletic director because this is inexcusable. I don't, I don't recall this ever happening. I don't either. Like, this is like, you know, don't you, now she got to get on the team plane, go back to, you know, Utah with the team, or are they going to buy, she going to buy her a, a separate plane ticket? How does this work? I Diana mean, like Sabo. Yeah, just hired in August. So this was not her coach, it doesn't seem. Yeah, well, you no. know, have a little bit of class. <laughs> yeah, like don't don't hire her. Don't, don't, don't tell her and then have her go up there. How about you tell her that and then you go up there? And or, say, you know, just tell her after. Or tell her after. <laughs> or, you know, tell her and have, you know, sorry, uh, no, no coaches are, are going to come on up. Uh, or have the Mountain West uh, Conference have their PR person because they always have some SID PR person up there handling this. Say, hey, look, uh, we're going to make the call. That you're not going up there. I was terrible to have her go up there. And, and she handled it. I, I, she could have handled it way worse. Yeah. She could have called uh, She called him out. And I'm glad she did. The controversial. She, I mean, did she call him out? No. I mean, she said, She said, look, I, I'm just, I coached my last game. Yeah. Um, I hope, by the way, I hope that's the last question. The controversial Kim Mulkey. In the news again, this thing went Ooh. national. All right, so this is from the SEC championship, and there was a little kerfuffle, kerfuffle or fluffle, kerfuffle, kerfuffle. Love that word. At the at the end of the game, guy jumped on the floor. That was the brother of uh, one of the uh, LSU players. So he got charged. South Carolina had one of their players go on over and then knock over uh, an LSU player, Kim Mulkey, and 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 and. and 
the LSU player and the and the South Carolina player, one of them, like Angel Reese was jawing. You know, she's in this game. Uh, she leaves the bench. She When the fight starts happening, she leaves the bench. She walks the other way. She's like, I'm not getting involved in this. We got bigger and better things ahead of us. We got the NCAA tournament coming. I am not going to go get suspended. Um, Kim Mulkey said this after the game, and this drew a lot of criticism. No one wants to be a part of that. No one wants to see, to, to see that ugliness. But I can tell you this. I wish she would have pushed Angel Reese. Don't push a kid that you six eight. Don't push somebody that little. That that was uncalled for, in my opinion. Let those two girls that were jawing, let them go at it. So it was Carmelo Cardozo uh, from South Carolina who pushed uh, what, the LSU player, and this was not a very tall girl. Yeah, not close to the six eight. That Camilla is. So recap some of the reaction. We won't play the clip right now. All but. right. So the reaction is basically that if first of all, if she was a man, she would she would be getting killed. If Gino said this, he'd be getting destroyed. That she's also like encouraging fighting. I didn't see that, that she's encouraging fighting. She was basically saying, Hey, pick on someone your own size. I totally agree. Yeah. And I and I don't like Kim Mulkey. I, I look, full transparency, I haven't gone and dug into every single Kim Mulkey story. It's just like some, some, people, very good. some people in life, I'm like, I don't like that person. I don't know why. I just don't like him. I don't really like Kim Mulkey, um, but I feel like this is a little bit of an overreaction. She's saying, yeah. don't, 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 exactly what you said. Pick, Pick up someone, someone your own, own size. size. Yeah. yeah, like don't, if you're 6'8", don't be going after somebody who's like 5'11". Yeah, the idea that like, well, could you imagine if Gino said this? It's like, yeah, the reaction would have been less. It's Kim Mulkey's an easy, easy target because people don't like her. And so they latch on to things like this. You don't get the benefit of the doubt, but there's nothing wrong with what she said, which is the same sort of thing. It's basically like, don't go picking on somebody. You're being a bully. Yeah, that's it. But Shannon that's Sharp it. and Stephen Shannon A. Shannon Sharp, Stephen A., they were not happy at all with this. Tuba tuba Saying this. what? Uh, exactly that. If there was a man, uh, if this was a man, there's no way we would have gone down that road. Uh, or that she was encouraging and trying to facilitate a brawl at the end of the game and mar the women's championship game. It's just, it was nonsense to me. TruckRack.com text line is open for a loaded Tolo Tuesday edition here with Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Thanks for turning it on, leaving it on. DFW Sports Station. Everyone is unhappy, ticked off, fed up with the Dallas Cowboys and their lack of activity. RJ Choppy is here to tell you, chill. They did the right things yesterday by sleeping. We'll have that and ask credit during the commercial free expressway after this. And this is DFW security. If you have a hard time chilling away from your home while you're at work,
and it's back to Sean and RJ right here on 105.3 The Fan. It is the expressway right now on The Fan, and it's brought to you by the On Time Experts. That means we are commercial-free every single morning at this time here on Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Thanks for being a total low. That stands for Turn It On, Leave It On, Mike Florio. To recap, day one of free agency and the Dak Prescott extortion case, Florio will join us at 8 o'clock this morning, but I think we have found the one person in a city of 8 million people who would like to applaud the Dallas Cowboys for what they did not do yesterday. They lost Tony Pollard to the Titans three years, 24 million. They lost Dorrance Armstrong and Tyler Biotis Biotis. to the Washington Commanders. They did not sign anyone while literally every other team in the National Football League did make a transaction. The Eagles... Add Saquon Barkley and Bryce Huff. The Giants traded for Brian Burns, added an offensive lineman. And in addition to the former Cowboys that Dan Quinn went and got, the Commanders also added a linebacker and Austin Eckler. A big fat snooze alarm for the Ford Center of the Star in Frisco. And you're here to say good job. Yeah, I'm not the only one in town. I'm just the uh I'm the only one in town with a voice. Oh. Uh, that will say that. I asked my handicapper buddy in Vegas yesterday what team improved their win total yesterday. And his answer was there was one. It was Atlanta. That's it. Not, another, not a single team improved their win total even by a half point. And the Cowboys did not decrease their win total yesterday. Not even by a half of, half of a win by losing those three scrubs. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting here thinking, let's do a winners and losers of the first day of free agency. Can, can I ask you a quick question? So that, that means legitimately if Dorrance Armstrong, Tyler Biotish, and Tony Pollard were all out for a game, Vegas wouldn't move the line at all? Pollard, but, uh, no, they wouldn't. Not necessarily. Really? They would do it if, okay, so if uh, if Biotish and Tyron were out, they would move it because it's a cluster injury. But then again, you're right. I mean, if they if they're all out for all three of those guys are out. I would think it'd move a point. It may maybe. move a half a point, yeah, if you have a lot of injuries. But generally speaking, you don't really see that often from a non-quarterback position. My big winner, though, was the Cowboys. Every year they do this. And every year we kill them. And every year they turn out right. And every year they come up short. That's fine. They come up short it's not, because... But it's not fine. They come up short because of Dak Prescott. They come up short because of this or that. It has nothing to do with whether or not... There was not a single free agent last year they could have signed that would have won the game for them against Green Bay. Not a single one. Right? That's really simplifying it. Yeah, that, that's the whole point. It's simplified. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, you know, it, we, we make fun of them, but do you really want to play ball in a sandbox that gives Saquon Barkley $40 million over three years? Do you really want to pay these guys? Like, I, I would have liked to have kept Dorrance Armstrong. I'd have, I'd have liked to have kept uh, Baidez. Mm-hmm. Um, but you weren't going to compete with Washington. They had $100 million of cap space. If Washington really wanted Dorrance Armstrong, they were going to get Dorrance Armstrong. It was just simple, that, simple as that. Um, like outside of the Eagles, look at the teams that were first to fire yesterday. Falcons, loser franchise. Now they got the quarterback, I like it, but still, loser franchise. A smart franchise would have said, no, Kirk, we're going to tank, and we're going to get a good quarterback in the draft. We're not, by the way, doing winners and losers here, but... No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, this is, this is part of my, why I'm okay with it. Okay. All these franchises, Jaguars, loser franchise. Raiders, loser franchise. Titans, loser franchise. Bears, loser franchise. Vikings, loser franchise. The only one that wasn't a loser franchise that did anything was Philadelphia. And I think they had the most moronic signing of the day in Saquon Barkley. And it's getting destroyed. Destroyed. People are wondering, like, what is Howie doing? And Bobby's got a point. Maybe we need to stop genuflecting at the altar of Howie Roseman. I don't know. Maybe we do. And, you know, the Rams, they did sign a, uh, they signed a guard. But they have to operate in that sandbox because they didn't have a draft pick for eight years because they traded every draft pick away. So I was fine. Uh, The opening day of free agency is the last place I want to be to build a roster. The third day of free agency is better. You're getting guys that are not nearly as expensive. And, you know, like what you want, you want 85% of the production at 15% of the cost. That's the whole point. That's the whole point of, you know, manipulating the salary cap to the best of your ability. And, like, how do I know that that I'm right here? Is Which team today made themselves, A, a Super Bowl contender that wasn't one already? 
or B, got themselves the over-the-top piece. What do you say? What do you say to all that? So, my my whole point would be that if you look at every, here's the thing. Yes, if you want to say you shouldn't play in free agency, I mean you got to play in it to some extent. Yeah, they're do. literally the only team that didn't do something yesterday, and I don't necessarily. It, it doesn't necessarily mean like go and make an outside, but like teams who re-signed one of their own who was a free agent, they did something. Every team did something to solidify a free agent, whether it be one that was in house or one that was from the outside. The Cowboys were the only one that didn't. If you want to make the argument that they need to take care of their own, okay, well then don't slow play taking care of your own. Get CeeDee Lamb done. Get Michael Parsons done. Get Dak done. Do whatever you got to do to line those things up. Don't slow play that and then sign Benson Mayo at 10 days into free agency and tell me you've made a difference. <laughs> and if you look at every Super Bowl champion over the last 15 years, they all make significant outside free agent acquisitions or make significant trades. The Rams, even when they did it, when they were just nominally kind of playing in the free agent waters that previous offseason. That's because they traded for Ramsey. They traded for Stafford. In the middle of the year, they traded for Von Miller. Like, every team that does win a Super Bowl, that does contend in that area, makes significant roster additions. Even Kansas City went out and signed Juwan Taylor last offseason. The first year they won a Super Bowl, they went out and they got Teron Matthew. They signed Bashad Breland as a corner. They all make significant moves. Or they all make some sort of moves towards the direction of improving their roster. Dallas being the only team that sat out is concerning. But hang on, like, you can't say that Kansas City made insignificant improvements when they literally took away from their team with Tyreek Hill. They took away and added. Right? So, the, you know, so they took away Right, a so major all Dallas part. has done right now is taken away three but starters. They did not take away anybody that was nearly as impactful. They, they've essentially, if reports are to, believe, to be believed, they have taken away Tyron Smith. They've called it off. They have, and they, I, I suspect they're going to draft that replacement. Okay, and then what are you doing at center, which they've told us consistently was something that they was really going to draft that guy. That's tough. So you're telling me you, you're telling me you have to spend. If you're talking about getting two starting offensive linemen, you better use your first two picks on them. So you haven't done anything about the defense or the toughness issue with run defense. No, but you know you can't keep like you literally can't keep everybody. No, but you got to do and it's exactly. Okay, yeah, you yeah, can't keep anybody. Know, but it's so, okay to take a step back at certain positions. Sure, to you, take a step forward in future years. Sure, if you're willing to do make the acquisitions to take a step forward, which they haven't shown they're willing to do. They haven't done it yet. No. That, that doesn't mean that they're not going to be in free agency. Again, they've got a lot of things. To do. They, they got to sign all these guys to be able to get any kind of money. What what they get, what could they have done yesterday with the money they have? Well, nothing with the money that they have, but they could have already gotten Dak done and the other deals could free up more money. Now, again, they, yes, they could have, but then the point is, is like going into yesterday, seeing at, at, at 11 o'clock when that clock struck and you knew that their cap figure was at where it was, we should not have been surprised. No one is surprised. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a reason for 24 hours we've made jokes of it, and Mike Bassick is doing bits on the yacht of what <laughs> what 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 fruit they're getting squeezed into their mixed drinks. No one is surprised. People are pissed, and they're angry. Um, now, look, I don't have a problem with anyone they lost yesterday. There was no regret for, regret for me in saying they should have given Dorrance that money, they should have given Biotis that money. Here's my overall just question. And, you know, I, uh, I, this can apply for any business, any situation. We know where we are, okay? We're good. We're very solid. How are we supposed to get over the hump? This approach, every single year that they execute, has not gotten them over the hump. If the Dallas Cowboys had lost in the Super Bowl like San Fran, if they had barely lost in the NFC Championship... I could argue for keeping everything status quo, but you're not you're not even close to that. So my my argument to you, my my counterback in question to you, Choppy, is okay. Every year you support this you know stagnant approach, status quo, not adding with anything big. How do you get over the hump? Besides drafting a quarterback in the first round, I mean that's that's the answer. Like that. that well, that, you have that to really... do something else if you're gonna if you're going to keep Dak. You have to try to get over the hump in some other way. So how do you do it? I don't know that they're going to keep Dak. I mean, they're going to keep him this year. And beyond that, where is he? Is he signed? We've, All I'm saying is, like, if you're yeah. stuck in, like, third in your profession, fourth, second, what are you going to do to get over the hump and over the top if you're you're sitting here doing the same thing 
every year in your annual meetings, in your budget meetings. You're not going to try to swing for the fences, do anything. What you're saying for the Cowboys free agency is kind of what you argue with Bobby about when it comes to the quarterback. Like, let's just run it back. We're, what we're doing right now in the offseason is just running it back with no signings. Where's history show that is going to end up in yeah. a very early exit? Yeah, and I'm, and I'm just saying, like, they're, look, they're, the if, reality is, is if you don't, I mean, let's be fair, if you don't have Patrick Mahomes, you have to get lucky somewhere along the way. We all know that luck plays a major role in, in championships. The only people who don't want to admit that are the players. Yeah, Everybody else knows that luck plays a major role. Um, like, what move are they going to make? Again, and this, you don't I'm, know. I'm but just that, talking about yesterday. But that's my thing. You don't know that Brian... I'm just using the Giants for an example because they're in the division. We don't know that Brian Burns doesn't go out and... I know what Vegas is saying about the line. That Brian Burns in a first-round playoff game doesn't have three sacks or a forced fumble. Or what the hell Bryce yeah. Huff is going to do. Absolutely uh, agree. You know what I mean? There, but there's also... Or no, Christian Wilkins. There was no financial way they were going to get Bryce well, yeah, uh, no, Burns. They right? weren't as of 11 a.m., but they could have they could have freed up money to do it and spend. They could have if, already gotten Dak done, as we all thought they probably would have done by now, judging by Jerry's BS statement of all in. They could have gotten CD Lamb done. They, if, they could have they could have freed up room if they wanted to. If if, yeah, if, if, if they, wanted, if, to if they the wanted to go and and do all that and then get Brian Burns and his twenty what, what thirty a year. thirty a year, they're getting they're not going to be able to fill a roster. Fine, but but. San Francisco, who's right up against the cap. San Francisco went out yesterday and they signed Leonard Floyd, who's averaging ten sacks a year for the last four years. Like they went out and they made it happen. I mean, Leonard Floyd. I, I know you don't like it, but he had a fifty-something PFF grade. Okay, last but year. like, like but you of, never. Look, what, what I'm saying is though, and again, I understand overall free agency. You're doing what I do with quarterbacks. You just crap on them uh, coming out of the draft. We crap on every free agent, but what is the other answer to getting over the hump? Uh, get lucky. Okay, <laughs> yeah. get lucky, with, but but get lucky with what? They're, right? I don't, they're not. They're not. They're they not in a position to lucky. win a championship. They're in a position to make the playoffs every year. Yeah, they're in a position. They're not in a position. Like to, to me, win you got to get lucky once you get close. We're not. Yeah. we're not that close. We're, we're we're invited to the party. Yeah, I mean they're the two seed. The two seed is pretty close. They got they got destroyed. They got, yeah, they got lucky they to got, be the two seed. They got lit up. Yeah. Um, but you know they're going to win twelve games this year, and there's going to be a point in this year where we're going to say, oh, you know what? Oh, well, the Cowboys did it right again. Here, they here. did it right again, and 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 we're going to look foolish. Yeah, we are because we know what's going to happen. We know what the end game is. Right. Here, here's the thing: is that I'm saying we don't have an answer. We don't have a fill in the blank to okay. How do you change the status? Quo? We 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 don't have Patrick Mahomes. You're right, and before that, we didn't have Tom Brady. Like that. That's the difference. That is the difference. But those teams still said that's not enough. Like for Mahomes, they still went out. They had to go acquire Orlando Brown through trade. They had to go sign Juwan Taylor. They signed Teron Matthew one year to a big deal. They've got during the Tom Brady era. The Patriots always went out and got Revis. They went and traded for Stephon Gilmore. Like, consistently, you're even seeing the teams that have the quarterback that you're talking about out going out and acquiring still make more aggressive moves and more expensive moves than the Cowboys would be willing to do. Yeah, and we all said last year, when they didn't do anything in free agency, right? Again? That they we, did a little more. They did go out and bit. get Cooks and Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, they but did that a was, little more. That was, uh, those were uh, trades. Yeah, but it, you can... And those, were, those were further period. down. There was a further down the line. Further than a line, like if they do something again like that, yeah, I think we're all looking at this. Like, it, it, yeah, if 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 they end, if the season starts tomorrow, it's a major fail of the off season. Yeah, but what all I'm saying is, it's not a major fail to be absent on day one of free agency. Okay, like I don't want to be absent on day three. But you're but you are the only team in the NFL who either didn't sign someone or didn't get your own house in order. You're the only one. They need to get their own house. In order. That that to me is inexcusable that they didn't do that. That they haven't done something with Micah or with CD or with Dak or with it's negligent. And it, it's, why that's is it? Negligent. But why? But but why is it negligent not to have done it up to this point? Because if you're whatever you're doing, you need to get your house in order for free agency that's coming up. The official start of free agency, you need to have. But they don't, they, they never had a plan to spend in free agency anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter if those contracts are redone. That's what they would say back. Well, then, I mean, in general, like, their entire slow play on contracts has cost them money. Like, it puts them in this position where they're bumped up against the cap okay, because well, they don't get stuff done. Okay, well, that's another that's another subject of, like... It's the same thing, though. No, it isn't for free... One is for free agency. One is costing yourself 
more money because you keep waiting and, and other contracts you, get signed. You cost yourself more money and then you're up against the cap. And that's your whole excuse. It's it, it's all a I'm BS saying, excuse from the Cowboys to begin with. It's all made up excuse. It's like you said earlier. It's the not filing your tax return because then you can like, uh, oh, well, I can't afford that vacation. Sorry, don't have my tax return yet. The Cowboys could get their house in order and have the money to do what they want to do. They don't want it because they want the built an excuse and they want to act like they want a negotiation. Pepe, are any of the Tolos agreeing with RJ Choppy giving the Cowboys a day one Passing grade. I think it's a little more in favor of RJ than you would think. I think it's more 60 40. 972 says it's the worst front office in the league. 214, <laughs> Cowboys mindset will be okay uh, until the playoffs. And then 817 says Brady and Mahomes also take team friendly deals. Okay. Well, I don't know how many of those actually were total in agreement, but uh, <laughs> I imagine the fan text is lit, lit Ready. right now. Trucker.com text line. Let us know, 877-881-1053, 877-881-1053, literally the only team in the NFL that did not do anything yesterday. Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com, on the DAC lawsuit at 8 o'clock, his winners and losers from day one. Right now, it's a Tolo Tuesday. The text will continue to explode with Ask Credit. Do you have a question, Kelly? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? Truckrack.com, fan text 877-881-1053, 877-881-1053. We also want to hear from you on the Twitch and the YouTube, twitch.tv slash DallasFanCam, youtube.com slash 1053thefan. We're doing Ask Reddit here. It's where we kick around some of the most viral questions being asked on Reddit over the last week. And we're going to lead off with Sean Sharif. Maybe. Great. Yeah. You, I was going to lead off with Choppy, and then we have the Cousins argument. I was like, he's getting the first question on Ask Reddit. But honestly, you're getting the first question on Ask Reddit because I feel like you're the one who would have the best answer to this, the best way to navigate this situation. Sean, what is the safest answer when your girlfriend or wife or whoever else asks if her friend is hot? You say she's attractive. That word is safe. That, that's an attractive person. The other thing you have to do is... And at least in my house, a strategy is I, I, I say it about some guys too on TV. <laughs> you, that way you just, you establish a baseline that you just appreciate attractiveness in all people. I appreciate good looking people. <laughs> and I go, look at that guy. He's really good looking. Yeah. That's what I'll say. That's a, that's a good looking person. Like yesterday, someone sent me the photos of the DAC accuser. And it, she, it, it's photos like in a string bikini and everything. So I had to figure out how to navigate this. So I got this on my phone and I'm like, oh, I just got the photos of the Dak girl, the, the alleged Dak girl. And, you know, I sent it right over to Amanda, who's on the opposite end of the couch. Yeah. Well, as soon as I send it over to Amanda, I like start just looking up at the TV. I'm not like on my phone, <laughs> zooming in, doing the fingers out for the zoom in to look at all the tattoos and all the curves and all this and that. It's like. Yeah, I got it. Now I'm passing it along to you. It's 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 nothing to go crazy about. But I find to say, hey, that's a that's that's a good looking person. That's what I say. Yeah. That's safe. It's that's uh, good. it's an honesty policy. I'm the, I'm, I'm the wrong person to ask with this because we look at everybody. Yeah, you guys send <laughs> send them a DM. We scout. <laughs> we do scouting reports. You that's know, trying good. to see who's gonna who's gonna join us. But what's, um, the, what, what's the closest? Enough talk. No, let's get real. Has, <laughs> let's get real. Yeah. real. What's the closest y'all have ever come to? A, a an invite. Oh, we have a come close to an invite. Okay, Who we've talked backs? about. You it. never sat in the bar like you're at the table. Nah. And you're like, go over, ask. No, we a have not. Ask them. We have not. We okay. have not come close to an invite. Who right. who who breaks that barrier? Do you think? Ultimately, uh, well, that's a good question. I think it depends on how drunk we are at the moment. <laughs> who's, who's more intoxicated? And is this going for either? Yeah, we'll go for either side. Yeah, that would go either way. Oh, uh, word. Oh my. But. Uh, I think so. Here's here it is. It's like um, just like anything. It's a short term PR hit for long term gain versus the long term. If you say no, and she knows you're lying, she'll never trust you. Are we talking about y'all? Because I'm much more now interested in y'all scenario. Oh, is this Bobby's question? <laughs> this is Bobby's question. Okay, but dang it. All right, we're Bobby's off question. That. All right. So like, let's just say you like said yes to either side quick, and I was like, whoa, that that's a that's a pivotal moment in the show. If she if there's if there's a new girl at work and she says is she hot, you have to answer honestly, because eventually she'll look her up, and if she finds out that she is hot and you're lying, she'll never trust your, you again. It's a short term PR hit for long term peace of mind. Mm. Uh, 214 say no, but she's an awesome kisser. Uh, Peyton, what's your answer? 
Um, I just go with the basic, oh yeah, she's all right. You know, then I change the subject immediately. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Sean, yeah, because if you want to start throwing people under the bus. I wasn't going to throw anybody under the bus. Yeah. I, I wasn't going to do and that. And what would you say? What do you say? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I just would answer honestly. I'd be like, yeah, she's cute. Or like, whatever. Let's to see, me, cute. You don't say hot. Never say hot. She doesn't have any hot friends. That's why. Okay. I hope none of them are listening. <laughs> I'm just uh, kidding. No, but the, no like if, a if, I, if I was worried about it, if I and I'm not, but if I was worried about it, to me, the safe answer, if you're trying to avoid grief, if that's what you're trying to do, you go, yeah, promise you're not going to tell him. No, she, I, I don't think she's good looking at all. Just, But don't tell her. Like, I don't want it to be weird. Between right. It. Like, that's yeah. if you're trying to avoid grief, which is like, just have the open yeah. honesty. It should be fine. And but, you have to have an insult right after the compliment. Like, she's good looking, but God, she's annoying. Can you like, yeah, she, she's really attractive. But can you imagine being married to that? <laughs> that's, that's what that's what I do. The closest I, I come to getting killed is whenever the the hall pass discussion like jokingly comes up and then whenever she'll say like Hugh Jackman or something like that then I'll just say one of her friends and then that gets me in trouble <laughs> the most trouble I ever got in I was sitting there looking at a picture and I honestly was like trying to sit there and zoom in on like the background or something I was like squinting mm. and I'm like zooming in and she's like what are you zooming in at like, what are you zooming in? I'm like, I'm not looking at like the left boob. I'm not like trying to look at like one boob here, like one thigh, but be careful the zoom. Once the fingers go oh, go out, the alarms yeah. go off. If Once the fingers go out for the zoom. If you were to choose a boob, would it be left or right? That seems like a question for you. I have no, I don't, I don't disparage. When I don't it comes discriminate right. against boobs. I do not discriminate whatsoever. I feel like I go to the left more. Oh. Wow. Now is it? You know what? Go to the next, <laughs> next question. And we're doing Ask Reddit here on 105 through the fan. Eight, Sounds seven, like you should be talking about the left or the right peck. 877 What we got to do? <laughs> 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 RJ Choppy. Yes, sir. <laughs> this one is uh, which conspiracy theory? Like if Sam Hartman was at the bar. Oh, not, I, mean, it, it would, I would be the one that makes you, the decision. That's no. what I'll say. Would you yes. go up to Sam or her? Yeah, oh, I would go up to Sam. <laughs> no, no. He's out on Sam Hartman. You were out the day that he saw Sam Hartman wearing a man's ear. Oh, that's true. A bro. And he was he was wearing one of those GPS trackers. And he was like, I'm out on him. He, he, yeah, he was done with that's him. Fair. That's Had fair. Had to find a new quarterback. RJ Choppy, which conspiracy theory do you believe, and why is it that Kate Middleton is no longer with us? Oh, oh yeah, she is, she is no longer with us. I asked Ryan to actually get the photo. They just put it up on like Good Morning America or one yeah, of those. Yeah, okay, shows. so it's hard to tell there, but Kate Middleton, this is very, like, this is not conspiracy at this point. This is a doctored photo yeah. that the AP instructed their news outlets to take it down and not use it anymore as an official, like, photo. Because it's hard to see there, but in the corner where he, she's got her arm wrapped around her daughter, there's like clearly the sleeve is blurred and has been the photo's been edited. And so AP was like, okay, we can't trust the veracity of this photo. We've got to take it down. But which conspiracy hey, well, theory? Let's talk about I want to talk about this. That I don't know what's going on. Uh she had abdominal surgery a couple of months ago. She's been basically not seen. There was that grainy photo of her in the car. I have not seen an update if she's actually been around i have not seen any photos well of, she issued a statement oh she did yeah, or, it had to come from her over this photo or, or, or her team right? right i i yeah it would not surprise me if something was gone like something's gone on there like they, all the royals are like persona non grata right now none of them are going anywhere near the it's like a jamie fox situation it really it really is and and, and she's sitting there there it is ryan went and got it with the zoom Look in on you. the fan cam and twitch so what is she saying about this? She's apologizing. How do you think you can ever get away in today? I don't know how to do Photoshop. Bobby either. is like an expert. How you? I would never dare to even try it because if you think you could get away with it, oh, you're gonna get found. This, this is so. This is bad now because she, they, they they cannot release a single photo that anybody's gonna believe now. Now there's going to be nothing but conspiracy. Her statement yesterday was, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone celebrating had a very happy Mother's Day. Uh, I, so here's the thing, though, is that with the no, the news that, hey, this has been taken, there was also a fault that said there will be no replacement photo. So they're not going to send out a different photo. Like, they're just done. No more photos. They're not playing around with it. It's very suspicious. It's it's well, sus, now as you the know it's say. a loud, loud thing. People are concerned and wondering about your whereabouts, and you're not coming out with a photo or a public appearance to prove it. Something is up. Yeah, something. Megan Markle's yeah. getting her Meghan revenge Markle's on that whole thing. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, to answer your question, um, I I saw this Netflix doc about a year ago, um, and it was basically about like all these ancient civilizations that existed, uh, which most people don't believe happened were like more than like five to ten thousand years ago. These are more like twenty to thirty thousand years ago, and there was like a a cataclysmic event that wiped them out and basically left us with nothing but literally stone age people. Yeah. And like that's like the pyramids and everything, right? Yeah. The Great Pyramid. I've been looking Giza. up how uh, I've been looking up a lot of dinosaur research. Yeah. So like the pyramids because of my son. <laughs> in order for them to build that with with the tools that we thought they built it with would have been impossible. It would have taken hundreds of years. They're yeah. all to true north. They all if you if you multiply the 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 circumference, not circumference, whatever the square of the pyramid is, it comes out to the exact distance of the globe around. Like, there's no way they could have done that at, at 3000 BC. It would have been done at like 20,000 BC with a more advanced society. Same people built it. Same, same, same people, like the same, basically the, the ancestors of the people that we think built it. But yeah, yeah I, I think that. We are way older than what we think we are. My conspiracy belief is that the stock market is rigged. Um, you <laughs> is that from personal experience? It is from personal experience. I've done way too much research and reading, uh, and everyone said, oh, you just go ahead and you bet on companies and you do your research, and if they do good, it's supposed to go up. If they do bad, it's supposed to go down. Well, it's just crazy how every earnings period, basically for a ton of companies, when I sit there and look at the earnings announcements – after the market closes and you can trade afterwards, they're, they're down like 13%. Like there's an immediate attack of borrowed shares on many of these companies who are doing well. And go watch John Stewart's rant and his piece on market makers and Citadel and Ken Griffin and all that stuff. And it is just, it is a, I mean, look, I don't like to mix up the political stuff, but Nancy Pelosi's portfolio I mean, holy crap. Oh, yeah. How does she know everything that freaking hits? Like, there's a Nancy Pelosi tracker. I wish I was even more educated on stocks as I would just tell Trajan Wealth, put everything, follow Nancy. That's it. <laughs> Seriously. Whatever Nancy bets on, buys the calls, buys the puts, do it. Because these people get the inside information. There's like 15 other Bernie yep. Madoffs. I'm oh, convinced yeah. of. Go watch the the GameStop movie. I was gonna say, did you did you watch Dumb I Money? Did. Dumb I Money did. was really good. The Big Short. That's another one that we see. It's like, oh, this is all the, the, this is all set up to to go the way what? It's um, all set up. Twitch. Uh, one of our loyal Twitch users, uh, Steve from Tyler, says uh, AI Kate Middleton three six zero says Michael Jackson is alive. That's their conspiracy theory. Here's mine that I buy into. Uh, and this is from. 25 oh we're going close to 30 years now i i don't think that twa flight 800 just exploded i think that that thing got shot down you remember that was that airliner? the one in uh, that was the one that exploded and split into two and there were a bunch of eyewitnesses that said yeah i saw a uh a, a that was right after 9 11 right no this is like 96 something like that and so that was one where a bunch of eyewitnesses said they saw something streaking up to the plane and hitting it and then the FBI came in and was like, no, you didn't. What you saw was the plane split, and you just thought you saw that, but you didn't. Right. Your mind got it all mixed up and crazy, and that that was always very suspicious. Uh, Peyton, you got a conspiracy theory you buy into? Yeah, mine's the uh, the Denver airport one. You know, the oh. aerial view, all that. I've watched some videos There's and how, like, the stuff. fences, yeah. at least they used to be the barbed wire at the top. It faces inward I don't know what outward. this is. What, do you what is it? Like, if you look at the aerial view, it's like a, it's a Nazi sign. Like the, the yeah, airport, the way the runways the are situated yeah. and of the Denver like, airport. There, yeah, there, there's there's like a lot of weird satanic. murals on there of like kids wearing gas masks, and there's like the the barbed wire fence points in instead of out, like, like it's keeping to keep, people yeah. in the airport instead and of who's out. And who built? There's this? a bunch of people. Who, well, that's the thing. There was already an airport out there, so a bunch of people think like, what was the point of building a, a, an airport? There's a bunch of unused storage containers underneath the airport and stuff, and so a bunch of people think. This is where it's going to go down. This is where they're going to house us when they want to trap us. It's going to be in Denver. By the way, Slater texted me, you have to watch the octopus murders. Best journalism and storytelling I've watched in a long time. Dude, everybody is all over that right now. Uh, and then uh, another answer on the Twitch. Uh, we had Swaggy Booty said uh, moon landing happened, but was still faked. So I guess he thinks it happened, but the video and everything else that we saw was still fake. By the way, we have news coming in. Thanks to Texas William. Uh, Diana Rossini. Aaron Jones to the Minnesota Vikings. Ah. So, what are you doing, Minnesota? 
Kirk Cousins gone. They bring in Sam Darnold, and they keep Aaron Jones in the NFC North. And RJ Choppa, you wanted that for the Cowboys. I'd go, I'd, 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 I'd splurge on him. How much? How much is splurge? Eight. Eight. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd have gone for eight for Aaron Jones. I like. I think Aaron's a really good player. Yeah, I did too. I I, I would have spent. Oh uh, well, Aaron we Jones. saw it. We saw him yeah. freaking humiliate and destroy us. Yeah, his whole career, he averages like 150 scrimmage yards and two touchdowns a game. Uh, all right, Peyton Russell. What is normal now, but won't be normal in 25 years? Well, it's the five day work week and the nine to fives. I think nine to fives are going away really, really quick. Look at my sheet that I wrote. You're really down. good answering these. You're so quick with this and just terrible with audio. He reads the email. He reads it. And <laughs> oh, he, he preps for it when I send the questions. Okay. Whoa. They, uh, don't, don't try. Sorry. And, come on, Bobby. Sorry, you use chat do? GPT. That's, That's the right. only way they know exactly. who you are. Don't give me credit for being prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I want an off the cuff brilliance. Oh uh, yeah, it, for me it was it was the five day work week as well. Like we're not that that's going to be gone. And, uh, coincidentally, in twenty five years we'll be retired, and it won't benefit us at all. Right, and we'll probably have to pay for it <laughs> on the back end. But whatever, you know, I think that's what it is. Gas cars. I, I think like this whole EV push. I think twenty five years from now people are going to be like, you used gas for your car. I mean, I'm. I, I, and I always will. I look. I'm. I, I'm gonna hold on as long as I can as well. <laughs> RJ. But, RJ's storing up. He's like getting like COVID. Everyone had like the disinfected. Yeah. You're, you're loading yeah. up gas cans. You yeah. think I'm gonna mow one, my lawn with an electric lawnmower? <laughs> it'd be one, I, one huge fire in Roanoke that takes out the chopping. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, one match, one cigar <laughs> blows up the whole garage. The 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 electric vehicle that like you hear about some of these things where it's like yeah you got to stop and charge it every two hours like like on some of these the batteries are really bad. And so I don't know how quickly that, but it feels like they're trying to just go like, nope, this is the direction we're heading. So I think 25 years from now, people are going to be like, you just put gas in your cars. That's weird. Does he agree with Chop that the Cowboys could be day one winners, the most surprising, best and worst moves of free agency so far? And how worried should Dak Prescott be about the extortion lawsuit? Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com, joins us next. But let's get your call.
Fan Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. 8 o'clock hour here on DFW Sports Station. We are your home of America's sleeping team. Of course, <laughs> we all knew that this would happen. Literally the only organization, the only one in the NFL who did not make a free agent transaction or any transaction yesterday and said we have an extortion case to talk about. And I first saw this from Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com, who joins us on the DNM Leasing Hotline. Of course, the book is out. Father of mine, only three ninety nine for the ebook option. Mike, good morning. How crazy was yesterday for you? Well, it was very crazy. It's one of our most uh, jam-packed days of the year. I think we had 130. 37 total posts at profootballtalk.com over the course of the full 24 hour period. You know, it's the, and it drives people crazy. Some people in the media, when you call it the legal tampering period, because it's not really tampering if it's permitted and it's the negotiating window. Look, tampering is rampant in the NFL. And when these deals get done 15 minutes after the green flag gets waved, it tells you that there were communications, extensive communications and negotiations before noon Eastern, 11 Central yesterday. So a lot of stuff happened. But but of all the stories, of all the moves, of all the releases, transactions, and trades, our most traffic story of the entire day, even though we didn't post it until about 7 o'clock Eastern yesterday, was this Dak Prescott extortion case. That was number one of free agency? Number one. Number one on wow. the first day of free agency was the Prescott case. Mike, uh, kind of reset the story for us, if you could, please. Well, and I got the email yesterday from Levi McCathern's office. You've heard his name in connection to clients like Michael Irvin and Jerry Jones in some ongoing litigation, specifically involving Jones. And the, the allegation generally is that there was an extortion plot against Dak Prescott. Now, when you read the lawsuit and the attachment to it, it started as what is very common in the legal profession. Before you sue someone, before you bring that case, it is customary but not universal to reach out to the person with what they call a demand letter. It's all in writing. Here it is. Here are the claims I'm going to make. Here is what we want in order to not go forward. If I recall correctly, and I think I do, the Deshaun Watson situation from three years ago started the same way with a demand letter, and there were negotiations that went nowhere, and then a lawsuit gets filed, and the rest is history. So in this case, Dak Prescott received a letter dated January 16, accusing him of a sexual assault in February of 2017, laying out some of the basic facts, and then ultimately saying that, barring a settlement, she'll go to the cops and file suit, and they want $100 million. Now, when I saw $100 million, I thought, this is above and beyond what anyone would ever reasonably expect. Mm. To, as, even though it's negotiable, that is a ridiculously high opener. And maybe that set off some red flags and maybe caused uh, a greater degree of zeal and effort to try to be able to prove that this was all fabricated. But that's the argument. The tables have been turned. They've taken this demand letter and they've filed an actual lawsuit against the accuser and her lawyers saying it's fabricated, it's phony, it's false, and it's an effort to extort him with this threat that they're going to make him look bad and make this allegation public and paint him in a way that the facts don't justify. Does the fact that this allegation happened in 2017 mean anything? Like, oh, why did it take so long for it to come out right now? Or a judge would not care about that? Well, there have been various statutes that have come out in the aftermath of the Me Too movement, very useful and helpful and positive ways to preserve the ability of individuals to file lawsuits years after the fact. The typical reaction, and your instincts are right, because for most cases, and I haven't researched the laws in Texas on this point, which is a fancy way of saying I don't know, <laughs> but the statute of limitations, and there may be other wrinkles that have been introduced that make it easier for people who need time to come to terms with what's happened. You know, two years, which is the standard personal injury statute of limitations, that might not be enough for somebody who's been the victim of sexual assault to process everything that they've gone through, to muster the courage necessary to step into the arena and go against his or her accuser. So 
I don't know whether or not the statute of limitations was squandered here and missed here by not bringing this up sooner. That would be a pretty potent defense to any claim that gets made. And it will also show if the lawyers are in a position in Texas to know that this thing is not going to fly because it was being pursued too late, that makes it feel even more meritless and more like an effort to just shake Dak Prescott down as he alleges for a big payday in order of having this lawsuit get filed. Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com, join us here, 105 to the fan. How do these generally end? Do they end in a, like, is it a settlement? Do they end more on the, usually on the side of the complainant? I mean, how does this usually end? Well, it's all driven by the facts and the law. And look, most cases get settled. I doubt there's going to be a trial in open court with Dak Prescott going against these individuals and proving his case. But based upon his first move, and it is rare, I've seen, like with Dalvin Cook, he was sued for a domestic violence situation, and he ultimately sued the accuser and her lawyer for similar types of claims, saying it was all made up, it was all fabricated, it was all falsified. And, hey, when the NFL beefed up the personal conduct policy after the Ray Rice situation in 2014, it created a potential incentive and temptation for people to make these kinds of claims, to try to get someone to write a check and settle cases before it gets to this point. Because once this gets out there and the NFL starts poking around, you can have careers derailed. So, I, and I've heard stories about, you know, guys just kind of, you know, writing a check to make something go away, even if they thought it was fake, they just didn't want the headache. But in this case, yeah, it depends on how determined and motivated Dak Prescott is. Chances are it gets resolved at some point once he decides he's, he's, you know, he's made his point, he's proved it, he's had enough, and he's moving on. But based upon this kind of aggressive, unprecedented, out of the gates, I'm suing you before you can even sue me, that speaks to a level of determination that isn't going to go away anytime soon, and maybe he will see this through all the way to the end. Mike, when when it's sent around to you know you know from Levi McCatherine's office and it talks about an extortion plot, what is what would be the the legal I guess definition between just like the notification and the listing of the terms and extortion? Like, is this legally extortion? Well, extortion gets used recklessly all the time. When the Broncos went to Russell Wilson and said, "We're going to bench you." if you don't adjust your contract language regarding the vesting of guarantees, people were calling it extortion. Well, that, no, that's not extortion. I mean, in the classic sense, extortion, blackmail, it's going to somebody saying, hey, look, if you don't give me this money, I'm going to do this thing. And, and I'm otherwise not going to do this thing unless you give me money. But I will do it if you don't give me the money. That, that is blackmail. That is extortion. But in the legal setting, it is a permissible way to attempt to resolve claims. And there's value, there's settlement value in having these conversations before you file the lawsuit. And I'd say plenty of people who are in a high profile would have preferred to have a chance to resolve the case before it ever gets filed because there is value in having it never come to light. And that's, there's a line there somewhere between legitimate pre-litigation demands made on behalf of a client and extortion. And it all comes down to whether or not there are any facts to back this up. That's why it's important for any lawyer. And I've practiced law for a long time. You have somebody come into your office and they tell you a story. You don't just accept that at face value. You don't just say, well, you know what? If you're willing to testify under oath that it happened, that's good enough for me. You need to be sure. You need to do a reasonable investigation. You need to see what the evidence is to back up the claim before you just run forward with an effort to squeeze a little money out of somebody. I mean, that, that's what the argument would be here. They asked for $100 million, just they were hoping for anything from Dak Prescott. Mm. And whether or not it actually happened became either overlooked or immaterial to the effort to try to try to get him to write a check. Mike Florio, ProFootballTalk.com, talking about the Dak Prescott sexual assault story here on Sean and RJ. NFL, get involved with this? At this point, probably not. However, she'll have the right to make a counterclaim. I mean, this is the ultimate calling of your bluff because when anyone files a lawsuit, the person who's sued as part of their response can make a claim back against the person who has sued them. 
And there are mandatory counterclaims and permissive counterclaims. And in this case, I don't know that she would have to do it, but she can do it. The table's set. And if she makes that claim, if she reduces it to writing, if her lawyers put their name on it, that may be the kind of thing that requires the NFL to commence an investigation into it. And, you know, based upon the fact that Dak Prescott went out there and filed the suit exposing all this on his own, that would tell me he's comfortable with it. Go ahead. Let's investigate it. I'll cooperate with you fully. I don't know who this person is. This never happened. This is fabricated. Then I'm just paraphrasing what he would be saying logically based upon this initial tactic he's, he's deployed. He would probably welcome the NFL looking into it because he's insisting to anyone who will listen that he didn't do this. Mike, last thing on this. Did any part of Dax Counter talk about having like a consensual relationship or contact with this person or you're taking it as he doesn't even know who she is i i have to go back and look at it more carefully again i took the reaction as this is all completely entirely made up but it's a great question and i'll circle back around to it and take a closer look at the factual allegations because obviously yesterday was not the day yeah. <laughs> to deviate for an hour or two from the flow of the news yeah. and get into all the nooks and crannies of it but the, the lawsuit itself is only 11 pages long. There aren't a lot of facts in it. They attached the letter that was sent. I'll take another look at it, and uh, that's a good follow-up. And, hell, I mean, given the fact that it's Dak Prescott, it's the Cowboys, and, you know, the nature of the, the situation and the kind of unprecedented tactic he's taken, it, it makes it something that, that merits a closer look. The money is coming in for Aaron Jones in Minnesota, one year Seven million dollars, Mike. What was what were your biggest day one takeaways of free agency? Well, obviously the fact Kirk Cousins left the Vikings for the Falcons. By the way, congrats! You 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 were on that one, uh, well ahead of everyone else. Congrats. Well, and and look, and here's the thing. I mean, and I appreciate it. People are like, oh, hey, oh, the Kirk goes to the Falcons, so that proves you were right. Well, I was right either way because he was looking into schools and homes. In Atlanta, that's what we reported. And that was verified. I wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have written it. I wouldn't have talked about it. I wouldn't have breathed a word of it if I wasn't sure that was happening. If he had stayed in Minnesota, it was still true. And as of yesterday, it's like, you know, is this just kind of a ruse to get the Vikings to cough it up or is something really going on here? And one, one of the things about this that is still kind of confusing to me, how does he pass a physical at this point? What, what do the Falcons know about that Achilles tendon? And how much were they even able to find out before they offered him that money. And how much of this becomes kind of blatant tampering to get that information before you make that offer? But that was the big one, obviously. Running backs getting paid, a lot of running backs moving from team to team. The Cowboys obviously lose Tony Pollard, Derrick Henry still floating around out there. And I heard you at the beginning say the Cowboys are the only team that didn't make any moves. Look, remember, and we've learned this every year, it's fool's gold from the team's perspective it's always better to wait and let the market soften and then go bargain shopping. If you sign somebody that first day, you're almost always overpaying dollar for dollar for what you could get down the road once the big money flows, once the budgets are exhausted. So this could help the Cowboys. And it's not like they're in a position to go out and freely spend. That Dak Prescott cap number as of tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central is going to be $59.4 million unless they do something about it. Mike, how surprised are you that this DAC deal is not done yet? And what is it telling you of anything? Well, it, you know, look, they, they, they put themselves in this mess when they didn't give him a new contract after his third season, when they franchise tagged him after his fourth season, after his fifth season, one year under the tag, they realized we're in a pickle here. And to get out of it, they put themselves in an even worse situation now where He's entering the last year of his contract. They can't franchise tag him next year. He'll walk away into free agency if they don't extend it. They need to drop that $59.4 million. They've still got like another $35 million, I think. I think it's $90 million total over the next two years. They can play some games this year and do a restructuring and knock it from 59 down to 40, but that just makes it higher next year. It makes it like 53. I think the total number is like $95 million over the next two years in cap charges they will take for Dak Prescott. One way out of that, is to do the extension. So he's got a ton of leverage. He had a great year. He can basically name his price. What the Cowboys have to ask is, are we going to give in and give him $60 million a year, or are we just going to say, we'll do this one more year, we'll deal with the cap consequence, and then they step into the shoes of the Vikings next year. 
where the quarterback has the ability to go wherever he wants to go because, again, there is nothing they can do to block his path to the market in 2025. The mob novel, the ebook, is Father of Mine. Mike Florio is offering it up for all the Tolos. Go ahead and take advantage. Profootballtalk.com with all of your nonstop NFL coverage. I cannot believe the number one story is Dak Prescott's lawsuit. America's team, baby. Mike, thank you so much. See you guys. Mike Florio, DNM Leasing Hotline. What happens when you trash talk Luka Doncic behind the scenes? And everyone says good riddance to this all-time website next on Sean and RJ. But good riddance to all.
Injury lawyers Frankel and Frankel. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Frankel and Frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks and DFW. If you or a loved one have been in an accident, contact the Frankels for free at 214-817-333-3333 or go to truckwreck.com. Green, baseline drive, kick out, Luca, wide open three, let close out by Kobe White, Drano for Luca. Follow up with the call on Bally, seventh straight triple-double, but the historic run ends for Luka Doncic with the 30-point triple-doubles. He only had 27 last night, but that's because the Dallas Mavericks destroyed the Chicago Bulls. A nice, easy win. This was basically over after the first quarter. Daniel Gafford makes his NBA history with 28 consecutive field goals made. The Mavericks are eighth in the West, basically tied with the Sacramento Kings, and now a tough three-game stretch starting with the Golden State Warriors Tomorrow night at the AAC. By the way, the Stars back in action tonight at the AAC against the Panthers. Yeah, it's a it's a good little five game uh, homestand that, that stretches till the end of next week. Uh, chance they got a you know couple, last three games of the homestand. You know, you start with Arizona and then and that is the Madonna statue night, uh, I believe, over the weekend. Did he text but, you back yesterday? No, he did not. Oh. He did not. He did not. Hopefully they mess up his statue like Kobe's. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Mike, but Carolina's a damn good team. Carolina's a very good team. Uh, f- uh, the Florida. Florida. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Carolina. Uh, Carolina is a good team, too. No, they're not. But, uh, you know, Florida Really is, false statement. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, they were. This, Carolina was a dominant team last year. Florida, obviously, went to the Cup. So went to the Major box. props to the get right. They had on Michael Finley the other night, and this story went viral. Throughout the NBA and sports world, this was Michael Finley uh, has a job. I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, is it a Dirk type role, advisor? Yeah, it's an advisor, assistant, role. To assistant the traveling assist, secretary, assistant GM. And this was well, this well was well uh, this was Sunday, I believe. This was Sunday afternoon uh, with Alec, uh, Blake, and Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me give my props to Alec. Alec, yeah, my yeah. bad. Uh, very famous. Yeah, ChatGPT even knows Alec very, very well. And uh, we'll have to play that tomorrow. He's so mad back there before, all day. He's been so mad. Before Peyton fine. <laughs> goes on vacation. You go in there to needle him nonstop. Yeah. And then you're like, look how he reacts. Look how he reacts. You spend every oh. commercial break in there whispering in his ear. I, I will let the break show you the text I woke up to this morning before I did anything. Where he's yeah, talking. Yeah, I will. We know how to edit G- chat G- GPT, Bobby. Yeah, Kate Middleton. <laughs> Bobby Middleton over here. Uh, I'll say, so I'm sorry. Uh, take away the credit from the Get Right and Reggie. Uh, give it to Alec on Sunday. Michael Finley talking about Luca and Grant Williams at practice. Yeah, I remember just to share a quick story with you guys. Uh, so one day in practice, a player, a teammate, I won't, I won't call his name out, <laughs> but it was Grant Williams. Uh, <laughs> he decided he wanted to uh, get under Luca's skin. You know, you know, uh, he felt that Luca didn't come to practice, come to come that day ready to practice. So, to make a long story short, he's they they had a scrimmage going. He's talking trash to Luca up and down the court. So finally, Luca says, "Okay," and I tell you, Luca went on a twenty-six to six run by himself. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I, and, and look, you can ask anybody. I'm not exaggerating. It was like a twenty-six to six run by himself. <laughs> he showed everything: the threes, the post up, the floaters, everything. By himself. Was Luca talking? No. <laughs> but everybody the on bear. the sideline, including the coach, was like, do not poke the bear. That's what everybody kept saying. Do not poke the bear. And we had guests in the gym at the time, and they're on the sideline, <laughs> ooing and ah. It was unbelievable. I was over there. I mean, the kid couldn't miss. And I'm not talking easy shot. He was showing the whole repertoire in this five, six minutes span was like a twenty six to six run Ooh. by himself. Boy, All he right. uh okay. that, that that sounds like one of those stories we get of like and we get these occasionally and I really hate like bringing up the name. But it is like Michael. There is a lot of the Michael energy to Luca of just like, all right, F you. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm going off. Like this is this is he is a and I took that personal type of player. Well man, Michael Finley kinda you can yeah. hear some of the uh Grant Williams disdain in that. I don't I don't I like that Grant Williams actually did that. So wait, let me get if I'm hearing this right, Grant 
was upset that Luca didn't come to practice. He like, wasn't. He, he wasn't, wasn't prepared. prepared. Didn't show up. The hell, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. No. If Luca, if no, Luca tapped him in. Yeah. yeah. If Luca was dogging it, I've got no problem with it. Just because you're the star of the team doesn't mean that nobody could step to you. Now, unless that's Luca showing you don't think I'm prepared. I I came to you know if it's a, if it's one of those things where Luca's showing like no, I'll show you how locked in I am right now. I you're, you're just misinterpreting this. It could be that too. Speaking of locked in, Wyatt Langford is just that in Arizona. He continues the torrid spring. RBI double, four runs scored, two for three outing. The number six prospect in Major League Baseball raises the Cactus League OPS to 1,300 over 36 plate appearances. Oh, he is raking. Ready. He's ready. I understand it's spring training and it's minor leagues, but if you were to take his minor league performance and his spring training performance, and you extrapolate that out to a 162 game average. This is a 45 home run hitter. That's a Holy slow mo nod in there. I wonder how many cards he's he's Bring buying up. Him up. And if you finally well, bringing him up, his spring Mikey, training Mikey. means nothing. Now listen, spring training does mean nothing <laughs> he's because in here. they're, they're <laughs> not pitching to scouting reports and everything, but that's fine. He's still hitting the ball. So, Mike, how do we balance that seriously? <laughs> spring training means nothing. Guys are working on this and that, but he's tearing it up. Like, let's bring him up based on how, how do we balance it? I think it's a great question. The great thing was yesterday the Angels broadcast the game. So I did watch the game. I went back and watched the game. So – I watched Wyatt Langford, Evan Carter, and Justin Foskew's at bats. Those were the guys I wanted to concentrate on in the lineup. I'll put, I'll take out my mints right now so I don't sound like I'm <laughs> just drop them on the table. Slop. Thank you, Gross. but Jesse um, Holly. <laughs> but Langford in his double that he hit, I, they might have called it a triple. I th the ball went home, so they might have called it a yeah. double and Fielder's choice is. It was a nasty breaking ball from a right-hander with two strikes. And he, you know, like working with my son, to stay on balance on a breaking ball that you're a little bit fooled on, your butt has to drop. Once you glide to your front side, you're in big trouble most likely. That's what I want as a pitcher. I now have you off balance. You're probably going to either swing and miss or chop the ball into the ground. He, like Adrian Beltre, dropped – and then smoke this slider down and away and in the quadrant where it would have been strike three. If he takes it, it's strike three. But to hit, to pull that ball the yeah. way he did with the power that he did, and even the Angels, I don't know if it's Mark Gubaza, I'm sorry, I don't know who the Angels broadcaster was that was analyzing this. He's like, how is he built like this? At 21 years old, like, how is he this Dude. strong looking? He's he's a mini version of Mike Trout. I'm not kidding being next to him. Trout's shoulders are bigger. Trout's shoulders, you'll know this, Bobby. They're as big as Leighton Van Der Esch. Mm -hmm. or, like, he's, Trout is a beast when it comes to... And this kid is close to Mike Trout physical stature, especially his lower half. And he smoked that ball. And the one where he got out yesterday... He's, I don't know, they don't have miles an hour on on hit in, in spring training. He hit it 100 miles an hour right at the third baseman. It was just right at the third baseman. So, real quick, the they're not pitching to a scouting report. Heck, nobody really knows how to pitch Wyatt Langford yet. You're going to go off a lot of basic type of things, you know. Beat him inside, make him chase down and away but type of stuff. But him doing that with that pitch shows. I was like, like whoa, he's, yeah. he's going to bat third. On opening day, yeah. I'm assuming this. Seager's not going to be ready. So it's going to be Simeon batting first, Carter batting second, and Lankford batting third. How, how many uh, How many Evan Carter cards do you have, rookie cards? At this point, probably 30, but I'm buying some pretty premium ones. He hit yesterday. The thing that I watched on him is he led off against a lefty. Got to one and two, drew a three-two walk. Then the next time against the lefty, got a base hit. Very Wade Boggs, Tony Gwynn, and I don't mind this. If he's struggling a little bit against lefties, maybe no power. He just sprayed the ball the other way, and he can run too. So it's yeah, kind of like, let me just get on base. Let me. He but, got thrown out trying to steal second. But would you trade if I, if I offered you up your thirty Evan Carter rookie cards for thirty Wyatt Langford rookie cards? Would you take the deal? Great question. I would, and here's why. I think Lankford has the ability to win multiple MVPs in this league. I, I, I think that, so it's very tough to win an MVP if you're Evan Carter. I think like his peak performance, his prime would be a maximum of 30 home runs. And I think that he can do that. Mm -hmm. 30 home runs, 300 batting average, 400 on base, 900 OPS. 
I do think Wyatt Langford, this is putting a lot on the kid. He's only 21. I do think three to five years from now, he can be a guy who maybe hits 45 home runs, bats 285 with a one OPS. Yeah, the guys who win the MVP that don't have major pop, they win the batting title that year, yeah. right? Like it's Joe Maurer, uh, they win the batting title, and he's a catcher. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know. I know this backfired on Jared Sandler with Rugnet Odor. I do think the Rangers have two guys who and are Ben Rogers who could make the Hall of Fame. Oh, that's for any prospect. I do think Evan that's Carter and Wyatt Lankford have. This is this is really high because even Juan Gonzalez winning two MVPs didn't make the Hall of Fame. I think Wyatt Langford and Evan Carter have Hall of Fame-like ability. Meanwhile, you told me to check in on my Yankee friends, the Meatballs, mm. because of the Garrett Cole. Yeah, Garrett Cole had an MRI yesterday. They said it's precautionary. Yeah. That's just their way of trying to keep Scott Boris's claws at bay. Because uh, I, 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 you have an MRI on your elbow, and they said that the issue is, is that he's having trouble going from 45 to 55 pitches, like recovering. And he goes, just... He's he's in pain the next day the way he would be after a 100-pitch outing, which is not where you should be trying to get to 55. He's got too much whatever, too much soreness. Well, I was expecting you to say that was good news for us, but you think it could be bad news. Well, it could be because it means that, you know, they will – if he is long-term, they're probably going to have to go after Snell or Montgomery. And they're going to pay dollar for dollar on luxury tax. So they sign uh, – let's say they sign Jordan Montgomery to $30 million. They got to pay. It's going to cost them sixty million when it factors in luxury tax. So that's one of the reasons they they have been kind of staying away. But this could be. He said se season over. Judges hurt too. There's guys that have won championships last year in fantasy baseball. I'm not saying I did, but I did. <laughs> uh, based off of Garrett Cole having a great year. Uh, so Sunday is the day we have to lock in our keepers for the year. Mm. And so I'd really like to know by Saturday if Garrett Cole's pitching this year or not because he's obviously a keeper in a fantasy baseball league. Thank you, Mikey. And let me say this. Speaking of the Rangers, my boy Jared Sandler today with his TV debut. Woo! KTXA. I think that's Channel 21. 3 o'clock our time. Show some support for the Sandman. He'll be on Bally Thursday and Saturday. And Mike Bask will be there soon. Yeah, tomorrow after the show, going back to Arizona. You are? Yeah. Wow. And on TV, are you doing this? Yeah, Thursday and Saturday, I'll be with Sandler on wow. Bally's. Thursday is a night game, uh, and then Saturday is a day game. So flying right. back out there tomorrow. That's awesome. Thank you, Mikey Bassick, the baseball authority in DFW. Why, yesterday was even more miserable for Bobby with the Cowboys doing nothing. Next, and below the belt right here on The Fan. Let's get you over to Q.
And segment here brought to you by Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More new Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, and enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. The great Bobby Belt. You ruined the morning show. Don't make me take off my belt. Don't make me no, take no, off my belt. We're not. The franchise tag is ruining free agency like I ruined the morning show. <laughs> but it's not going anywhere, just like me. More on that in just a second. The franchise tag is. Which goes first, the franchise tag or me? The fran- uh, you. Uh, you uh, <laughs> franchise tag is here to stay. You. Well, Peyton gets his way. The way he's screaming expletives at me during the break. Well, you're out here, but she, Choppy just heard it. He was getting sassy with Man. Choppy. Choppy was trying to figure out how much time he had for the bathroom. He's like, time, and then Peyton goes eight thirty nine, <laughs> and he goes, he goes, oh, 90 seconds. Yeah, he's uh, he's getting sassy. He he is. Um, you think the chat GPT really got to him? No, I think. Oh, it a hundred percent, Bobby. Did. It's just Bobby. Every break, Sean, you say he's in here. He's just, I mean, if every segment during the break he just kept poking, you, poking you, you you would fight him. You'd kill him. He, he, yeah, uh, you need to put a coat on the door. <laughs> He I'll finally gets a little bit of sex. And <laughs> not a little. All of a sudden, why would he be angry, backed up? No, now he's got he's got like he's he's become a man. Like he, now he's starting to step to people. Oh, Which, yeah, he he did uh, he did make sure to tell me during the break. He's like, by the way, Bobby, you ruined that Friday too. So you I did ruined that. you you, yeah. you did unintentionally. That was on that wasn't on purpose though. I wasn't trying to wreck something there. I didn't know we were on a loudspeaker, <laughs> so that wasn't my wow. fault. Uh, the Cowboys. That's another awkward thing in life, and like. You tell someone when they call you, hey, you're on speaker, just so you know. But then it's like, why are you, why are you having to tell them that they're on speaker? Yeah, Chris, when you Kristen's done that to me before. 100% free-flowing conversation. Yeah. You know, that that's a, that's kind of a catch-22. Kristen's done that to me before. Whenever I say it with Kristen, the car will be like, by the way, Kristen's in the car. Then she'll always be like, oh, what? It? And, I'll, and I was like, covered with like, I'm just telling them to be polite. Like, I, they can't use a bunch of foul language. Like, that's well what done. I'm trying to do. Well and done. So that's what I'm looking out for. Uh, the Cowboys lost... Three significant contributors, I think you can say, whether they were good or not. Like, I mean, they were definitely significant in terms of their playing time and what they what they were asked to do for the team. Uh, Tony Pollard is gone three years, $24 million, $8 million a season. We were surprised and, by that. Yes. I had no clue yeah. that I, I thought his market would settle in somewhere around five or six. Yes. And it's a big number. And why Tennessee? Aren't you starting over? Memphis, home. So what? I, I'm just Give saying, I don't know that. a Hallmark card. Who cares? Wait, you talking about from Tony's perspective no, or from their perspective? theirs. Oh, yeah, I don't get that from their perspective. Good for Tony. Yeah, they look, this, They made nothing but dumb decisions all offseason. They got rid of Rabel because they didn't like the fact that he said nice things about New England uh, in a <laughs> retirement speech. No, that he was and, and that he was uh, too physically intimidating. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Our other <laughs> other teams were scared of that. They were scared. They too were jacked. scared of Rabel. Scared of Rabel in his old Navy tech vest. Yeah. He's what just, is it with being a Titans head coach? That you have to wear a vest. Fisher did that same crap all the time, too. Mm-hmm. Although he was like Patagonia, Gentleman. I think. Yeah, Jeff not Fisher. He, Fisher. Oh, but Tony Jeffrey Pollard, Fisher. I'm fine with that. I would not, I'm not mad at the Cowboys for staying away. Yeah, yeah no, me either. And especially at $8 million. I would have been okay with Pollard back at four. Like that was probably my max. Yeah. Look, anything more than $4 million, I'm uncomfortable. Just like the Cowboys with Zach Moss reportedly. And Zach Moss, two for eight in Cincinnati. They cut Joe Mixon. And the Cowboys were uncomfortable with for a year. Yeah, that was the the report last night from Michael Gelkin uh, from the Dallas Morning News was that they were in on the Zach Moss discussions for the two years, $8 million. But the exact words was, or, or the exact words were ultimately the price extended past their comfort point. When you start talking about comfort, that's, li- that's a little eye roll inducing. And then Michael followed it up with, and I didn't, I didn't get a chance to go through the article yet, but he followed it up with just kind of a summary of where things are at so far. And his tweet said, if the Cowboys' issue the past three years was too many blowout wins in the NFC East, they had a super productive Monday. Everyone else got better. They are worse. Free agency is off to a predictable start. So Michael firing some shots a little bit at the uh, the Cowboys and their approach. Uh, but they do lose Tony Pollard. They also lose the biggest contract of the day that was signed from a former Cowboy is Dorrance Armstrong going to the Washington Commanders along with Tyler Biotish. Dorrance Armstrong... It, it kind of throws people off, I think, when you tell them he was the second leading sack guy last year. And I think he was also in 22 because he had eight and a half in 22. So you're talking about a guy who averaged eight sacks the last two seasons. He gets three years up to $15 million per season. Tyler Biotish goes for three years, $30 million. That's 10 a year. But if you were to tell somebody, hey, you lost three significant contributors 
in terms of playing time. Two of them, guys who have been to the Pro Bowl in the last couple of seasons, the other who has averaged eight sacks for you the last two seasons. That would be considered, I think, a, a pretty significant loss. And the Cowboys right now don't seem to have a great plan in place of what they're going to do at those spots. No, I don't want them to pay those three. I wouldn't want them to do those contracts. But, like, show me a tangible idea of what you're going to do to replace that. For me, anyway, with veteran talent. I don't want to replace all. I, I don't want to get a rookie center in here necessarily. Or if you're going to go rookie and center. Left tackle. Yeah, I need, I need, I will accept one rookie on the offensive line, not two. We're not doing that. Running back. You need a veteran in here to couple with a rookie runner. That, that So whether it's the power guy or the speed guy, you need to get a veteran in here. Could have been Zach Moss. Could be Derrick Henry, maybe if his market comes down. And then on the Dorrance Armstrong front, are you going to retain Dante Fowler? Are you going to go find another veteran pass rusher? You, you've got, I think you need to find a veteran presence to fill that role and somebody who plays run defense. How do you feel about the idea of having too many rookies on the O-line? How many would you be uncomfortable with? Because you did get it right when they when, when they lost Tyron. Bobby and I got it wrong. We thought they were going to miss the playoffs, and they were they were fine in his absence. That one year we were talking um, about. I mean, I guess the question is, I, I, you I find with a left tackle and starting rookie center. I mean, this team generally does target and evaluate offensive linemen very very well. I would say the best in the league um, at the top of the draft, typically. Yeah, but I mean, Travis was not. He was at the bottom of the first round. Oh, first, but, round. but that's first round stuff, right? But I mean, so their their first round pick, I assume, was going to be a lot of offensive lineman. Tyler was at the back of the first round. Zach was mid. Was he 17, 18? 16. So that's middle of the first round, and they got arguably the best player of the draft. Period. You can make that case that he was the best player of the whole draft. Sure, but but I mean. So you, you have one first round pick. Yeah. And so if you're talking about trying to replace two starters right. on the offensive line, especially when it's center where you're you're the quarterback of the offensive line. You're calling out, you know, mm. what defenses are doing, you're making checks. Like that's important. And there's no doubt. Um I would be comfortable with I mean, like, like let's be fair, like they had I had to go back and look. Was Frederick was a twenty thirteen draft, so he was pick thirty one. He was first draft. Right, but he was twenty thirteen, right? Yep. So they had a rookie and a second year guy on the draft in twenty fourteen. That was arguably the best offensive line they've had in twenty years. Yeah, but I mean there is a difference between yeah. two rookies and a guy who has it been is. here. Like Tyler Smith, we saw the jump, how mm -hmm. different he looked year two. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I would probably not want to have more than one on the offensive line if I could help it. I think something that we need to address is this notion. We, we we need we need some truth seeking on whether the Cowboys are cheap, All right? So the idea is okay. You don't spend and what you're keeping that money for yourself. Like we need to we need to do a factor fiction on whether the Cowboys are cheap. They're not spending because they want to reallocate it, allocate it towards their own. The notion that they don't want to spend because Jerry is is a tightwad. What is the reality of that? I would say the biggest reality to me where they're tight in an area and it, it's it's all about and is it tight is it is it tight they because wanna... you're frugal as a person or you're tight because that's your strategy I think Jerry has a disgust and aversion to the idea of paying anybody to not do something yeah so I think he doesn't like cutting people and having those charges just sit on it's like i'm not going to pay you to not do something here and i think that a lot of the times when he's made decisions with coaches it's i'm not firing you paying out your contract and let you sit on the beach while i pay you money that's not happening okay if you're getting paid you're going to do something for me all right and so i think because of that hard line like for instance i think i think that absolutely played into the to the decision with mccarthy I think McCarthy, part of that was he didn't want to pay him to to just do nothing. Okay. I, I think if the contract was expired, McCarthy's not back. I think that's what would have happened. But and now so, apply it to players. So similarly, because I think... Because we need, we, need we need to address the notion that because Jerry and Steven are cheap and don't do anything in free agency, that that gets them another... Um, that gets them more full fuel for their plane. That gets them oh, three, no, three more yeah. days for the driver on the yacht. I, Why else would you be cheap? What are you doing with I, that money? I think the aversion to paying people to not do something for you causes them to make financial moves like restructures and other things that then push them up against the cap and then don't allow them to spend the way they want or, yeah, or the way they that they spend. would. They spend money. They, everybody has to spend to a cap floor. So they spend that money. And but, where are they in relation to that cap floor? 
Capitalists usually uh, they're, they're past it. They're they're usually past it, but it's also because of the way that they've jumbled I know, things. But past it by how much? Are they are they barely clearing it? No, are they in they're the middle. No, are they're they they're the middle or they're third? in the back end because. But it's oftentimes because they've restructured so much, so you get these. Dak is not like like when people hear about Dak's cap figure being sixty million dollars. Like that's not Dak's salary next year. It's that's what right. the cap hit is because they've done all these accounting tricks and now right. they've put themselves up against like. Well, crap! We've borrowed against the future so much that now we've put ourselves in a really bad yeah, position it, financially. Like their their cat, their active cap spending, whatever that means, whatever active cap spending they means. pay the minimum balance on their credit cards every month. That's what they do. Mm. Yeah. So if you look at the active cap spending, they're one, two, three, four, five, six. They're seventh. So their cap number right now is two forty two. That's how much they've. That's their active cap spending. Uh, the only ones ahead of them are Baltimore. Chiefs, so, Chargers, Saints, Browns, Niners. So seventh highest spenders. Yeah, but again, how much of that is actual salaries versus yeah. accounting tricks? That I don't know. Yeah, some of that is not like that. A, a big portion of that is not going to be money they're spending right now. That's just stuff they're being charged for. I right just want to clear up that mm -hmm. when they don't spend, I just want to clear it up for, for, for the masses. It's not because they're cheap, like baseball owners, right, who should have their team taken away from them. It's just their philosophy that this is the way we want to do it. This is the way yeah. we believe to win. It's not being cheap to save money for themselves. Yes. Right? Yes. It's that they don't want to. It's not like they're just taking all that. They're not, you know, Scrooge McDuck diving in the gold okay. coins and spitting them out. That's yeah. that's not what they're doing. But they just, it's it's frustrating because it's of. It's not a selfishness. No, they don't. We're, we're they're not pocketing with, next They're not pocketing. We're, we're, no. dis we're, we're disagreeing with their strategy in principle. Yes. Because yeah. I think I, I, I just want to I just want to put that out there early on in this whole free agency yeah. process. So people aren't like, oh, you greedy, greedy Jones boys. They don't want to spend. They're being they're being cheap. Yeah. Well, they're not really being cheap. No, I mean, most teams don't have three superstars. And and they really have more than that. They've got a superstar guard. They had a superstar left tackle for a decade. Uh, they have a superstar wideout, superstar. superstar quarterback, superstar defensive end. Yeah, and they, they pay digs. And they pay digs. I mean, most teams don't have that. This team has got, like, go look at the offensive lines around the NFL. Like, what team puts more into their offensive line than this one? Like, well, most teams don't have this offensive line. And I will say this. Another aspect of this that does come across as cheap is, is they do seem to get some weird thrill off, like got to win the negotiation, like like yeah. it's almost like a high for them. So that can come off as cheap, but I think more than that is that's just kind of a that's a that's an. It's like alpha my wife thing. always yells at me. My wife always, you got to win the argument. You got to have a winner to it. But it you know? yeah, but it but it is like, and I know I've made this analogy before, but it is very similar to me to like it's the Jamie Fox scene in Horrible Bosses when they go back to the bar. He's like, it's twenty thousand dollars, and they're like, we're not paying that. And he goes, all right, pay for my drinks then, please. Like, <laughs> it's like, wow, you're a horrible negotiator. Yeah. They, they think they're coming in, they're like all macho, like, all right, we're gonna win this, and then ultimately they make a bad deal. Below the belt, every day at this time, we are the official home of your Dallas Cowboys, for better or worse. Uh, after day one, a free agency. I want you to hear me out. I'm gonna defend the newest Philadelphia. Eagle. Oh, and I, th God. I think you'll agree with me. Bryce Huff. Final hour, Tolo Tuesday, after this. Let's get you over to.
Command Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. This is Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Final hour fist pump time on The Fan Cam. We are live on Twitch, live on YouTube. Thanks to all of y'all taking us to another level as a show and radio station by increasing the views. And, of course, everyone on the Odyssey app and listening on 105.3 in your cars or wherever you are. You are appreciated. You're You're appreciated. appreciated. John Tree, Ralph James Choppy for 13 years. We have our Cowboys insider, Bobby Belt. And we have everyone else in the NFC East making moves except for the Cowboys. Here's what happened yesterday, day one of free agency. Uh, the Giants go and add Saquon Barkley. Three years, $37 million. And Bryce Huff. Three for 51. Bobby, do you know much about Bryce Huff or Choppy Houston? Bryce, to- Bryce Huff was, uh, I think he was Memphis a few years back when he was coming out of the draft. I watched him a little bit, but he was, um, he really blew up last year for the Jets. He had not really done much. He'd been kind of a rotational guy, but he all of a sudden blew up, had 10 sacks last year. I would be a little hesitant. I remember watching film of him early in the year and not being like super blown away by him, but I'd be a little hesitant signing a guy who blows up in the Sala system randomly in like year four, which is all about generating pressure from the front four and creating sack opportunities. Yeah, Michael Lombardi, who nailed Saquon to the Eagles yesterday, said, okay, Bryce Huff and Nolan Smith coming off the edge for Philly, but are they big enough to hold up against the run? So keep that in mind. Yeah, so this is the write-up on him on from Seth Walter uh, on ESPN. He's the poster child of an uncovered gem that has long shown in advanced metrics and finally broke out to the tune of 10 sacks. Elite get off his 0.75 second average to cross the line of scrimmage ranked fifth fastest among players with 200 rushes per next gen. His pass rush win rate was eighth, 22%, slightly down from where he'd been in the past. Uh, but, you know, they had some concerns about his run stopping ability, uh, which apparently he is not a very good run stopper. But then again, if you're a team that doesn't care about run stopping, you look at just pass rushers, this could be your guy. Which Philadelphia showed us last year. They definitely did not care about stopping the run. They were more than happy to let you just run all over them. So. <laughs> well, they got their big D tackles, their big hyped up D tackles inside that have been a disappointment, right? Jordan Davis. And um, Jalen Carter, Jalen Carter, and then Fletcher Cox retired. Yes. So they're in a great spot right now. How about the Giants trading for Brian Burns mid 20s? Then they give him 30 a year, five for 150. Who's got the scarier D line between the Giants and Philadelphia? Uh, the Giants, Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence, and now Brian Burns. Giant, I, I mean, Dexter Lawrence is. Arguably, like, I mean, is way up there. I mean, he is definitely the best one technique tackle in the NFL. Um, and then you've got Thibodeau, who was, you know, I don't think Thibodeau's quite yet hit what people wanted him to be or what they thought he could be, but I mean, he's still a really good pass rusher. And Burns is a legitimate star. Yeah. And the speculation is that Philly's going to replace Huff with one of their current guys. So Reddick or Sweat or whatever. That's, that's speculation. Second and a fifth for Brian Burns. But of course, The big news yesterday was Saquon and Philadelphia deviating from their don't pay a running back philosophy. But the big battle on social media, the big fight also on the radio is Tiki Barber. This was a while back on WFAN, our sister station, with Tiki warning Saquon, do whatever you want in the offseason, just don't go to filthy. The fact that Saquon would even contemplate going to play for that team in Philadelphia is insulting to his giant history and legacy. Saquon very well will not be a New York giant. I know that Joe Shane is having conversations, but it just doesn't feel like it's going to work out. Go to Baltimore. Go to Houston. Go to LA Chargers. Do not go to the Philadelphia Eagles because if you do, that appreciation and respect and reverence that we all have for you, Saquon, will be lost. It'll be gone. We want to still respect and love him. Mm. If he goes if he goes to Houston and he's down there with CJ Stroud and they do some great stuff and hell, he even wins a championship, we'll feel happy for him. Yeah. No matter what happens what he does in Philadelphia, we will hate it. Don't let the nonsense, Saquon. Don't let the Howard Eskins of the world and his 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 traitor son who's going down the road <laughs> influence <laughs> you to go into the cesspool of the Philadelphia Eagles. Go kiss ass. You're going to turn into one of those 
people that we hate, yeah. and we don't want that. Yeah. We don't. Like, we'll respect you, but we'll hate you, and that's not a good thing. Your jersey, that 2-6 that we see all over the stadium, it won't be worn anymore. Gone. It'll be gone. Gone. It'll be burned, burned. In, some, in some cases. Yeah. Do not, without any doubt, go to Philadelphia. All right, so that was Tiki's warning. And I'm like, okay, mm. you're doing, you know, the local talk oh, show yeah. thing. You know, throwing out the warning, the armpit, the fun we have with Houston. And then Saquon gets his deal, gets his money. And this was Tiki yesterday along with Sean Mraz, yep. who's a diehard mm. Giants homer. What a day for him. And Saquon has already taken to Twitter himself to say thank you to everyone who's shown me love and support over the past six years. Forever grateful. Excited for the next chapter. Blue heart emoji. Peace okay, right. blue heart emoji. He's I'm looking at him. He's dead to us now. Yeah, say it. <laughs> He's dead to us. Because he won't say it. You're dead to us, Saquon. Dead. Good luck. You're dead to me. Okay. If you're watching on the fan cam and Twitch, Tiki has a little bit of a smile on his face, but when you read it, yeah. you're dead to us now. Good luck. You're dead to me. Saquon Barkley didn't like that. He responded, you've been a hater since I got to New York. And all that dead to me talk, don't smile in my face when you see me. Uh, so that's Tiki and Saquon going back and forth. What is the? I know they like Saquon Barkley in New York, but what is the like the way Tiki talked about it and said it? I'm like the reverence and respect and awe we hold for. It's like is he revered like he's Eli out there? Right. Yeah, I, I, it like, sound I, like it. I thought he was like kind of considered. You haven't lived up to your potential, and you're really frustrating. Like that whole thing is just weird. It does seem borderline like personal a little and i wonder how much of it is like you know there's there's a there's a large enough penn state contingent in that area um where they did like it from college it was look, a good fit look uh, if tiki if tiki is joking around then he's joking around if tiki is like serious i can't stand i cannot stand ryan's putting it up saquon to tiki yeah you're the prime example of loyalty to a team i got the deal i wanted secured more um Guaranteed GM. money. Guaranteed, guaranteed money, money, which was not given to me before. So if fans are going to hate me for that, so be it. But I never turned my back on my teammates and always had theirs. Look, if, if Tiki's like being serious, I, I just, I, I, one of the things. Doesn't sound serious, right? Because the, we, we, the way we see it. And see Tiki's it. always like half smiling. Yeah, like he's always he got that half smile. If he's serious, I just hate when local radio people do that all the time of like, you know, you're you're placating, you're kissing the ass of the of of the whole city. Yeah, you're just you're you 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 you're, you're being a homer. I, I think he's serious because that was a the, the I wouldn't have thought it was serious just on its own, but with that minute long rant of don't you dare, don't you dare go there. Yeah, right? like that seems yeah. and and he can smile all he wants. He was smiling when he walked off set a couple months ago. Yeah, he was. Just, it's just oh, I think he always well. I think it's just his face. Yeah, he's like, he, he's Mister. You know, Mister Giant. You know, like he's just that's that, that's his team. Like that's obviously the only team he ever he plays. He used to for. smile after every fumble. Yeah, every fumble. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, don't put the hate on any running back. No, if there's a glimmer of hope and a little bit of light, I didn't put the hate on Demarco Murray because the Cowboys didn't want to pay him. He went to Philadelphia. The Cowboys were right. They knew that they had run him into the ground. Go to Philadelphia. Go ahead and get your contract. If you're going to leave for equal money, if you're going to leave because of disrespect, if you're going to leave, you know, for for another reason, like, okay, but, like, we're having fun with Dalton Schultz. Like, go on over to Houston and they give you a better deal. Saquon Barkley, he played his college ball there. He got three for 37. He got 26 fully guaranteed. I think all of us were surprised he got that level yeah. of money. So, shut up, money. And, and, like, I mean, you know, shut you up. would think Tiki would, like you said, support the running back, you know, support the player getting the money. Um but no, it's like I, I also, from his standpoint, it's like, do I support the player or support the, support the franchise that I played for? You say what you, you know, honestly think. I, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I do think that's what he honestly thinks. Wh wh which one? I, I do think that he thinks that like the the player gets his money. Good for him. Go get your money. That they would like him anywhere else. But you know, anybody that goes to uh, I remember, oh, gosh, who was it? Um, he was a he was defensive lineman. He went to Washington from here. Stephen Bowen was it Bowen? Bowen or Hatcher? May have been Hatch. Jason Hatcher was, and he got destroyed. How dare you go to Washington? How dare you sign anywhere you want? How dare all fans are like this when you go to the rival? They yeah. all are. Yeah. And it, and you know when it's Saquon, who's the face of the organization, I think that stings. 
he, uh, to Bobby's point, we're, this isn't this isn't Eli Manning. He was a injured running back there. He doesn't have some great giant legacy whatsoever. Oh, yeah, no at legacy. All. He should ha he should have he should not have any type of legacy there. So stop making it sound. Yeah. So I just can't stand. And there are so many hosts in this city. A lot of them we used to work with. Uh, they 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 put aside what they really think in order to try to tell you what they think you want to hear. It's so disingenuous. It's lame. It's fake. Look, it's fraudulent. I, I, I understand. If you're the uh, if you're the MRI tech at Giants, you know, practice <laughs> facility, you probably feel a little betrayed. Like, hey, we yeah. developed a close bond. We used to see each other every day. And it's upsetting that his, you're leaving. His now. job's in jeopardy. Yeah. I mean, honestly, who, who else is there left to see? He might be hourly now. Meanwhile, both of both you guys think that this could finally put a big question mark over the great Howie Roseman. I mean, it's a very odd thing to do. Uh, he was in that city when they signed DeMarco. Or, you know, he, he works with the franchise that signed DeMarco. What a mistake that was. Uh, and now he does this. And this is, he. so he had, he had Miles Sanders got rid of him for DeAndre Swift. And they traded a mid-round pick for and then they get rid of him, and they go to Saquon. Now, you could argue that Saquon has an upgrade all yeah, you want. Yeah, they're trying to argue this isn't a regular talent normally out there. Oh, of course. Not a regular talent. It's very regular. He's the exception to the rule. He's the exception. Yeah, get, the, get this through your head, everybody. There is no such thing as the exception to the rule. <laughs> and when there is, you still can't bank on it. Like, that's the whole point. It's the exception to the rule. You can't play for the exception to the rule. What to, like I mean, they've made a lot of significant moves over the last two years. Like, which ones stand out as like, whoa, what a home run by Philly? Like, not at the time because at the time everybody always like, yeah, like Jamie Johnson Carter. It is genuflecting. It. it is oh my god, Howie Roseman, you king, you've done it again, you madman genius. And like when you look back on it in retrospect, it's like these grades almost universally on the deals that he's made over the last two years would be graded lower today than they were at the time they were. Yeah, made. I mean, the A.J. Brown, AJ, think everybody looked was, at was good, but yeah, yeah that kind of, he was part of the locker room that blew up. Part of the locker room that blew up and also took advantage of what, like Vrabel at the time was like, what the hell are we doing? Why are we, like, that was viewed as like, I think, negligence from Tennessee and Philly was just standing there. Like this, this when you look at, we're going to go make a deal for Robert Quinn. Well, Quinn barely played for you. Byard, we're going to cut Byard after eight games and we traded two draft picks Shaq Leonard it's Shaq Leonard that was a big one the Barkley deal now the Jalen Hurts contract is getting a lot of questions there's just a lot that I think is lining up in the favor of hey maybe how he's not the genius okay. that everybody tried to label but let's as. talk about the Saquon effect on the Eagles the Cowboys face the Eagles tomorrow Saquon I'm telling you he's healthy how much more worried are we about the Eagles and their offense Forget about long term. What's going to happen? Injuries, games missed. Howie Rose, one of that stuff. Tomorrow, the Eagles as an offense mm. and a team. I mean, I said they're a very good team, and they're 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 a good offense. I mean, they still got weapons. And if Jalen Hurts is healthy, I think I, I wonder how much of last year uh, was a health issue with him, especially his lower body. But is this a fear factor? What's the fear factor, Joe Rogan? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think you have to fear them to win the division. I think no, it would not surprise me they don't Sa win 12 games. Saquon specifically doesn't no. do anything. No? Nope. You don't think he's a home run threat? <laughs> no. You tell me who you're going to replace Jason Kelsey with. Tell me what you're going to do about your offensive line that was struggling down the stretch to run block. Like, that's what I'm more concerned about than anything. We, we saw Saquon behind an offensive line that couldn't block in, in New York, and it didn't go well. Yeah, but he's going from... Now, come on. Uh, he's going from it's, the worst... To arguably the best offensive line. I don't know. Like, I mean, when you remove Kelsey out of there, I don't think we know what Philly's offensive line is right now, especially after it was dinged up in the second half of the year. Elaine Johnson is thought of as a stud. Right. Mulata's thought of as a stud. The, the problem was on the interior. The, okay. And then, like, I mean, if they're not going to block well on the interior, we, we saw what poor interior blocking got the Cowboys last year at times. The Giants' offensive line ranked 31st in run block win rate. The Eagles' front ranked first in that category last year there is also a lot of heat on Sirianni for not running it enough well Kellen's gonna fix that yeah <laughs> he's changed his perspective he doesn't want to light up the scoreboard anymore <laughs> he wants to be Mike McCarthy he saw what McCarthy did last year compared to Kellen's failure and he's like you know what let's go ahead and game let's go manage run this. that ball let's go man game manage this bad boy <laughs> who is possibly left for the Cowboys to get on day two the guys want to pour one out for an all-time website and my favorite story of the day, the crypto bro.
the audio that will have you laughing the rest of the day next on Sean and RJ. But I want to go ahead and you, everyone's talking about their investments in pro football. How about your investments so you can make that money and have that money like some of these athletes we've been talking about all morning long. It comes from Trajan Wealth. The fiduciary advisors at Trajan understand that no two retirement plans are the same. They offer guidance on a variety of financial objectives, including ways to earn higher potential returns and tax concerns. Let Trajan Wealth help you develop a plan that will meet your financial
1053 The Fan segment here brought to you by State of the Art Weight Loss, that's soda, and by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. Crosstalk with the KMC Masterpiece at 940. It's Sean, RJ, and Bobby. Day two down. of NFL free agency. Some of the bigger contracts that got passed out yesterday. Not, of course, from anyone at the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. Uh, went to Gabe Davis, three for 39. Deion Dawkins, Buffalo tackle, three for 60. Jonathan Greenard, DN. Four for 76. Michael Pittman, three for 70. Saquon, three for 37. Tony Pollard, three for 24. DeAndre Swift, three for 24. Christian Wilkins from Miami to the Raiders, four for 110. Uh, Kirk Cousins, four for 180. 45 a year. If you have any Dak Prescott dreams, by the way, Tad Prescott tweeting, any question left over uh, Philadelphia having the best front office? I'm like, Tad. Good gosh, you have a Hall of Fame of dumb takes. Uh, you really do. Um, and that is one of them for the last segment that we just had. Now, Kirk Cousins is 35 coming off an of injury, but 45 a year. And we're talk talking about 60 a year for Dak. By the way, Aaron Jones, one for seven in Minnesota. Would we have liked to have seen that deal here? I'd have done it. The Cowboy Killer. I, 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 I don't like to sign running backs. I actually would have, absolutely would have done it. One year? I mean, that's that's fine. One year, seven for Aaron Henry? Jones. Oh. I have to go see what he was like last year. You like Aaron Jones more than Derrick Henry. At this stage. I think Derrick was like 1,100 yards last year. Said so double-digit touchdown. Isn't it, isn't it one of those things, though, where you'd almost have a fear... And, and maybe this isn't a, a concern, but psychologically, almost I'd wonder if like there'd be a thought process of like, well, we got to get Derrick Henry the ball more than like Aaron Jones. Like there'd be a, a feeling of like you have to get it to Derrick Henry. And so I think I would take I think Derrick Henry could be a better player than Aaron Jones right now. But Aaron Jones might like almost not get the deference in the play calling. But I I would it feels like scared to have Dak throw, you know, four less pass attempts. So you want to give up the better player? I mean, look, McCarthy, I don't know what you expect. Uh, I don't know what you think this NFL is in, in 2024, but uh, we pass the ball to win football games. We don't get, we don't uh, attack the defense two and a half yards at a time. The, the workload. Who would seek if that was the case? I, I'm, I, just real quick, I am fascinated by what seems to be the NFL has a completely different opinion of Aaron Jones than the rest of us, though. But like in terms of like their outlook on his health seems to be different. They, they all seem very scared off by how he projects out over the next few years. I mean, he's older. He's older than a lot of these guys that are getting how signed. Old is he? He's 31. Lower workload though. Lower he's workload. 31? He was yeah, he's either he's 30 right now. He's 29. If, or then he'll be 30 next he's year. 30, 30 in December. Um if you look, look, look here's by the way, how many yards per game did Henry average la average last year? Yards a game. Uh 80. 68. I was surprised. Um, One off. <laughs> but, you know, he's led the league in carries for the last five years. 308, 373. I'm sorry, 303, 378, 219. And he only played eight games, and he still had 219 attempts. In eight games. Imagine handing the ball off 378 times in the stand age to one person. Dude, imagine getting in eight games 219 attempts. <laughs> That's over 400 for the year. And then he had 349, and then he dropped to 280. He hasn't seen more than 4.4 yards of carry in three seasons. It was it was mm. it was 2020. Yeah, was the last year he saw over 4.4 a carry. Uh, I was thinking about this driving, and I was like, yes, the news would be exciting. It'd give us you know some you know optimism and excitement around here. It just feels like one of those things. Whoever signs Derrick Henry in in two years, we're like, see, this is why you don't do that. It like my my heart is telling me yes, give me some give me something to get to, to back backflips over, but my head is telling me no. All the numbers and everything on paper says don't. Um, yeah, if you had if you had Derrick Henry in a one year deal, I think he's, you're fine. But he's gonna be somebody's gonna give him more money unless and, he's and just more years that in love yeah. with the Metroplex, which a lot of people say that he is. By the way, the Josh Jacobs contract. Is a one year deal with three one year options. Florio went and dug this up. So on the surface, it's four for 48, right? The Packers swapping out Aaron Jones for Josh Jacobs. And a lot of people are like, why? The contract has a $12.5 million signing bonus and no other guaranteed payments. Wow. His 
2024 base salary is 1.2 million. So um, he's got a bunch of, you know, I'm not going to get into all the contract minutia, but it's a one-year deal with three one-year options. Now, who is possibly left today for all of us to watch sign elsewhere? Daniil Hunter, Viking Connection, Mike Zimmer. Patrick Queen, a lot of fake Patrick Queen stories yesterday that he was going to Seattle. They got apparently ESPN got burned by it on the air, a, sh a fake Schefter tweet, and had to go. Oh wait, this isn't Adam. Never mind, disregard. Adam did say that Calvin Ridley was leaving Jacksonville. Uh, Tyron Smith not signed. DJ Reader, Hollywood Brown, Darnell Mooney, Kevin Zietler, Zeitler, Stephen, uh, Stephon Gilmore, Kendall Fuller, Chase Young, and Justin Simmons. Now. Should we be rooting for Tyron Smith to keep going unsigned? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. If it, if, it, if it gets him why back not? here on a lower if, deal, if you're if you're scared of Tyron's health and want to move on, that would be why not. Oh, okay. So you're saying like you you don't want him at any cost? I didn't say that at all. I'm asking you basically: Do you want Tyron back? Do you want him to get frozen out on the market, or do you want to rip the page out and move forward? I mean, there's so a you don't be held hostage yeah. by his health. Yeah, no, I, I get it. Yeah, I understand that. There's a there's a uh, there's a number. Where even the most injured guy becomes in the ballpark. It's like, okay, I'll take that risk. I'll take that risk of that money. And you got to have a backup plan. Maybe this means you do draft. Maybe they draft us. Who knows? Maybe they draft us, uh, the, 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 his replacement in the first round. Or maybe they go and fix one of their other needs in the first round. Look, you, uh, they seem to have potentially cracked the code a little bit on his how to stagger him during the practice week they figured out the romo wednesdays or whatever else mm. with tyron that i at the very least think if you take a center in the first round take a tackle in the third round and are able to re-sign tyron and just have the third rounder as insurance to to step in and play if need be if tyron gets hurt just just make sure your backup plan is better than chuma idoga missing assignments against the dolphins just Make sure it's it's better than that, and if you can get Tyron back, sure, take it, because he played well last year. I, I think it's been oversold a little bit that it's like, oh my gosh, he was the Tyron of eight years ago, like some people were trying to talk about, but he was good. He was really good for you last year, and he was a benefit. Okay, uh, we'll cross-talk with KMC at 940 this morning, but I know both you guys wanted to pour salt in the wound of dead spin. Oh, baby. Deadspin, how we hardly knew ye. I do remember the day, Robert M Montgomery Belt. Yes. When Is your middle name Montgomery? Cameron. <laughs> Cameron? Cameron. Literally, oh, Bobby means, Knight. Bobby Knight. literally means bent nose. Cameron, Cameron means yeah. bent nose. Yeah, Cameron means it. bent nose. Yeah. Uh, I remember the day where in the Steve Dennis Jennifer Angle days of radio where that was, hate. that was the first website you would go to. Uh, for your sports news or whatever, and yeah. they had some comedy. There were they had some edginess to them. Uh, you know the the why we why your team sucks. Oh, classic article series. Great article series that they had, and then they stopped being funny, and they refused to laugh at anything. They became too serious, and comedy is no longer a joke. And it's just they the the Hogan thing killed them. <laughs> the Hogan thing killed him where they were with Gawker, I believe. Mm -hmm. and they had all those websites that were a part of Gawker. Well, yesterday the news came out. The staff at Deadspin just received an email informing them they're being sold to a European firm and no one there will be retained. So wiped out everyone with one email. <sighs> poor, poor Julie DeCaro. Was I'm so devastated to hear that their senior writer, Julie DeCaro, who is... One of the biggest hacks in sports oh. media coverage. I'm so sad to hear that she's going to be unemployed. That <laughs> hypocritical fraud. Like, that, and, that, and she is the perfect representation of what Deadspin has become. Which is just moral grandstanding and SJW, social, social justice warriors out here on, the, on these sports streets. And I, I think just the, from the... The, the Caitlin Clark thing just felt like the perfect ending to what Deadspin had become. Like, you're trying to look your nose down upon everybody else's. Oh, look, look at you just doubting women's basketball. All the while, they, like, come off of fraud, as frauds themselves, like, not even being able to spell her name correctly. That's just the perfect summation for what Deadspin had become. Yeah. Used to be hilarious. Became a political hack site about 
10 years ago, and it's been trash ever since. I, I wish uh, I, I wish the unemployment line on literally nobody. I hope everybody has success. Except Julie DeCaro. Except this website right here. That's, mm. that's about the only one. Uh, wow. No. I, I even even now, I don't even wish I don't even wish this on them. I feel bad. I don't want anybody to lose their job. This industry is is small enough and tough enough to deal with. Boy, you... I wish nothing on nothing bad on them. But man, did they make it difficult on nine year olds? They did. Yeah, <laughs> they did. They did. Yeah, that was the death blow. Yeah, that was it. And that poor kid's not gonna get a dime now. Julie DeCaro, by the way, from that nine year old uh, topic, one of her old tweets that. And this is the Chiefs fan. With the headdress, and they they misrepresented it, saying he had blackface on, but and he did not. Black and red. That is not what he's doing. Uh, and when somebody was like, "Hey, do you have a comment on you guys taking this position?" and Julie DeCar said, "What you will not get from me is a statement declaring what a person of color deems to be racist." I'm not going to do that. Wow. So she like doubled down on it. Was like, "Nope. If somebody feels that way, then that's what it is." I'm going to have to save crypto, bro, for tomorrow. I'm really sad oh. about it because Daryl Strawberry announced on Instagram he's recovering after suffering a heart attack. Happy birthday, by the way, Straw. Is it? It's his birthday today. And they're doing his retirement ceremony June 1st. Yep. At, uh, and, and, and this with the Mets. With the Mets. So he's going to get his jersey retired. Peyton, go watch the Doc and Daryl documentaries. It's amazing. It's rock star drugs. It's the ultimate reality show. Awesome. Do you know who Daryl Strawberry is? Yeah, played for the uh, the Mets, I believe. I, I, I just said you it. just said that. <laughs> Baseball was he right or left-handed? Uh, he was left. Ooh. Was he was he tall or short? Six one. No way. Uh, <laughs> and I loved uh, I loved his batting stance too. Oh yeah. But Doc and Daryl, those were awesome. So Daryl Strawberry recovering from a heart attack. How high up on the list, uh, or, or, or how quickly does his name come up when you're talking about just like wasted talents? I I don't know that he was wasted. I don't know. I, I mean, he was definitely wasted. <laughs> we know that. Yeah. Um, okay, how many good years disqualifies you from being a wasted talent? I mean, I think he was a relative. Like, he wasn't quite a supernova, but, I mean, he was, what, six years? Okay. As, as one of the best. Like, right, I'm going to give you his numbers. Starting rookie year, 1983. 26 home runs. He hit 257. Then he hit 26 home runs with 97 runs batted in. 29 home runs hitting 277, then 27 home runs, then 39, then 39, then 29, then 37, and then 28. So from 83 to 91. Now I know what you're saying, wasted him taking you too literally. Yeah. He could have gotten like a, had a, a lot more of that production or even better. But one, two, three, four, five. I mean, I mean, Gooden, that, Gooden is another one. Like you mentioned in Gooden there, like Doc Gooden and him both are just two big examples of just super talented players who kind of let their careers go off the rails that's nine years though hey, look that's, not, that's nine, nine years. years of 26 bombs should, or more i look at it as he yeah. should have won multiple mvps throughout yeah. his career yeah i mean the mvp is weird because like you could have somebody pop every now and then like no one ryan ever want to saw young yeah but you know what he's saying yeah, yeah yeah but like still you know what i mean like you could have somebody where you deserve it you know get it again like no one ryan with the Cy young uh but the, mets, but the mets are so cursed so cursed so cursed fun fact one of three players in Major League Baseball history, to play for all four current or former New York teams. Giants, Dodgers, Mets, oh. and Yankees. One of three players. Jose Vizcaino and Ricky Lede. Let's cross talk Ricky with the Lede. KMC <laughs> Masterpiece next on Sean and RJ. Oh, boy.
Classic Chevrolet. Classic Chevrolet in Grapevine is the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's ride, relax, enjoy the difference based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Here's a turnover by Kobe White. A catch inside. And it's a finish for Daniel Gafford for his 23rd consecutive made field goal. And he ends up with 28 by the end of the night on Bally. NBA record since 1996-1997. And the Mavs Twin Towers combined for over 40 yes. points as they kill the Chicago Bulls. Crosstalk with... All Mike. I can think is, is up to bat right now is Josh Young. That's all I know. Tell him, man. This is his walk-up song. Oh, this? Yeah. Okay. He would not be up to bat right now. He did, oh. he's, he's hurt. He can hit. Yeah. He's hitting. But he's not going to. He's hitting the IL. Oh, my gosh. You seem like you're actively rooting for that. Kevin, no. should I give my unbelievable stat right now? Not the overall Let's record. Let's do it. All right. The Mavericks are 37 and 28. So how many games is that, Kevin? 65. 65 games. Four In those away. 65 games, how many games have they played where it's been a single-digit outcome? As in, they've won by nine or less or lost by nine or less. Oh. Out of 67 games. Nine. Eleven. <laughs> what are spreads? You bet, Choppy. <laughs> What are spreads usually in the NBA? Are they usually 14 and a half point spreads or are they usually like five and a half point He's mad, and a half He's mad we undercut half. his yeah. stat. <laughs> what is it? 24 of their 67 games 65. have been decided. 65, sorry. 24 of their 65 games have been decided by single digits. That seems almost impossible. It's the NBA though, right? Don't we talk, don't we talk about this in the postseason? Like every couple of years, every year now, it's like these games are either to blow out. Blow out, blow out. I bet other teams that are in the 500 or above category have played way more single-digit games than the Mavericks have. So where are you now on them? Uh, you had them as barely getting in, championship contender, back to what? I think that they are going to be in the play-in. And this is where going into Mike Likes It will be a lot on based off of their one and loss record in single digit games there's only 24 of them which makes them impossible to figure out they lose so many games by 10 points or more that how do you judge a team that gets blown out almost every time they lose they get blown out almost every time they lose they get blown out it's tough because sometimes you'd look at a game and go, well, man, if we would have just did this the last five minutes or if this run wouldn't have happened here, we would have won by four or six points. But when you're losing a lot of games by 15 plus points, you start going, crap, like this is tough to predict because when they play great, and I know they played a bad team last night, but when they play great, they really look like they could beat anybody at any time. Yeah. But they can play the worst teams in the NBA and lose by 10 or more points. So... They're really tough to predict. I will predict right now because they don't seem to give consistent effort. And I mean, I'm not even saying like 75% of the time. They're a 50-50 team on if they want to play basketball or not. So because they're a 50-50, do we want to play basketball? I could see them having a good run in the playoffs, but I'm going to predict they lose in the play-in tournament. What's they don't on? make it out of the play-in. Maybe mm. they win and lose, or sorry, they lose and I don't know. I just think that they're going to not make it into the 7-8 seed when it comes real playoff time. What's coming up? Right out of the gate, winners and losers from first day of free agency, and why did Cowboys fans expect something different? Will Daniel Gafford ever miss a shot again? And at 11-20, Masterpiece Theater, is there a non-holiday movie that you watch every year? Oh. A non-holiday movie. Good fellas. Ooh, that's a good that's one. Because that's just on so much. That's a good one. Yeah, it's on a lot. Uh, I'm sure there's a like a major league. I probably see that every year or some other do you, baseball movie. Do you movie. go out of your way to watch it every year or is it just on a lot? It's on a lot. I don't think... Yeah, there's not really a movie I go out of my way. I mean, I go out of my way to watch all the Fast and Furious on board every sure. year. Back to the Future on November 5th. Okay. And I know there are a lot of people who have dates like D that. Double it up. Back to the Future and V for Vendetta. Why is it November 5th? November 5th, 1955. That's when Doc Brown discovered time travel. It's when he uh, discovered the flex capacitor after he hit his head. So I was very jealous of you guys yesterday getting to just break all the NFL free agency news. Deal after deal. Reaction. Mike is giving me such a...
deadpan look in the face. You know what I realized doing that? I was the Jones family in past years. I always took this week off. And so it was interesting to me to actually work yeah. on Monday and go through all the deals. It was super fun. Was it fun? Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. I will tell you this, and I, I don't know if people are going to get mad or not. All three of those deals that Cowboys players signed to go elsewhere, I would pass on we, all of them. We, we, we all agree. Okay. We all agree. And so when people, I, like, I get it. I also am frustrated with the Cowboys because we have different definitions of all in. Yeah. But when you saw Tony Pollard go off the board at three for 24 and people are like, all in, I thought, that's the move? Right. Do, do you something. Do so Don't be the I, only team in the no, NFL who didn't do anything. I agree with that. Just the three players you moved on from. And then when you heard the Zach Moss story, that was just really Mike, Mike what was your favorite Cowboys move yesterday? Did all you, of did, them. Did you do your yacht SNL skits? Somewhat, yeah. Yes. Okay. Because Spittle asked, he's like, is he really on the yacht? And I'm like, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> no, the only thing they signed was a lease on a new wife. villa in, in the Hamptons Ooh, they or did. whatever. Yeah, but Hamptons. I would bet, if I had to bet money, not a lot, but I would bet that he's not in Dallas-Fort Worth. I don't think he's in Frisco right now. I don't think he's in Highland Park. That would be my bet. I don't know. I do know that this is a major holiday time to celebrate family for the Jones family. It always has been. So... I know that they have Will McC Will McClay's the real general manager, but Will McClay can't do deals without this stamp of approval from the Jones family, from Stephen and Jerry. So I don't know how difficult it is. The Cowboys will say, this is why we're such a perfect organization. Uh, but then I'm like, well, but you guys take vacation during one of the most <laughs> critical weeks of the year in the off season. Now, Kevin. And I think that they would fire if Will McClay – and I have no clue. But if Will McClay wasn't in Frisco right now working and he's like, I'm going to take this week off, guys. I have a family. <laughs> it's vacation time. They'd be like, you're fired. Like, we're paying you millions of dollars yeah. to make sure that we have the best possible team available to us under the structure that we want, you know, the cap spent. But they're like, yeah, we're the major decision makers, but we vacation every year at this time. I, I am stunned that the league owners haven't changed the schedule of free agency. Away from spring break. Away from spring break. Because okay. yeah, it is like a big family week. Yeah. They oh, gotta, and they can afford to. Well, they got to own every single week of the year. Yeah. Uh, the Commanders have a new quarterback. He was the number two pick in the draft. Zach Wilson. Along with maybe Shut up. one of the most entertaining, maybe probably the most entertaining player in today's NFL off the field. The Who's the most entertaining oh, personality? So. Oh, Jameis. Michael yeah. Parsons. Marcus. Marcus Mariota signing with the Commanders. One year deal. Base yeah. value of six million up mm -hmm. to ten million. He's the, he's got to be the most Gross. boring, like yeah. top Marcus? five pick oh, in the God, history. Yeah. As Magic football. Johnson he's tweeted so about it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's but it would be very generic. Dude, how do you think Magic Johnson's gonna handle the last name Biotish? Like if Stevens had problems with it, bye it is. Yeah, he's gonna say bye it is too. Did I... Kirk Cousins sign during your show? Yes, yeah. he okay. did. Did you guys bring up our big argument today at <laughs> six o'clock? I've been I've been really cautious. Don't I hope this is not about what I think it is. Okay. Did you guys say, oh, Cousins taking forty five? Maybe that gives a little bit of hope to like oh, Dak taking a major Here we discount. Go. Why are you making that uh, face? Look, I kinda, did you say that during the show or I not? I'll say this. I I should have prefaced what I said or before. It. I, yeah, prefaced it, it or prefaced <laughs> it. Um, well done. Preference. I just said he's a loser. Kurt? <laughs> yes, <he is. laughs> that's, that's all I said. And then I said, let me go further. Religious too. Kurt Cousins is a losing quarterback. You can't ultimately win with Kirk. You can make the playoffs. And that's now Atlanta's goal is let's just make the playoffs and get hammered if we do. Okay. That's the Dallas Cowboys philosophy, too. Yeah. We have a loser, but he wins uh, in the regular season. It's like he's good enough to win. There's these good quarterbacks that are under these contracts that are good enough to get you to the playoffs. They're just going to get hammered when yeah. it comes to playoff time. So I don't think this helps the Cowboys at all because I do think – that Dak is a little bit better than Kirk Cousins. Ultimately, they're in the same tier, good enough to win 10 to 12 games, not good enough to win playoffs. And so I do think Dak gets to now 55 easy, 10 million over Kirk easy, if not up to 60 million a year. And 
Interesting. I, I have Good to point, admit, Mike. I never said he wouldn't. Good I point, just said Mike. an argument could be yeah. made. Knuckleballs. I never said he wouldn't. You, you're, you're, Mike is you're such really a good deceptive. broadcaster. You're really it's, deceptive it's not about individual. what he can. Do. And I wonder this. I feel like the Jones family, in the end, they want Dak to be the highest paid yeah, quarterback. I, I could see Because that. then they sell it, buy his jersey, buy Dak. Dak is the best. See, he's getting paid the most. And I know that eventually that will get taken over by other free agents, and he goes down to sixth and seventh over time. But it's like... Like, it's it's weird. They're a weird family who's running a a business based off of money and not based off of football. I, the reason why I was yeah hesitant. kind of yeah hesitant is I, people hear what they want to hear and overreact how they want to overreact. And I, I'm not saying you, Bobby, just people in general. I do hear what I want to hear. And so when I was looking at it <laughs> and Kirk Cousins got 45 and people were like, well, now Dak's going to get 60. I thought, what? Are they really that different? And so I decided to look at numbers compared to my feel for it. And I'm sure there are other numbers that show how far apart they are, but their completion percentage, almost identical. Kirk Cousins throws for more yards per game. Their touchdown to interception ratio is almost identical. You're their a great broadcaster. School quarterback rating <laughs> is almost identical. In the playoffs, Dak is 2-5 and five with a 2-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio. Oh. In the playoffs, Kirk Cousins is 1-4 and four with a 5-1 to one touchdown like to interception that. ratio. Like so, so y'all just had the same argument we did, only you weren't like screaming at each other when you said it. That's basically what our argument was. Because Wait, you're, you're, you're arguing that Kevin is more level-headed when Kevin gets into knockdown dragouts with us all the time? No, well, I mean, you. just today. Wait, today, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I've almost been I've almost been killed by Carter, Sean, and Peyton in the last twenty four hours. Yeah, so. and everyone would agree that your side is wrong because you're a jackass. Okay, no. Here's my biggest point: is I that here, here's my biggest point. Better than Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Cousins. There, there's no. The, this was my biggest point: is that Kirk Cousins has already established what his market is. He's right now being paid eighty one percent of the top of the market. That has consistently been about where he's been paid his entire career. Okay. So this is the NFL telling you this is what he's worth, and we're going to pay him it again. So it wasn't any sort of a deal to me. But did Kirk fight for? Because doesn't yeah. Kirk want just the the guarantee? If Kirk fought for sixty million, could he have gotten it? I don't know. But what we have is like the just flat data that says this is what he is, and this is what he gets paid no, by NFL you, teams. You, you did you you got out your little conversion calculator, and you oh. think you're smarter than everyone. Your little homeschool percentages. I don't think I know. Matt Stafford <laughs> makes <laughs> Matt Stafford makes fifty. So and he's the same exact age, and everyone would put them in kind of a similar tier. Maybe Stafford a little bit higher up. So is it crazy to think that like Kirk Cousins could have gotten fifty or fifty five if he really wanted to? That's not crazy. That was that was our argument. If you because oh, okay. you're not willing gotcha. to entertain it whatsoever, and you're like, well, eighty percent, eighty three. No, my million, point, million, million, million. my point, like because Kirk Cousins could have Kirk Cousins could have played, Cousins played the leap for all game, just like Matt Stafford and other guys have. And Atlanta have done. wouldn't have played ball. You, you don't know that. Else would no, have. he's 35 coming off an Achilles. Achilles injuries are devastating for the most part if for he quarterbacks didn't have coming an off of If he didn't have an Achilles, would he get paid more than 45 if he really wanted to? The answer is yes. Yeah. But we're not dealing in that reality. Yeah, so so exactly. it has no impact on Dak because he does have a torn Achilles. It's like, well, you know, if uh, if Dak had won a Super Bowl, do you think that changes his value? It doesn't matter. that We're, we're dealing in, yeah. like, fantasy land. Right. Yeah. Hey, I had a buddy of mine text me after yesterday's ball, cross Sean. talk, and he goes... <laughs> He goes, hey, do you like Bobby Belt? <laughs> he said no. Oh, I like Bobby. How this many was, of those questions do you think I get? This was the text that from I got from mainly. one of my good yeah, friends. She does not. He's, she doesn't think I'm funny. He's probably at all. listening right now, and I put yes. I like Bobby as a person. I disagree with his Dak Prescott. Take. No. Yeah. He's not even <laughs> loyal to his kids like this. Well, like, that's true. He's more loyal to Dak Prescott than well, the oldest. Knows. And I guess, <laughs> you know, it's tough. It's sports talk radio, so you take the kid. clips of, of where where you're oh extreme at. Whoa. I think Jeez. Dak is good. Adoption jokes. All right. We're, I, I think, think Dak is a good quarterback. I do, too. Sean I is also anti know. I could have been left unsaid. Y'all didn't have to say it. Yeah. He could have left it under the radar, Mike. I'm sorry. Finish. Yeah. It's factually it correct, good. though, that Dak will get his A hammered come playoff time. It's the KMC Arm? Masterpiece yep. next on 105.3 The Fan.
studio secured by dfwsecurity.com it's the knc masterpiece on 105.3 the fan knc masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan you got me kevin hagelin Corey majors will be back tomorrow we got mike bassick we've got alec medford mike i need to tell you something tell me about it i had a dream about you last night oh i had a dream about noah i told you about last week yes in my dream and i think you would appreciate this 
For some reason, you were coming over to our house and we were having a dinner party and you were cooking the entirety of the dinner party. I would love that dinner party. <laughs> yeah, I thought that you might because I remember my wife in my dreams like, and don't forget, Mike's coming over at 530 hey, to start cooking. That's part of my love language. I love cooking for people. Excellent. Excellent. What did I make? Uh, that part I do not remember. Do you I, like chicken parm? Oh, I love chicken parm. I can Hey, my chicken parm tastes so good. Let's go. Would you invite Alec to the dinner party? Yeah. Awesome. Let's go, man. He'd probably only have half a breast. He's a little guy. Hey, I don't know, man. He's got, he's. Yeah. Hey, man. He's I can pumping. eat. I'll tell you what, man. He got to go to Nick and Sam's the other day that. with us for the first time. Yes. I can't Nick and Sam's it. I'm sorry. I can't do anything as good as Nick and Sam. Nobody can, or at yeah. least no place I've ever been to. Yeah. From the 720, feeling under the weather today. So just laying in bed listening to y'all. At least I got that. That's nice. Well, thank you for listening. Absolutely. Hopefully we bring joy to you when we talk about the Mavericks and Rangers. Yes. And stars. But unfortunately, <laughs> we have to start with maybe the not joy subject. And I'm really curious outside of the Cowboys. Winners and losers from the first day of NFL free agency. If there were any particular moves that you really liked. And then here's the question that I want to ask that we started to chop up a little bit yesterday. And I was talking with Brandon about this. It feels like we've previewed this for months. Don't expect the Cowboys to do anything in free agency. There was that quick dip where Jerry said, I'm going all in, but then he <laughs> followed it up with my version of all in might be different than yours. I feel like we've been all in since 1989. And at that point I was like, okay, so you just don't know what that phrase means or you like he said, have a fundamentally different definition of all in than I do and probably a lot of other people. So I wasn't expecting anything yesterday. And so when I saw people blowing up the Cowboys spot, I have to admit, I was surprised because I feel like we've been talking about this exact scenario was going to happen for months and months and months and months. I guess it's just the hope within fans, right? If you're a fan of a team, there's hope. It's It goes back to over a decade ago when the Mavs were going to get either LeBron James or Dwight Howard or Chris yes. Paul, and it's just like, well, you don't have the money to do it, or you're just short of it. You, you just start looking, you're like, this doesn't seem like a reality. We're at least not hearing publicly from anybody that they're really wanting to come to Dallas. and then, But you still have that hope. And then July 1st would happen, and you're like, why did I hope? And I think that that's Cowboy fans today. Like, they were devastated by getting hammered by Green Bay. And then they're like, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. But you're far enough away that your heart is mended some, right? We've stitched it up and it's healing. And then you're like, you know what will give me total healing? The Cowboys really going out and getting some really solid veterans in free agency. And you see that, I don't know, 50% might be too high, but approximately 50% of the free agents are gone that matter now, right? After one day, yes. yeah. like there's a, still a good pack of 50% of guys. And in the next two days, they will sign with other teams besides the Cowboys. But I think all of a sudden you feel like that stitch that you thought was really healing is now starting to open back up. Yeah. And then the, the, the good thing is for most fans is, is that the draft is, I say right around the corner. You're about six weeks away yep. or so, maybe seven, yeah. I don't know from, from the draft. And that's when you'll feel great. And you're going to think that you're going to get all 32 guys that are first round picks, but they only get one of them. <laughs> I do think that. And so, cause you talk, it's fun listening to Broadus and Zach and all the Dane Bruglers of the world. Talk about all of these, first round guys and all the guys the Cowboys are interested in at the end of the first round you get one of them and so you only possibly solved one issue on the team after the first round but I just think that's where fans are at they just want to feel because they're never going to win and in their heart I think Cowboy fans know they're never going to win like ultimately win the Super Bowl again but they want the feeling that they're winning something and you're never going to get the feeling of winning a Super Bowl again that's my opinion and you're never going to get the feeling of winning free agency and that's my opinion too from the 314 could they be really trying to get those guys but those guys are like nah I'm good and maybe they heard the Dalton Schultz zoo comments no. I they signed for money if you pay them, I don't want to say $1 more, 
But if you pay them approximately 500000 more per year or $1 million more per year and you guarantee $1 million more dollars than the other team's guaranteeing, they sign with you. They didn't offer more money or the same amount of money to any of the free agents yesterday, and they decided not to go to the Cowboys. They offered less than what everybody was getting offered if they were willing to offer a contract. And the one that obviously sticks out is the report bouncing around about Zach Moss. I think it was two years, 8.5, 8.6 million with 4.4, 4.5 in the first year. And the report was that just got uncomfortable for the Cowboys in terms of money. So I don't think it's that they were in and those guys didn't want to come here. I think it's they get uncomfortable when people want to get paid. Here's the other thing, and this is why I had a strong feeling that nothing was going to happen. The Cowboys still have $2.2 million in cap space. Now, I realize with the extension of C.D. Lamb flipping a couple of more contract switches, Obviously, the big one is if you extend or add uh, more void years to Dak Prescott, you can create more space, but they haven't done any of that stuff yet. So I don't know what led anybody to believe that they were about to make to make those moves. I, I wonder this. Micah Parsons loves doing podcasts, loves doing his own podcast, and loves talking, loves talking to Stephen A. Smith. I believe that they are getting a very close relationship is I wonder what he's thinking today. I wonder what he's going to be thinking most likely after today and tomorrow that the Cowboys don't sign anybody. They might lose another one or two guys that aren't very, look, they're not super, nothing against Dorrance Armstrong, Biotish, nothing against Tony Pollard. They were all starting players, uh, but I just wonder what Mike is going to say when they lose approximately five guys this week. And then they sign nobody because he was convinced he's too young to understand. Jerry's just talking. He's not actually doing anything. So I wonder what he's going to have to say when the we're all in this offseason. Well, guess what, Mike? Uh -oh. While you're on your high and mighty, just when you think you have all the answers, the Cowboys change the question. <laughs> People are going to be so mad. They have re-signed their long snapper, Trent Sieg. A person familiar with the deal said, per Michael Gelkin. So, we did it. Okay. Do we have the celebrate music? Trent Sieg, the long snapper, is coming back. And I will tell you this. This feels so Cowboys in terms of, I'm not saying it was an important thing to do, but it feels like pretty far down on your list, but at least they can be like, well, we did make moves. And Cowboys I don't fans even think get they can sell that. about this. I, I don't think they can sell that. There's no way in the next 24 to 48 hours, Jerry or Steven get off the yacht or off of Mexico and do a press conference about this. Right? And say, hey, we're really I mean, excited I and not. happy. So I, I, I honestly, I'm going to be honest. Not that I have any hope for the Cowboys. My hope is dead. Do I need to tell you who they signed again? Trent Sieg, their long snap. If his last name was Er on the end of it, I would think that's a great signing because I know there's an MVP here with the last name Seeger. Seeger. But, no, I just... Look, it is what it is. This is the Cowboys organization until the death of the NFL, which I don't think is coming anytime soon. This is what the Cowboys do. By the way, if you think it's going to change when Jerry isn't around, this is Steven doing this. And that is exactly and what Steven's I think. And going to be around for... 20 to 40 more years, I assume. From the 817, and, and this is an issue that I have with the way the Cowboys have done business. If you've heard the show for any amount of time, first of all, thank you very much for listening. Second of all, Corey will be back tomorrow. And third, from the 817, flipping switches is why the Cowboys will never win again. They need to learn to manage the cap that Jerry created without kicking the can down the road. I agree with that if that is your all-the-way-in strategy. The thing that the Cowboys do that I hate is they try to straddle both lines. Like, this is the last year of Dak Prescott's contract. I realize they'll probably get an extension done. But let's assume they they don't. They still have dead money after his contract is over. You're looking at the Zach Martin deal. They're probably still going to have dead money after his contract is over. So they still do that, and they could not flip any more future switches. Yeah. And right now, they still don't have any money. That's why, Mike... 
my biggest thing is I was like, that's what all in means to me. I am going to crush the yeah. cap for the next several years. I'm going to flip every switch and be like, yeah, this is the time because we're screwed after this. The Cowboys are still going to be good this year. They are. I agree. Uh, now, maybe they self implode because of, you know, the guys just not getting along, or I, I don't know. I don't have no clue if that's going to happen or not. But on a piece of paper, most likely they're going to be a team that wins somewhere between nine and 12 games, as long as there's not a major injury to Dak, stuff to like agree that. With that. So they're going to be a playoff contender. So that's the good news, Cowboy fans. And that's what the goal is. But I was thinking about this during Crosstalk, Kevin. We talked about it right before we went on the air. Actually, Matthew Stafford going to a Super Bowl and winning it, he's in the same tier as Dak Prescott. I but agree. to your point, and you just said it, so I'll just reiterate it, you have to go $80 million over the cap to do it. You have to trade almost all of your picks, like the next five years. Just trade your next five years of first-round picks. This is what L.A. did, taking a Dak Prescott-like quarterback and having an Aaron Donald-like generational talent on the other side. And then they added, obviously, trading picks. They got Ramsey, one of the best cornerbacks. They yep. did a whole bunch of things, and they said, screw the future. The future is over. We're going for it. And yes. we are going to be hurt tremendously with draft pick status, with cap status going forward. But if we're going to ever win, it's going to be with Matthew Stafford and giving him everything possible to do it. So I'm not saying the Cowboys would win the championship, but it's the only way to do it in the history of the NFL since the salary cap, and especially since you know quarterback contracts have just exploded on the percentage they get on the cap. You have to L.A. Rams it to even give yourself a chance with a Dak Prescott. And we've seen proof that it can happen with a Matthew Stafford. But I'm just going to reiterate your point. You have to go about 50 to 100 yes. million over the cap in the future where you are screwed for two years. And here's the reason that I'm fine with that. I know this method the Cowboys use does not work. It doesn't work to get you to the Super Bowl. It doesn't work to win you the Super Bowl. It doesn't work to even get you to the NFC Championship game. So I'm fine with it. And I remember this vividly last year, and people were so mad. We talked about the Cowboys flipping some switches on some other contracts. And essentially what that means is most modern NFL contracts are constructed in terms of you can transfer. Now some will add void years, but you can transfer money to be part of the signing bonus or part of the guaranteed money. And then that will help you kind of like redistribute the cap hit on a per year basis. So whenever we say that, that's the shorthand right. for that. Is I remember Steven said, well, you know, you can carry the you can carry the money over for next year. It it kind of felt like you're a kid who never gets a good Christmas present. And you found out your mom or dad got this huge bonus. And they were like, oh my God, what are we going to get for Christmas? You know what we're going to get? We're going to get a head start and saving for next year's Christmas presents. <laughs> you're like, what? This, dude, we haven't even had this year yet. Why would you do that? And they're like, but you just wait till next year. And next year gets here. And they're like, well, there are some economic factors that took over and blah, 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 blah. And that's why I hate when they talk about carrying over salary cap money. Because I'm like, why? Because you're going to effectively use it next year. And you're right about Steven. This is Steven. This is how he operates. We've talked with him about this before. We've asked him about this before and the, it, I just they are not effective with their use of the salary cap either pull in the budget or blow out the budget and deal with the consequences for the next two to three years let's say they are terrible for the next two to three years so you knew they weren't going to win the Super Bowl either way but at least by just totally changing your mindset maybe you'd get a different shot Maybe it wouldn't work. And guess what? You could tag on four more years that the Cowboys yeah. won't win a Super Bowl. Just like the last 28 years. Well, and I just assume this is Jerry has given a lot of responsibility to Stephen Jones to kind of run the football stuff. I mean, Jerry's still there saying, sure, sounds good, son. Is I think that Stephen is getting confirmation from daddy that daddy's happy. Yeah. So probably. So I when, don't know. So when they win twelve games and they lose in the playoffs, and this year when they win ten or eleven games and lose in the playoffs, as long as I made Daddy happy, Daddy lets me run the franchise. So I, I think, and then eventually, I don't know, five years from now, twenty years from now, when Jerry isn't around anymore, right. then Stephen 
satisfied daddy and daddy lets him run the football stuff and Charlotte runs the stuff that she's running and Jerry Jr. does the stuff that he's doing. But I, if daddy was unhappy, then Steven would have to change his ways, I think. But yeah. daddy's happy. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry for all the people that are sad by my Christmas analogy. Apparently it might have might hit a little too hard. I apologize. That was not my intent. And from the 817, Kevin just explained why so many people, including myself, are out on the Cowboys. I, and Mike, we've talked about this before. I don't begrudge people that say that. I, I just always say I am not out yeah. on the Cowboys. But for everybody that is, I understand why they have tested your patience to the utmost degree. And there's probably, I don't know, if tell me if I'm right or wrong on this number. We're out of time. But 50 million Cowboy fans around the world. Am I high or low on that No, number? I think that's. I think that's probably about right. So if 5% are out, what do you still have? I mean, you still have 47 what, million, 5, 5 million. Yeah, I think you're all right. So they're fine. And guess what? They'll pick up another million fans this year because their dad told their son or daughter, we're Cowboys fans. And and that's, that's the part that really frustrates me is, you know, Brandon loves the Cowboys because I love the Cowboys. I love the Cowboys because my mom loved the Cowboys. Like, it is a generational thing, and it sucks now to pass it down and be like, well, why do we follow the Cowboys? Because we were born here? I mean, yeah, I guess. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 through the fan. Coming up next, move to a more positive topic. Mavs smash the Bulls, and will Daniel Gafford ever miss a shot again? I say no. We'll do it next right here on the fan. DFW's number one Cowboys podcast. 1.2 million downloads and counting. Love
Restaurants in Texas. DQ, that's what I like about Texas. This segment of the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. Life is unpredictable, accidents happen. Frankel and Frankel are the go to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one has been in an accident, contact Frankel and Frankel for a free consultation at truckwreck.com or call 214 333 3333. Here's a turnover by Kobe White. A catch inside. It's a finish for Daniel Gafford for his 23rd consecutive made field goal. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 through the fan. That number is now up to 28 as the Dallas Mavericks beat the Chicago Bulls 127 to 192. Or excuse me, <laughs> that's not right. 127 to 92. There we go. I thought you said it right the first time. What did you say? I said 127 to 192. Uh, so that was that one. That would have been <laughs> my listening skills. There, there are times when the Mavericks defense makes me think that's possible. This game was essentially over after the first quarter. But if you kept with it, I yeah. think it was three, maybe four minutes into the third quarter where the Mavericks just immediately pick back up and put the boots to him, and then you knew the game was over. For the most for most of the way, this was not a competitive game whatsoever. I watched most of it. Uh I I there, I didn't watch mo I didn't watch barely any of the fourth quarter. And to that's be what I was gonna say. The reason why I dipped out is it was like four minutes in the third because they came right out and extended yeah. the lead back out. And I was like, all right, I think we're good. I was playing basketball in the backyard with my son. Sorry about beating him three out of four times. Woo! He thinks I'm a lucky three point shooter. I was gonna ask you, were you mad when you lost? He beat me fair and square. He just was knocking down his that shot. Did not answer my question. Were you mad when you lost? No, I wasn't mad, okay. but I needed a rematch. Okay, but that's I'm, fair. I'm I'm old enough at this point, and he's 15 and a freshman and in great shape that we come back inside and take like a five to ten minute break. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. I need I need just about five to ten minutes. You know, it's like after the first quarter. Sure. I need a little bit of I need a little bit of a break here and then I can get back out there and whoop your butt again. But I, I, I he was mad in the fourth quarter that he took they took Luca out and I said, Jake, it's not good basketball when yeah. you're just hunting a three point shot. For how long are we going to hunt this three point shot so we can have a thirty point triple double? I'm like he had an awesome game. He did. Why make it into this theatrical thing of we're up by forty points, but he has to hit a three pointer to get thirty? And I so I appreciated Jason Kidd. He gave him two shots. Luca got fouled on one of them and then said, you fouled me, I can't believe it, and then allowed a, a uncontested dunk on the other side in a fast break. And I'm like, Jake, that's just not good basketball. It's yeah. just not a good way to – I know they've won this game and he wants his 30, but that's really not the major story. The major story was they were great. They excelled. The center position, if I remember this, was 44 points and 14 rebounds from the two guys. That is correct. That is correct. I thought it might have been 15, but that is correct. Just real quick, the uh, Bengals are trading Joe Mixon to the Texans. So – just like we did yesterday, we'll sprinkle in news and notes all throughout the day. And we okay. already told you about the Cowboys long snapper. If you're hoping for more Cowboys news today, I hope you're right, but I might not anticipate it. I wasn't yeah. hopeful on this real quick, but I thought to myself when I saw Joe Mixon getting released because I'm struggling. Who did Cincinnati sign as a running back? There's a zillion transactions yesterday. They signed a new running back. I'll just say this. Nobody special, but I was like, oh. And then I saw that they were getting rid of Joe Mixon, and I thought, well, maybe, I don't know what his market is. He's 27 years old. Right. Joe Mixon, maybe this is a Cowboys situation, but obviously it is a Texas situation, not On a Cowboys. On the move, because 
is that it went with Zach Moss, right? Yeah. Who is, interestingly enough, the player that we talked about once the deal got above $4 million, that the Cowboys theoretically were like, mm, I think I'm out on that. Yeah, so Zach Moss, thank you. There you go. All right. I, I was going to throw this out there for the Mavs. And I know we don't really necessarily agree on this, but I, I think especially now that Gafford has been inserted into the starting lineup and it seems like more logic has prevailed. My prediction now is that the Mavericks will make the top six. I realize it is very tight and, pro and realistically your best hope is fifth right now, but you can't fall lower than 10. I know mathematically you could, but for all intents and purposes, you could go as high as 5th, and you could fall as low as 10th. I believe that the Mavericks are going to make their way into the top 6. And I, I hope you're right, and I think they have the path to do it. Uh, they do. And I was just going to say, I think now that they've seen how Gafford works in the starting lineup and how you can still get plenty of time with Lively, and hopefully also that means Gafford in the final 5 minutes, or at least yeah. a chunk of the final 5 minutes, I think they are going to make the top six. I understand all the reasons they might not, though. So I don't have this pulled up. Maybe I do because I was doing some research yesterday, but no, I don't. I clicked off of it. I know that their schedule gets tough here coming up for a second. I know it's not a tough schedule overall, but I do know that they're about to play Oklahoma City and, and Golden State. Denver. Is Golden State their next game? Yes, Golden State is in their next game. A couple things about that is Steph Curry is not going to play. And then on the other side of that, you, like you said, Oklahoma City and Denver, but then you have San Antonio, a pair against Utah, a pair against Sacramento. So yeah, and Sac's a team you're competing with that is to true. either get the home home court in the play-in situation or the sixth seed. I can see their path. I just, Kevin, after them going on that seven-game winning streak and beating Phoenix out of the break, and I'm thinking this is a different team. Yeah. Tim Legler, who I respect a lot. He thought this was a different team. This is a team you need to watch out for. And then they spent two weeks going, I don't know if basketball is my thing. Right. So I just don't know at what point. Basketball's their thing again now, Yeah, though. it is. But at what point are they going to slip into, I don't know if basketball's fun or not. Like, I, I don't know. And so that's why I'm scared to go. I'm, I'm scared to go down that path with you because I I believed in this team after the All-Star break. And then they just crapped on me. Yeah. And so I'm like, are they going to do that again? Why won't they do I would ask you this question. Why do you think the Mavericks won't slip back into basketball's not that big of a deal in the regular season? I honestly think it goes back to two things. The presence of Daniel Gafford, who again, I know was there when they struggled, and also an advantageous schedule coming up. Because you're right about OKC and Denver. But outside of that, man, Sacramento is a team that you're competing with but it's not like it's an insurmountable obstacle. Utah is not good. San Antonio is one of the, if not the worst team in the league. You have several more games against Golden State, who they've been struggling to find a real identity all year. you still got a couple of games against Houston, Detroit, Charlotte. Like You have plenty of games coming up against teams that are just not that good. And even if... You don't give optimal effort. That would irritate me. But I still think you can pick up a lot of those wins. I have eight automatic wins on their schedule left. I did this last time. Okay. So I can't name them. I'm, I'm pulling the schedule back up. I'm not going to name them. But I remember looking at the schedule going, for me, they have eight automatic wins. And they have I, 17 games left. Yeah. And so to me, worst case scenario is eight and wait, nine. eight and nine the rest of the way. And that is worst case scenario, which you would be – probably be the nine or 10 seed if you end up going eight and nine down I the stretch. See that. Um, and I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to win 10 more games. And I hope to your point. Now I'm going to ask you this because I've been trying to do this. They're at 37 wins. 48 is going to get them the six seed. Yes. Okay. Cause I think they're going to have to get to 50. Ooh, okay. That's interesting because going 11 and six, down the stretch would put you at 48 and 34. You are a game back, but I understand you still have to leapfrog two teams. Luckily, you play Sacramento twice in that run. Back and the thing back. is, is you don't have the Sacramento tiebreaker known yet because you have two games left. True. So now it's almost impossible in the NBA to win both of these splits when you're playing a team around your 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 level. Sacramento has about the same record as you do. You have the Phoenix 
You do have the Phoenix tiebreaker. So that's the good thing. I don't know. So if you can hold the Phoenix and the Sacramento tiebreaker, that would help you out tremendously. Because if you get the six seed, I would think, Kevin, you're thinking you get it by like one game. Oh, it's not. I'm not saying. You're not going to feel like going into like at Oklahoma City on Sunday. You're like, we don't have to play basketball. We're good here. I definitely agree. Maybe the hope is, is Oklahoma City doesn't have to play basketball that game. So at Oklahoma City isn't as tough of a game as you would think it might be. And unfortunately, obviously, their world has tightened up a lot in terms of falling all the way down to number three. But you could be right. It could be a game that does not particularly matter to them whatsoever. And Oklahoma City might go, gosh, if Mavericks win this game, they're the sixth seed. That that might mean they want to go all in. Or they might go, we don't want to show them anything on what we might do. Let's sit out and just take this matchup as we're home court advantage against Dallas. I have no clue how Oklahoma City is going to play out. Can that- you do me a favor, though? Uh-huh. For maybe the next couple of days, will you not use the phrase all in? Because it still hurts just a little bit. All in? Yeah. Because of the Cowboys. Oh, okay. Well, I was trying to think of the year that we lost to the Houston Rockets when they had James Harden and Dwight Howard and Josh Smith, and they crushed us. Because it was something like all in, and you just had to change one letter. It was, oh, we are one? Okay. Because I remember going to are done. We are done was that series. So that was the Rondo I quit series. And I remember they were passing out shirts at the AAC because I went to the one game the Mavericks won. It might have been down 3-0 in the series, or it was 2-0, and then they won and then lost, lost. I thought I think it might have been 2-0, yeah. And it was like I was looking at these shirts after the first two games, and I'm like, if you just put a D on this, I think this explains where we're at here. (laughs) I did want to throw this out there. We talked about Luka did not get to the 30-point triple-double, although still – a top-notch night. I don't mean that in a disparaging he way is awesome. whatsoever. Is He was also named, not shockingly, the Western Conference Player of the Week after a week in which he averaged 37.7 points a game, 10.3 rebounds, 10.7 assists, and more than a steal a game. Yeah. Unbelievable. I, I do know that coming up here soon, I think tomorrow, I'm going to be on radio in San Francisco, obviously, because well, of the Golden State Warriors game. Sense tomorrow morning or i'll be on tomorrow morning they play uh tomorrow night is they are going to crush me when i say luca is by far the best offensive player in the game and i don't think it's close i'm not saying he's the best player in the game because he's not but i do think he's the best offensive player and i i don't think it's close they're going to kind of but he's a ball hog but he's right because i think he is to your point i do think draymond green is more hated But I think as Draymond Green is just an okay player now in his career, and I do think Luka is probably around the country in NBA circles the most hated player that's a great player. Because if you look at all the other great players, I don't know how much hate is on those guys. And I really appreciate this text from the 817. This is why I have been for the last eight years and will continue to be a Tolo. You and the rest of the crew are honest and look at both sides on a consistent basis. Y'all are crazy, joke around a lot, and it's fantastic. It really helps on rough days. Your dedication to giving back every year with peace of thought and my possibilities is exceptionally admirable. Hey, I truly appreciate this station's current staff. And by the way, if you're interested, Community Ball, May the 4th. Me and Corey are going to host that again for my possibilities. Can you dress up as a Star Wars character? You know what? I will check on Did that. you ever think of that? I When did, you just said May I the honestly fourth? did not. Now I have some calls to make. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Can Coming you get a Chewbacca next. tuxedo? That would be awesome. I don't know the staying power of that bit after our like monologue. And everyone's like, ha, ha, ha. And then the rest of the night, they're like, there's that idiot in the Chewbacca tux. Coming up next, it's time for our resident At my idiot. daughter's wedding. It's my- Kevin, get a regular tux. <laughs> Stop chewbacca in it everywhere. It's time for Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bassick. Let's talk about what I saw yesterday from Wyatt Langford. Yes. Impressive? Most, Most impressive. impressive. Coming up in the next...
dealer in the world, more Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas, this is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105 Through the Fan, where the Atlanta Falcons are throwing out money left and right. Bears wide receiver Darnell Mooney gets three years for $39 million. You Mooney, Mooney! And that's why I wanted to say that, because you might not care. But Mike engaged in a spirited rendition of that during the break. I said, yeah! 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 yeah. 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 Mooney, Mooney! Ooh, but if it was... Did the Cowboys spend any money? No. No. Yeah. By the way, Shaq Barrett agrees to a one-year deal worth up to $9 million with the Miami Dolphins. Now. By the way, so when people are asking, what's the market for Devin White? What's the market for this? What's the market for that? Just see the early numbers that are going around and realize why the Cowboys probably won't play in those games. Now. Baseball Nuggets with Mike Bashak. Baseball Nuggets brought to you by Nobody. And I feel like the song for the Dallas Cowboys right now is Flavor Flav. I ain't got nothing for you, man. You want $10 for what? I ain't got nothing for you, man. You better, man, kiss my butt. That's the Cowboys free agency. So just wrap <laughs> that we, one up. Do we send that to G-Bag of the day? I, I feel like we have to, right? Okay. All right. So Flavor Flav is the sun. Public enemy number one. All right, so yesterday, let's talk about the spring training game. And I know you're like, whatever, spring training game. Well, guess what? I watched it, and it was fun. You know why it was hey, fun? You know what, Because the Rangers scored 15 runs. If you're bringing that level of flavor, flav energy all show, I will not say who cares to any of these things. All right, so the Rangers get 17 hits on 15 runs, and here's what I want to talk about. It was in L.A. Sorry, it was in L.A. It was at the Angels uh, place that's about an hour bus ride. That's the longest one you have to take. It might be an hour 15. That's the only one that's really not fun in Arizona. That is like an awesome drive in Florida. You're like, yes, we only have to go an hour and 15 minutes on the bus today. Right. Like that is like one of your shortest trips in Florida in Arizona. It's your longest trip. So that's one of the reasons why Arizona is way better for spring training than Florida. Also, you rarely have to deal with bad weather. I know there's been a few days okay, yeah. of bad weather in Arizona, but literally in Florida around this time, it's going to rain at least twice a week where you're going to have to work underneath the, you know, you're going to have to do your bullpen in the cage. You're going to have to just take cage work that day because it's raining yeah. and you're not going to get in your regular work. But I wanted to walk. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. This might derail your entire topic, though. I, I, I'm i sorry. I don't recall offhand what led to the split of these states oh so long ago. Florida and Arizona? Yeah, in terms of why half go here, half go here. Do you? <sighs> I feel like be, I should know this. I don't know this, but I do know there used to be way more teams in Florida. Texas Rangers used to be in yeah. Florida. The Kansas City Royals used to be in Florida. When I was with Cleveland, they used to be in Florida. The Dodgers used to be in Florida, right? All these teams. Nobody, as far as I know, usually moves lately from Arizona to Florida. Florida. Because it just doesn't make sense. The weather is better in Arizona. But when you look at it a long time ago, not in a galaxy far, far away. But sure. A long time ago, they were, I think, like the Yankees used to do spring training in Arkansas. I think when you go. What? Yeah. So when you go I to like. recall that. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What are, the hot springs. Yeah. I've been to the hot springs. It's been about a decade since I took a family trip there. But you'll see like these. This is where Babe Ruth hit a home run in spring training or whatever. And like spring training here. And yeah, they used to have. They used to have spring training kind of the way that Cowboys do training camp or the NFL does training camp. They're just in random spots. And you kind of just kind of had inner squad games. Oh, okay. Or you would have a traveling team come in because it was way back when. Sure. But then they decided Florida would be a great place for a lot of teams to train. And then you could have these games in Florida. By the way, I'd love to bring on my father at one point and talk about how bad it was when he was in spring training. Their outfield grass was St. Augustine. Whoa. That's just weeds. Yeah. It's not even grass that you'd ever play a baseball game on. Good and enough. It's just like, yeah, St. Augustine, it's, gra it's green. Deal with it. So, anyways... You had some in Arizona and then a lot in Florida. 
But over time, Arizona has really taken over. But I think they just Partially decided because of the weather. It's just weather wise. Yeah. It's just best. And then they seem to really get a lot of people from the north want to get out of the north or the east or the Midwest and get to Florida for like a spring vacation. So they, they I don't know who determined this when it was all decided on. It's going to be just Florida and just Arizona because I've always thought, gosh, I think Texas could host like six teams. Uh, but then you've seen our weather in yeah. February and March. Then you're like, I guess we can't. Like, you do not have the consistent it's weather that Florida and Arizona have. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, going to yesterday against the Angels, I'm watching the game, and Evan Carter is hitting off a lefty to start the game. Sandoval for the Angels. You might, If you really followed the Rangers last year, you might remember this lefty for the Angels. And he is a hard-throwing lefty that lacks command. He just struggles to throw strikes. Well, Evan Carter gets to a one-two count, and you're just like, well, this is good. He's getting lefty action. Let's see how it goes. He does draw a walk, but the pitches aren't that close. Okay. But he does draw a walk. I, I'm giving you a positive. He faces a lefty. He draws a walk. Then uh, Wyatt Lankford comes up, and he hits a ball to right field. Wyatt Lankford's like, dang it, I flew out. Evan Carter's on first base. He's like, I can't tag on this. It's too shallow, but I can't get too far off the base. I don't want to get doubled up. And then the person picks the ball up after it takes as a bounce. And I go, that looks like Willie yeah. Calhoun. Except he's a lot heavier than like when we think of when Willie Calhoun kind of lost some weight. And with, right. he looks like Willie's a little bit heavier Egg to be it. nice. And everybody thought it was an out. Wyatt Langford thought it was an out when he hit it. Evan Carter thought it was an out when because he hit he it. Because he was like just kind of hedging off of first base a little bit. And you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of three years ago when we would have Nomar Mazzara and Willie Calhoun and you would go, that's a hit. I mean, he could. They, they sprinted to the ball. Willie yeah. Calhoun was giving all the effort in the world to get to the ball. Willie Calhoun did everything possible for him to get to the ball. He couldn't get to it. Oh, Garcia just catches that ball easy. Evan Carter catches that ball easy. I'm not saying they're camped under the ball and waiting for three seconds for it, but they're slowing down at the end and catching the ball on the move. That was that fly ball. But Willie can't get to that ball. Yeah. And so it's a hit for Wyatt Langford. So the first two at bats, not super impressive, but they did both reach base. And then the Rangers go on and score a whole bunch of runs in the first inning. But then we get to the third inning. I thought this was really important here. Evan Carter is still facing Sandoval, the lefty who throws mid nineties approximately. And he's able to hit a line drive to left field. And you know what it reminded me of his approach there and I've been watching this with Evan Carter, and I don't know if this is going to be his approach. It looks like against lefties, he's going to give up the inside corner. He's going to get jammed by inside pitches. He's like, if you throw hard inside, lefty on lefty, I'm going to give you that pitch. But I'm going to cover the outside part of the plate, and I'm going to cover it kind of Ichiro style. Okay. And I'm going to cover it kind of, if you want to go way back in time, Wade Bog style. And it's like, I'm just going to, against lefties, I don't know if this is really his approach, but as a pitcher, looking at his approach, I know what his approach looks like to me and how I have to attack him. He looks like he wants the ball away to slap the ball to left field. I don't think that's a bad approach. Not at all. I, I, don't, I don't care about his slugging percentage against lefties. I care about his on-base percentage, his batting average slash on-base percentage. I don't care if he's batting fifth in the lineup. Jared Sandler did a great job of breaking down. Yeah, he really did. Why he should bat fifth. He's probably going to bat second to start the year because Seager's probably not going to start the year uh, on the active roster because of his injury. So Evan Carter's probably going to bat second. But if against lefties and steal the Cubs, your opening day, uh, opening day will be against a lefty pitcher for the Cubs. If he's just concentrating on, I'm going to only swing at, Pitches away in the strike zone, lefty on lefty, and I'm going to just try to slap it to left field. And if they beat me on the inside pitch, they beat me on the inside pitch. Because the other day he got jammed a little bit with a lefty, and he kind of, I say, farted the ball over the second baseman. Usually you say dink farted. Yeah, but but it's a hit, right? Yeah. He just So I think against lefties, he's not concerned at all about hitting the ball hard. He just wants to put the ball in play to the left side and get some hits. And I think that's old school, and I think it's a great approach. And then, hey, do your damage, your doubles damage, your homers damage, damage early on in your career against righties that you feel comfortable with. Uh, Wyatt Lang he got thrown out trying to steal second and was out by by a mile, honestly, which is fine. You're practicing your jumps and everything right. like that. Evan Carter walks, so we move on to their next at bats. And then Evan Carter uh in his next at bat, um, I'm trying to get to it. 
He ends up uh, grounding into a force out. Big deal. We get to bat 7 million times because we scored a whole bunch of runs in this game. 15. But when we get to the sixth inning, Evan Carter hits a line drive to left field, and I, he did another good job on a good at bat. This was against a righty, but Evan Carter just looks like that complete hitter to me. He's going to use all fields. He's not trying to pull the ball. You can't really shift him that hard in the infield. You can shift him, and you can put your shortstop up the middle, but I don't think he's afraid to hit line drives the other way. And the thing I appreciate about that is going into this game, I think he was 3-for-12 against left-handed pitching with a walk, and I know you said focus more on you know, on base percentage and stuff like that. But I was honestly encouraged because last year, regular season playoffs, he was one for 18 yeah. off of left-handed hitting. So if you get to the point where you're, let's even say 250, 275 against lefties with an on base percentage above 300. Yeah. I feel like you're, you're going to yeah. turn out with a solid year for yeah. him. I think he'll, if he hits 250 with a 320 on base percentage against lefties this year, he's going to make the all star team and, and possibly win rookie of the year. The problem is, is I think Wyatt Langford is. Have you seen how much those odds have tightened up? Yeah. Is Evan Carter was uh, plus 275. Yeah. And now they're hit, those two and, and Jackson Holiday are all, depending on where you when, go, really close. When we were at the Super Bowl, I know this. Because Wyatt Langford was plus seven hundred, did you? And you made, yeah, you made that bet. So, I so, like it. So Wyatt Langford comes up after Evan Carter singles, and Wyatt Langford gets thrown inside hard in after fouling off the first pitch, and then the guy dots the outside corner with a fastball. It's one and two, and then this—it's a right-handed pitcher. Sorry, I don't know his name off the top of my head, but. You know, relief pitcher type of guy, big relief pitcher, throws mid 90s, right handed, and he throws a great slider, a strike three slider. If you don't swing at it, it's going to be in the bottom uh, outside corner for strike three. And if you do swing at it, does that make sense? Like, so oh, it does. Down and away. Except it wasn't strike three. And Wyatt Lankford, and I don't know who was doing the game for the Angels, but was just talking about how is this dude built like this at this age? He looks like Mike Trout. I'm just telling you, he's not maybe a shoulder big as Mike Trout, but his legs and he's he's Mike Trout like. And when he swung at that breaking ball, that best case scenario, you hit a line drive or a hard ground ball up the middle, and he yanks that mf'er at about 105 miles an hour and one hops the left field wall down the line about 20 feet away from it being foul. So no no damage in it. Oh no, is it going to hook foul? He it was, and he crushes that pitch for. Uh, a double and then moves to third bases. They tried to throw Evan Carter out at home and he's way too fast to throw out. He scores easily on a ball hit over 100 miles an hour to left field from first base. He scores easily. And it's just like the, both of these guys can fly. They run differently, but they can fly and most likely they're going to be batting second and third on opening yeah. day or opening night. And I saw that and I said, he's batting, I it. he's batting third on opening day. Wyatt Langford's batting third on opening day. I know that they're not going off of scouting reports right now, but when you do that to him, when you set him up for strike three and he crushes the ball like Mike Trout on a pitch that best case scenario, you can hit a single the opposite way or a single up the middle and he hits a rocket double and pulls it. Wyatt Langford has MVP stuff. He's not going to win MVP his rookie year. I don't think he's going to each row this thing and win both. But I'm telling you, Wyatt Lankford does things already that only the greatest of the greats do. I would say on that pitch, Mike Trout, when he's healthy, can do that. Ronald Acuna Jr. on that pitch can do that. Because I'm looking at right-handers. But I run out of anybody. Mookie Betts can't do that. Mookie Betts is great. Mookie Betts is a Hall of Famer. Mookie Betts can't do that to that pitch. He can get a single, but he can't do that. Wyatt Langford's one of maybe five people in the ma in major leagues right now that can do what he did to that pitch. So it sounds like if I already had a couple autographed baseballs and bats of Wyatt Langford for peace thon that'd probably be a cool thing. Yes, and I think it will go down to, I think as long as they're both healthy, Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford will finish first and second in Rookie That's of what the I'm year. talking about, and that feeds perfectly into our next segment. What is your bold Rangers prediction for 2024? We'll do it next right here on The Fan. DFW's number one Cowboys podcast. 1.2 million downloads and counting. Love of the Star with top insiders Brian Bronis and Bobby Bell.
From our fan studio, secured by DFWsecurity.com, it's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan, where there is always a lot to think about on this station. 877-881-1053. Now, we're going to talk about the Rangers. we got plenty of other fun stuff and maybe not so fun stuff to get to later in the show. But right now... We're going to talk about the Rangers. Do you have a bold prediction for the Rangers in 2024? And now I know this is also something that Jared Sandler threw out on his Twitter. And by the way, we're going to have him on at 120. It's at Jared Sandler. If you love the Rangers, hopefully you're rocking with us. But you should also be following him on social media because he yeah. is on top of all things Texas Rangers. If you didn't see his kind of Instagram, Twitter, social media post on why he thinks the lineup should be a certain way, Stop it is not. it is great, and I totally agree with him. From the nine zero three, I love this bold prediction: the Rangers fill up the entire starting lineup at the All Star Game this year. That would be, and then they'd still okay. get left off of the MLB.com top ten list. Yeah, and. Probably, yeah, they're not going to get any hype for the next year. I think that it would definitely change if they repeat what they did last year, win 90 games, make a playoff run. I won't even say win the World Series, but if they made it to like the ALCS, I think all of a sudden they'd be like, hey, man, this Josh Young and Jonah Heim, they're like, they might be good. They're pretty good at this baseball thing. From the 214 bold prediction, the Rangers win 95 plus games and have a top five bullpen. I will tell you this, despite the concerns about the depth of the starting rotation, if this is a top five bullpen in baseball, I also think we yeah. will win 95 plus games. I agree with you. Because last year, if you had a top five bullpen in all of baseball, let's just say that would be top three in the American League, you win over 100 games. games. It, you would have won a I said preposterous it, I, amount of probably, games. Probably... Maybe I'll take it to 102? 102. Okay. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. 102 is fair. I think they would have won 102 games with uh, one of the best bullpens in baseball last year. By the way, if you want to watch the Rangers, they are on channel 21 today at 3 p.m. Jared Sandler and David Murphy will be on that call. So if so you could watch a game while listening, G Bag yes, Nation, multitask yeah, it up. Could, I like it. But if you're like, oh, yeah, I never. Well, today on channel 21, you can watch the Rangers and Cleveland. Uh, it's. Shane Bieber on the mound for Cleveland and uh, Heaney on the mound for the Rangers. From the 940, bold prediction, <clears throat> Rangers trade for a starter. I'm assuming that means a starting pitcher. I, I have to admit, I think I would feel more comfortable with that going into the season. I realize come June, they're hoping that Scherzer and then July, Malley, August, DeGrom. Like, I don't know if it'll play out exactly right. like that, but they think they're going to kind of you know, kind of work their way in like that. I in the think that half. by July 1st, Chris Young will have a good idea if he has to or not. Because if Max Scherzer is back and he's made a couple starts and he's looking solid, you know, and then Mally's about ready to come back, I think he's, hey, is this our number one need to yeah. push us to the next level? It could be. But you don't anticipate it in the first half no, until things play out. I, I don't think so. The other thing, too, is we know how almost impossible it is to make trades in the first two months of the season. That's and right fair. now, you know, it's just it's really tough to make a major – trading for Dylan Cease today is just not happening. Trading for Dylan Cease in April and May just isn't happening. Chicago is going to play this out. To they want three desperate teams in July bidding against each other. Although I will say there's been some buzz that perhaps the Yankees have walked back around to kick the tires a little bit. Yeah. That will be depending on obviously yeah. what happens. With and by the way, team. Aaron Judge is sitting out now. He has ab discomfort. So he's one of those guys Ooh. that you always like, if he's healthy, 62 home runs. But what's the percentage that he's going to stay healthy enough to repeat his 2022 season? And I guess I made one of my bold predictions already. Which I... 
totally agree with. You go with it, and I'll just, uh, you know, agree. Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford will finish one, two in Rookie of the Year voting. Do yeah. you have a Do you have a favorite? I agree with you. I just said that. I I think that too. Do you think one will win it and one will get second? Like, do you have I'm that bold I'm going to go prediction? with a slight lean toward Evan Carter. Just because I've already seen him play at the highest pressure-filled levels. I have no doubt that Wyatt Langford's going to kick ass. But I'm going to go slight lean towards Evan Carter. Though I would be fine either way. You know what's going to be interesting in this is this is, I believe this too, is it'll matter on the voters. What Evan Carter did last year will have a little bit of weight. Because they're going to be like, dude, should we like vote for him? Because what he did in the playoffs last year. I I'm not saying see that. It'll just be like a 10%, maybe, or 5% advantage. Well, that could be all you need. Right. And then Evan Carter's a better defensive player than Wyatt Langford. So how much will defense play a part in this? And I do think Wyatt Langford's going to have better power numbers yes. than Evan Carter. So yes. then it'll be like, can Evan Carter beat Wyatt Langford, his own teammate, at this rookie of the year thing based off of more complete player while Wyatt Langford could be a dude who like ends up having 32 home runs and 40 doubles. And I don't think Evan Carter, I think will be a guy more like 20 home runs and 35, 40 doubles. I could see that. Now we asked for bold predictions. Mm -hmm. They're not always good. Bold predictions from the eight one seven bold prediction. The Rangers will win 82 games this year. I, I, I think we're all probably in agreement any, that could happen with, know, with yeah. the starting pitching. But any run that finishes not in the playoffs is going to feel like a disappointment yes. as the defending world champions. That just makes sense. From Especially the, with the extra spot. You know, you think of now six teams make it. Yes, so. absolutely. From the 4-6-9, Wyatt Langford will play center field on opening day. Now, that's I, I do not believe, not. I think, if you told me Evan Carter plays center because they've been trotting him out there some, and Wyatt Langford plays left. I would believe that. I have to admit, I would be pretty stunned if yeah. Wyatt Langford He's, took center field. They're not even giving him a yeah. rep in center field. He hasn't played one second of center field in spring training. In fact, they're just concentrating on him playing left, left and only left field. And there's still some work to be done from so the fielding perspective. They're moving there. Carter around. Carter, we know, played, Carter played some field. left field yeah. last year, obviously, in the playoffs. is playing right field some. Uh, I guess he's playing center a little bit, so... I think Carter's the one they feel more comfortable with moving around and just saying, Wyatt, you're our left fielder, hopefully for the next 20 years. From the 254, listen to all these things they're predicting, and you can see why they predict a repeat. Nasty Nate will win 17 games. Mad Max will win 12 games. Let me tell you this. If Max Scherzer wins 12 games this year, we're flying, man. This team is going to be unstoppable. I think he's only going to get 15 starts. Hey, unstoppable. Evan Carter... <laughs> Rookie of the year, Corey Seager, MVP, Rangers win the World Series in five games. I mean, look, if all of those yeah. things happen, I also believe right. that that will happen. So I still, I've brought this up before. It. Should I just predict them to win 84 games and just miss the playoffs? Because that's what I predicted last year. Yes. So do I do you the should. same prediction, yes. even though I think they're better? Because here's my bold prediction. Obviously, I, I'm with you on the rookie of the year thing. And I think Jackson Holiday is going to compete very strongly in the sure. category. But... Here's my prediction. The Rangers are considered the best offense in the American League. So I, I don't, you know, is it run yeah. scored? Is it on base percentage? Is it batting average? Like there's a di there's different ways to say that's the number one team. There's different categories. Usually it goes by run scored. I do think the Rangers are going to have the best offense in the American League. The only reason I won't say in all of baseball is I wonder about the Dodgers and the Braves. Because those lineups are tremendous. Fine. If you end up shaking out at third, yeah, great. But all of a I sudden, accept. the the Aaron Judge Juan Soto effect is already struggling because Aaron Judge is already dealing with ab discomfort in spring training. And then uh, I look at the Astros, and I think they're going to have a great offense too. But I do think the Rangers, even with injuries. You just go, well, now we have Wyatt Langford and Evan Carter. Yeah. And we have Ezekiel Duran who's filled in well. And Walsh is having a he good spring training. Run. Yeah. So yes, you just start is. looking at And Foscue's a 14th overall pick. And Foscue was okay yesterday. He didn't do anything. that I'm like, whoa, Justin Foscue. But there was nothing. I'm like, oh, no, Justin Foscue either. So I just think the depth here. So when you have guys that need days off, you're still going to have a tremendous lineup. Yeah. And 
You're right about the injuries thing. I Unfortunately, that's going to play a part, I'm sure, to a certain extent for every team. You saw that with the Rangers a ton last year. When they 4 6 9, ooh, this is a bold prediction. The Rangers will have the best starting rotation and the worst bullpen. That will feel oddly similar to last year, where your starting rotation was really top notch and your bullpen was really not for the regular season. I brought this yesterday. Here's the hope. You better hope that Seattle doesn't have the best rotation. Yes. Because their rotation on paper does they arguably look, look like the best in the American League. Yes, they do. From the 214. Man, this is interesting. Rangers will win 105 games, which would obviously crush their regular season record, yeah. but lose to the Braves in the Fall Classic. I have to admit, I'd be upset if they lost, but it would still be pretty incredible to see them in the World Series in back-to-back -back years again, kind of reannouncing themselves as, as Corey said last last week, inevitable. If you make it to back-to-back -back World Series, you're like, well, hell yeah. Did I bring this up yesterday on the air? I forget what I say and don't say, and my family makes a lot of fun of me for repeating stories. I could see that. Is Did I bring up the Atlanta Braves and their spring training and if they're trying to do anything different based off of their lack of playoff success I lately? I don't believe so. So, obviously, in 21, they win the World Series. Spring training to fix last year's playoffs. So... I do think the Braves have a great chance to win the World Series this year. But it does get in your head. I do think the Dodgers, even though they have that World Series in 2020 because it was a COVID World Series, I do still think in the back of their minds, even though they've added what they've added, there could be a little bit of like, can we get this done? Now, the Braves did in 21, so I don't think they have this lack of belief in their team. But that's the one thing about the Rangers this year is they do have that, I'm going to basketball here, Rudy Tomjanovich, that heart of a champion. Yes. They do now believe in each other. They they went through a whole season with ups and downs. And there's going to be ups and downs this year. There's going to be times where we don't think they're good at baseball, and there's going to be times that we think they're the best in baseball. But they know when they now look at each other, they know they're champions. And yes. can they use yes. that to their – Ability because that year when Houston won the back to back championships, they were the, the sixth six seed. Yeah, they weren't. Yeah. They didn't have a great regular season, but they made the playoffs and they knew how to win in the playoffs. And I think the Rangers and the Braves know how to win in the playoffs. They just didn't get it done last year. Is it'll be interesting for the Braves on their lack of success last year in the playoffs. But I think for the Rangers, if they can make the playoffs, they know how to win playoff baseball. Now I wanted to throw this out there because a couple of people said the same thing, and this is what I thought was going to happen in the off season. From the 682 bold prediction, Rangers trade Tavares. And from the 214, I think to optimize the Rangers roster, you need to trade Tavares. I, I thought that was going to happen. And it's not a knock against him. It's just looking at the logical uh, outfield depth on this team when you go Adolis in right, Evan Carter in center, and Wyatt Langford in third to make up for a deficit in your starting pitching. That has not been the direction that the Rangers have gone. I cannot rule that out. So I, I could absolutely see that happening. Yeah, I want to go with bold prediction. We're out of time. I want to predict one of these young pitchers who's in the minor leagues is going to have a big jump. I, I want it to happen. I just don't want I just can't predict it. And also Corey Seeger wins the MVP. We're the Can't right. See Masterpiece right here it. on 1053 The Fan. Coming up next. It's time for Masterpiece Theater. Is there a non-holiday movie you watch every year? 877-881-1053. Also want to hear from the Twitch, from the YouTube. We'll do it next right here on The Fan. You can hear Kevin, Corey, and Mike.
segment of the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. We're going to do a little Masterpiece Theater here. And the question is, now Mike, we're going to go back to you in just a second because I'm not trying to pick on you. Is there a non-holiday movie you watch every year? And I know it might seem like I am picking on you. I understand your audio cut. It just makes a lot more sense to me that people would watch holiday movies every single year. Because right. you threw out Christmas Vacation. So I was curious, do people have like, I don't watch it because it's Christmas. Or I don't watch it because yeah. it's Halloween. or I just watch it every single year because of uh, whatever the particular reason is. I guess I just don't watch enough movies to watch something over on a yearly basis i get that i do my wife is like that so i do enjoy movies but i can't tell you a movie that i watch on a yearly or close to a yearly basis unless we include christmas vacation which obviously i would say is a holiday movie yes i would be inclined to agree and that's that's a that's a very very good movie i feel like i watch that just about every single year so that makes all the sense in the world to me mine is clearly and it's not just one movie it's the original three star wars movies i will watch them at least once every single year is there a certain month that you watch it or are you not just, necessarily okay. not it just it sometimes it depends spring yeah. break would logically be a good time but sometimes it happens at a I, different point. In I game. loved Star Wars. I'm disappointed that there were 150 Jedi when Luke was alive. And <laughs> I found that out through cartoons and all of the Disney movies now that Luke was not the last Jedi. <laughs> there was a million of those people all around the world. From I used to say world. Galaxy. Galaxy. That's right. Far, far away. From the 469, because I want to get other people's feedback. And then, Alec, I want to go over to yours because I like yours as well. From the 469, the fifth element. Have to watch it anytime I see it on. I know that's what Corey is like with Blue Streak, is if it's on, he'll watch it. From the 469, Predator and Die Hard. From the 817, I watch Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 at least once a year. Will you do a Ghostbusters marathon this year leading up to, I feel like the new Ghostbusters comes out in, I don't know, like a week or two? Like pretty darn soon. And from the 214, I don't know if this is Derek Holland or not. Kevin, I always watch Dumb and Dumber <laughs> and Ready Player One no matter the time of year. I, I know Dumb and Dumber is an objectively excellent movie. I do like Ready Player One, I have to admit. I've only seen that maybe once or twice. I've seen Dumb and Dumber a ton, and I think it's hilarious. That is an excellent one. And then the timing right here is perfect. From the 817 non-holiday movie, I watch every year on March 13th, which is tomorrow. My Cousin Vinny. I have to admit... If that is because of a specific date, I don't recall that. I know like Back to the Future or in Independence Day makes sense, but Terminator 2 is people watch that on August 29th because that's when the machines take over okay. and we all go to hell. Same thing with Aliens, I believe, is in April. Back to the Future is October or November. Bobby was mentioning that in Crosstalk. So there are certain movies that have dates in them. That you're like, okay, now I'm going to watch on this date to get in line with the movie. Alec, do you want to fire off your audio? Because I know that you got one you watch every year as well. I have a plan. I have a plan. Stace, you're yammering and will leave us with this hurts we can find. Them. Yeah, I'll have to agree with the walking thesaurus on that one. Do not ever call me a thesaurus. It's just a metaphor, dude. His people are completely literal. Metaphors are going to go over his head. Nothing goes over my head. My reflexes are too fast. I would catch him. I'm gonna die surrounded by the biggest idiots in the galaxy. It's Guardians of the Galaxy for me. It's just a feel-good movie. I think Dave Bautista's role as Drax is just perfect. He fits that role so well. Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon. In the third movie, one of the most emotional CGI performances I've ever seen. And I have to admit, I don't love the second one. I like the third one better than the second one for sure. Is that the one me where too. Rabbit is like, they show how he saves all the mutant like animal things? Yes. Yeah. 
that one's it's an emotional roller it coaster is. for sure it is and I, I saw bradley cooper on stern talking about that scene where he just screams when he loses his friend and it was like the the amount of thought and practice that went into that i love that movie i love this franchise but the first one's watch, a feel-good movie for do me you watch just the first one every single year or once you watch the first one, are you like, I gotta go? I gotta watch all three. Usually it's in like three consecutive days. You know, I don't do it all at once. Sure. So like, you know, it'll be like getting ready for bed one night. Like, all right, let's throw on the first one. And then, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll do two and three. From the, man, from the 817 and the 972, I watch V for Vendetta every day on November 5th. And I'm assuming again, I've seen that movie once or twice. I did enjoy it is that's when they decide to blow up is they blow up the clock tower and then they start their that's back recklessness to the future. Ever. no that's no they don't blow up the clock tower and back and to lightning the future. does I, <laughs> and then it doesn't work and then they want money for the clock tower that is true but in this one i i'm pretty sure that's the power of love oh my god then huey lewis comes out <laughs> And the news. Yeah, you've got me there. From the 469. I'm not I'm never gonna win yeah. this argument. From the 469. And the Cubs beat Miami in Billy the Madison. Super Bowl World Who would have known that like elements of that would not be too far off? Billy Madison from the 469 every single year. This one is interesting. From the 817, I watch draft day with Kevin Costner a oh, day no. or two before the NFL draft every year. I will admit, just to hope that the Cowboys get the one, four, and six pick in it somehow. <laughs> The way that they figured that one out, I can't even remember. Like, but it was like they got three picks in the first six by. It was because remember they weren't going to take that one quarterback that everybody yeah. wanted them to take because like Billy Ho or whatever his name was from <laughs> Wisconsin. Like that. I have to admit that it's not my favorite movie, but I do not begrudge I anybody do. who loves that movie. I'll tell you a movie that I haven't seen in a while, but I do love is I love White Man Can't Jump, but I never saw the new one because I don't want to. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Feel, I, have, I haven't seen the new one. I either. have no clue if it's good or not, but I'm like, I Is don't. Jack Harlow in the new one? I can't remember, but I'm like, I don't want to ruin how great the first one was by them doing some new one that's I think, horrible. I think I'm able to compartmentalize, and if I didn't like it, just be like, that's fine. I didn't like it. Like I didn't like the Star Wars sequel movies particularly well, and I'm able to be like, well, that doesn't have to be what happens next. Like I can, I can still continue to have my own idea. I don't know if Disney will allow that or not from the 214 pineapple express every april the 20th i definitely get that from the is that, why is april 20th important because that's 420 and that movie's all about smoking weed oh, okay and this one still makes colby angry from the 214 john wick is a lock colby is currently not speaking to me directly we'll be in group text with me him and corey but he will not speak to me Straight one to one until I watch all of the John Wick movies, of which I have not made that progress just yet. So I need to work on that. From the 682, is there a non holiday movie that you watch every single year? I watch The Godfather, all three of them, at least four times a year, but probably closer to seven. Holy cow. And every single one of those movies is about three hours long. So that's a nine hour investment, they said. Four to seven times per year from the 817 Lord of the Rings trilogy, the extended editions, of course. I I really like those movies. I watched them with my wife. They're not her jam. And after we watched the first one, which is like right at three hours, I believe, I told her there's an extended edition that's almost four hours. And she goes, What? What else could possibly be in that movie? They had things they cut out of that movie. How could that be the case? She tolerated them. She was not a fan. And when I told her they had a version of the third movie that was like four and a half hours long, she emphatically said, no, 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 no. Well, I will say this. The last movie I watched recently with my wife, it took two days to watch. Because she so falls long. asleep. No, because the movie was so long. She did stay up for this, and she read the book, and she thought, this is going to be good. It was a very good movie, very sad. I had to walk out a few times. It made me just, I get mad about, like, the injustice when I know it's okay. true. 
and it was called Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh yeah, the Scorsese movie. It was great. I thought it was a great it's movie. Like three hours and twenty like, minutes. Yeah, three three thirty maybe. But uh, now I would I wouldn't watch that again because it's just so sad and it's real. That's the thing that hurts yeah. is that people did this and it wasn't that long ago. It was less than a hundred years ago that Ooh. they did that. I believe to the Osage. If I'm getting the tribe right, you might have just inspired another masterpiece theater movies that you really like, but they were too sad to watch again and yeah. again. Or at least yeah. it was about a hundred years ago. I, I'm, I'm putting it because they obviously had cars in it. So, do you have? I have been meaning to watch that movie. Do you have baseball movies that you line up at all before opening day? Because obviously we're a little bit more than two weeks away from the nine zero three. This person said, "I watch Bull Durham every single day, every single year." That's awesome. Me, right before opening day, and I would think whether it's. Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, Major League, for love of the game, however you want to stack it up, you could get quite the baseball marathon going before opening day every year. For sure. I mean, obviously, the 42 movie, if yes. you wanted to, like, Jackie that's a Robinson. solid one. That is a really good movie. So th there is baseball. I would say out of all of the, you know, this is for another topic, but I do think baseball does the best job when people direct a baseball movie, the natural. Uh, like, they, they, they do the best job at, movies with that sport i feel like football and basketball and hockey yes there's plenty of movies on those sports too but i feel like baseball they can actually get nominated for awards they that can be true more lasting yeah. than the the other ones i'm not saying there aren't other great sports movies with but the exception of boxing boxing definitely true, true, has true, everybody true. beat on the prestige factor true. but other than that i think you're right about that gosh i've been watching some cubs baseball so that's what i've been doing trying to get ready for my broadcast oh yeah so i was watching kyle hendrick's pitch the other day like in september so that's what i'm doing right now with some of my free time is trying to figure out the cubs lineup uh the cubs pitcher so i have a good idea to give you the best information i can now i'm gonna rattle off a few more real quick movies that you watch non-holiday movies every single year terminator 2 man on fire my cousin Vinny, billy madison from the 317 i watch billy madison doesn't hold up as well as i thought i watched that three years ago and i was like not as funny as i remember but i think happy gilmore does okay that that would be that would I'm be my you. argument i'm with you i'm with you billy madison no and then several people asked about the sandlot and they said does it count because do they count it as a july 4th movie and I said, I don't, I we don't usually think do of watch that as that. a holiday movie, but I get it. We usually watch that on July 4th or right around July 4th. So that is something family-wise, I say that that comes close to me watching almost every year. And then last one I'm going to throw out from the 469, two times a month, blood in, blood out. And I hope I don't get crushed for this. I do believe it is also known as sangre por sangre because when I worked at Blockbuster, we only had one copy of that movie. People wanted to rent that movie all the time, and they were mad that we didn't have more copies, and I always had to be like, I'm sorry, I don't make those decisions, but I still don't think I ever saw it. I assumed it was awesome because every day somebody wanted that movie. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, it's time for Gridiron Gravy. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best wide receiver prospect since next on The Fan. RJ Chop here by your friends.
They're the number one Chevy dealer in the world. More Silverados than anyone else. This is Texas. This is classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Third down and 11 at the 19. McCord over the middle. Harrison Jr. again down the sideline. Maserati Maserati. KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. God, I love him. Right now, it's time to go around the entire NFL and dip into some gridiron gravy. Deep. The number two seed doesn't need free agents. That, that's a great point. Here we go! Damn it. All right. You know what? Actually, are you guys okay with discussing something not fun All to right. start off with? Go. Dak Prescott is in the news for all of the wrong reasons. I, I he is he is countersuing a woman who accused him of sexual assault. I have to admit, and Tolos, Twolos, YouTubers, help me out. I guess I didn't even know that this accusation was out into the world, out in the world, until I saw. The countersuit by Dak Prescott. Did I just miss it? Is this common knowledge? Was it a really long time ago and I had forgotten about it? I had no clue until yesterday. Whoa. So I didn't know. Derrick Henry is not coming to the Cowboys. He's signing with the Ravens. Okay. Two years, 16 million. And I will tell you this. I, I, I'm still totally fine. With not signing that deal. This does feel like a deal that social media is going to blow up and be like, we couldn't find $16 million. We couldn't find $8 million a year for this guy. And then they show incredible highlights of him. I, I'm fine with not picking up a veteran running back. I do think this is going to bother people. Since this is football nugget slash gridiron. We'll gravy, get back to that. Is I would say this about the Derrick Henry situation or free agency in general. Fine. If you're going to rely on the draft, then you have to start letting go of people you know you're not going to sign long-term a year before they're free agents, and you trade them for whatever you can get. I'm just using baseball for an example, and I know it's a very different sport because you have minor leagues and stuff like that. But if you're going to rely on the draft, because right now it's impossible for the Cowboys to fill all the needs through the draft. And it's just impossible to know if 21 and 22 year old young men are going to be able to fill the shoes of veteran players in the NFL. If you know you're not going to use a player for a long time, you trade them for a future third or fourth round pick. Yeah. And you just say, this is how we do it. If we have 10 picks a year, especially let's say seven in the top five rounds every year, I think you can accomplish this. But you have to be man enough to say, we're not signing them long term. Yeah. Let's go get a draft pick or two for these guys. So I don't know who it is, whether it's Biotish last year. If you're like, look, we're, we're not sold on Biotish. Can we trade him for a, a fourth yeah. round pick? And, yeah. and and that way we have an extra pick to fill a linebacker role, whether it's the center role or not. Like, but you have to you have to start forward thinking if you're going to build an organization the way that the Jones family believes you build an organization. And they don't even put all the pieces together in the way that you're if you're gonna do it this way, then you have to think this way too in getting extra picks. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm inclined to agree with you on that from the first design. So you're saying Derrick Henry is not going to be a cowboy. No, yes, that is exactly yeah, okay. what I'm saying. Can I ask you this question? Yes. You're a big Lamar Jackson fan. You like Lamar Jackson. How much do you think this helps out the Ravens? I do because he's such a different runner than Lamar. Because I know, obviously, the knock is, uh, you know, Lamar is not a quarterback. I disagree with that, but I get it. But he's such a different runner than Lamar will obviously hit the sides or try to create space to do something. Or Derrick Henry's like, no, I'll go straight up the middle. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. I get why the Ravens would make this move. I, I just don't like it for the Cowboys. On a short-term deal and where the Ravens are at, as last year they were the best regular season team in football and were a win away from going to the Super Bowl with Lamar Jackson, I think it's a tremendous signing. I think this is, in a way, I'm not saying that they're all in, but when you look at the Ravens and you go, how do we beat 
Kansas City? How do we stay on top of our division? How do we get the number one seed again? I think this is a good deal for... I'm not now predicting Baltimore to go to the Super Bowl, but when everybody was saying, hey, if they couldn't do it last year, they're never doing it, and then they go out and get Derrick Henry, if he has something left, that's a hell of a job. Now, for Dak Prescott, essentially, this is the information that we know as of now, is Prescott and his legal team is suing this woman and of... Uh, of extortion. There was the word. And the claim is that back in January, Prescott's legal team got a letter from this woman's Arlington-based attorneys saying that she is seeking compensation in exchange for not disclosing or pursuing criminal charges in connection with the 2017 sexual encounter. And you know, I don't know the details of clearly what happened in 2017 beyond that, but they sent the letter in hopes of, you know, taking care of this financially. And one of the things that the attorneys said was, despite the tragic events, she's willing to forego pursuing criminal charges along with disclosing this information to the public in exchange for compensating her for the mental anguish that she suffered. The attorney has re requested that Prescott respond to their letter by February 16th. I mean, we're past February 16th, and now the suit has been filed on the other side. So it, it is, look, I don't want to dismiss that this is a serious situation whatsoever, because if this happened, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. And I have no doubt that people get sexually assaulted all of the time, and either nobody believes their story or they don't want to go forward with their story. Or, you know, they don't win their court case. And that is awful, awful, awful. The t the timing, the timeline of this fascinates me because you would think normally you like file the lawsuit or file criminal charges. But instead, they sent the letter and said, we're going to make sure none of this becomes public if you begin negotiations with us or pay the price or whatever. Yeah. And instead, Dak's team has gone on the offensive from my yeah. understanding. And they're like, no, we're suing for extortion. Yeah, and my stance is I have no opinion on this. Uh, it It's not good. I don't know what's true. I don't know what's untrue. And I guess if this does go to court, then they will do the best they can to figure out the truth on this situation that I wish would never happen yep. to anybody or either way, right? Agre oh, but obviously. What, you know, but it, it just, these things stink. And like you said, unfortunately, this happens a lot in our world. Yeah. And now Dak Prescott is part of one of these along with this woman. And we will see what happens. I have no clue. I have no opinion on it. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. And fear not, I have more gridiron gravy for you. Now, we were talking about Marvin Harrison and Pro Football Focus put up this thought is... Jordan Reed was talking about Marvin Harrison Jr. as a wide receiver prospect and said, I think he's right there with Calvin Johnson, Jamar Chase, A.J. Green, Julio Jones, the best wide receivers we've seen this century. I think Marv is that good. I know not necessarily for the Cowboys. They're not in the market, nor they have even close to the draft picks necessary to pull this off. But do you view Marvin Harrison as someone who is a game-changing wide receiver that you would feel comfortable, whether it's pick three, pick five, depending on how the quarterbacks shake out, making that move? Well, I would say for Marvin Harrison, yes. I saw him be a game-changing player for a long time with Peyton Manning. Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> um, yes, he looks the part of being he in does. the conversation with Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. I think C.D. Lamb is maybe just barely on the outside of that conversation, but close to that conversation as the best wide receiver in football. Obviously, Tyree Kill. Uh, so it looks like Marvin Harrison Jr. can be a guy who, in his prime, is arguably the best wide receiver in football. Will it play out? I don't know. You, I mean, you go over time, and, and the older you get, you see guys like Peter Warwick, who looked the part of being everything. I do remember and then he that. Wasn't yeah. good in in uh, you know 
pro football, I won't say he was horrible, but he wasn't good. I thought Reggie Bush was going to be the best running back for about an eight-year period, and he was all right. He had his moments, you know, and you just you would have never thought watching him at USC, you're like, dude, is this the best running back I've watched like in 20 years in college? And then he got to the pros, and he was solid, but nothing special. So I think Marvin Harrison Jr. has all the ability to be one of the best. Obviously, he has his father also to help him understand some tricks and traits and how the NFL works and stuff like that. So I, w- I wanted to run through a few more movements and shakings from earlier this morning and yesterday. The Packers signed safety Xavier McKinney, four years, $68 million. The Commanders picked up Austin Eckler. Gardner Minshew is joining the Raiders. And then this was actually a big move. I, I don't think their team is good by any means, but Remember the Panthers put the franchise tag on Brian Burns. It has worked out. They traded him to the Giants for a second round pick and a fifth round pick. And the Giants are giving Brian Burns a five-year deal with a max value of $150 million with $87.5 million guaranteed. This is somebody who has been a defensive game wrecker. So that could potentially be a huge deal for the Giants. And then for Kansas City. Not unexpected, but it still happened. Tommy Townsend, their punter, signed a two-year, $6 million deal with the Houston Texans. The reason why that's particularly relevant, because we talk about it a lot on the show, that now means that Matt Ariza is the only punter on the Chiefs that's under contract. So it does look like, I mean, either he's going to get a real shot or they're going to be like, hey, go win this job, please. Okay. And so I, I am happy yeah. to see somebody who... They had their life destroyed and their name dragged through the mud for something that turned out to be untrue, getting another opportunity at all of this. And that's the tough thing, just to go back for the DAC thing, because I see multiple people are like, another lying, greedy woman. And I I can't rule that out. You don't know. But what if you're wrong? You know, what if this did happen and it's taken this long to like put this person's life back together to try to do anything. I don't know that. Yeah, I I have no clue what happened. I know this isn't going to happen, but I would tell people in these situations, I would just say, really try to just be quiet and don't have an opinion on it because you don't know. Yes. Agreed. 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 And from the 469, how have you not said a word about the Derrick Henry news in the football segment? All right, well, this is why you got to turn it on, leave it on. I'm going to need you to catch up, hop about 10 minutes in your way back machine, where that was literally the lead story that we started with on this. Derrick Henry signing with the Ravens. Two years, $16 million, could be worth upwards of $20 million. Do you, so do you, thank you for listening, but catch up. Do you ever think that they're trolling you? Maybe I should. Should I start thinking? I don't that know. Way? I don't know because it was might so, be onto something. Because it was in this segment, literally in this segment, eight minutes ago. So I wonder if they do this to you every once in a while to see if you'll repeat the story. Well, it worked. <laughs> We're the KNC masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Let's go back to the Mavs, and I loved this comparison. Is this the new Tarpley and Donaldson? And how many people get that reference? Let's talk about it next right here on The Fan.
Studio secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Now, very rarely do I think A, Mike listens to my teases, or B, you said Mavericks. Do I think they interest him? But when I said, is this the new Tarpley and Donaldson? You are excited hey. for people who don't know. Who are Roy Tarpley and James Donaldson? James Donaldson's a Dallas Maverick All Star from 1988. Damn right. Uh, I believe he had a long career, but I believe he came from the Clippers, maybe to Dallas. So he had been in the league for a good five plus years. Tarpley was, I believe, the sixth overall pick out of University of Michigan, which eventually. Uh, he was going to get traded with Mark Aguirre to the Lakers for James Worthy, but uh, Don Carter decided not to do it. And also Jerry West wasn't for it, but uh, the owners almost made a deal. But Don Nelson, or sorry, Don Nelson, Don Carter backed out of it last second. But these guys took the world champs at the time, the Lakers, who were unbeatable. They took them to seven games in 1988. Each team won their home game. So L.A. defended home court. Dallas won all of their games, and it looked like the future was so bright for the 1988 Dallas Mavericks, and then drugs and injury ended Roy Tarpley. Yeah, and that is that is very unfortunate because I also, when I was a little kid, thought he was going to be just incredible. And the, the times you saw him, he yeah. was incredible. Yeah. In, that, in his second year in the NBA, he won six man of the year, and he was getting 2020s. 20 points, 20 rebounds against Hakeem Olajuwon and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in those playoffs. So if you want to know if he was any good, in his second year in the NBA, he was at times putting up 20-20 games against Kareem and against Hakeem in the first round. And I I like this from Brad Townsend, who sometimes I'm tough on, so well done here, Brad. Not that you care about what I think. Is rookie, rookie Derek Lively returned from a one-game absence and team with Daniel Gafford to pummel Chicago with perhaps the most lethal Mavericks 1-2 center combo since James Donaldson and Roy Tarpley in the 80s, maybe. And one of the things... Not thing, Dampier and Jop. I, they went with this, which I yeah. like. Be, Honestly, that might be the second best combo. Which is, I don't, you might not be wrong, and that is super depressing. I choose not to dwell on that. Or Pal and Kleba. For the moment. I definitely choose not to dwell on that for the moment. I love that analogy because one of the things that we talked about as soon as this trade was made, as soon as you started seeing it play out, is it felt like you had two viable options at center. Now, yeah. I, I've, I've thrown out the idea. I still like the idea that in short spurts, you can see them play together. But the point is, you have what you feel like is legitimate depth, whether it's we've seen Gafford starting, they're now 5-0 and with him starting, and then Lively coming in, or you flip-flop it, or you're not sure who you're going to use in the last five minutes on a game-to-game -game basis. I do love the depth. I love it. It gives Jason Kidd the opportunity for 48 minutes a game to have a long, athletic, shot-blocking, rim-protecting big on the court. You, you honestly never have to play basketball with, oh no, we don't have an athletic, can switch and pick and roll situations, can block shots, can defend the rim, can go up and put back balls, can get defensive rebounds, can get offensive rebounds. You literally have two guys. Now, they're very similar. Donaldson and Tarpley were very different, different. in their game, but 
Uh, these two guys are very similar in their game, obviously lively with more upside over time. But Gafford is a very good center in this league. Not an all-star, but very good. And I just, I hope it does play out in a way like those two guys, but they're also very different in their skill. And also the game has changed a lot. Derek Lively, eight of nine off the bench in the first half last night. This is his highest scoring half of his career, his young career, of course, and matched his highest scoring effort off the bench for an entire game. Now, as you brought up earlier, he would go on to put up even more numbers. And it's weird in a game where Derek Lively has 22 points and seven rebounds that I'm like, that's awesome. I want to talk more about Daniel Gafford, who has now not missed a shot in four games and has made 28 straight shots. He broke the record at 23 for the most consecutive field goal makes going back to the start of the play-by-play -play stat keeping era in 96-97. He is now up to 28. So he's broken the old record by six consecutive shots. And I was kidding when I said he's never going to miss a shot again. But four games in a row, an average of seven shots per game, hasn't missed a one of them. I don't care how close they are. I still think that's amazing. I'd love to see the shot chart for one, all 28. But sure. I do, here's what it's I love. Probably tight. Here's what I love. Now that, and by the way, like uh, Lively was almost perfect last night, too. He yes, missed he one and then just got the offensive rebound and put it back, back in. in. It is, ended up 11 for 12. Is It's almost like they don't want to ruin the streak which I do like about this is they're like, we got to look for Gafford. He has a streak going, but we got to give him dunk or layup opportunities. And Gafford wants those. And they're doing a tremendous job. By the way, Luca, I don't know if you've noticed this. Derek Lively is getting out on the break really quick now at times. And Luca is throwing, and also PJ Washington's doing this too. He is throwing Kevin Love full court passes now. I, if, if you're like, hey, how can Luca improve? I don't know. Now he's turned into the Kevin Love, if you don't remember, was unbelievable at getting rebounds and throwing he it was. 80 feet perfectly yeah, in the air, was. lobbing it to a perfect like touchdown pass. And now Luca's doing that too at times because guys are like, if I get out and I beat the guys back, he'll throw me a perfect pass where I don't even have to dribble. I just have to catch it and lay it up or catch it and dunk it. And so I love what they're doing right now can they keep this up obviously Gafford's going to miss a shot at some point is but can they keep up this energy and effort that's my thing and I know we're going back a little bit but this Gafford thing is awesome the lively thing is awesome can Jason Kidd play these guys for 48 minutes whether it's 30 and and 18 whether it's 24 and 24 I think one guy should always be on the court unless you're in a desperate three-point situation that's my hope is, and I do like that Gafford's starting now because yes, I think come playoff time, you go, oh, who cares who starts? And I'm, I'm somewhat of that effect, but I think, is it more likely that Derek Lively picks up two fouls in the first two minutes of a playoff game? I think it's more likely he would accidentally do that over Daniel Gafford doing that. And if Lively plays the first two minutes and picks up two fouls, uh, let's just say against Chet Holmgren, for example, if you're playing Oklahoma City. Uh, then all of a sudden you're like, okay, so we're going to put Gafford out there, but is he going to play these next 10 minutes without needing a break? And if he needs a break, we can't really put Lively back in. He kind of just showed a little bit of his rookie-ish you know, game, which I love him, but come playoff time, teams can take advantage of inexperienced players. I really like some of the other votes that are coming in. Some are very sarcastic. No way that... LaFrance and Bradley weren't the best. So, so definitely some sarcasm yeah. in there. And then some discussions about the shifting nature of positions of basketball, because obviously Dirk has come up quite a bit, but we're just talking center center. And I know Tarpley could slide out to the right. four, but he played yeah. well, center. When Perkins was drafted, he played center quite a bit. Yes. But there were times I, I've gone back. I've watched a lot of 86, 87, 88 basketball. It's when I loved it. I think it was, my old man opinion, a little bit better basketball than what I see today. It's just a different style of I'm basketball. Aware. Yeah. But at times the Mavs would play. Now you would like this because this hasn't happened yet. The Gafford and Lively playing together. 
there would be like three minute stretches. It would be short. And that's all I'm looking for. But they would play Perkins, Tarpley, and Donaldson together. That is a gigantic right? lineup. You'd have six eleven, seven foot, seven one all together. Because Perkins was skilled enough and athletic enough to play the three if you needed him to. And then Tarpley was also athletic and skilled enough to play the four. And, you know, there's more traditional roles back in that day. Donaldson yes. could only play center. Yes. He was a big guy. Because when I was watching this the other day, my son goes, how big is that guy? And I'm like, ah, 7'1". I'm going to guess like 275, but I'm... I'm guessing on the way he might have not been that big, but I mean back then your center was supposed to be a heavy big guy. Yeah. He was not supposed to be a thin sprint up and down the court the way we see Gafford and Lively do it. Gafford and Lively are built more like Sam Perkins. That that I could see. And this is fair, and I think and this is not exactly where you're at, Mike, but I, I definitely think people can react to this however they want. From the 817, Mavericks just beat three bad teams. Calm down. First of all, I disagree with that. I do not think the Miami Heat are a bad team. I think they are very similar to the Mavericks in terms of they have really high-end potential, but you can see them throw some clunkers out there. But for the Pistons and the Bulls, you beat the crap out of them. You didn't get drug into a, like that Philly game. That Philly game felt like a game that you should have been, especially with no Joel Embiid, you should have been able to run through that game with relative ease. But it wasn't until the very end that they made a big push. And by that point, it was too late. And the reason why I'm excited that they won these three games is you're easily within striking distance of the six seed, which gives you some extra time off, which keeps you out of the play-in and guarantees you'll be in the real playoffs. And a lot of your games down the stretch are not against quality opponents. I'm not saying they're going to win the championship. I'm glad that the last two games, they've beat down on an inferior opponent. And the game before that, I think they beat a Miami team that was fairly similar to them in terms of ability. We're trying to figure out this Dallas Maverick team. I, I'm with. I, I I'm, I'm not with you, and I'm not against you, whatever your major opinion is, if you have a strong opinion on the maps. I don't know. The Mavs might be able to make it to the conference finals. I don't know if they can win at all. I think Boston is way better than everybody, but I think that they could make it to the NBA finals. I am not predicting that at all, but I do think that they have the talent and the best offensive player in the world by far. I don't think anybody compares to Luka. I get stats are different now than they were in the 80s and 90s and how many points are scored and the way defense has to play the game and all this stuff. I do think Luka is the best offensive player in the game, and it's not even close. I don't think he's the best player in the game. I think he's the best offensive player. So when people say, but so you have the best offensive player in the whole world. You have another dude win healthy as an all star player. And then you have these, we just talked about the centers. You have everything needed to go on a playoff run. I don't know if they will or not. I, I don't know if they're going to be coached properly. I don't know if they're going to have the energy and effort on defense on a, on a possession to possession basis that you have to have in the playoffs. You take off three minutes of the game and go, we don't want to play defense. And against a playoff team, you could find yourself down by 15 points and you're not coming back against the Denver Nuggets. You're not coming back against maybe the LA Clippers in those situations. Let's talk about the Denver Nuggets really quick. Is Nikola Jokic yesterday became the first player this century the game in which he had 30 plus points, 15 plus rebounds, 10 plus assists, and five plus steals in a game. I believe he was four steals away from the quadruple double. And he's the best player in the world. If he somebody's is. asking me, fact, Luke is a way better offensive player, and he's not like, you know, it, but he is just, but Luke, uh, sorry, Jokic is a better overall player. Since the All Star break, Jokic, if you're wondering why he's going to win his third MVP in the last four years, since the All-Star break, 27 points a game, 13 and a half rebounds a game, 10 and a half assists a game, two steals per game while shooting 61% from the field. Dude. That's amazing. I thought they were going to lose last night. I was like, I guess they just don't care. They were down by, by almost 22. 20. Yeah. I think at one point. They outscored the Raptors 42 to 30 in the third, and then they outscored them 32 to 21 in the fourth to win by six points. I was like, ah, they just... This is one of those NBA nights where teams like, we just don't want to play basketball. And I guess they ended up in the second half saying, we'll play basketball now. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next.
We did the smartest yesterday. So which is the dumbest organization in all of sports? Yes, yes. Besides just the Cowboys. We'll do it next right here in the fan. Are you ready for some?
And the expressway on 105 through the fan is brought to you by the on time experts. Big second and two. Prescott in the gun fakes the inside handoff. Slants picked off. At the 50, this might be a house call. To the 30, it's Darnell Savage. All the way in, 50 yard plus return. That does not help. I played that clip, so hopefully people will give us other answers. Yesterday, we talked about the smartest franchises in all of sports. We crossed all of the sports and got a lot of varied answers. And I realize, especially today, as we move into day two of the Cowboys not really doing much in free agency, although they did re-sign their long snapper, so let's go is I I have a feeling a lot of people will want to say the Dallas Cowboys, especially when they saw the numbers for the Derrick Henry contract going to the Ravens. But I'm curious, who do you think are the dumbest organizations in all of sports? And I had a question about one of these, because maybe this is unfair. My initial thought was going to be the Oakland slash Las Vegas A's. But are they really one of the dumbest franchises in sports or do they just struggle year after year because they had ownership group that was like, no, I don't really care unless you get me that new stadium. I'm not going to put the resources necessary into scouting, developing talent or whatever. So is it unfair that I think the A's are a dumb franchise? No. Okay. I, I understand. You stay on the list. A's. I understand their financial situation. And I will say this. It hasn't been for a long time because what they've done with such a limited budget is awesome. If that makes sense, right? I do. That does make sense. But recently, they they look lost a little bit for, for on the field stuff, which they've been able to overcome their lack of budget in a way. But now they just look lost, lost. Yeah. So A's, fair note to go on the list. I'm going to add some more if you don't mind. Well, I have two from my buddy who just texted in. Ooh. All right, let's hear it. He says, and I kind of agree with this, and then the NBA, the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, because they thought Trey Young was the guy to strap the franchise to, and maybe not. Well, and also, they just make bad decision after bad decision, right? And it's like, I'm glad it ended up not working out for the Mavericks. Like, they wanted... The number 10 pick, Josh Green, and something else for Clint Capella. I'm like, no, yeah. we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. And luckily, you know, Nico made a good decision there. And they just seem to make bad decision after a bad decision. I don't even know where the Hawks are headed. Like, they're not good. They're not horrible. They don't have a direction. They trade the picks for Murray, and then they're like, "Well, Murray's not the answer with Trey Young," and they just they can't they can't get out of their own way. I will give them props for putting the barbershop in the arena. I thought that was smart. That would help me out. My kids need a haircut. <laughs> I was gonna say that would help your family out, right? Yeah. Being maybe even you know. though, like, how much of the game are you missing? <laughs> like, get there early for the haircut. If I pay this much money for an NBA game, I do want to watch it okay. live. That, ma that makes rather sense. Rather than on the television while I'm getting a haircut. That makes sense. Alec, before we move around, because I've got some more answers, do you have a franchise which you think would qualify for the dumbest in sports? Yeah, and I think it's purely because of the ownership. It's the Carolina Panthers. I just, I, <sighs> I cannot stand David against. Tepper. I cannot stand that man. He... <laughs> I think he messed up on the quarterback decision. I think the trade up was a little knee jerk reaction. I think getting this whole new coaching staff of guys that didn't work out and then firing them all mid season, like it, what was supposed to happen yeah. in year one of that experiment? That was exactly what I saw happening. And the fact that they couldn't see it coming, it's ridiculous. How much easier do you think this season would have been for them if like CJ Stroud was terrible too? I, I'm not saying it would have been a good year by any means, but. C.J. Stroud was throwing the ball in the dirt, throwing picks, and leading them to a three-win season. Do you think they'd have been like, hey, rookie quarterback just takes time? Yeah. But instead, they were like, well, crap. I didn't know he was going to take them to the playoffs. Yeah, I think it's a little tough when the guy that goes right after that you had the choice. You had the number one overall pick. You could have chose that guy if you wanted to, and he was amazing. If C.J. Stroud was really bad, then yeah. I, I think I'd be a little less aggressive, a little less harsh when it comes to these guys, but still... 
They're dumb. We're going to cross the pond for this one, and I might need a little bit of help with this analogy. I want to see if I'm correct. From the 214, Chelsea is dumb under their new ownership, and they are so mid. Is Chelsea the team that is the Premier League equivalent to the Dallas Cowboys? Yeah, because I, have no clue. I believe, much like the Toronto Maple Leafs, they are a team that obviously lots of people love them. They look like they're going to show flashes now and again, but they usually end up disappointing you in the end, and you're like, I should have known better. But then when the next season starts, you're right back ready to roll because that's what I'm like as a Cowboys fan. Because I do love the Cowboys, and I'll be ready to roll, even uh, though I realize it's probably not a good idea. I'll defend Chelsea by defending the Cowboys. The Cowboys are in neither category. They're not a dumb or dumb dumbest franchise, but they're not a great franchise either. Like, I agree. They're with They're not that. smart. They're not geniuses. They're not. They're not forward thinkers at all. But they're also not doing things like the Carolina Panthers or throw in the New York Jets. Like they're. They're not in that category where it's like, you guys just can't get out of your own way. They're in the middle. Yeah, I think yeah. that's fair. And Stuck in the middle? With you. It could be different for the different regime, but from the 817, the Washington Commanders, another person immediately agreed with you, Alec, and said, man, it's tough to beat the level of dumb of the Carolina Panthers for the last five years. The Mavs. The Mavs are interesting because I feel like I'm not saying this leads to anything huge. It feels like you started to turn the corner for better decision-making. There was a run of time that I did think that the Mavericks were not the smartest run organization in the world. Okay, so I can go down this path on this. I asked this question, Mavs fans, here's my question. And then to you, Kevin, you can try to answer it. Has anybody been worse with a superstar than Mark Cuban? Did we get the least out of a Dirk Nowitzki in the history of basketball? And have we got the least out of Luka? I know Luka still has a lot of years left. Whether it's with the Mavs or not, I don't know. But I feel like if you have a superstar of Dirk's caliber and okay. to, to make it to two finals and win one, that's not good. Can I ask a quick question? I just want to know like how some of these people fall. You think Damian Lillard's a superstar or just a star? I'm I would seriously say a star, asking. I would say in the history of basketball... In my lifetime, besides Isaiah Thomas, you can't win championships with little guys. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Oh, no, yeah. It's I, just, it's really tough to build a championship team. Isaiah was able to do it in for two years in Detroit. Iverson made a finals, and that was kind of unexpected and never got close again. You count Steph as little? <sighs> that's he's, a good one. He's that's taller. A, that's a good one. But that, he's little. I'll put it at six foot four. Yes, you're right. So Steph is the greatest little guy to like be a franchise changing, championship changing guy next to Isaiah Thomas. It's just tough. I think it's tough for yeah. a Lillard. He has to be a second guy. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I see. I had a feeling that this was going to happen, and I I totally understand it. The Cowboys. The Cowboys come up a lot here. I, I still fall with you, Mike, is I don't think they're a dumb franchise. Honestly, if we're using a word to describe them, I think the Dallas Cowboys are a lazy franchise. Yeah. I I do not believe they are dumb. I believe that they're lazy. Some of their moves or lack of moves very much frustrate me. But this has been the MO of the Cowboys, and I made my peace with it. I know you yeah. made your peace with it a while ago. Right. I made my peace with this offseason a few weeks ago when Jerry came out and said, my definition of all in might be different than yours. I feel like we've been all in since 1989. I know I said this before. I think I said it yesterday. I'm guessing I'll say it again. That's at that point I realized he wasn't being serious about all in. Either that or he's right. Our definitions of all in are dramatically different. And that's why I don't think they're dumb. I just think they're lazy. I, I think this about the Cowboys. This is how I read books. Most books I get about 60 to 75% done. And then somehow I just move on and forget to finish the book. And I feel like that's where the Cowboys are when it but comes you start to start a new book. Maybe. Okay. But it's just that I, I rarely finish the book and I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I'm like, I'm good. I got it. Good enough <laughs> is I feel like that's the Cowboys in building like it's like they're good enough to like do 60 to 75% of the team building or something right. Okay. And they're like, I'm done. I got like, it. Hey, man, there's like 40 to 25% left to really finish off this philosophy or this. And they're like, we're good. I think I think we're good. We're, it's spring break, man. 
Okay, so now multiple people have helped out, like we asked. Thank you very much. On the Premier League front, from the 940, Chelsea has the most trophies in England in the 21st century. They're just not run well with the new ownership. And then from the 817, Chelsea won a Champions League a few years ago, so they're better than the Cowboys. And then another person from the 817 came in and said, Manchester United is the Dallas Cowboys of the Premier League. Owners that only care about profit and won't do anything to help the team in terms of big players or infrastructure. I do know several years back, they got passed up by Manchester City, who right. has won, you know, six kajillion titles. Since I'm a baseball guy, I was looking at these two teams, and you tell me. You okay? No, I... Some people brought up another one, but Go it ahead. is baseball. Multiple people are like, what about the Angels? Man, That's you talk about a franchise that That's did a good one. Jack S with two... That's a good one. And I don't think I'm overstating this. Do you think that you can look back at baseball history and think that Mike Trout and Shohei Otani are transcendent players? Shohei's going to be in the category of was he the best ever because of the dual Pitching. situation. Yeah. And Trout will be a top 20 player in the history of baseball. They had them both on their team for multiple years and couldn't and figure it out. Nothing. And they're trying to run Trout out of town, it hey. feels like. And then they moved on from Otani. After. The Rangers did lose the World Series. They signed arguably the best player in baseball to go along with Mike Trout. So you can take it further yes. back. They Josh had Pulhos and they had Trout for a while. And now I know Pulhos dealt with plantar fasciitis and the foot situation. But uh, you look at it and they actually, and then they went out and signed the MVP in Josh, Young, or sorry, Josh Hamilton. Yeah. And they just, to your point and to that person's point, that's a great one. I was looking at... The Chicago White Sox. Okay. I feel like they have done such a poor job for a while. Now, I know that they've blown everybody out. I'm sorry I'm forgetting the general manager they just let go. and But they, they have done such a poor job recently of trying to build a franchise. And at times you're like, hey, this looks good. This looks good. They could be good. And then they hired Tony La Russa, who's like, watch me run this thing into yeah. the ground. It's yeah. just everything they do, even when things look good, it ends up not being good. And then the other one is, and I know they don't have the biggest budget, but they seem to screw things up quite a bit as the Pittsburgh Pirates. They can just keep leaning back on their awesome looking ballpark and they're like, hey, come out. See yeah. how amazing this is. The other teams that pop to mind, and I've seen a couple people say this, the New York Giants. Like I mentioned earlier, I like the move <laughs> that they made with... If they won two chances. Yes. They won in 7 and 11. And you know what's funny? I got a... Uh, we're part of the poll voting with Rick Goslin, and he said, how many ballots until Eli Manning makes it to the Hall of Fame? And I'm very conflicted because I don't think he should be in the Hall of Fame. History says he will most likely make the Hall of Fame. So they won those two titles. And then they gave Daniel Jones $40 million a year. So this is not a knock against Brian Burns move. But it, it is hard to argue for a team that said, Daniel Jones, 40 mil, you're worth it. That's, I <laughs> have a hard time going, good job. You guys are doing great. And then the Chicago Bulls. This is more recent. And this might be impacted by Brandon, who laments That's true. about After the they Chicago lost Bulls all the time. They keep trying to take this hodgepodge group of talent and put them together. Meanwhile, it feels like Zach Levine's like, I did the best I could for you guys. And then right when it seemed like maybe they were going to move on, then he got injured. It looked like with Lonzo Ball, things were finally going to click. And then unfortunately, he got injured. So maybe it's not their fault. It's just ill-timed injuries that has hurt them along the way. But... My son talks about the incompetence of the Chicago, my older That's son. That's a good one. About the Chicago Bulls all the time. I guess it's still too recent, but I wonder if 20 years from now we get that far away and we're in the 2040s and they're like, is there a curse of Michael Jordan here? Is I, that they kind yeah. of ran him off yes. by saying we're going to get rid, we're done with Phil Jackson, we're done with this team, we think it's it's done its thing, we're moving on, and then we're going to get to the way the Cubs have the Billy Goat thing, and obviously yes. they won. It's yes. like, I wonder if they're going to have some sort of Michael Jordan curse 20 years from now. And the the thing that makes that easy for me to believe it was what happened with Derrick Rose. I, 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 I'm telling you, I do not think this is revisionist history. Derrick Rose looked like he was ready to be the dude. Like him and LeBron running side by side. And then all of a sudden, I know he kept playing for a really long time, but his career was never the same. 
Somebody brought this up. Is it the Packers from the 214? Now, hear this argument out. They had Favre and Rodgers for 30 years and had two titles. Do you think having two of the arguably best 10 quarterbacks of all time back to back yeah. and then winning a title apiece is a squandering of your resources? Yes. I think it's very Dallas Maverick like. The Mavericks haven't had it play out as long, but yeah. I think the Packers and the Mavericks, you're like, yeah, you win 50 games all the time with Dirk. Dirk is even taking yes. less money yes. to be here, so you're supposedly supposed to help him. And Mark Cuban's like, nope, sorry. And from the 2-on-4, the Oakland slash Vegas A's, from the, another 2-on-4, have y'all mentioned the Vegas A's? That is who we kicked off the conversation with because I think that is a fair yeah. At first, I thought you were up. talking about the Raiders, and then I was like, I'm pretty sure he's talking about the A's, but they're both organizations that can fit into this category. Very true. I will say, however, I know that perhaps social media has not been uber kind to the designs or the perspective designs for the new A's ballpark. I think it looks cool. I, I could be in the vast major minority here. It looks like the Sydney Opera House, and I'm here for it. I don't hate it whatsoever. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Can I give you two quick updates go, go. that we didn't get to get into Who yesterday? did the Cowboys sign? You're telling me there's two signings the Cowboys just did to make sure they're they're no, helping out the team. They did still sign their long snapper from earlier. There's that. Did you see the final score? I believe it was Sunday night of the 76ers and Knicks game. No. It was 79-73. to 73. Oh, man. We're 1997 right now, baby. I couldn't believe this. Did you know that was the first game since 2016 that both teams scored under 80 points? That's I crazy. I mean, if you're a team that holds a team under 110, you are one of the best defensive teams in the NBA. That is that is true. I was just surprised that it hadn't happened like one time a couple years ago, maybe one time last year, yeah. nothing since 2016. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan now. How about some Mike likes it? Okay, so I found this interesting, and I want to go to the world of baseball. Did you know that Trevor Bauer pitched against the Dodgers I during did. the weekend? I did. So I found that interesting. He faced 12 batters. He struck out four. He did a pretty good job. And obviously, once again, there was reporters there and everything. And he's like, I'll play for league minimum. Yep. And I, I don't love bringing up Trevor Bauer things because I think a lot of Ranger fans go why not Trevor Bauer yeah. and it just teams have decided he's not worth the headache and I, I heard there was few if not no scouts at this game there, it said there were no scouts at the wow. game wow so because he's playing on I forget what it was I don't want to mess this up um it was called the Asian Breeze. I wanted to make sure if I'm putting, yes. if I'm doing that, that I'm not trying to say something crazy. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm getting the team name right. It's a team of players that are trying to get seen by professional scouts so that they can get into professional baseball, affiliated baseball. And okay. One quick thing. What does affiliated baseball mean? That means that you're in the minor league system of a major league team. So when you're playing okay. for... Cleburne, for yeah. example, that's a that's a team close to here. That's a minor league team. It's a professional team because the players are getting paid approximately a thousand dollars a month. They get paid very little, but they're getting paid approximately a thousand dollars a month, give or take. There's some guys. I'm assuming Delino DeShields Jr. played there last year. He's probably making more than a thousand dollars, but. Those guys are non-affiliated with a team. They're hoping to get picked up by the Rangers and get sent to double A sure. or even A ball or triple A or whatever. They're hoping to get picked up by an affiliated team. That's what Derek Holland was hoping to do last year when he went up yep. to the Northeast and, and played. And you see the path is, I, I know obviously he got hurt, but that path can work yeah. for you. A lot of guys go there. Uh, I mean, for example, I know he's not the manager anymore. Chris Woodward had to go back there after getting released and and found his way oh, back into professional yeah. baseball, found his way back into the major league. So it can happen that way. It's a, it's a It stinks to have to do it. Thank God there's places like that that will st still play competitive baseball that scouts will come to. But <clears throat> nobody came to that game. Now there are hundreds of fans. They said the, the it was packed. It's 
It's I the get back, it. It's I the back field it. with with very little stands. You know, yeah. you can stand up against the fence and watch too. But they said, hey, there are you know a few hundred people watching that game, and Trevor Bauer looked pretty good. And he's like, I just want a chance. I just want an opportunity. But it is what it is. Yeah, he's not gonna get one. Uh, and the tough thing is, is I'm not saying anybody should sign Trevor Bauer. But how do you know if a person's changed without giving the opportunity to see if he's changed as a teammate? Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe it's still not enough time, but it's been now since, was it the year after COVID, right? It was 2021. He signs with the Dodgers. And then that year is when he gets kicked off the team. Yeah. And so you have half of 21, 22, 23. And now it's 24. I don't know. Maybe he's the exact same person and going to cause the exact same issues on a team. Be a very good pitcher that's not a very good teammate. Are you surprised, though, that given that amount of time, that amount of people who, because we see it on the fan text a lot, it's people who want to forgive, and you see fans who are interested. Yeah. Are you surprised that no team I seems know. interested at all? Yes, I am I am surprised. All it takes is one, right? It's kind of like, I remember when Tim Tebow got drafted by the Denver Broncos, and I'm like, dude, he's at best a third-round pick. And it's like, forever he's a first-round pick, all it takes is one of the yeah. 32, and you're a first-round pick. It doesn't mean 31 teams can think you're not even worthy of a draft pick at all. But if you get drafted, you get drafted. And so with Trevor Bauer, I thought there would be a, a team. I knew it wasn't going to be the Rangers. I was, you know, not like I was the one. Anybody who's somewhat close to the Rangers knew the Rangers weren't going to go down that path yep. right now. But I thought there would be a team, a team that said, we can handle this and we can make sure that these are the stipulations. These are the things. For example, I can't believe the Yankees signed Marcus Stroman. That makes zero sense. The most individual two middle fingers to the world <laughs> of baseball right now is right. Marcus Stroman, who's in the game. And the one place where you cannot do that, they make sure you're wearing your hat correctly. Your shirt is tucked in. No you're, sideburns. Right. No sideburns. The only facial hair you can have is a mustache, which is really weird. I feel like you're either, why is mustache cool? But <laughs> I want that as a drop too. <laughs> but like, I can't believe the Yankees signed Marcus Stroman and they don't think they're going to have any issues with him becoming an ultimate individual F you to kind of the world of the rules of baseball type of deal. But watch Marcus Stroman in some way. I think that he's going to somewhat conform to the Yankee way, even though he's so anti Yankee way. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought there would be a team that say, gosh, if we had Trevor Bauer and he goes out and gives us 175 innings and puts up an ERA at three, can we put up with him and can we control him somehow, some way? Yeah. Or can he have changed? Could could this two and a half years out of baseball change him? But it just doesn't seem to matter. Nobody thinks he can change. Okay. My question is, let's say he not only has changed or not only could change, he has changed. How much do you also have to factor in the, the PR blowback from any, any number of, I'm not saying yeah. I'm starting the campaign, but there will be some pushback for sure how much do you have to factor that into i think you do and obviously teams have factored it into we ain't dealing with yeah it. now that being said it is and in him getting interviewed sunday after his uh game he was saying look the thing is is i've been double suspended like i serve my time plus now double that yeah. that nobody signed me i was not convicted in a court of law at all for any of these things. I'm not saying he didn't do anything wrong, sure. but I want to make sure I'm not like pro Trevor Bauer in this whole situation, but he points out the facts and we've seen so many players in all sports get second and third and fourth opportunities. And in a weird yes. way, when you're that good, you usually do. Remember Trevor Bauer has a Cy Young in 2020. He had just signed a 40 plus million dollar a year contract with the LA Dodgers who were going for it. So this was considered a top 10 starting pitcher in all of baseball. And it's just, it, it brings me to, and I know this isn't fun to talk about at all. It brings me to like Wander Franco because he was the next great yeah. shortstop in the game. And he was trending towards that yes. this year or sorry, this year in the last season. And it's like, man, if, I don't know. Is it 
is it Trevor? This is going to be interesting. Is it Trevor Bauer's mouth that they can't get over that he talks too much and he has his YouTube thing because Wander, as far as we know, doesn't talk too much. Right. Because if three years from now and Wander Franco would only be 25 years old, three years from now. Wow. Is would they be like, well, he's going to be quiet. It's been three years, and we're going to give him another opportunity. Because if they give him another opportunity, then I'm going to go, it had to be Trevor Bauer's mouth that they can't have. Do you think it's okay. not the whole sexual assault situation? I'm not dismissing that. Let me throw out a couple of counterpoints. Do you think the ceiling and age of Franco makes it more worth taking the chance? Like, Trevor Bauer can be an excellent pitcher, but he's also older. You pointed out, in three years, Wanda Franco, who looked like he was ready to take this league by storm, would only be 25. Do you think they're like, yeah, no, he's still a Nimrod, but he's going to be 25, and I think his ceiling is higher. Plus, he's younger compared to Trevor Bauer. Yes, but just look at the Texas Rangers. He's younger than Jacob deGrom. Max Scherzer, yeah, Nathan Avaldi, yeah. I right. need to go check and see. I think he's only two years older than Jonathan Gray. He's thirty three. Okay, I think we think Trevor Bauer is older. He's I, only thirty three. I do think he's older at right? times. I, I get mean, that. you would think that he has possibly five more years of pitching right. in the major leagues if he if if this this would have happened. And so if if sorry if nothing would have happened. The other thing too is I don't know would the would the Dodgers have just been like, dude. We just don't want you anymore. Like, let's say none of that happened with that woman and everything like that. If the Dodgers would have just been like, we just can't have you on the team anymore. So anyways, that's a, a long story on something that, oh, well, it happened. Uh, going back to the Texas Rangers, just real quick, just so you know, they're playing Cleveland today at three o'clock. That game is going to be on Channel 21. So if you're looking for like... Uh, Rangers action. I don't know. I have not clicked on or seen on Twitter a lineup that is it going to be Simeon, Carter, Lankford. Carter and Lankford went on the hour 15 minute trip approximately yesterday and played six innings. Okay. So I don't know if they're going to put them in the game today because you still are a ways away from trying to get guys ready to play every day. You're making sure they're getting in their work. They're getting in, uh, you know, the at bats that they need, but also you don't want to grind them down in spring training. And I didn't know this. Did you know in spring training, I was listening to 105.3 The Fan during the weekend. I was listening to Eric Nadell. I forgot to bring this up yesterday. Did you know that now in spring training, if you can't get out of the first inning, you're a starting pitcher. You've thrown 25 pitches. And they're like, we don't want them throwing any more pitches. You can bring in a relief pitcher, and then the pitcher you took out of the game can go back in the second inning. Really? Yeah, so I don't mind the I, I didn't all. see that play out in any of our games. No, I thought it was the other day Grant Anderson had to relieve, I believe it was Yuri Rodriguez, and I'm listening to the game here on 105.3 The Fan, and Eric Nadell says, this will be interesting because Grant Anderson threw one pitch and got the guy out to end the inning, and they're like, you can bring back in the starting pitcher in a spring training uh -huh. game to get in his work because when you get to this point, Yesterday, I want to say Avaldi threw five innings. It might have been four. It was four or five innings. So you're getting to the point where you're stretching out your starting pitcher, getting him closer to 100 pitches so that they're ready. Avaldi on opening day. The Rangers, I don't think they've named Avaldi yet, but we all know it's going to be gonna Evaldi. Be yeah. Is they want him, they want him to have the ability to throw seven innings on opening night if, if that game goes where you hope that it would go for Evaldi, that he's throwing great through five innings, that he can go out there for the sixth, and if he's great through six, you can give him one more inning. I, I would assume unless there's a no-hitter situation after seven innings, you'd say, like, that's that's great. We'll pick up the last two innings of this game for you. But, yeah, you can bring a starting pitcher back into the game even if you take him out. And here's what I don't that's know. That's pretty awesome. Is it just the first inning? Is it? Is it you can bring him back the next inning if in the second inning you run it like the first inning you throw 12 pitches, the second inning you throw 28 pitches, but you need to stretch him out to five innings that day. And you, but you're like, dude, he's at 28. I don't want him facing any more hitters this inning. So I don't know those rules. That's something I need to text Jared Sandler about is when does that come to an end that you can bring a pitcher back in spring training, even though you've taken him out of the game? 
Well, we might need to ask Jared more about that because Jared has also posted videos of Seeger and Young taking ground balls. So. Yes! <laughs> Here we go! Our champs are back! I was going to say... So try to take that for what it's worth and not get too excited just yet, but it feels hey. like that ship has sailed. Just, just remember, Cowboy fans, if you're a Ranger fan, we're the world champs. We're about to defend the championship for the first time in baseball history. And we have six months, 162 mm. games. They'll all be on 105.3 The Fan, or sometimes a few of them have to move to 1080 AM. Yes. But... I can't wait for this. And Wyatt Langford and Evan Carter are about to battle each other on the team for the rookie of the year. I love it. I love it. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105 Through the Fan. Coming up next, you know what I also love? And if you listened yesterday, you know why. It's AM on the FM with Alec Medford. The question of the day is going to be based on this legendary story from Jalen Brunson, plus the wildest NIL deal that has just come out. I'll get you the details next.
Studios secured by DFWSecurity.com. It's the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. In case you missed some of the NFL news of the day, it has not been flying as quickly as yesterday, but... Derrick Henry is a kid! No. You know he signed with the Ravens. You know that. Two years, $16 million, up to $20 million on that contract. I heard he wanted to wear number 22, and it wasn't available the here. Tex- yeah, I'm sure that's why. The Texans traded for Joe Mixon. So there's been things moving and shaking today, just not at the exact same pace as yesterday. And the Cowboys did sign Trent Sieg. They're long snapper. So I, yeah. do, have, I do have that. That's part of the, Sieg that's the family. best I can do. No, Corey I, and Kyle related, Sieg. It's not Corey Sieg. It's not Kyle Sieg. It's Seeger. And this oh. is not Trent Seeger. Now. There's no such thing as a bad snapper in the NFL now. It's amazing. We figured it out. Because we keep all the good ones. No, I'm saying all the NFL. You never see punters having to like jump for a <laughs> snap. They all snap it well. That is. Unless you're the snapper for the Chiefs and just snapping it four yards to Patrick Mahomes and you just ankle burn them the whole game. Now it's time for AM on the FM. What does this button do? Please, please, do not push the button. You have no idea of what it. Now, reality can be whatever I want. Don't you dare touch that dial. Don't you dare do it. We're taking over Corey's corner once again, Mike. Is that the Powder Puff Girls or Power Dexter's Laboratory, right? Yes, indeed. Where can people normally find until you eventually take over Corey's spot for good, obviously? Where can people normally find this segment? You can usually find it on the weekends here on The Fan. We're pumping out some good content on Saturdays and Sundays, live and local, just the way you like it. I mean, hell, y'all's interview with Michael Finley talking about may or may not have been, but definitely was Grant Williams has gone freaking everywhere. So good job. Yeah, that was one of the best interviews we've done in a while. That was a real fun one. And Finn is always doing some great work in the community. So love to help uh, promote some good stuff going around here in the Metroplex. And speaking of guys from the Metroplex, Jalen Brunson is going to be... Sorry, got to give you another quick one that's... Cowboys did what? No, it's what the Cowboys didn't do, and it will agitate people. Oh, no. Is Patrick Queen told Marcus Spears that he plans to sign a three-year, $41 million contract 
with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So essentially Ew. why I bring that up is that would have been a player I would have liked here. And I know people speculated, but you saw that price tag, right? The Cowboys were never going to go that high, but that's going to be what comes out now is Patrick Queen along with Derrick Henry earlier in the day, another player that people were interested in that is not coming to the Cowboys. Sorry to interrupt. Wanted well, to give you that name. Maybe number six wasn't available either. I don't think the numbers the not number. being available is why yeah. they're not coming here. A personal brand is a big deal, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it plays into a part. I want to know what Kirk Cousins thought with Atlanta because, you know, number eight was kind of taken by a former first-round pick out there in Kyle Pitts. Yeah, I... I bet they can figure something out. Yeah, maybe a little handshake deal. But the question of the day today, 877-881-1053. That is the truckwreck.com text line. The question is, what is the most embarrassing or dumbest childhood memory that still haunts you? And the reason I ask this is because a couple of weeks ago, Jalen Brunson was on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. And this popped up on my feed yesterday. He tells the story about his first interaction with Michael Jordan and how it's probably one of the worst interactions. My dad was playing for, um, I'm pretty sure it was the Clippers or a West Coast team. So he, when he was away, we stayed in New Jersey as a family. So whenever he came to the East Coast City, we went to that game, we drove, whatever was drivable, we went. We went to DC when Mike was playing with the Wizards. After the game, I'm like in the locker room, not thinking anything of it because I do this all the time. My dad's in the NBA, I see all these players all the time. So I'm not- You're hearing that too, Yeah, right? gotta, yeah. gotta love when the computer just doesn't want me to be great. So let's try picking that up again see all these players all the time, so I'm not really taking it for granted. He's like, do you want to meet Michael? I was like, yeah, I'll go walk down there and meet Michael. <laughs> uh, I had his jersey on. Every away... You were wearing every, Michael Jordan's jersey. I was wearing Michael Jordan's jersey, even though my dad was in the other team. I know. It's, yeah, 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 I know. It's, it's, and, yeah, it's, but every understand. away arena, I went, I got a jersey from like, that team. He said, hey, you have my jersey, you want me to sign it? And I was like, ah, no, you'll mess it up. Whoa. He told Michael Jordan, no, I don't want don't you to sign, sign my, my jersey, jersey because you'll mess it up. And he went on to say how the whole locker room just busted out laughing and they were trolling MJ, saying that kid's too good for you. You know, he's big timing you. He's been around all these NBA players. So he said, nah, I'm good. You'll mess it up. And he was like, you sure? He's like, yeah, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. So lesson learned. Whenever someone offers to sign your jersey for you, just let them do it. So... Interesting. Mine was different. Definitely embarrassing. When I was in middle school, I was in an English class and I was tired, not an excuse. And they started to play a movie. And so I put my head down on my hand, down on my, uh, on my fist and just thought, I'll just rest here for a moment. I definitely fell asleep. At some point, my head slipped off. And I woke up like as my face was falling towards the desk, I stopped it just in time. I did not smash into the desk, but remember it's a movie. So the room is like pretty quiet. And I woke up and I was like, ah! and everybody looked at me and my teacher goes, Oh, I'm sorry, Kevin. Is this movie too scary for you? And it was, I don't know, like Romeo and Juliet or something that was not scary whatsoever. And I felt like an idiot. That's great, because I remember after one of those, I think back when I took it, it was at this point still the tax test, the standardized yes. test for the state of Texas. I, I finished my test really quick. It was an English test, fell asleep, and the bell went off for lunch, and it scared me so bad. I had no idea where I was. I jumped out of my seat. Papers <laughs> went flying everywhere, and my English teacher was the one who was like monitoring the room. She was like, are you okay? I was like, I forgot where I was. I'm sorry. <sighs> Mike, you never do anything embarrassing. No, except in second grade. <laughs> I was playing Little League Baseball in Duncanville. And I had to go to the bathroom. Oh, no. And I was on. I was coming up on deck. So I thought, I can hold it. <laughs> and I get up to the batter's box and I get in and I'm like, I can't hold it. Oh my God. So I just peed my pants in the batter's box. <laughs> and then it kind of dripped onto the dirt. And I just, you know, used the dirt and kind of smoothed it over. <laughs> Kept playing baseball. What color? You didn't have white pants on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> So what? that's one of my ones that I'm just like, wow. Did everybody know then? I don't know. You, <laughs> you, you're, okay. you're in second grade. I was, yeah. I believe, 
eight or seven years yeah. old, I think, right around there. And I just, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know they could hold up the game until I remember watching this week in baseball when I was a kid a few years later. And Hubie Brooks was playing for the Mon- Hubie Brooks. Yeah, Hubie Brooks was playing for the Montreal Expos. And they had to hold up the game because he had to go to the bathroom. So he was like, I'm coming out. And they're like, we got to wait. We He's in the bathroom. Were you like, oh. I didn't know what the, yeah. I thought I just, I can't hold up. Like, I'm coming up second. I got a hit. And I don't remember what I did in the at bat, but I just remember I peed my pants. And that was embarrassing. <laughs> That's lovely. Oh, that is unfortunate. I like from the 817. I racked up thousands of dollars in phone bills from dialing 1900 numbers. Oh, okay. That's another one. I was a. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. Oh, we no. have other. All right. I was a, I think, a freshman in high school, and my band went on uh, the school band. We went on an out of state trip. And I guess I did not understand the finer points of how the telephone bill worked. And so uh, there was this girl, so how it always goes, who I was dating. And I was, I would call her every day from the hotel room, not knowing that you can't just make those phone calls. <laughs> and my mom had to like wire over. It was like, I, it was like 60 bucks, which at the time, how old like, were you? Uh, freshman in high school. Okay. I was probably too old to not be knowing this information. And so she had to like wire over $60 to the hotel. I felt so freaking stupid for that. Oh man. Thanks mom. I think everybody remembers whenever they discovered those TV channels and phone numbers that like either were just inappropriate for kids or it was just a money pit because yeah. you just started seeing all these as seen on TV stuff and you're yeah. like, oh. I can just call a number and get that delivered to the house. Okay, cool. I like from the 360, a really loud fart in the in middle school during the sit-ups per minute test. <laughs> I can see that. At least you're like exerting yourself. Yeah, you, yeah. you're well, putting in effort. Yes, you are exerting yourself. Quite literally. You're, you're putting in effort. I appreciate it. You know, sometimes that happens. I'm sure it happens in the gym as adults too. From the 817, great story, Mike. I think most of us, if not everyone can relate. I, I could... I could see that. I could definitely see that. It happened. I mean, you know, you have to, you have to own up to it. Let's see, from the nine four zero, learning how to ride my bike, I ended up riding straight into the side of my grandparents' house. <laughs> I did that straight into the side of my dad's minivan at the time. <laughs> did you dent it? Yes. Oh <laughs> and, no. And you know the best part is he was planning on selling it the next week. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah, and he still ended up selling it, but they knocked off a couple hundred dollars, and I felt pretty bad. But I was like, "You're the one that wanted me to learn," so this is what happened. I think my best story, though, that still haunts me to this day. My first ever spelling bee in the third grade. I got eliminated in the first round because I just got nervous. Oh no. And I messed up the word coffee. I forgot enough. Oh. And it haunts me to this day. Yeah. Because I have gone on not only to talk for a living, I have written, I covered the Cowboys for USA Today and the Cowboys Wire. Like I've learned AP style front and back. I've taken all these college classes to learn how to write. And I couldn't spell the word coffee, coffee in front of 50 people. From the 214, my grandma pants me in the fifth grade during lunch because I was sagging. I'm 40 now, and I still think about <laughs> that. Man, because some of these might not damage you. Like, some of them, these sound amusing. Some of these stories sound like they definitely damaged people longer term. Yeah, I think that's where I got initially oh. my shyness was messing up the spelling bee. From the 817, my friends dared me to sit on an anthill butt naked when I was seven. Oh, no. Okay, but why? And he did it? I assume so. I hope you got something out of it. Did you yeah, get like 10 bucks or something? Dude. At least? You got to go to the hospital. Yeah. That is unfortunate. It's from, not fun. From the 469, my goodness, our fourth grade teacher would kick the bottom of our desks if we fell asleep. One time, I had a science teacher who was also a coach. I don't know mm -hmm. if maybe, I don't know. He was really, really big and it felt like maybe he had a rage issue. <laughs> there was a pillar in our classroom. He took a, he took one of those big long yardsticks and smashed it over the pillar. And I don't even remember why. It felt like a really low level thing to do. He was furious. And I was kind of like, you might need to cycle down for a while. 
my father in the 60s went to Bishop Dunn. That's when the nuns taught. And so they would come by with rulers. He, he got in trouble yeah, and, and smack your hand or whatever. And he grabbed it one time because he, he did not want to get smacked. And that caused a big issue for him. That is why I write with my right hand because of that exact thing. I never had the courage to grab the ruler. I was like, nope. You got taught by nuns? Yes. Where at? Garland nuns? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me try this again. It was a older private school teacher. She was not a nun. She was not a <laughs> Garland nun, but she was an older woman and she would pop me every time I wrote with my left hand because you're not supposed to write with your left hand. I don't know why, but that's just what she said. Your, your, the side of your palm smears the... And guess what? I still don't hold my pen right because of that. I can tell. I've no I, <laughs> I still like, smear I have no clue how you write. Let's right. see. <laughs> I write incorrectly. There you go. The 469 is on the same page as me. They misspelled basketball. You had a more complex word. I just forgot how to spell coffee, and that still haunts you, me to this do day. Do you drink coffee? Yes, religiously. Okay, I wasn't sure if maybe you, like... And I've got beef with it. Like oh. every time I see it, I'm just like, I hate this. And then I drink it. But I never entered spelling bees. You've seen me try to say words. <laughs> see, I, cause I think you would go into your stand up bit where it's like coffee and you'd be like, what's the deal with this? Why are there two F's and two E's? It's too many. C O P H P H. <laughs> Same thing. We e -E. did cough fee. Is that. What was your Joseph one? It's Jose, it's Jose with, with a foot. Yeah. That's how I learned how to spell my middle name. That was a real thing that he said <laughs> on air. He goes, yeah, it's Jose with a foot. Yeah. That actually happened on air. That's how you spell Joseph. English is a confusing language. I will give you that, Bassett. The last thing I have here, the coolest NIL deal in all of college sports now belongs to Jackson Dart of Ole Miss. He is the quarterback for Ole Miss and... He's probably a Heisman Trophy candidate in 2024. He's, you know, he's a big name. And for big reason, he got a big NIL deal at the end of February with a private jet company called Nicholas Air based out of Oxford, Mississippi. He now has access to a fleet of seven different private jets at any time. And he Whoa. may travel anywhere he wants. And to make it all full circle, his head coach, Lane Kiffin, has a deal with them as well. And he flew one of their jets out to California when he found out that Dart hit the transfer portal to go recruit him. So awesome. it is a totally full circle thing now that his head coach has access to that same fleet of jets. And now his quarterback, Lane Kiffin's quarterback, Jackson Dart, will have access to the same thing. And they range in That's amazing. Uh, in between 356 cubic, cubic feet of uh, cabin space to 1,800 cubic feet. So he's got different sizes of jets to choose from as well. And he's like 20-something years old. That's amazing. Good for him. Must be nice. Here's a quick update. We talked about Aaron Judge suffering from some abdominal issues. The Yankee star has said he does expect to be ready for opening day, but just something to keep an eye on as we go forward. What about Garrett Cole, man? I need the I Garrett not, Cole information. I keep looking for that. I know it's important for your keeper league. I keep looking for that. Another excellent edition of AM on the FM. Coming up next, we'll talk Tinoco, Langford, Evaldi, and so much more with Jared Sandler right here on your home of the Rangers, 105.3 The Fan.
This segment of the KNC Masterpiece is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org and the personal injury lawyers, Frankel and Frankel. Life is unpredictable. Accidents happen. Frankel and Frankel are the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one has been in an accident, contact Frankel and Frankel for a free consultation at truckwreck.com or call 214-333-3333. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. Programming alert at 1.30. We're going to have on Yoel Zuhai. That is one of the attorneys involved in the current Dak Prescott potential legal drama representing the Fort Worth woman who is being accused of making a false sexual assault allegation. But before we get to that, so that's coming up at 1.30. Before we get to that, let's talk with jared sandler good afternoon sir hey what's up I, I wanted to kind of pick your brain a little bit about and because this is somebody that mike's been talking about going back to the backfields and everything what have you thought about the spring training and i guess where is the fit for jesus tinoco well he's had a really good camp and yesterday they stretched him out he almost pitched uh, three innings he gave up a couple infield hits uh that ended up preventing him from from completing the game but uh, I mean I'll, I'll be honest and, and we always talk about how it's tough to assess a player's uh, future for the year based on a sample size in spring training but you know to some degree you've got to rely on what you're seeing in these games to inform you maybe not just the raw stats but you know the stuff and the performance uh, you know separate of whether a weekly hit ground ball gets converted into a hit or not and uh, you know, to me, I, I think it'd be really tough for this team to leave Jesus Tinoco off, especially because he does have that multi-inning ability, which is very valuable. Uh, and they have a little bit of wiggle room with the 40-man roster. Uh, and I think he's a guy that it, it might make sense to uh, put on the 40-man roster, make a 40-man move to create a spot. And, I mean, he's been really, really good uh, and has in, in some ways been the talk of camp uh, you know, amongst the, the coaching staff on the pitching side. So uh, right now, I, I kind of feel like he's got a spot to lose, or one of the spots is his to lose uh, oh. because of how good he's been and how good the stuff's been. We're two weeks away from the Rangers having to make all the major decisions to at least start the season off with their roster. What's the percentage you put on Evan Carter batting second and Wyatt Lankford batting third on opening night against the Cubs? Yeah, so... You know, with the the idea there being that Corey Seager likely not available for that game, I, yeah, I, th I think uh, I think White Langford hitting third and maybe second, a uh, high probability. The only thing I'd say, Basky, about Evan Carter hitting second is that Justin Steele starting for the Cubs. He's a lefty, and I wouldn't be surprised if against the lefty. Uh, you'd see Evan hitting a little bit further down in the order. Now, let's just say, you know, it was a righty. Yeah, I think that would make sense. And then ultimately, uh, when Corey Seager's back, you know, he'll hit second, whether it's against right. a lefty or a righty. But uh, without Corey Seager against righties, I wouldn't be surprised to see Evan Carter in that two spot. You mentioned the thing about Corey Seager. I, I know we're going off of some assumptions do you think it's likely at this point he's a no-go for uh, just opening day at least yeah it just it's it's tough to until he plays in a game of any kind it, it's tough to sit here and say with any level of confidence he will be ready uh, i don't think if, if he's not i don't think he's going to be that far out uh he's you know took ground balls today he's been swinging that's good uh you know, if, if he could maybe get into the exhibition games, like, you know, they're hoping Josh Young will be able to, uh, the, the two games against Boston and Arlington, then maybe uh, maybe that's a part of the conversation then, you know, the opening day lineup. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Corey back within a week or so of opening day. But right now, uh, if you were to ask me, you gotta you can't ride the fence, yes or no, I would say probably not ready for opening day. So today, Jared, we had to make kind of big Ranger predictions, kind of – we said first and second place is going to be Evan Carter and Wyatt Langford. You pick which one, but they're going to finish first and second in rookie of the year voting this year. I said that the Rangers will have the best offense in the American League for the 2024 season. What would be your big prediction if you had to make one on the Texas Rangers? Uh, all right. Well, I'll, I'll go on the pitching side uh, and say that this bullpen is a, a – top four bullpen in the American League. Uh, they might not have the superstar power like, say, the Astros have, but I really like the bullpen's depth. 
I think they've got so many more options. I think they've got a a better group of pitchers to close out games. I also think they have a better group of pitchers when they're down by a run or two runs to keep it at a run or two runs. It felt like at times last year if they were down by two runs in the six, you know, it was just, hey, gosh, can we – can we keep it to like maybe down four or five runs because the guys they were throwing out there uh, just were not of high caliber. And I, I think that they have much better depth. I mean, that's one reason why they didn't have many late game comebacks last season. Uh, I, I don't think that will be the case coupled with what, you know, you just said about the offense. So I think that this bullpen, I'm not going to sit here and say best bullpen, but this was a, a historically bad group last year. I think it'd be a, a really big jump for them to be top third in the American League. And I, I feel like they will be. I know spring training, the records don't matter much, but last year the Orioles won over 100 games, and this year I believe they're 14-2 and two right now in the Grapefruit League, and they are winning right now 10-1. to one. It's spring training. I get it. But how scary are you thinking the Baltimore Orioles could be that they won as many games as they did last year as a young team, and now they've come to spring training and they're showing their organizational depth by just destroying teams in spring training? Yeah, that's the key is a lot of times teams that have a really good spring training record. I mean, it could just be random, but a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, they're winning the back half of games, you know, because of their, their, their minor league guys who get called up in the depth. And, you know, what that tells me with the Orioles or, or how that applies to them as a, a threat to the Rangers in 2024, they still have so many chips uh, from which they can can deal at the deadline if they're willing to do it. You know, thankfully for the Rangers, the Orioles have been, you know, cash strapped or they, they've been operating like a cash strapped team. And that's probably prevented them from making certain moves. Uh, but I mean, they're so good. They're so talented. They're so deep, even without Felix Bautista. Uh, they still have a good bullpen. They've got the, op- the, the ability to, to operate midseason and make additions. And every year when a team wins a, a championship of any kind, there is always some luck involved or some you know, what would have been if it was a year later, a year sooner? You know, the Mavs, when they played the Thunder. I mean, what if they played them one year later with that incredibly talented roster? But they didn't. They played them at the right time. And I think the Rangers, uh, you know, the Rangers and the Orioles, we said this prior to that series starting, this very well could be a postseason rivalry that uh, last year's edition was the first chapter of many because both of those organizations appear like they're going to be playing baseball beyond 162 for the next several years. Thank you very much, good sir, and we encourage everyone to follow you on Twitter as well because of your incredible lineup video breakdown as well as many, many other things. We appreciate you, man. Hey, thanks, fellas. There you go, Jared Sandler, at Jared Sandler on Twitter if you want to follow. All right, right now we're going to completely switch gears and we're going to take you to the DNM Leasing Hotline where we have attorney Yoel Zuhai on the phone with us. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So uh, we've been trying to catch people up with this all day, and essentially the news that made the rounds yesterday is that Dak Prescott is suing for alleged extortion for a false sexual assault claim, and I want to take it to you to start with. Are you one of the attorneys who sent the letter to Dak Prescott in January. And if that is the case, can you explain more about that to us? Absolutely. And I also have my co-counsel with me as well, Bethel. Okay. Uh, Bethel's the high. We're, and we've both been working on this case for some time. So, yes, um, our client, Victoria Shores, back in 2017, um, was raped by Mr. Prescott. And um, he has, you know, changed his story since we've been hired on this case. Uh, he initially said, you know, he needed assistance remembering her. Then he said he remembered her um, vaguely. Then now he says it was consensual, which I guess we're getting somewhere with the admission. Um, but um, this story about extortion, we were really taken aback yesterday when we saw it. But this is just a legal maneuver. And, uh, I mean, this is a classic, uh, you know, move to discredit sexual assault victims. Um we sent a demand letter, which is very common practice um, in the legal profession, civil cases, um, and there's there's nothing extortionist about it. But Levi McCatherine, to I mean to his credit, he's a hard fighting attorney, and Dak I'm sure is paying him millions of dollars, 
And, um, you know, this is just a legal tactic, but there's nothing extortionist about it. But we're just very disappointed that he would try to flip the script and make himself the victim. And just for the record, we have reached out to try to get in contact with Levi McCathern, and we're told there will be no interviews on that front at this time. So I, I'm curious about this, and, and I understand this is a very difficult subject, but can you walk me through the time lapse? So the allegation was that this happened in February of 2017. What happens that makes it take seven years to bring this to the forefront? Well, you know, this is actually very normal uh, in sexual assault cases, and there's very uh, there's there's a lot of data regarding this, and we see experts actually testify about this in criminal cases often that it takes time for sexual assault victims to come out. Now, you got to keep in mind not only is she a sexual assault victim, but we're talking about Dak Prescott, we're talking about the quarterback of America's team. Um, so now you add even more layers. Uh, in, into the, the fear element of the victim. You know, are they going to believe me? And look at and the evidence is exhibit A. Look at what he's doing now. He's trying to make uh, himself the victim. Call her an extortionist. We've even seen some hate messages from Cowboy fans, you know. These guys never met Dak a day in his life. And some of the Cowboy fans say, oh, well, we know he's innocent. How do you know that? But that's, but that's what Victoria was fearing is um, – is the machine that that Prescott is. Can can you walk me through if it is all possible? I know this letter got sent in January. How long has Victoria been a client with you guys or how long have you guys tried to communicate with Dak Prescott? Yes. So it's, um, it, it's been a few months now uh, since she's reached out to us and we, uh, we were, you know, uh, trying to get in contact with, uh, you know, his legal team and, and, and who's the right, you know, people to get to. And once we were able to find that information, um, we did it, we did it immediately. And it's not just on the civil aspect. We're also in the process of the criminal aspect of it as well. What, is there any particular time frame for the potential of a criminal suit to come forward? And my question is, has the statute of limitations elapsed on that? Um, no. So, um, the, uh, for the criminal side, no, um, the statute of limitations has not has not ran at all on uh, aggravated sexual assault, and I, and I don't want to go too deep into detail as far as that. But we are we 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 are we are um, we 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 are working on that as as we speak. I, I don't want to give you too many details, but when I say we're working on it. Um, we are in the process of getting that report done. Does one have to go first? Does the criminal case have to go first before civil? No, not at all. Not at all. They can they can both go simultaneously or however they want to run. Um, the only thing is statute of limitations. As long as we're good on statute of limitations, um, you know, we're good. And uh, on the civil aspect, too, um, there, there's many different things that we plan to um, sue Dak Prescott for related to this matter. Um, and um, we, have, we have a lot to work with on both the civil aspect and the criminal aspect. Do you care to give us any more insight about whether those other lawsuits could be regarding uh, we don't want to comment on that at this time, but um, what we can say is that the lawsuits um, are very imminent, very, very imminent. What I, I'm curious if you can walk us through how you got to the number that the allegation that Dak Prescott sent a text to Clarence Hill with Fort Worth Star Telegram saying, quote, she's trying to get 100 million from me to, quote, not report a rape case I obviously did not do. Is that 100 million dollar figure accurate? How did you come up? with that number well you know um in certain cases um and you know ra rape is uh, on the level of wrongful death you know uh, one of the things one of the most common phrases for wrongful death is uh what's the price can you put on a, on, a, on a dead person's life well what's the price that you can put on a rape uh the the trauma that comes from that um the humiliation that comes from that um, there's not a price tag you can put on that. Um, so, to be honest, I don't think $100 million was out of the realm of possibility. Now, were we willing to negotiate it? Yes. But, I, I mean, what's the? I don't know what's the price. For the people who say $100 million is too much, what is the price that you can put on the rape? Do you believe if this negotiation would have taken place that all of these claims would have gone away and never come to public light? Well, I mean, there's no way to really know that because that's all uh, – 
that's all hypothetical. But all I know is that we, we're here today and we're pursuing both fronts, the civil and the criminal aspect of it. How, and both are very imminent. How long do you believe this would take to get in front of a judge or a jury and actually go to court? Well, it depends for the civil and the criminal aspect. Uh, are you just asking both? Sure. So the civil aspect, I, I presume, would be a lot sooner um, because as soon as you file your lawsuit, um, it, it, you can go in front of the judge um, as soon as the person gets the other person gets served and they answer and they answer to the lawsuit. Um, so, but criminal is a little different. It takes a, it takes a little longer because they have to do an investigation, see if there's probable cause, issue a warrant for Dak Prescott's arrest, um, you know, and then they would have to file the case. So that could take a little longer. But the civil aspect is very quick. Okay. Do you believe that we would be talking today if not for Dak Prescott and his legal team taking the step yesterday and filing the extortion suit? Um, like I said, I mean, there, there's no way to really know that. Um, you know, the negotiations never were completed. So, I mean, it, it just depended on, on, it would just depend on what kind of agreement we have in place. So, but, um, you know, in a weird way, I'm kind of actually glad they took this step because it, it frees us to just speak freely and openly about this. And as long as we're doing that, I very much appreciate your time. I'm just curious. I know you walked us through the timeline a little bit. What would you say devil's advocate wise to people who believe the suit is being brought at a time that a lot of people think Dak Prescott is going to get a new contract? And that is the reason behind the timing here. Well, I would just say to the people who uh, who I saw who, who were saying um, Dak is innocent, I would just ask them, you know, to, to hear both sides of the story because, I mean, why why should we believe that Dak Prescott didn't do this just because he has a star on his helmet and he's saying he didn't? Um, so I would just ask them to hear both sides of the story and, and to not do what we always do and find excuses to try to make – the rapist, the victim. And I think that that's what that would be doing when, you know, people ask those kinds of questions. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to give us y'all's perspective and give us an insight about what might be coming after this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day. There you go. Yoel Zuhai right here on 105.3 The Fan. And I haven't really gotten a chance to look at the feedback, uh, but I do want to say this. We reached out and Levi McCathern, the attorney representing Dak Prescott, he's uh, he is welcome at any point. He's not doing interviews right now. We have also reached out if the team wants to give another statement or anything along those lines in the with the idea of getting both sides because yeah. I am very curious. I, I will tell you this: I was curious to hear what he had to say. I wasn't there and I understand that some people are mad and think maybe that airtime should not have been given, but for people out there who are listening and they do have somebody in their life, maybe yeah. it was them that did get raped or sexually assaulted or anything like that. I understand how it can be difficult. I, I can guess. Hey, I don't, I don't understand. So you asked most of the questions. I'll just give you kind of positive feedback. You did a heck of a job. And you were fair and you were balanced and you asked questions. You didn't take a side in it. And this is, you know, this is unfortunate part of also covering sports yep. too, is that he, Dak Prescott is the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. This is happening. We can't stop it from happening whether you want to or not. So we wanted to uh, give the audience the information that that side is putting out. And so we didn't, is just, I thought you did a very good job of just asking questions and letting the lawyer answer the question. I appreciate that. And the th one of the key things that we learned out of that is it sounds like their own civil litigation and possibly, if not probably, criminal litigation could be forthcoming. That mm -hmm. does not prove anything one way or yeah. another, but that is another interesting development in this story. We're the KNC Masterpiece right here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up next, let's chit-chat with those fellas from the G-Bag Nation right here on 105.3 The Fan.
Together, let's drive based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan right now. Courtesy of DNM Leasing, it is time for our chit chat with those fellas from the G Bag Nation. Gentlemen, how is ya? Peggy, we are rolling. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, do you want to talk about serious how are things? You? Uh, I'm okay. Right on. People are people are angry, and I understand that. The offer is out there for the other side as well. I want to hear it. They are not talking right now, and I understand. It's a big story. It's a potentially an awful story. And here we are. You know, I think we we like to uh, have fun on sports radio and uh, talk about the games and the players. And sometimes some serious stuff approaches us. Yep. And, you know, it's it's a tough call on, on do you do it or not. You know, I guess you're kind of a, uh, asked to be a reporter in some ways. Yes. As opposed and to entertain. Like, Crap, what yeah. am I supposed to do here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I thought you handled it well, you know, as, as far sure. as. If we were going to do it, you know, the way you did it was great. Appreciate that. Now, I have a completely non sequitur then that's fun, if you guys prefer. Or we can talk yes. about Derrick Henry going to the Ravens, however you want to break it down. Eh. Is there a non-holiday movie that you watch every single year? Because I get with your, like, your Christmas vacations, your this and that. You mm -hmm. might watch it on a holiday. Is there a movie that you love so much that you watch it every year or just about every year? At the holidays, Star Wars is on. Uh, oh, uh, for, okay. Um, so, yeah. You know, the original trilogy. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Don't really. Broadus, my guess was going to be no, just because we've talked about pop culture before, but let me know if I'm incorrect. Well, see, but the movie I watch every year that this is way before your guys' time. NFL films with Steve yeah. Sable. Steve Sable. That, yeah, yeah the, the 58 <laughs> championship game between America's the Colts. America's game. Yeah. Cool Hand Luke. I'm just guessing. I'm throwing out a I'm throwing cool out Luke. Out. That's a good guess. Know. Cool Hand Luke is a really good guess. I watched the movie Patton. The General Patton. The story. Yes. It was uh, George C. Scott. He's in that movie. Yeah, it, it Academy Award winning movie. Yeah. But it's a, it's, I love military movies is what I do. But I don't watch a lot of movies. But if you told me that every time the Blues Brothers comes on or Caddyshack or Animal House, I'll stop and watch. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. But I don't see many movies. I really, really don't. I've never seen that Patton film. You need to watch it's it. It's very good. You need to watch it. Okay. Carl yeah. Walden, George C. Scott. Do you have like a specific day that you will that you will choose and you'll be like, hey, we gotta we gotta you know I'll it's be been sit, like ten months. We need be, to get back on no, the Patton I'll, I'll train. Sit around, I'll sit around the summertime. And like on a Saturday, I got nothing going on. And I'm like, you know what? Good time to watch That's your Pat. movie. Yeah. Nice. Roll up on the couch and here we go. Yeah. I think, I mean, I don't know that I have one like guaranteed, but I think I see the movie Wedding Crashers once per year just to remind myself how Because awesome you it seek was. it out or because it's on TV all the time? Because Corey will talk about the movie Blue Streak always being on TV for Ooh. a while. And so he would always stop it out, watch it. Do you stop down and look for it or does it just find you? That's actually, that's one that I will, I will stop down and be like, Hey, it's time for wedding crashers. Maybe it's not once a year, but it's pretty dang, it's pretty dang close. Hitch is probably the movie that I stop on the Will Smith, uh, yeah. rom-com. I think that movie is, it's on TBS or something constantly. I stop and watch that frequently as well. Do you guys do the Godfather at all? Yeah, that so, seems like one that's always when it's good fellas when it's on I will stop again even if it's part three or only the first two I tend to gravitate towards the first two How, did you ever watch the I think it was a couple of years ago the reworked version of part three I still haven't seen that that supposedly people think is no better no I have not seen the reworked one it was they're fascinating stories though Absolutely. I mean, as they, as you go through, when you look at his father and then how he ended. Absolutely. Yeah. Does Derek Henry, Patrick Queen being off the board do anything for you guys? Or you were like, I mean, I figured that wasn't going to happen either. Way. This is going great. I mean, if you're not going to contend, you want to be as bad as possible. <laughs> I'm hoping the Eagles make the playoffs. The Cowboys don't. They get a good pick. They get their cap in order. Um, you know, and, and maybe, maybe that we can play the long-term game to our advantage here a little bit, but if, if, if I you're not going to go, for, if you're not yeah. going to go for, plus I, I, I love that they're not bringing in old linemen, you know, old jobber linemen, uh, like Udoga, you know, I think they're going to draft and try to get the next group of young stars when they did their Cowboys rebuild in 11, 12 and 13, they got back to building through the offensive line. I really think that's where their priority needs to be. And, you know, you find great tackles inside about the top 12. 
wealth. Yeah, Daw- Dawson asked a question yesterday if this is a rebuild without saying a rebuild. Here's what I wish that they would do in this case if they were following what you said. If you know you're not going to sign Dorrance Armstrong to a long contract, you right. know you're not going to sign these guys, and you know that it has to be all through the draft, then you trade them a year before they become a free agent. So that's the smart thing to do. It's kind of like I said today. It's like the Cowboys mm. read 60 to 75% of a book and go, I think I know how it's going to end, so we're good. And that's how I am at reading. I don't know why I don't finish books, but sometimes I just don't finish. It's like, I think they're doing kind of the right thing, but it's like you have to finish off the book and you have to know if we got to do this through the draft, we need 10 picks a year. And it's like, okay, if we do that and we know we're not going to sign these guys, whether it's a fourth or a fifth, you just try to accumulate to go, hey, if we're going to need to replace 10 positions through the draft, we need 10 picks, right? Yeah. They're doing that with the compensatories though. If you look at all the guys that are losing right now, yeah, it's you might get lucky and get a fourth round pick out of this if somebody, you know, with the money and the formula adds up. But they're going to get a lot of probably fifth and sixth round picks for some of the stuff that they, you know, that will allow happen. If you really want to play all in as far as trying to rebuild this thing, you would exact Martin today. You would trade well, you trade Micah Parsons is what you would do. Agreed. That would get the value that 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 that's that and, and just hear me out, folks. Uh, that's your max value right there. That is the sure. absolute max value you can get without having a quarterback. You know, if I threw out Zach Martin to the Jaguars, would they be interested? Uh, I think so. it, yeah. It, the thing about it is, I think Zach Martin's closer to the end for sure. Than so he let's is. get something before he dies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, right. That, his career's about over. His yeah. career's about dead. Well, I like, think, this uh, is what dead. you do. No, I think I mean, he'll probably be retired wrong. the next time they have a window open. Yeah, you're not yeah. wrong about that. You're not wrong. But they want to try to make the playoffs every year. So, again, it's just another layer of how their team-building philosophy is heavily flawed. What do you guys got coming up on the program today? Pure More gold. that, I hope. Pure, yes, probably. Pure gold, as always. Thanks for asking, Hagee. Uh, Sands has the latest great news about your champs at 6 o'clock or so. Roll home with the G-Bag Nation. We've been the KNC Masterpiece. Make your way back with us tomorrow. Corey will be back right here, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on 105.3 The Fan. Say good night, Kevin. Good night, Kevin. You are officially...
Entertainment Studios, secured by DFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. It is hour number one of the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. I hope you're having an outstanding day as uh, we're off and running here. On your home of the Cowboys and home of the World Series champion, Texas Rangers. Now, it is a ways off, but uh, Jared Sandler is going to join us coming up at 6 o'clock tonight. Recap everything going on with the Rangers and uh, all the top stories as we sit uh, two weeks, two days away from opening day. General at your service. There's Brian Bosch, former Cowboy Scout, NFL executive. Lucius Alexander's in the pimp cup over there, master control. You do have Eric Chia follow here. And uh, Carter Freeman is coordinating your video at 105thefan.com, Twitch, and YouTube. How you boys doing today? Wonderful. Yeah. Doing good. Hanging tough. Yeah. On a toxic Tuesday, man, where the Cowboys are signing. Are they doing bits? <laughs> signing their long snapper. They wait till today, too, so they can be the one team who did nothing yesterday. It's kind of funny. Uh, yeah. They're trying to tick me off. I'm not going to let them do it. Nah. I'm can't. having a great day. Yeah. It is all good, man. I mean, we we have a lot of good sports stuff going on, Brian. Did can't they, focus on the negative too much more. Did they put too much pressure on themselves for this draft then? Have, oh. they, have they put too much pressure after and, and after what happened to them last year in the draft? There's no question they have brought us. Absolutely. And they they, they can, I mean, to the they're point, always putting too much pressure on themselves when it comes to the draft, but this year even more so because of how bad it was for them last year. But the way yeah. they team build, they're always saying this is the one way that we are going to improve our team. So in what is one of the biggest crap shoots in all of sports, this is what we're yeah. going to depend on. So there's, it's always high pressure, but this year even more so. See, to me, I always like the flexibility of the draft. You know, the ability to kind of move around the board, and but they, they've, they've just got to now draft needs, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't set the bar too high, Brian. They just need to find a great tackle at 24, which by itself is a really, really tough challenge for year one. And then a great center in round two and a runner then in round three or day three. So I would say... Linebacker. Getting, oh, yes. So this is, but this whole draft is really... <laughs> Quite the laundry list over there. Yeah, huh? you got to nail this, this thing. Draft, but, you losing Gilmore, you might need a corner, folks. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying, though. Is it now to the point where they're going to go in there and just going to have to hit needs every pick? It's not even going to be about a, the best available players and things like that that we like to talk about. Yeah. It's going I mean, to be about it, it could set up either way. They could either look at it like we need these positions to contend or it's the quiet rebuild of guys we got to get back to I think paying, you're onto play, the, taking best available. I think you're onto this rebuild thing. Yeah. I think I was on, you know, we I know I did the draft show this morning. We talked about it over there at dallascowboys.com and, you know, without saying it, they're Looks like they're rebuilding this team. Yeah, and I like it because, you know, Mike McCarthy really wanted to run the ball last year. Uh, Tony Pollard, was, what was the stat yesterday? He was number two in the NFL in yards after contact. Right. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have holes. None. So you're like, hey, we were good at pass protecting, but we couldn't run the ball for crap. So let's get rid of our old tackle and let's get rid of our weak center. And we are going to prioritize making a great offensive line that we can be balanced behind, you know, and hopefully great scheme is coming along with that. Hopefully another great young runner is coming through the draft eventually. And if they nail all four of those things, I believe they could contend next year. There's still going to be enough good players on defense. The passing game is going to be outstanding. All you need is a dominant, like, top five running game. And now, when teams play those junk defenses against Dak that totally uh, uh, sabotage the Cowboys' offense, you can just turn around and run the ball. And if you can do that for four and a half or five in January, this team could absolutely be in the Super Bowl next year. It is a high degree of difficulty to get all those things done in one offseason. Well, but I'm not going to rule it out. Well, the way you just explained it, though, it's workable. Yeah. It's okay. Then you don't think they're rebuilding. Well... They are rebuilding because they are not keeping their players. They are not throwing a bunch of money. But the, in the NFL, the line between pretty good right. and outstanding. This is a Cowboys rebuild. Sure. In 11, 12, and 13, they did it. They let all their offensive linemen go. They yeah. didn't. I mean, uh, Brady James and Keith Brooking were gone. Terrence Newman was gone. Sure. Flo Zell was gone. Uh, Kozer was gone. Everybody was gone all of a sudden. But they drafted well enough getting yeah. Tyron and Travis and Zach in yeah. that era where they were able to play for the playoffs in Week 17. Each one of those years, the last game of the season was for the playoffs. 
And if they, I think if they can do that again, then they can, you know, be rebuilding with that Jerry Wink of we're still contending. Every game is must see for the Cowboys. They'll never wave the white flag entirely, but I think they're scaling back their their team building. The good news about the NFL and specifically this NFC is the line is so thin that if they do nail those four things, get a linebacker, you don't have to totally give up on the idea of winning a couple of playoff games next year. kind of feel like, though, that they'll always, and I've said this before, that they're always going to be good enough because they'll let them draft. Yeah. But I think you're asking a lot now. I, I yes. think this, I think you, you now, after coming off a year where they didn't have particularly a, a good draft that, that helped them this season, and you know, maybe these kids will help them next year coming up. But I, I, I think there's now just a immense amount of pressure on Will McClay and these scouts to set that board and make sure that, that every one of those guys, they draft play. I mean, you saw how bad they looked against Miami. You know, and that was that without Tyron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, now now you face that reality of that being your normal. I'd say nine wins right now. That's that'd be my prediction. And whether that gets you a wild card spot or not, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's a fair place to put it. Uh, before you know, obviously, what's going to go down with the draft here. Um, it, they they do have enough holes at some premium spots when you consider left tackle and center potentially corner. Uh, I mean, those are going to be tough things to be able to fill all in just a draft. So I think if you're setting the the line you're probably looking at, yeah, is it eight and a half, nine and a half? That's about where it probably yeah. sits for me. Yeah. Yeah. It you know, I I I think there is a chance because great players happen in the twenties. It's hard to find a tackle there, but maybe they get a center there and and maybe their second round, you know, turns into a great running back and maybe Awesome Richards or somebody internally has a great off season of work and they show up and maybe they aren't the the best in the passing game. I think that can help mitigate that. But if you're a great athlete that can get off the line and, and go get some of these edge players and and open up holes i i think that'd be my priority right now if i'm the cowboys i feel like dax at a point in his career where he can handle some extra pressure let's get young powerful athletes that can fire off that ball knock people in the dirt and open up some holes we have more than enough passing game uh i feel like especially with you know cd lamb uh ferguson the tight end still having cooks i I think this passing game is, is going to be good enough. And I tell you what, once you get the defense to respect your running game, you will get the best of Dak Prescott. You know, that that could be an MVP type of season. Okay, speaking of MVP type seasons, uh, another triple-double for Luka Doncic. Great win for the Mavs. Blitzed them right from the jump. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 that game was over in the first you know, the, the Mavs did a great job. 40-16 40 to 16 or 44-16? Yeah, they, they, they did. You know, yeah, it was clean. It was Chica clean start. Chicago wow. was horrible on defense. They were sh horrible shooting the ball. Your centers played really well in the game. They continued the streak with, uh, you know, consecutive baskets made. Luka continues to do, you know, the, the get those guys involved. But, yeah, they, they blitzed them from the jump. That The Bulls had no shot in that one last night. Yeah, the Mavs start clean. Uh, and as Talk Franco noted in that first quarter, the Mavs had 10 assists offensively, zero turnovers. Yeah. It was just, hey, we're crisp here. We're rocking. We're rolling. We're not going to let the Bulls have any life here. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what the Mavs need to do against teams like that uh, so that you don't have to worry about playing late into the fourth quarter with with, with guys like Luka. Well, Luka got a long break in that second quarter, and the, the, the Mavs didn't necessarily start it off very well, the shooting and all that, but he, he, got, to, he got to sit out for almost seven minutes in that second quarter, so I think that helped him a little bit. Yeah, incredible shooting display from Lively and Gafford, 21 of 22. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daniel has now not missed a shot in 28 attempts, and seven it, from the record yeah. from Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah. Uh, you know, the only down spot in the game was Luca was out there in the fourth quarter trying to get to 30. His streak of the 30-point and the 35-point triple-double has come to an end. Right. Uh, finished with 27 points on the night. Okay, two of the best teams in the NHL this evening at the AACA. They're going to host the Panthers. The Stars will. Stars defense stepping up big time recently. 12 goals allowed the last five games. Everything to come in together at the right time with 16 games remaining in the season. It'll end April 16th. They are now atop the division by two points over Winnipeg once again. Second in the conference, two points behind Vancouver. And uh, the Panthers are the number one team in the East. It's a hell of a showdown tonight. In yeah, it will be. It will be. Uh, it'll be uh, some outstanding. And that, like I say, the the Stars have kind of figured some things out with their. They play with a lot of youth at certain positions. So some veteran savvy type players as well. Good mix with their lines. 
and you know they're they're holding up well enough in the net. Yeah, they've gave up some goals. The West Coast swing really really helped them though. A big victory as we talked about in San Jose coming back and getting those points, and then you take care of the Ducks and the Kings. That's a good way to kind of get yourself going the right way. Now you're home for a nice stretch here. Yeah, absolutely. So, but this this will be a a really great test between between the Stars and the Panthers tonight because yeah, the Panthers are are on a a legit tear yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is a ton of fun, and I saw the stars are going to be playing in Finland uh, next year. So they've yeah. they've announced a couple of of overseas teams getting to go uh, go go show off a little bit, and the stars are one of those. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that is great, man. Uh, and, and salute to everybody involved in there. I know it's going to be a big homecoming and very exciting for a handful of their players. Yeah. Ravens are going to sign uh, Derrick Henry. Sources say uh, Patrick Queen leaving the Ravens to join the Steelers. Mm -hmm. uh, Texans are trading for Joe Mixon. Uh, Chief will have more uh, detail and analysis of these stories a little bit later on as uh, we get to the NFL news of the day at 3 o'clock and football's finest at 5. Okay, uh, 2 and 4 this team is cooked. The draft is going to help that. Uh, uh, 8 one seven. who allows Gavin to do this for a living? Bad take after bad take. Stick to Little League Girl Soccer. You're almost impossible to listen to. Just extend the KMC show. <laughs> <laughs> he he, right. he hit you with a buddy in there, too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just, just stick to Little League Girls Soccer, buddy. All right. Uh, if, he'd have hey. called you, if he'd have called you sport or champ, yeah. I'd have had more respect. But when you use that buddy term, you, you yeah. don't text in anymore, please. Use, Mean, a, use a champ or a, you know, or a sport. If you want to direct it at me, I won't see it because I'm not going to see your comments. That's no. true. How about that? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what do you what do you have an issue with? I picked him to win nine games. Yeah. I picked the Cowboys to win nine games. I said it's not impossible because this team drafts well, especially with offensive linemen. They do a good that job. you nail tackle and center. Yep. Now you can run the ball. Yep. Dak was what, third in MVP voting? Did I say if you win the MVP, you're Patrick Mahomes? No. I said you could win the MVP, but that doesn't mean a lot. Lamar Jackson can't really have success in the playoffs, keeps winning MVPs. Yeah. Okay. So trust me, I got this. Okay. Now, Shut up! 817, if you want to like fire off some of your takes since they're so great, I'd be happy to read them. Yeah. But just attacking me and generically saying bad takes, it's kind of weird, man. Put your name on it too, by the way, so we can determine whether you need to be taken seriously or not. To I'm make you famous. famous. Yeah, we'll make you famous. Laugh my ass out, bro, Gavin. At first you were all in, now you're all back out, and then you're all back in. Well, I was just providing scenarios, you know? Like, I'm not foolish enough to think maybe you are foolish enough to believe that whatever uh, answer you come up on probabilities is 100% true, right? You're like, oh, here's what I think is going to happen, so I 100% believe this. I'm painting a picture, okay? With the Cowboys' approach to team building, I think their chances of winning a Super Bowl in any given year, even with a great playoff roster, is probably under 2%, okay? But I also think... That it, at some point, because of how well they draft and how bad the NFC is, maybe Mahomes and Burrow both get hurt in the same year. You know, maybe you draft so well and you have the arrival of Schoonmaker and Mozzie Smith in the same offseason uh, of improvement. And now, you know, you're looking like a contender. We can't predict the future. You know, all we can do is talk about how things could be different. So in a day where everybody is incredibly negative about Cowboys team building. All I'm doing is saying, hey, we can't be totally sure. There is that glimmer of hope out there that maybe the blind squirrels known as Jerry and Stephen Jones can find the damn nut. You know, we don't have to give up all hope, just the majority of it. You know, they're not going to have a better chance. Sense. They're not going to have a better chance. Yes, it chance. makes sense. And the, the, the max hope, though, being one playoff win. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like best yeah. case scenario in a perfect world, everything, you know, the stars align and you can win a singular playoff game. Hopefully it's against one of these teams who wins their division that's such a bad division, and now uh, you're playing a sub-500 team in the playoffs. It's not really a playoff team, and you can go ahead and fool yourself and be like, hey, we, 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 won, we won the playoff game. They're not, that's, that's your Unfortunately, that's your best-case scenario. That not, is, but they've already done tier. that. They've already done that. Give me yeah. a good running game. Give me the ability to stop the run, yeah. which I don't think is impossible. I don't necessarily... I don't think it's impossible for, I guess, good. But ultimately, even when they've had good running games or a good defense, mm -hmm. we know what happens when it's all said and done. Right. At best, 
perfect case scenario, you win a playoff game, and more, and that's that is not likely. When you're when oh, you're no, showing right up now, when no. you're showing up to AT and T Stadium and getting lambasted the way you did versus Green Bay, yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate that you have to. You're trying to dig up hope somewhere. You'd be looking for like all rookie team tackle. Yeah, you, you know? would have to yeah. ace things in such a way just to hopefully win the one playoff game. <laughs> yeah. G bag of the day is hey, coming uh, up. But, but, but we can talk about extending a KMC masterpiece. I can get here at three hey, o'clock. I'm telling you. Yeah. Let's what do you go. think about? We that? We can negotiate on that one. Stuff. Uh, that's what you want. Tom. I love it. I love <laughs> yeah, it. We dude. get here at yeah. three o'clock. Actually, I'm up for see. contract negotiation right yeah, now. I'm gonna hit spit that. over that after the show. Yeah. yeah. It is technically the midday day part, so I think it is theirs. That's what they're asking for. It's right? their real estate. <laughs> that's what they're asking for. <laughs> that's right. We're generous. We'll give it to them. Yeah. You know, we this is the this is the Tolos radio station. You know, we just work here. We got the G-Bag of the Day coming up at 2.30. In light of recent news, what could the Cowboys still do at runner if they were so inclined? That's next right here, the G-Bag Nation. On your home of the Cowboys and World Series champs, 105 through the fan. Take your turn.
Brent Sieg, person familiar with the deal, t- told the morning news. So as we passed along earlier, they, they are on the board now. They're on the board. Brian, and I think it's a valid question from Chief. Are they doing a bid here? <laughs> yeah, dude. Because yesterday, you could have easily done your long snapper deal yesterday, and then yeah. we wouldn't all be able to run with the fact that you were the one team in all of football that decided against making a single transaction yesterday. But yeah. they're like, no, we're going to hold off. We got this thing in the back pocket. We're going to let the, the calendar flip to March 12th, and then we'll punch this one in. Just so we can, uh, I guess, get their get their laughs off. It's pre- it's pretty good. It is. It's it's hilarious. They got to be like Gene and Ahan and back slapping in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're gonna love this. Watch long snapper resigned. These guys think they knew football. We know what what we need to do here. Nine oh three, Gavin. You sound like Jerry talking, pal. We had the easiest chance this year, and I know, I know, and and you know, I here's what happened is when the Rangers won the World Series. That was one of the rare times where I've been like. Pfft, they have no chance. And then the Rangers won. So I'm trying to p- give myself an out here. Is it a 1% chance? Is it a 0.1% chance? I don't know, buddy. But I appreciate you listening to the show. And thank you for the interaction there out of the 903. What can the Cowboys do at running back now, guys? The news came down last night, said Cowboys Twitter ablaze again. They were they were in the mix for running back Zach Moss. But uh, 4.5 was a little too rich for their blood. Was that fine with you when that came out, Chief? Is that still under your uh, over your threshold? Yeah, I mean that's 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 one of those deals where I think we came with the numbers yesterday based on the current salary cap and the percentage of the cap that your running back can really be accounting for if you want to win a Super Bowl is like 2%. So with the cap being what it is, you're looking at a $5 million running back being about the top dollar that you'd be willing to go based on the track record of the last 12 or 13 Super Bowl champions and how they've allocated their resources to the position. So based on that, Zach Moss would qualify, but he's also like, is he... Is he worth that? I, I I wouldn't necessarily say so. Like I'm not upset that yeah. that's a deal that they passed on per se. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I kind of got the feeling when we heard through Michael Gelkin's report, probably an agent talking to Michael and you know kind of giving doing a hell of a job. Mike Michael is doing a great yeah. job, uh, and I just wondered when they got to four, they had to step back. So I know that we had a Krusty's corner where we spent about three million dollars on a back. Mm-hmm. I think we kind of, I think we're in the ballpark here. Yeah. You know, we were starting to think, I know you guys were talking about Foreman and some others that potentially could be. This, uh, you know, on, the, on the draft show this morning, we went through all the college running backs and it's it's a it's a pretty nice class. Doesn't have the top of the round like, like last year was, but it's a pretty good group if you could find a guy and then find the complimentary piece that goes along with. I think that uh, I think it's doable here. So to to hear that they were out of the Zach Mart uh, Zach Moss at four million, okay. Now I understand you got three million to spend on a running back, hmm. and here we go and uh, try and find one of those guys, and then turn around and address this with a guy that doesn't come off the field, pretty good pass protector, catches the ball well. And then if you pair him with another guy, he's going to be just fine running the ball. There's some guys you can make bell cow guys in this draft. I think Benson from Florida State is a bell cow guy. But if you're interested in Blake Corm from Michigan, I think you have to split him with a guy. So there's ways that they can go about addressing this and you know, they didn't have to spend four or five million dollars on a guy. And Foreman's still out there. You know, there's, yeah. a, there's other veterans that are out there. I, I just think of, you know, when they moved on from you know, DeMarco Murray and the, after that, it was like McFadden and Randall. And I think they're going to try to go super budget like that again. I do genuinely believe that if you want to win big, you're at some point going to have to pay premium to get players that plug needs with difference making guys. And you're like, wow, that's 30% more than we'd hope to spend at this position. But if you want to win it, you have to look honestly at your roster and say, wow, we got to make it a priority and price be damned on what it's going to take to win the bidding for this position or that position. You know, and I, they look at it from a business perspective where we have an idea of how much we want to spend and a dollar over that. We're just going to go take our money or our investment elsewhere. You can yeah. do that in business because there's always opportunities to put your capital into. But in sports, there's a very finite amount of players that can make you better each time around. Yeah, I just don't think you know, you got to have your offensive line in place before you start throwing money around at your Absolutely. running back. You know, so once you have the offensive line in place, then then you can start talking about 
let's it, let's throw some assets at the running back position. You definitely see the first three picks going that way on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, but uh, Derrick Henry, you know, way too expensive, and again, yeah. just to reset that report, all he the backs is going are to probably the way too expensive yeah, for sure. Yeah. Eight eight to ten, still very much gettable. So, congrats to those runners. It's time now for the G bag of the day. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah. All right, so our winner so far, day three for this young fellow. Uh, is, I assume it's his first year playing Little League football. He's just trying to play it safe right here. <laughs> day three for this fellow. We got an interview, man. Hey, man, what position you want to play, man? Safety. What, why, why you chose that position? Because it sounds safe. Because it sounds safe? <laughs> All right, and you want to be on the safest place on the field, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Okay, we're going to see can we keep you safe, all right? All right, keep working hard, man. Coach, Aww. that's your safety, coach. <laughs> yeah, coach. <laughs> I always want a smart kid playing back there at safety, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Sounds safe. <laughs> Sounds safe. I like that, bro. I do, too. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Future track and field star sounds like. <laughs> yeah. Tennis. Yeah. Governor of Illinois is what yeah. it sounds like. <laughs> uh, Dawson, can you put some uh, G-Bag of the Day sauce on there for me, sir? Please? Yes, sir. The G-Bag of the Day is the best audio for the world of sports, pop culture, talk radio, and or the internet. Hey. Play them all. Vote on which one we like the best. That's your G-Bag of the Day. Hey. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see what I got next for you, boys. Oh, former New York Met, my cousin's favorite team. Uh, Keith Hernandez. Oh. He has no idea that the Mets jersey had a number on the front. That's what he claims. No idea. All these years. What? Uh, how long was Keith Hernandez a Met? Least forever. A yeah. yeah, forever. For damn ever. Now, Keith, we had this in yesterday's game, too. This is Kellum Clark, number 11, batting. And uh, take a look at the number in the on deck circle for the Mets 11. Oh. <laughs> I did not notice the number was on that on the on the on the stomach side. I, I did. The, what do you mean? Side. The number down. I, I didn't notice. But you didn't know that there was a number there. Yeah, I haven't noticed all spring. Keith. <laughs> Keith. I forget it. Don't don't pay attention to me. <laughs> Mets down to their final strike. <laughs> 11 That's on the me. back, 11 That's on the front. Me. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have a number down there when I played. Yeah, you did. We did? No. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, you did. Really? I think so. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. I know we have a number on our backs. Uh, definitely the number on the back. Do we? <laughs> yeah, do we? Where's my car? Jeez. <laughs> Bro. Where are they playing? Is this uh, like Arizona or? They're a Florida team, I believe. Seattle or? So good. I mean, that's a great question, right? There. Yeah. It's definitely a, a recreational state. Yeah. It's like hey, it's just spring training. Why yeah. not? I think he's hanging out with Mad Dog Russo. Yeah. Oh, a little gummy, little gummy pop. Yeah, Keith, you got somebody to drive you home after the game. Mad Dog is capping out there with that half a gummy. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't believe oh, that. Yeah, just take I take it. half, and then I take yeah. another half later. Yeah, get out yeah. Of five seconds half. later. No, you take <laughs> two and a half. Is yes. what he does. Exactly. Half the bag. The tolerance goes up at some point. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, <laughs> like bro. Like gummy bears. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, you want to hear Emmanuel Valdez? Yeah. Red Sox player. I think he's an infielder of some sorts. What position do you usually play? Sounds like a middle infielder to me. Yeah, Emmanuel Valdez. Yeah, I think you guys are onto something with that one. <laughs> Hitting home runs out there in Dominican Republic. Esto lo hace al mismo tiempo. Conecta batazo elevado profundo hacia prueba derecha. La bola busca distancia. No la busca. Palo para poner, aumentar la ventaja del equipo de Boston 4 por 0. ¿Quién dijo mi Ahí está Boston, señores. Ahí están los media rodas de Boston. I want my tongue to roll like that. Man, that is amazing. Yeah, sauce. It's great. It is sauce. Just saucy. Knew what a gal who whose tongue rolled like that. Guy. Hey, uh -huh. hey, uh -huh. have you been your love for me? Tell me what it's going to be. Uh, let's see right here. Let's go to UFC fighter Sugar Shane Malley. Uh, mm -hmm. You might be familiar with him. He won over the weekend. And Ryan Garcia said he wanted to fight this UFC fighter in the match, in the ring, in the octagon, or whatever you call it. 
That's when we should have known that Ryan Garcia was off his rocker just a little bit. But uh, Sean O'Malley was was on Pat McAfee's show on ESPN. Dropped all kinds of F-bombs. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is daytime TV, people. This is daytime TV. Yeah, it sucks. Cutting weight is the worst part about the sport. Um, but the weight cut, with that being said, went went perfect as far as, you know, that how means I, I mastered it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have mastered it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, re the rehydration part went perfect, too. That's where a lot of fighters get f***ed up. And they don't, they don't rehydrate. They don't refuel right. They eat too much. They eat what they're not supposed to be eating. They're not drinking the right fluid. And, and you have a long time to f*** that up because you Jeez. weigh in and then you fight way later. You have a long time to keep f***ing that up. You have bubbly gut. You have fart sick. You have diarrhea. There's so much that can go wrong. And I just got it down to dialed in to where I was feeling Good. Thank you. Yeah. Proud of you. I do think that that explains what happened to Errol Spence. Uh, it? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, he was sick. He was crushing little Debbies after he weighed in. Yeah. Right down that. there in those Vegas steakhouses. I can see that out there in Vegas, bro. <laughs> he went to the buffet. Oh, yeah. oh he hit that uh, yeah. that that buck and all or whatever. Yeah. Oh man. And take this right here. Go bring me two of them things back. I'll be right here. <laughs> he the, if you went to the buck and all, I hope you got the roasted duck. Don't here, keep your change. Just bring two back for me. <laughs> Tired as hell. Dude, we're, we're halfway through Lent now. <laughs> oh. Uh, and I I am dialed now, too, with my weight cutting. I hey. my, my stomach is so trained now. Look at it, you. It doesn't even let me know it's hungry. The reason I know I'm hungry is when my energy gets sapped. There you go. You know, I'm like, oh, crap. I probably need some sugar. I better eat. <laughs> it's it's amazing. You sound like a model on Coke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, we're with, we work with Bill Nye, the science guy <laughs> over here. I haven't eaten in 12 hours. My stomach stopped growling about a week ago. I feel amazing. <laughs> I'm going to reach enlightenment here in a second. It? Yeah. It's called fasting. It's Hold me up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to all my folks uh, recognizing Ramadan right now. Recognizing oh, yes. Ramadan. Yes. Salute yeah. you guys. All right. All right, one more from ESPN, as we named it yesterday, the Emo Sports Network. <laughs> Dawson was looking at that dude, looking crazy in there. Was that ESPN? Yeah. ESPN, oh, yeah. ESPN yeah. All right, yeah, 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 the Emo Sports Network right here. Dan Orlowski, he's all right with me. So once again, Dan, the potted meat, I mean, are you, are you, is this, are you advising me to try some of this? Should I go out and get some? I don't love potted meat, but a bologna, I'm telling you, go, go get some fried bologna, put it on some Wonder Bread. Let's go. Okie doke. <laughs> well, I, I got dinner plans yeah. for tonight. That's what I'm talking about on that Wonder Bread. <laughs> Wonder Bread, he knows what he's talking Gang about. Gang of mustard on there, burnt yeah. on the ends. Yep. You got to pop the bubble down a little bit. Yeah, it's Ooh, curled up a little bit. Yes. yes. Yeah. You One two of them boys, you fold them up like tacos <laughs> when you eat them. I don't know if Wonder Bread ever got its full appreciation for how amazing it is as yeah. far as the softness. It's for the people. It's yeah. got a great packaging. Oh, the, the combination yeah. they've got going is great. Top five package. Oh, my Wonder God. Bread. Yeah, by far. Is yeah, it our football? Package. Our young Next football to the big tuna. Yeah. Is it the Keith Hernandez cut? <laughs> Manuel Valdez. We be in there from the home run call. We be in. Sean O'Malley on the Pat McAfee show or Dan Orlovsky. I'm gonna vote O'Malley actually, Chief. How about you? I am as well, bro. Lucian. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, I'll give the champ one last one. By a score of three to one, your new G-Bag of the Day champion. It's Sean O'Malley on the Pat McAfee Show talking about his secrets for cutting weight and rehydrating. Okay, we're coming back with Krusty's Corner. Where are you taking us, Brad? Yeah, I've got some of these free agent names, and I wonder if any of these guys will stretch to the Cowboys' range. We'll do those guys next. But first, Tolos, I got it.
Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine. They are the number one Chevy dealer in the world with more Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference. Based on new Chevrolet registrations, 2023. Yeah, buddy. Thank you, Lucius. It is the G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. I hope you're having a fantastic daytime. Now for Krusty's Corner, here he is, the king himself, brought us. Thank you very much, General. Appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to ask you guys a real quick question. You ever been at a gas station? And, a few times. Uh, and somebody, like, asks you to put gas in their car? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you done that before? Yes. Uh, man, I don't I've, think. Yeah, I, mean, I have. I'm, I not, have. I'm not. I mean, I'm not asking like, like, hey, would you put the gas in the car for me? Like, would you help? Just me? Just swipe the card. Would you please help me pay for the gas? Yes. Yeah, it's happened. Um, it's actually happened like maybe too many times. I feel like there's like they look at me and they just know. Oh, I got yeah. this guy. I got him. Yeah. Uh, but the the thing that I always want to do is is make sure I see them drive off because my concern is is like I don't mind. Hey, I'll put a few bucks, yeah, whatever yeah. the deal is. Right. But then when I see you, I want to see you drive off because I don't want you doing some weird coming back to the pump and scamming my card that I just swiped or whatever. Yeah. I don't know if that's even real, but it sure. sounds like people are able to hack these things these days. So sure. I just want to watch you drive off after I've put the gas in there so I know I'm not getting bleeped with here. Oh, but like- it happens quite a bit right outside the station here. You get really? gas right here? Yeah. Watch out. I don't like the hustle that they're trying to pull off as far as it being um, like a lie usually. Yeah. You know, like I'm very generous with giving money to people that ask for it. Sure. But with the gas thing, they're usually like, man, I just got caught. I got a gas can. My family's in the car down the street. And I'm like, I prefer to give money uh, to people that need it when they're honest. So yeah. if I feel like you're working this gas station with this fake gas can in your hand because yeah. I've seen them run in there and then they try to get like a refund from the uh, the uh, store. Mm. You know, they're 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 running some kind of a, a scam trying to get cash usually. OK, Um. so I I guess maybe there will be a, an opportunity where somebody is genuinely needing it at that gas station. Mm-hmm. And my personal experience is most of them are are, are scamming liars. And I prefer the person just with their cup out that's like, give me money for beer, man. Yeah, sure. that's yeah. my guy right there. Yeah. So that, that's who I'm hooking up right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, come yeah. to me with a story. I don't know what's going mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm. You See, can be scamming. Yeah. Especially if you're just in the parking lot walking around. It's kind of weird, bro. Yeah. I had a lady in her car today. I was over by the Star, and uh, I was filling up and uh, at a Valero station. And uh, she, she, she was parked, and she was in a car like a you know, escape, a Ford escape or something like that. And, and she had like, she was in a the dog grooming business is what she was in or taking care of dogs. And she kind of half rolled down the window and she had all these Dotsons. These dogs were just oh, all the Dotsons. Yeah. yeah. All over. Had just, a half like, Dotson as a yeah, kid. This might've been my grandma. Just, just <laughs> all over. Just like, and she's, she's like, sir, sir, could you please help me? And I'm like, yes, ma'am. And she goes, I'm trying to get back to New Mexico. And, and I went, oh, okay. And she's like, I got this trip. I'm sorry. I, you know, it, you got a long way to go, lady. To that's be what I'm saying. For it, like, that's what I'm saying. I mean, and her car being small enough, I put like 30 bucks in her car. So I, you know, I heard what you're yeah, you like, yeah, I tra- yeah, I did. It, fi- it filled up. It filled up. I was like, okay, I'm going to go. I got a, I got a limit here. I'm going to go to 35 bucks is what I said. And it filled up at 30 bucks. And I was kind of sitting there and then, you know, she's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much and all that. There's times where I don't know if I'm doing good or if I'm not helping some. And by helping some, I'm not helping them. You know, am I giving somebody money to get more alcohol and they're an alcoholic? Or I think drugs? chances are with that gal, you're in good shape. But yeah. yeah, she was an older lady and she just was like, I'm just trying to get back. And her, she was, the car said New Mexico license plate. She had her little business on the side. There business was, ain't doing well the dogs are just all over the car you know and i and i just kind of looked at her like i find myself helping females far more than men i don't know i i just feel like it's rough it's the, it's the sugar daddy in you no it's the it's the they don't it's rough out there for them i got money it's just i just feel like it's rough for them yeah no it's just a yes it's I, a, that's I the problem well. yeah. i have 
But anyway, there's I, mad scams out there, man. I've I, seen the uh, boot on the car scam. Like they put a boot on your tire. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And you'll go out there like, oh my gosh, there's a boot. I didn't even know I parked wrong. And then just a random dude will walk up to you be like, hey, man, I can take those off for like $25, $50, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Oh, wow. like, you can take it off. Yeah, I can get it off. It just there. so happens. He put it on there. I have a very specific <laughs> skill set. <laughs> yeah. And as luck would have it, I'm here in this moment wow. to serve you, sir. That's just crazy. But I cannot do it for I free. I seen that in uh, Deep Ellum. I seen him. I was like, oh, okay. I see what you're doing, bro. I just, I didn't know like i said i didn't know if that happened to you guys a lot where people ask yeah. you for gas and stuff yeah. and, and i feel like okay i'm gonna try and help you ma'am here we go that's kind of thing so i think you did the right thing i well, thank you, I mean, you, if you can eat 30, don't worry about it yeah well, that's if you can I, eat it don't worry about it yeah i just like i said i figured you know what hey maybe maybe it does help her maybe it maybe it did help her get to where she needed to go i feel like you were inspired by your own son bennett brought us and what he did to pay it forward yeah, yesterday. He, well, and you're like, you know yeah, what? He, Challenge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Challenge I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I did not feel worthy of my own son. How about that? Uh, all right. Let me ask you this about this free agency. Are there guys? No. Let me ask you this. Are, do you feel like that maybe that you might get Tyron Smith back? That, there, that, yes. That, that he, Tyron Smith, not a day one, kind of getting through day, day two here. Are people... Are people not going to say, oh, yeah, we appreciate Tyron Smith and how he well he played, but we don't want to put up with the no practice, and we don't want to put up with maybe missing three games. We don't want to pay him for that. Mm -hmm. Is there a possibility that after maybe this time next week that we hear Tyron Smith has come back to the Dallas Cowboys? I've I've felt that way since since the news came out. Like I wonder how much of this is just, hey, we're we're kind of negotiating. It's a little bit we're we're gonna we're gonna we're not just gonna give in to whatever it is that Tyron wants. Tyron's gonna use his leverage to say, okay, I am a left tackle. I am off the best season that I've had in the last few years. So I'd like to see what's out there, but maybe there's not much of a market form for, for all the reasons you just mentioned. Like you got to be, you got to be comfortable with paying a left tackle whatever it is that he wants, and him missing at least three games, and there's a chance he only plays in three games. Yeah. So, and then with all the practice and stuff like that, like you said, I think there's a real chance he could be back. Yeah, I do too. I, I think there's at this point there's a pretty good chance. Uh, I wouldn't put it over fifty percent, but. You know, I, I I do wonder what Tyron's reaction is going to be. You know, am I thinking retirement? And am I thinking wait until this summer, till somebody gets desperate after the draft? I, I don't know how, how Tyron reacts to, to it, you know, because if the Cowboys weren't giving him something that he liked before, maybe it is time to, to sail off after a successful season. I think he's in a really, I think he's kind of in a bad spot as we speak today, just because of how many offensive tackles there are in this draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think everybody's looking at that and they're saying, well, maybe maybe we don't want to pay the guy that doesn't practice and doesn't he'll miss games and stuff like that. Do you have any hope of the guys? There's guys left on this board, like a Daniil Hunter. No. Armstead, I don't have any hope. Arm, Armstead. Okay. Is there a point in time where any of these guys, like I mentioned, Hunter, Armstead, uh, Tyron Smith we talked about, Chase Young, you know the Cowboys have lost some def some edges here. Uh, is there any thought that some of those guys could fall far enough that the Cowboys could be in the market for one of them? And not 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 the way I see it. I mean, unless these guys really drop. If you're dropping under five million, I mean, historically the Cowboys aren't paying more than five or six million for a free agent, no matter who it is. I think the last time they did it was for Greg Hardy. You got to go back to what 2015, so they're just not doing it. Yeah, you're not looking at any players. I think that have any sort of name recognition or or, or most likely were first round picks. You know, those guys continue to, to cost money. I think it's got to be well under five, even probably probably under two million bucks for the way this thing is trending. I just I do not believe they have any interest in really going for it with the cap this year. I think they look at this year and next year as them unwinding a lot of their, you know, contracts from the past and they need to take a breather on on the team building. I think the good news is they still have a a, a number of good players, right? What is it? Still eight or nine guys that made the so, Bowl last year they're going to be here. So no no shot at a DJ Reader defensive tackle 
No shot at a Devin White linebacker. No. That if the number, you don't think their number is ever going to get low enough to where the Cowboys could play in this. Maybe, maybe readers. You know, maybe DJ Reader because he's a one tech and yeah. it's not like you're throwing crazy money oftentimes for a guy who's a little bit older, I think, as well. So maybe him, but and and then I guess potentially Devin White because linebackers aren't getting paid that much. Like we'll we'll talk about what Patrick Queen just got here in sure. a few minutes, but sure. it's not like he's getting the close to twenty million a year that everybody right. thought he was gonna get. Right. So the linebacker market is interesting with how low it is, and so maybe you could sneak one of those type of dudes. And I was thinking maybe a Bobby Wagner. You know, yeah. something like that. And, and you know ch- what they're thinking internally, though. We got to repay all these guys. We yeah. got to pay all these guys that are coming up, including Dak. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the big concern right now. So, all right, guys, thank you, appreciate. Thank that. you, Brian. There he goes, Krusty's corner every afternoon, two forty. Was that a tease for the NFL news of the day, Chief? <laughs> yes. And what happens next with this big name quarterback next year in the nation?
Fan Studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com. You're rolling with the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Shoot, Jebel. It's hour two. G-Bag Nation, 105.3 The Fan. Hope you're having a great day. We'll take a look around the NFC East and how much uh, the rivals of the Cowboys have improved here. It's time now, NFL News of the Day. Eric Chiafalo. All right, there is one giant question after day one of NFL free agency and the quarterback movement. What's going to happen now with Justin Fields? We'll hear from Adam Schefter here momentarily, but a little bit of housekeeping here on the NFL front. Deals continue to uh, come in uh, very, very hot, very, very rapidly. We have Dante Fowler. Guess where he, guess where Dante ends up with the rest of basically Washington? the Cowboy free agents. That's correct. The Washington Cowboy castoffs. Uh, Dante <laughs> Fowler Jr. is now part of Dan Quinn's era. And, he was uh, a good player for you. No, he was. He was. He I was. mean, you know, ten sacks. I kind of felt like he didn't get enough opportunities. They were playing other guys that you know, and he, he every time he went into the game, it seemed like he'd come up with a pressure, a stop, you know, something that was kind of positive. So, I, I he, you know, Washington didn't have any edges, and he'll he'll give him a little something uh, the way he plays. He. He, now we'll see if uh, you know AD the old the, the line coach that's now the defense coordinator in Seattle probably a big help but Dan being a line coach too you know they kind of but everywhere that Dan's been Fowler's kind of gone with him found ways to be with him and stuff but I, I thought he played pretty well for you he did he, he was a nice uh, nice pass rusher for you absolutely uh, so another depth piece sort of for the uh, the Cowboys defense is gone uh, you'll have Devonte Parker signing a one-year, almost $5 million deal with the Eagles. So uh, wide receiver Devontae Parker, who has been very consistent over the last five seasons, being dead balls last in the separation category yeah. for next-gen stats. So that's very exciting. A little, a little jump ball guy there for, for Jalen Hurts. Uh, the Colts are re-signing one of the best nickel corners in all of football, Kenny Moore. Three yeah. years, $30 million. Uh, makes him the highest-paid nickel back in NFL history. So congratulations to him. Uh, he was he was kind of a big name of like who's going to get him because that's an important position. When you look at the the best teams in the league last year, they all had a strong answer at that position, and it allows for versatility and things like that. But that nickel spot hugely important. Hopefully the Cowboys have enough on the boundary to allow Deron Bland to get back to his home there uh, because he is I think he's right up there with one, some of the best in the league as a nickel corner. Uh, but Kenny Moore gets three years, thirty million. Takes a special guy to be able to do that job, and if you yes. find a good one, it's a huge edge. Hundred percent, man. Game. Yeah, because you got to be able to cover. You got to be quick, and well, uh, you got to be physical. You got to be able to carry the whole field. You know, on the outside, these routes you can sometimes use the boundary as your extra defender. Right. When you play in the slot, you got to be able to carry the whole field. Yeah, they got two way goes every yeah. time. Yeah. And then get, getting in the mix in the run game, yeah. a lot of these guys are good blitzers, you know, and, and it's kind of a nice chess piece to have for a defense there. Uh, Daniil Hunter, who has experience in Minnesota with Mike Zimmer, okay, young edge rusher, LSU Tiger. Yes, he is. Broadus loves this guy. I do, too. I mean, in terms of just um, arm aesthetics, like muscle arm aesthetics, I think he's, I think Daniil Hunter is probably top 10 all time. Oh, yeah. Wow. The, the the lean nature to what you can see every single muscle in a human body that is in the arm, you, you can see it if you just look at, at Daniil Hunter. Yeah. It's very, very impressive. Uh, and he's on the market. The Texans and the Vikings, um, uh, or excuse me, just the Texans are interested in him. And so maybe he ends up playing in the great state, but not, uh, not for the Cowboys. And I think if you're the Texans, this is exactly what you should be doing right now. You, I mean, he's, he's a legit pass rusher. And they got money. They need to be going to, and I know they didn't do the Saquon Barkley thing like there was rumors, and I'm glad they didn't. Uh, you know, if you were a Texans fan, I think that's a good move. You have money. You're trying to win. Don't use those assets, big money on a, on an aging running back. Use it for premium positions. Go get guys, you know, edge rusher dudes. Mm -hmm. uh, but you did have the Texans getting involved in a trade for Joe Mixon. So Joe Mixon now going from Cincinnati to, uh, to Houston, and that will be the running back alongside uh, Mr. C.J. Stroud there for they're the Texans moves. offense. They are. They are. Making, they're going for it. As they should, man. You got yeah. the quarterback on the rookie deal. You know you've got your guy. You've just overachieved in a huge way last year. You have a, a buttload of salary cap. You go out there and you go buy some dudes, bro, and give yourself a chance to to lose to Pat Mahomes in the playoffs. You know? Like, you, you want to be that team. <laughs> I think, right? I yeah. believe so, yes. You want to be that team. You know, Playing for second place in the AFC. 
Uh, I think at this point, if we make the AFC title game, we're going to consider ourselves Super Bowl runners up for the next decade. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's go ahead and hear from Adam Schefter on ESPN because the market, I mean, for the quarterbacks now, I mean, he'll, he'll lay it out for us here. But what happens with Justin Fields? Here's Adam Schefter. Justin Fields was connected to Atlanta. Never happened. They went and signed Kirk Cousins. He was connected to Pittsburgh. They land Russell Wilson. He was connected to Las Vegas. They went with Gardner Minshew. So all the places that have come up in connection to Justin Fields have looked to other places. What's amazing to me about this is that Justin Fields is due to make $2.7 million this upcoming season. So there are teams out there that would rather pay all these other quarterbacks than Justin Fields. And so now he's sitting there, and it doesn't look like there's a starting job out there at this particular moment. And so the teams that are looking at him would be looking at him as a backup. And would Chicago then get the value that it wants? And what does Chicago do about that? This right now is an ongoing situation. It reminds me a little bit, in a certain way, of Lamar Jackson last year. Lamar becomes a free agent. We're saying, well, he fits in Washington. They don't make a move. He fits in Atlanta. They don't make a move. He fits in so many places. None of them make moves. Similar conversation with Justin Fields this year. And here he is back in Chicago. And the Bears will have to wait to see what opportunities arise. But it certainly doesn't seem right now like anything is imminent with Justin Fields. Mm. Man, I wish Bully was here right now so I could make him eat crow for his Justin Fields takes. I know it would be nice, huh? Uh, Watch him devour that stuff. Yes. The way he gets after it is always impressive. Eat it. Eat it. Uh, I think Eddie, Minnesota proved, by the way. Eddie's somewhat tired. Yeah, it's grilled. <laughs> yes, he, he got a little cranky yesterday. <laughs> oh, he got which a little cranky, fun. yeah. Yeah, that was, he, he, needed, he needed today to just uh, I, just exhale a little bit. Shout out to the Wooly Bully who will be back tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, man, the Justin Fields question I think is huge right now. And if you're Chicago, is it even worth it? Because at this point, most teams will... I mean, the NFL has told you, basically, they view him as a backup quarterback at the moment. So do you want to, if you're trying to get the as much assets in return for him as possible, is now the time to actually be to be selling him? Is there, is there a chance Justin Fields could just stay in Chicago and you still draft Caleb Williams number one overall? And then I don't know what you do in that scenario. Do you let Justin Fields be the backup to that? And then still, how is he gaining any interest around the league or do you say hey we're gonna let justin fields go run around here try to up his value and then caleb williams we're gonna be patient with you i think he's by far more valuable to you uh, in in the team working towards figuring out a way to be effective along with the guy that you draft you know i just don't i don't think giving him up for the sixth rounder which i said a month ago is all he's worth um i i don't think that's helping your team It just gets sensitive, you know, and agents get involved and my guy was a top five pick. So it's time for you to trade him. You got to do right by us. You know, if if I'm the Bears, I'm looking at it like, yeah, we made a mistake and drafted you way too high. You're not worth it to any team. We're not taking a a bad day three pick for you. We're going to hope that you can turn into something, you know, and so you get a chance now to compete for this starting job. No, nobody else wants to give you a chance to compete. So beat this rookie that we're about to bring in if if you want, um, you know, to show us that you des- you deserve this shot. But w- the only mistake we have made as the Bears was drafting you. OK, just so we're clear, we're not making a mistake by hanging on to you or trading you. We're trying to recover a mistake. So please stop negotiating with us like you have any leverage in this situation at all. But it is tough. You know, and teams try to avoid the quarterback controversy at every turn if they can help it. You have Craig Carton on uh, Fox Sports uh, doing the the deal where he says Justin Fields should play wide receiver. He should move. He should move to wide receiver. Bears keep you, and now oh. you just become a wide receiver. Start catching the football a little bit, Justin. That's what uh, Craig Carton's running out there today. That was his take of the day. Oh wow! I think if I was the Bears. I wonder if he's got hands. If I was the Bears, I wouldn't worry about the pick. I'd maybe try and trade him for a player. You know what I'm saying? I would I would I would maybe shop yeah. him. You know, teams this time of year are so interested in keeping their draft picks. But maybe you got somebody on your that you don't want to pay, that you don't want to extend. That's a cheap contract to have a quarterback that's as a good as athlete as he is. You know, I, I don't think you just throw him to the side. 
And you know, if you find somebody that can work with I me, mean, the problem with the Bears is they, they haven't got their offense right, it feels like forever. And maybe it's not his fault, but if I'm if I'm Chicago and people are not willing to give me value for him, maybe I could trade him for a, a young player on somebody else's team. Mm-hmm. That that like listen, I'm not asking for your pick. You have somebody, you have a surplus position that you want to give me a guy at and try and play the or maybe you trade him for a pick swap. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you trade him like uh, and that Chicago's got all the high picks because they were not very good this year. But maybe now you maybe there's some spot you want to flip it around, you know, mm-hmm. and you want to come up or you know, the Bears want to maybe come up to a spot where you're at that they have a pick, maybe you flip him for a pick swap or something. But I would try and trade him for a player and see if teams would bite that way. Try and trade, you know, cap for cap. Yeah, that yeah. Way. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's what ends up happening here. I don't know. It's it's going to be this might be a long a long spring and long summer for Justin Fields as we're all yeah. trying to figure out where he's uh, going to end up. Unless a team swoops in here, I know the Athletic has said, hey, there are still some teams interested. So uh, perhaps a team will jump uh, in the mix, but a lot of these quarterbacks, backup quarterbacks, have have bounced around now, and all the destinations that you thought would be interested in Justin Fields appear to kind of have a guy in place now, and so he's kind of left waiting in the wings. We'll see what happens, man. It'll be interesting to see if they keep Justin Fields on that on that Bears roster while drafting Caleb Williams. That'll be quite the dynamic. Well, you look at a group like Denver, and maybe Denver is going to take J.J. McCarthy. Maybe that's who they're going to take. But you look at Denver right now with Stidham and Danucci, you know, does maybe this Denver maybe have a player that the Bears would be interested in? Hmm. And you flip him that way. Like I'm, I'm looking at teams that might not have the Denver. Best. Denver makes you would think makes plenty of I sense. Was, I thought he could win with Taysom Hill. This should be right up That's his what alley. I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you get me a guy like him that it, he's a better yeah. runner than Taysom Hill. He throws Absolutely. the ball better than Taysom Hill. Yeah. Maybe you create Taysom Hill packages for two million dollars a year, and I mean, I, he sure if you want to draft JJ McCarthy, you know, which I know, I know that that uh, Sean really likes JJ McCarthy, but I, I would try and do it for you know a player, like I said earlier. But that's me trying to think a little bit outside the box here to kind of get him moved. No, I like I like you throwing Denver out there because as you try and scour the, the league right now for which team could be interested, I think Denver might be right at the top of the list for teams that make sure. plenty of sense if you well, can if you can work well, a deal out like there. Like Dawson said the right thing. This guy could be your Taysom Hill, a better Taysom Hill. This guy could throw the ball. This guy you can I mean this guy if you work you work with this guy, I you know, his athletic ability, his toughness, his ability to run the football Makes perfect sense for what Sean's trying to do. Yeah, and if you're Justin Fields and you're like, I get to go play under Sean Payton now, yeah. the guy who knows a thing or two about and, quarterbacks. And maybe, maybe he's a little bit, he's okay with being the backup. you know, Or maybe he's the bridge until they get J.J. McCarthy ready. You know, just, that, that's how you, I think you kind of look at it. Well, uh, Ravens free agent linebacker Patrick Queen uh, is signing a three-year, $40 million contract with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So he remains in the AFC North. The Steelers steal uh, a guy from uh, from Baltimore there. Another LSU guy brought us, but he was supposed to command. I mean, the the projections on his contract were close to twenty million a year. Yeah, not not quite there. No, for the linebacker position. So uh, that that's a huge that's a huge domino today. And then obviously the biggest name is Derrick Henry going to Baltimore. And and that is something that I mean Baltimore was trying to trade for Derrick Henry at the trade deadline this past season. Right. So oh, I mean I he's been connected there plenty, and I do think just the 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 menacing Derrick Henry it just feels like it fits Baltimore Ravens just physical toughness like it, he is going to look so badass in that uniform on a Sunday night with when when they go all black uni he is they going got the shield oh he's got the he's got yeah, he's got the visor. <laughs> And that is that is going to be. I look forward to seeing that. Yes, yeah, I, I think the the combination to him and Lamar Jackson probably my favorite thunder and lightning ever. Uh, Good call. The boom and the and the and the zip the zap. Mm. Yes, dude. And they, they got a like couple fun. of they got a couple of young burners in that backfield as well in Baltimore that like are not household names at all, but they were making some plays last year. And I saw Ryan Mink pointed out on Twitter, Derrick Henry hit a max speed of almost twenty two miles per hour at hmm. one point during the regular season. Uh it was actually in the regular season finale. It's the second fastest speed he reached in the past five years. 
So, and we've seen his workout videos. That would be that's going to be that's going to be a fun dynamic there. They're trying to stop Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry. So they have uh, Mark Andrews. They have Zay Flowers. Odell Beckham Jr. is that their pass catchers? Is they no, OBJ is a free OBJ's agent. Jones. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now he's tied up into the Kardashian thing, so his career is probably over. Just the track record there. Yeah, that's you know? a good point. But that's why he waited to this point in his career before he dipped his toe in the Kardashian waters. Wyatt Bankford just uh, flat out to fir- first base here watching spring training baseball on TXA 21. Here We'll have some baseball stuff coming up in about an hour or so. But around the NFC East, how much have the other teams improved themselves? We have some... Uh, off-season grades already, two days into free agency. That's coming up next here on the GBAC Nation. I'd like to talk about my friends at DNM Leasing before we do anything else, though, because I'm passionate that if you want or need a new vehicle,
Yeah, buddy, welcome back. It is the G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fans. Time to go around the NFC East. We'll talk about the big stories happening in our division, in our NFL. And uh, we do have some off-season grades for free agency so far. What grade would you give the Cowboys off-season here at 877-881-1053? How do you think CBS Sports went with it? Segment of the G-Bag Nation is, of course, brought to you by the Frankels. Uh, life's unpredictable. Accidents happen. Frankel's the go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you've, your loved one has been in an accident, contact the Frankel's 214 or 817-333-3333. Jump online to truckwreck.com. And it's also brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today at carsforkids.org. All righty. Uh, before we get to this uh, around the NFC East, I do have this uh, latest from Dak Prescott's family, Tad. So if it wasn't clear already, he says, it is now the Eagles have the best front office in the NFL. Hashtag, how about them Cowboys? Tad not happy. Tad, just like a lot of Cowboys fans, he knows the team is not doing enough to help his brother win. And he said in the past he's trying to talk his brother into leaving the Cowboys. Um, and I don't know what's in the best interest of Dak, uh, but it's an interesting window in, into that uh, that brotherhood right there. And I, I do agree with Tad. I, I I think it's not even close Howie Roseman is a, a better front office man than either of the Jones boys. Uh, what do you think? The truckwreck.com fan text is open. Yes. I mean, I, I think it's pretty inarguable now. Uh, I don't think the Saquon Barkley deal shows that or proves that. Um, I think yeah. that will that will prove to be not a deal that uh, you will have wanted to make. But outside of that, yes. I mean, Howie Roseman's been a guy that is he's tearing it down, he's building it back up, he's moving off of quarterbacks, even that he's he's thought was the face of his franchise, he gave money to. Oh, you're not that guy, no problem. I'll be controversial, I'll upset some people, I'm gonna draft Jalen Hurts in the second round, boom, here we go. He's getting it done. So every one of these guys as team builders has some flaws, but uh Harry Roseman's I think are much smaller and fewer and far between than than the Joneses and most of the NFL. For sure nobody's perfect. Uh and I, I think the Saquon Barkley thing is tough. He's probably trying to help his other bad signing, Jalen Hurts. So I, I don't like his offensive choices in the backfield for sure. Kellen Moore's is OC too, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, that was a hire they made. Yeah. That's that's Nick, not a good hire. Nick Sirianni team fell apart underneath him last year. A little adversity hit, and they just completely caved. Uh, yeah. The Cowboys aren't perfect. I don't think the Eagles are perfect either. I challenge. I would like to know if Tad would tell me how many times the Cowboys have talked to Dak about an extension or about. Uh, any type of restructuring of his contract, anything to help them maybe get some space, get some cap space that they can go out and buy some players. Um, are we going to take all the pie? You know, uh, there's only so much of it that I can allocate. But are you are you helping me in any way? And 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 again, not his responsibility. But if he if his brother is going to comment about a front office, then maybe he needs to realize what the front office might be up against. And yeah. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know Dallas's cat situation completely. I know they've got a lot of players they've got to try and get done, including their quarterback, who seems yeah. to me is very much on this path of being a quarterback that doesn't have playoff success, but demanding sixty million dollars or or that type of money. You know, if you know, we saw what Atlanta was able to do with Kirk Cousins. We've kind of talked about that maybe Dak and Kirk Cousins, kind of the same guy. Comparable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, comparable player. If but, I'm the Cowboys, I present that in negotiating. Like, we like what these veterans who are available have. Yeah. You know, and we think you're a similar type of player. And I would yeah. see how, you know, he would handle that. Because yeah. you have to play back with the stat that, like, nobody has ever won the Super Bowl taking up more than 12.5% of the cap in any year. Yeah. Like, there, there's a there's a number on it. And, it, and you know, if you want to push above that number consistently with your contract, you want your front office to draw a firm line there and be like, no, this is the point of no return. This is the law of diminishing return or wh wherever that point is, however you want to phrase it. We can't go here. Um, and that, that, that really comes back to this idea, this concept. And w when the Cowboys were first birthed in the 1960s, Don Meredith was with Chicago, but the family up there said the Cowboys need a franchise quarterback if they're going to have success because the fan base has to believe in the franchise quarterback, this concept of a guy that's going to go win us games in order for them to be commercially viable. 
So the Bears actually gave you Dandy Dawn. Like, hey, yeah. here's your ticket to the fans believing in you. And I, I I think that's the real value. That's why the Cowboys are ultimately going to sign Dak because they know what he does for the fan base confidence and belief. We can win regular season games. We can get to the playoffs. M- maybe not the 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 extreme hardcore fan, you know, that's a Dak doubter at this point. But the the majority of your your common citizen Dallas Cowboy fan, what they want is a quarterback that's credible. And that's what the Joneses are paying for. That extra 15 to $20 million for Dak Prescott it gives them the ability, I believe, to sell season tickets to be a commercially viable TV product. And here's the other thing. Your star player is the biggest star on your TV show, right? That's how pro sports look at it these days. These star players on our team are, are TV characters, are, are TV reality TV stars. But once he goes to another team... It's not certain that the fan base is going to react the same way. So far, the Cowboys have proven Dak Prescott winning regular season games is an absolute ratings goldmine that gets the fan base excited. And don't lie to me and say you did not get super excited last year because many people destroyed me around week 10 or week 11 saying I'm still not convinced. The fan base comes electrified and convinced literally after two straight wins. That's what Dak gives you. And that is... You know, I believe the biggest burden right now in sending the Jones boys a message that you got to try harder to get us to believe. We're all suckers. We're all gullible. Win two straight games, and you're going to be convinced that Dak Prescott is a good enough player to take you to the Super Bowl. And as long as the Cowboys have that con running or that illusion running in front of you, they don't have to break the pink and build a team that's actually capable of winning the Super Bowl. That's, that's the way I see it. Agreed. We have off-season grades here uh, from free agency so far as uh, as uh, the draft now approaches. I don't know when the Cowboys are going to get involved here. Um, but we can take a look at uh, what what CBS Sports. Maybe we should ask Dak's brother. Yeah, because uh, once you do that, then you'll kind of figure out where you are money wise. What do you mean? Once you get Dak's once thing you, figured what, out. Once you get it figured out. Once you get him signed, extended, whatever you have to do, then maybe you'll maybe you'll figure out how to your. Yeah, the cap money. Yeah, they're not giving money back. They're, they're, no, they're they're not going to settle for less. We're, okay, well then, our our hope is that the Cowboys yeah. actually have some balls and say you're not good enough to get max money. Yeah, that, that's 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 the guys that's, to look at. That's, Players that's don't the, take less. I mean, Tom Brady did. But. That's the play then, right there. Yeah, that's the play. You just tell him, well, listen, we'll call your bluff. Yeah, and they, no, and they, and they, they might, and they might, and they might. Well, Everything might. is business to the Cowboys. Yeah. None of it is trying to win the Super Bowl. It all it all comes down to a return on investment, and that's what you're getting now. The greatest businessman in the history of American sports is running your team for maximum profit, not best chance of winning the Super Bowl. I really need to ask Stephen Jones when we get him on in the buildup to the draft. Are you guys trying to make the playoffs every year? Do you believe you can be a contender every single year? Because that's not the model unless you have an absolute Hall of Fame quarterback. And i got to remind myself to, to bring that up. Yeah. Cowboys incomplete is the grade from CBS Sports with Pollard, Biotish, and Armstrong leaving. Cowboys were the only team in the NFL to not sign anybody on Monday. Crickets from the Jones family on the first day of the league's legal tampering period. Strong departure from GM Jerry Jones all-in claims. In order for the Cowboys to have the cap space to be players in free agency, they needed to do extensions with Dak and C.D. Lamb, and uh, they have not done that part of it yet. I do believe, Brian, if they find a player they want to get done, they they will easily and quickly do an extension or flip a switch to create more cap space. I don't think that's a hurdle for them right now, but maybe this is a sign that they intend to do nothing, that they haven't even uh, very you know, well could. kicked very, the can with Dak yet. Yeah, very, very well could there, and this might be, to your point, uh, we keep talking about the potential of the rebuild and you know restart, reboot, whatever you want to call it. You get rid of the head coach, get rid of the quarterback, and then you just completely start over from there. With Jones in the portion of his negotiating cycle where he plays hardball, the, the Cowboys front office is currently of the position that they don't mind not being able to make many moves at the start of free agency. The laissez-faire attitude only hurts the team and precludes them from re-signing eight-time Pro Bowl left tackle Tyron Smith five-time Pro Bowl corner Stephon Gilmore, and a running back to replace Pollard, among other critical transactions that literally every other team would have done yesterday. They would have been like, oh, we need a tackle, a corner, and a running back. Let's do it, guys. Until Dallas actually signs a free agent, it'll be difficult to fairly evaluate their offseason fully. 
I would give them a total F. You know, I would. I, I I won't give them the F because they didn't do the dumb thing by bringing in you know bringing back Pollard on the deal that he got or Armstrong or Biotish. Uh, you know, so I think it could have been worse by doing that. I don't think any of us wanted those players back. Certainly not at those price tags that they got. So that would garner the full fledged F. So maybe uh, maybe F plus D. So we'll, yeah, we'll go you, D. You, you would have given him an F then to start the thing out because you knew they were not going to do anything, right? I mean, they immediately get an F, right? Because you know they're not. They're not going to sign anybody, right? But he's saying no, that I'm you, saying they you don't didn't get make the a F. big well, mistake. Well, no, they don't get yeah. the F. No, I understand that. But but you're going into this, you're going to say Dallas is probably going to get an F because they're not going to do Right, anything. because, yeah, yeah, you know they're not, not going you know, to do yeah, much. Yeah, so they, they, they're fine with that. They don't care about the But game. I think we were hopeful that when it comes to— We were hopeful when he said all in, and then and then it then it turned into your your definition of all in is different from the one I see every night on ESPN when they play poker, and they push all in. Yeah, and That's I, where I see, I see wins and losses there. Yeah. That's where I see it. So when he when he walked when he really tried to or the organization tried to walk back all in, then the grade was an F. You knew that going in. They weren't yeah. going to sign anybody. There should yeah. be no surprise here. No, I, I think that there's there's You're not right. They didn't sign Pollard and they didn't sign Biotish and they didn't sign Tyron Smith, and these are all replaceable pieces. They're all replaceable pieces. Could have been worse, but right now I, I'm comfortable with an F or a D. I think if we if we take the the zoom out approach and say, like, hey, in three years, this could be a turning point. Maybe letting Tyron Smith and Biotish go will open them up to draft a tackle in a center. They will. That by the time we're at 2026, we'll be like, wow, that was an A-plus offseason not re-signing those yeah. dudes. It opened you up for this, this, and that. Yeah. But as far as trying to finish the fight and not running it back, this is this team has taken a, a step back, and I can't help but give that a, a nearly fa- failing grade. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm just uh, we're splitting hairs between the F and the D there, but uh, I do think it could have been worse had they given the they contracts it. that the Commanders and the Titans have given to these former Cowboy players. But I think one of the things as well, and I know they're never active on the first day, mm. but the running back market is a little bit higher than we thought it was going to be. So I went in thinking, hey, your two main free agent positions that you need to address are relatively cheap positions. I can get a good linebacker for pretty cheap, and I can get a good veteran running back yeah. for super cheap. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, these are like these are waters that the Cowboys want to play in, cheap yeah. position waters, yeah. and unfortunately, they've done nothing with the linebacker spot to this point. But the running backs a touch higher than any of us probably thought, and now you're like, you can't even get one of these guys. When 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 you saw that Pollard got uh, three years, twenty four million dollars, you just you you just said no. It's kind of like okay, I misevaluated yeah. what I thought here. Right. Yeah. yeah it, well, I think yeah, what we thought they were going to do. I but think the Titans I, are the ones think, who ultimately I think, misevaluated. I think, the, that. I think the whole NFL was surprised by this. I think the NFL was surprised the amount of money these running backs got. The Giants got uh, running back Devin Singletary and Brian Birds and John Runyon. They they receive a B from CBS Sports. The Bird Turds get an A uh, with Saquon Barkley and, and Bryce Huff, and they brought back Landon Dickerson as well. They did lose Kelsey and Fletcher Cax uh, to retirement. Can't help that. And then uh, we'll the, see about that back staying healthy. Yeah, and, and Kellen Moore calling plays. And the Commanders got a B plus. I don't think Kellen Moore helps them at all. I don't. I don't uh, think that helps them at all either. Austin Eckler, Tyler Biotish, Dorrance Armstrong, Zach Ertz, Nick Allegretti, Frankie Louvu, and Brandon McManus, the kicker. They uh, they had a very busy day yesterday. Gosh, a, a busy day of bringing in a whole bunch of nothing. Yeah, Louvu is <laughs> the best player they brought on that thing. And I'm just saying that Louvu is the only good one. They the bring Cowboys in Marcus need, Mariota as well. Yeah, yeah, Cowboys needed to replace Biotish. They needed to replace. I mean, I, I understand. Uh, I talked about Fowler earlier. You know who they signed and stuff. Armstrong, you know, okay there, but overall though, I don't know how you could like what they did. I like what Icy Vert put on Twitter, which is the Commanders have the most cap space in NFL history, and they are building the worst team of all time. They're trying. <laughs> I, I, I tend to agree with them. They're really trying. Oh, it's so glorious! New owner, new GM, new coach, same old Commandos. Let's get a Biotish and a <laughs> and a Eckler who's getting chased down from behind I by defensive you, tackles. I don't know how you can watch Biotish play if you turn on the Commander. For Film those defensive tackles. The, the reason why you need to move on from Biotish is when you watch them those defensive tackles play against him. I don't know how you can watch that and say, oh, wow, that's an upgrade for us there. 
All righty. Uh, we're, wa- we're watching hoops last night. Mavs looked pretty dang good. Uh, rim sesh is coming up next, Chief. Where are we going? Michael Finley has an epic Luca story, and he's going to share it with us next. Plus, Wimby had his welcome to the NBA moment last night sure next did. year in the nation. I'd like to uh, see you have a welcome to Twin Peaks moment in your near to immediate future. It's your ultimate sports lodge with a menu to match. At Twin Peaks, you can pair.
insiders, and podcasts dedicated to your favorite team. Listen live to the latest breaking news from around the league or choose from a list of topics and listen on demand. It's all on the free Odyssey app. Download it today. A-U-D-A-C-Y. Classic Chevrolet and Grapevine, they are the number one Chevy dealer in the world with more Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference. Based on new Chevrolet registrations, 2023. Thank you, Lucius. And thank you, Tolos, for making us part of your day. It is the G-Bag Nation here on 105.3 The Fan. Coming up at 4 o'clock, it'll be time for the C-Note. Would you want these former Cowboys back? We'll discuss that. Uh, here's Chief with your rim set. Yes, sir. Let's go ahead and cut the lights out. We'll put the kids to bed. And the G-Bag Nation's going all 56 inches around the rim. Let it ride! Brain dance! I got a joint here, man. I've been saying for a special occasion. It's always a special occasion when you have a Maverick that is inching closer and closer to history. Wilt Chamberlain. And Daniel Gafford. I did not know those two names were going to be mentioned in the same sentence. Ever. Ever. But now that's where we find ourselves. Making baskets. Gafford is... seven more, right? (laughs) He's seven away from tying. He's at 28 consecutive right now. And I think... I don't know if this is more... is Is this a Daniel Gafford stat? Or is this a Luka stat? I think it's Gafford because he was really high shooting percentage. But Luka's helped it. And at this point, if I'm Gafford and Luca, I'm getting together. I'm like, dude, nothing but dunks until we pass Wilt freaking Chamberlain, right? No jump hooks, no eight foot jumpers, no. Maybe a layup in transition if nobody is is there. But we're gonna do this, you know, and we're gonna do this uh, in, over over the course of the next two games. It's a it's a no doubt about her in my mind if I'm Gafford. But last night I think was quite a bit about your your horrible Bulls defense. Wow. That looks like it needed a coach firing to me. It would be it would be very difficult to be a Bulls fan. I was yeah. reminded of that last night. Mm. That was a full on bludgeoning, uh, for r- right from right from the outset. Yeah. And I wonder how many people did did y'all did you guys have any ladies in your life that were complaining about the the Channel Eight being Mavericks instead of Bachelor, something no. or other. No, didn't worry no. about that. Didn't have to deal with that. Didn't have to deal with that. Well, one. consider yourselves a Thank little bit lucky. God. Yeah. You yeah. two Lucius didn't yeah, have to deal I with that. Thank one. God, man. No. Good for you. No, I probably would have packed my bags, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that game was on and I'm like, yeah, sorry, honey. She's like, well, what about and I'm like, well, we can't watch it right now because I'm obviously using the television, but not only because of that, but also because I'm using the same channel as you. Sorry that our channels are <laughs> conflicting right now. But they decided what was more important. Not me. Channel eight decided this. Okay. Yeah. If if the bachelor was on, hey, sorry. Channel eight decided. It's gonna be the Mavs. And so we got to, uh, well, I got to enjoy the Mavs game because of that last night. Uh, Now, we have a great story from Mavericks Assistant General Manager, Mr. Michael Finley. He was on this very station over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Fantastic weekend programming led by our OGAF, Mr. Chris Arnold and uh, Will Chambers, Alec Medford, Blake Elliott. These guys bringing it strong. And this this has since actually... This clip has gone viral because it's such a awesome story. Yeah, it blew it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it has uh, it has really uh, garnered some some online steam. So shout out to our boys on the weekend for making this pop. But here is uh, Mavericks assistant general manager Michael Finley telling us a story about Luca and a now former Mav Grant Williams. Yeah, I remember just to share a quick story with you guys. Uh, so one day in practice. A player, a team, and I won't, I won't call his name out, but it was Grant Williams. Uh, <laughs> he decided he wanted to uh, get under Luca's skin. You know, you know, uh, he felt that Luca didn't come to practice, come to, come that day ready to practice. So, to make a long story short, he's they they had a scrimmage going. And he's talking trash to Luca up and down the court. So finally, Luca says, "Okay." And I tell you, Luca went on a twenty-six to six run by himself. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, and, and look, you can ask anybody. I'm not exaggerating. It was like a twenty-six to six run by himself. <laughs> he showed everything: the threes, the post up, the floaters, everything by himself. Was Luca talking? No. <laughs> 
do not poke the bear. The sideline, including the coach was like, do not poke the bear. That's what everybody <laughs> kept saying. Do not poke the bear. And we had guests in the gym at the time, and they're on the sideline, <laughs> oohing and ah. It was unbelievable. I was over there. I mean, the kid couldn't miss. And I'm not talking easy shot. Yeah. He <laughs> was showing the whole repertoire in this five, six minute span. It was like a 26 to six run Ooh. by himself. My gosh. What an epic story there for Michael Finley to be one of those guests in that room. In that, I mean, that's better than I'll take that over any any game that you could go attend, like in the regular season. Give me, put me in that practice right there. That is absolutely epic. And there seems like there are epic stories about the great ones from practice that yeah. have never seen the light of day that former players, whatever, like to share. Mm -hmm. Because when you have those 1% of the 1%er dudes and they're putting on a show, and we get to see it plenty in the actual games, but when they're when they're going after it in practice like that, and it just you're like, oh my gosh, the way he described that was amazing. And for Grant Williams to try and do that to Luca while you got guests in the house too, like that is ultimate sign of, okay, you're going to challenge me, I'm going to bury you right yeah. now, and then we're going to send you to Charlotte. I wonder if that was the beginning of the end for uh, Luca and Grant Williams because it seemed like they liked each other at the beginning. Yeah, that might have. Well, I mean, it's funny because Grant Williams is saying like L uh, Luca didn't show up to practice today, and apparently Grant Williams didn't show up to training camp no. in any sort of uh, shape, yeah. let alone NBA shape. Uh, so for Grant Williams to be doing any talking there, I mean, that is one illustration of the annoyance that Grant Williams. Now, if you're Grant Williams and you do that, and then and then you're all of a sudden you're getting a bunch of stops. And you're, you're blocking shots, yeah. and you're stealing the ball. Now, all of a sudden, it's a yeah. different deal. But Grant Williams, you need to have more self-awareness He's a goofy brain, though, bro. He has no self-awareness. This might be a W to him, not a L. Like, hey, man, I got him to play. <laughs> Some of the shots he made in a row, I got under his skin. I got him to play. It's a great point. <laughs> you got to watch this guy. He's a goof. Yeah, this is, this is, you're right. This is the same Grant Williams He's who went in Boston at the end of a game, was at the free throw line saying, I'm going to make both of them. He's I'm going to cool. make both of them. And then he misses both, and the Celtics lose. It's the same Grant Williams. Yeah, he's trying hard. It's an amazing story. Thank you, Michael Finley. And uh, thank you. I the do fan love James. those legendary tales like Barkley talking about 17 year old Dirk on a European tour. Yes. Yeah, those are amazing. Well, the Mavs get back in action tomorrow at home versus Golden State. That's a big game. Uh, and it doesn't look like Steph Curry will be available for it, according to Steve Kerr. Not expecting Steph to play in Dallas nice. versus the Mavericks tomorrow. So that's a bummer for anybody who's going out there and was hoping to see that, but it is good for the Mavs who could use any victory possible right now, especially versus a team like the Warriors when you have the Mavericks sitting in the eight spot, Lakers nine, Warriors 10. Mm. So right now your play-in teams are Kings at seven, then the Mavs, Lakers, and Warriors. And the Suns are flirting with that play-in with the Kings right now. You could have a scenario in the Western Conference playoffs where Kevin Durant, Luka Doncic, LeBron James, and Steph Curry are all in the play in and two of those four are, are getting sent home. packing yeah nba probably does wants nothing to do with that particular scenario there but that's where we're headed i mean that's just there's there's not enough games left ultimately you're gonna have you're gonna have lakers you're gonna have warriors you know in uh and probably the mavericks as well in the play-in so that's big though I, I i feel like even though the warriors haven't called all the way up to being out of the play-in they could by the end of the year. They're playing better basketball. They're still a little bit inconsistent. But with no Steph Curry, that might be uh, the break that you need. Get another win. You know, a lot of things that we like to uh, ask our athletes at some point in their career is, you know, what was sort of your welcome to the league moment in, yeah. in any sport? And I think we have that moment for, for Wimby last night versus Golden State. Yes. You had Wimby. And Wimby's treated a lot of these players in the NBA like their kids at a basketball camp, swatting shots away. It's embarrassing. The dude's a freaking pterodactyl, and he's doing epic things. But last night, a guy you've never heard of before, Trace Jackson Davis, Mr. Hyphenated Last Name Guy, put Wimby on a poster. I, I would imagine this is the first time Wimby's ever been put on a poster. Like this. Uh, certainly like this. This is the sound. I would like to, you guys grade the call. This is the Warriors. So the Warriors player is now boom. Posterizing on Wimby. Grade the call. One more stop. Trace Jackson Davis. Oh! He put oh, the entire country of fans in the basket. Take that eight foot wingspan with you. <laughs> That is his welcome to the league moment. Put the entire country of France, France into the basket. Yeah. Take your eight 
foot four wingspan with you. It's a good call. You like that? I like that. Eight out of ten? I would say on excitement, eight out of ten. I think that, I think yeah. I would give it an eight as well. Yeah. 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 Little homerism in there. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Which is what, which is what, what guys, he is. What are guys would be a little homer? The only person I would have rather I mean could we have gotten Kevin Harlan on that call last night? Oh, that would have been good. That would have yeah. that would have sent G Bag of the Day into yeah. the stratosphere. That's an automatic five time champ. Kevin Harlan with Reggie Miller over his shoulder. Yeah. I gotta have Reggie just he's screaming and yelling for screaming. no reason. Yeah. yeah. Oh! Like, he's oh! he's gra- oh! he's grabbing on Harlan's yeah, shoulder. He is, he is, he yes. Is. Harlan's got his tie undone with his shirt. You know, Reggie's all buttoned up, but he's yelling, he's grabbing Harlan's shirt you could just see it in his, in his fingers absolutely yeah 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 that would have been good that would have been good but i thought it was a strong call there from the it warriors was. guy it was in a strong rim session indeed as it's about to get really interesting here it's already getting really interesting for the mavs and the association as we come down the stretch okay when we return uh it is time for the uh, c-note cowboys news of the evening could the return of this legend to the roster now be on the cards considering how much the Cowboys have to spend? It's coming up next in the nation. We will gladly be your side piece on your burner phone. It's totally...
our fan studio, secured by TFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Here we go. It's our three G Bag Nation 1053 The Fan. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Could Zeke be going low enough that the Cowboys could bring him back? Let's talk about it. General at your service. There's Brian Broadus, the former Cowboy Scout NFL executive. Lucius Alexander's in the Pimp Cup Master Control. Eric Chia follow us here. Carter Freeman is coordinating your video. You can watch us at 1053TheFan.com, Twitch, and YouTube. We have uh, Rangers baseball on the TV. They are scoreless here in the fifth inning, I believe, over there with the Indians right now. Be the Guardians. There you go. Yes, the Guardians. <laughs> My bad on that one. No, they are. They Yes, they are scoreless. Uh, Andrew Heaney's just kind of navigating. He gets in a little trouble, gives up a hit, gives up another hit, then kind of finds his way around it. And uh, it's looked pretty good here uh, as we go through uh, and get to the top of the fifth. Getting some good work today. Wouldn't it at least be fun to have Zeke back in the mix while you go through this rebuild? You know, I I don't I don't know how much they want to spend. I don't know what Zeke's looking to get. Last year it was clear he wanted to get paid and, and Belichick wanted him so bad that he did eventually get paid for that one year. But if that deal doesn't happen, he might not have played last year. And you know, it was three point five yards per attempt, three point eight the year before when Pollard was getting like four and a half, so you know how we feel about him as a player, but I do feel like if you want to add a veteran back, he might make a lot of sense uh, as long as you are going to draft a young guy uh, you know, who could be more of an every-down player. I think Zeke would be more like short yardage, and it's cool to have him here. Um, I'm not, I don't have big hopes for 2024, so I'm trying to get through of it with as uh, much entertainment and uh, familiar faces as possible, well, Brian. The, the thing about it is you could bring Zeke in and pair him with one of these other backs. Yeah. And that would be fine. You know, I mean, not the, Deuce Vaughn or Dowdle or Lippy. No, the, yeah. the, the, thing that, the thing that Zeke is really good at is catches the ball well. He's good on blitz pickup. You kind of know what you're going to get down on the goal line or in the short yardage situations. So yeah, he would be a pretty good complimentary piece to maybe a back that that has some explosiveness, uh, you know, to his game. And I I think that's where to me I would be interested in if the fact that they did bring Zeke back because I kind of feel like that he does enough things uh, you know, that other backs don't do. I'm going to give you an example. There's a guy named Marshawn Lloyd as a running back for USC, and he's in this draft this year. And you talk about a guy that. You know, he's only 5'9", he's 220 pounds, he's explosive, he catches the ball well, uh, he runs hard, he can, you know, he, he's, he can finish anywhere on the field. You pair Zeke with somebody like that that's an explosive player, I, I don't think that's a bad combination to go with. We do need short yardage running. We need red zone scoring. I think Zeke could still do a, a, sure. a little of that, you know, as long as you're just asking short yardage and the goal isn't more than about four yards down the field, I think Zeke's like toughness and his shiftiness in the hole there could could have some value for the right price. I'm just trying to come up with like, what's the best way to spend what I think is going to be under three million bucks? And I do expect them to spend maybe as close to zero as possible for the rest of free agency. I, I have another interesting wrinkle on this story coming up, Chief. But what do you think, just in a vacuum, the idea of Zeke back with this football team? I mean, I would be. I, I, I've moved on. I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily need that anymore. Uh, you're paying him. You still got like six million of, of dead money owed to uh, to Zeke on, on the books for this year. Uh, so I'd like to see something a little bit different. I, I think you're right. If you did have him, it's just for I need a yard. I need two yards. That's that's what he's got. Yeah, so we can't run the quarterback all year in these in these sneaks. You yeah, know, it's just not a good idea. So so what do you pay for a guy like that? New England paid him three million last year. Um, you know how how low is Zeke willing to go? He's made plenty of money in his career. He doesn't need to do this anymore. So how you much want to does, play with your buddies? Though? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. How much? I don't know. Yeah. I, how much do you? How much do you still want to do it? For me, this is much like I believe it happened with New England last year. This is right before the season. We feel like we need a guy who can give us a yard at a time, and so we'll pay the veteran minimum for it. If you're down, <laughs> I love it. Nine oh three just says Zeke. Eight one seven bolster the line. Draft a late round back. 
Yeah, I'd like middle rounds myself. I, I do think not all runners out of college are yeah. the same. So I do want a guy who has great speed and production and size. Just give me those three things and we'll work with it. Yeah, try and find a way to get it back in that second or third round. Yeah. That's where I would go with this with with, with this particular draft. Okay, so I jump over here to blog and the boys. They, they're running an interesting poll that made me think of something we talked about a couple of weeks back, but I do think this story re- requires an update. Does the lack of initial free agent activity push you against a Dak Prescott extension, at least for now, right? Just for now. We're talking about doing a contract before we get to next February, March. And um, they write, the Cowboys missed out on the initial wave of free agency, which begs the question, what is the point of saving money now? Why why would the Cowboys, if they're not going to really go for it, this is exciting. Why not just use this year to eat a huge portion of what's remaining on Dak Prescott's contract? Instead of kicking the can, instead of doing an extension, yeah. he's going to play at a $60 million. That way, it doesn't hurt 2025, 2026. We're going to stop adding voidable years and money into those voidable years. And we're going to prepare for, you know, to be in a place years down the road where we'll be like, hey, aren't you glad we did that? We have options now with Dak. We could actually move on if we want to. Or at the bare minimum, we use 2024 to get rid of all the salary cap hit that we've been delaying. You know, we signed a four-year deal. We spent the first three years delaying it. Then we got to the last one, and we had to take a stand and say, hey, we're going to burn it now. And if, if you look at the Cowboys and what they've done so far in free agency, which has let a ton of guys walk, you know, totally different from what they've done in the past. I mean, Biotis for ten million bucks—that's something the Cowboys do a couple of years ago. Hanging on to a Tyron Smith who still played at an All Pro level for under market value—that's something they would do, unless they're rebuilding. And if you are rebuilding, then I, I think we should be rooting for them to leave the DAC contract alone, not sign anybody, and use this year to blow that cap hit out almost in its entirety. I think there will still be about 25 or 30 million bucks left year next year, but um, it, it could go a long way to getting you back to cap flexibility would be my point. I mean, I, I think this is exactly what I, I would want to have happen. This is the the one way you can get through the off season and feel like, okay, this is, uh, you know, we're not for sure going to marry ourselves to this situation uh, moving forward. This isn't going to be a long-term deal now. Uh, at least you, you keep that open until – this time next year and then you see what happens but i think if you get to the start of the season and there's no DAC deal done then it's like okay is one going to get done you don't usually see that kind of stuff happening yeah. during the season and then all of a sudden DAC will be like hey i can't be tagged i'd like to see what i can get out there on the open market and then you go do what Kirk cousins just did mm-hmm. so but i think ultimately uh, unless you're unless you're just in love with the idea of Dak still being here, this is exactly what you want as a Cowboys fan. Yeah, right now you have thirty six million dollars that's going to be dead next year, and the concept would be: Do you want to add twenty three and a half to that? No. Or do you just want to eat that this year? And if you're not going to go for the Super Bowl, which they're making that plainly obvious, you know, just get enough cap space by restructuring a smaller contract to sign your draft class, sign some budget free agents, and call it good. I. I I think that's probably the best case scenario from this point forward. Yeah, for sure. For sure. If you were really going to be all in and trying to swing for the fences, then you would say, all right, we'll continue to push some of this stuff out because we really want to go hard in the paint this year. But that's clearly not the case. So what are you clearing? Why are you pushing money away from this year, putting it into next year when this year you're not? What are you doing with that money? You've proven you're not doing much of anything with it. Yeah, yeah, and they they still have eleven million dollars of dead space for twenty twenty six. So that thirty six number I just quoted, you actually have to add eleven before you're uh, free and clear from that uh, after the twenty twenty six season. So three years of of cap hits remaining. I think they might be looking at it like we we just can't make it worse at this point, you know? Yeah, and we 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 need to use one of these years, and you know, that's kind of been my point all along. Pick which year you want to do this in, and then. Use the two or three years before that for your all-in push, right? You don't want to get to this point like, oh, well, I guess it's time to rinse the pallet without of having actually really, really gone for it. And, um, you know, that's, I think, my biggest disappointment. And Jerry Jones said at the end of Tony Romo's career, the biggest disappointment of his career is he never got him a Super Bowl. He just did the same thing with Dak. He just sat here really for eight years having a team capable of getting there, and each and every year you sat at the trade deadline and said, it's okay, we can't stop the run. You never could throughout Dak's entire first eight years of his career. You could never really stop the run. And only a couple of times could you really run the football yourself. 
and maybe just 2016 as far as being able to run it at a championship level, if you ask me. Okay, how do you guys feel about free ice cream? Come on, man. Yeah, I know you're a big fan. It's yeah. my favorite kind of ice cream. That and free beer. I don't know which I like more. Free ice cream or free beer? Free beer. Free beer because, thank God, for places like Brahms, I can go get my ice cream deliciously on the cheap. Yeah. And free beer, you know, we're going to knock about 12 or 15 of these back. So that is... I could eat a whole gallon of ice cream. That's 40 like. bucks. Yeah. That's 40, 50 bucks. Not if, you're, not if you hang out at the spring training games. <laughs> yeah. By the way, thanks to Tolo's helping us out that one day. So clutch, dude. Oh, you guys are the best. $100 of beer money. Yeah. <laughs> got us a good three or four beers. It did. It got, it did. It got us three beers each, right? How'd like, they yeah, get it to They you. were tall boys. Did they ask Did they, they ask you in DMs for your number? They, uh, they No, they they found Cash me on Venmo. Venmo. The first person oh. just Venmoed it to me, and then, really? I, and then I thanked them, and then somebody else was like, dude, what's your Venmo? I want to send more money for Broadus to be hammered because people like to hear that. That is pretty awesome, dude. I'm I, I'm so glad that Tolos are finding our Venmos. <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> it's, like be, the, it's like the YouTube super chat. Yes, exactly. I, I said something you liked. You sent me 10 bucks. Ka-ching. <laughs> That's uh, hilarious. We, we need to work that out here, man. 972 says run block win rate. I love that, you know. And I, I love the idea that maybe the Cowboys are going to blow out cap space and decide to to try to build a running game. Like, step one of this is, hey, let's blow out cap space this year, not restructure Dak, not extend Dak, draft a tackle, draft a center, get a runner, and and see what that does, um, you know, and, and we'll reevaluate. But I, I genuinely believe if you look back on 2011, 12, and 13, that's exactly where this organization sees itself now. And that time around, they did draft Tyron. They drafted Zach. They missed on Claiborne. They come back and get Zach Martin, though. Um so if, if they do the same thing now, the reason they did that that year was Tony Romo was getting older, and as he moves into his 30s, we're going to have to give him a better offensive line and better running game. So if that strategy holds with Dak, how, how awesome would it be if you start to rebuild your offensive line this year, next year you actually miss the playoffs because you're not spending any money on free agency, you let about a half dozen players go, and then you're sitting in the top half to maybe take another offensive lineman. You know, um, you could get a guard, get a center, get get a tackle, and really rebuild what this team was from 14 through about 16 until Travis Frederick's Guillain Barrier syndrome yeah. got a little bad on him. But anyway, hey, you nailed that. By the way, that pronunciation yeah. has kicked my ass for the last five years. <laughs> Man, that, you just steamrolled right through that thing. It was a tough one for him. And you didn't even plan, but that wasn't on the show bingo card. No, sir. Guillain no, Barrier was not. No, I just freestyled that one. Uh, free ice cream cone season is here, though. That's why okay, I yes. That up. I was wondering. I was like, wait, you're not just going to tease us. Don't don't bogart the, all the free ice cream. March 19th, customers at DQ. That's what I like about Texas. Can you get the dip cone or is it just the straight without the dip? We'll be able to get a free small DQ soft serve vanilla cone with the iconic curl at the top participating restaurants. That's a good curl. Haven't heard anything about the dip so far. Uh, I would Brian. pay a little extra for the dip. Texans know spring has arrived when they feel the warmth of the sun. Blue bonnets begin to appear, and free cone day has arrived at DQ restaurants. I never knew about this tradition, but I do now. Dairy Queen is is coining it treat season and asking customers to post pictures with the hashtag okay. free cone day. I'd like to go on record and say that the free soft serve ice cream at the Chinese buffet, a nice touch. It's it's one of the it's one of my favorite things to look forward to. Plate after plate after plate. Exactly. I know the finish line is and, that that yeah, ice cream and, bar. And then you look over there and you kind of see it in the corner, and you know it's just waiting for you. You get you get the mix, right? You get the little half and half. You get the vanilla I, I and used, the chocolate. I swirl just, that thing up. I, I just usually go with the vanilla one. Okay. Usually just the vanilla one. Once you once you get to about sixty years old, everything just becomes vanilla, right? I, I just you're not taking any chances. I don't want to take any chances. I don't even want to try and mix them up. I'm like Wolchuk when it comes to making waffles. Yeah. At a hotel. Oh, really? Yeah, you get a little nervous by the whole, oh, wait, am I doing this right? Am I holding people up? That kind of thing. Especially when your dentures are out, you know? Makes it tough. <laughs> Eat that solid food. That's Were solid you telling food. me that earlier? What, no. dentures? Yeah. What did you take over for that guy over there? I was just trying to pick up his cue. I thought I liked, it was fun. I liked where so you were funny. headed with that. My, my man, my man when, we were, when we were having fun in the, the press box today, 
Yeah, you know, he just started making stuff up, yeah, it was and, great. and I right. was like agreeing to it. I know, like, I was like, appreciative. Yeah, what did I say? Hey, what happened? We God got off the segment, and I looked you dead balls in the eyes, and I said, thank you for playing along with that lie. Yeah, Man, you're so agreeable when you're hammered. Remember when you gave me your payoff immunity <laughs> at the parade? <laughs> yeah. I was like, cha-ching. Hey, it doesn't matter. Payoff immunity, free gas, whatever you need from me, I'm all about that. DQ is also offering a St. Patrick's Day t- treat, the Mint Brownie Blizzard. Boom. Hello. That, that's to me better than the dip cone. The oh, mint yeah, is. blizzard. The oh, chunks of brownie brownies. inside that. Yes. That's going to be pretty outstanding. I, I'd give a couple extra bucks if it was put in even a bigger cup. So this is a St. Patty's Day bit. Yeah. So on St. Patty's Day, just go to Dairy Queen. Hey, like that's there, what we need to know. Is there a Dairy Queen around here? And like, the first day of spring for the dipped cone. First, first day, day of spring dip cone, St. Patty's Day brownie blizzard. Well, can I, I mean, is there a Dairy Queen around here that I could get some of these and bring them in? I mean, is there, is there a close one around here? 30. Lucius, is there a Dairy Queen around here that you know about at all? Yeah, I have no idea, man. I guess I could look that yeah, up. Do the Googles. My... Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to turn my location on on my phone, so you got to do it on yours. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm sneaky like that. <laughs> 30 and Broadway. Sneaky link. Hey, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> he cracked the code over there. I would like to, yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong. Maybe bring in a steak finger basket or two. Oh, my gosh. Hunger yes, Buster. Bro. You ever had yes. a Hunger Buster? I don't think so. I like I like DQ for dessert. So just a dessert. Oh, would you dude, eat, from time to time question, you go to DQ, you bust that hunger. Would you eat the mint thing that if oh, I brought it? Yeah. yeah. Would you? Wait, you're on Lent. I got to do this after Lent, name. right? Yeah, that's right. I got to wait till April at this point. Yeah. Okay. April first, though. I mean, it, Lent Lent came a little early this year. You know, I feel like it Ooh. saved you, right? I mean, with the way I don't know, it it's seemed been like a long it started for him. It, it started February twelfth, and it's going to the end of the month. Yeah. Sometimes it starts after my birthday, which is the eighteenth, and ends like on the twenty fifth. Oh, okay. I think I got like an extra ten days. Oh of Lent no, this year. I, th- I thought like Easter was early this you need year. Need to try out. That would help. No, maybe maybe Easter is early. I don't know. I think it might be like the last day though. I think so- that Sunday falls. Yeah, March thirty, March thirty first, Easter Sunday. We got to run, Nation. When we come back, it is uh, time now for Wolchuk's top 10 at 420. Where are you taking that today, Chief? All right, we got a Tyson versus Paul fight update, and we celebrate National Johnny Appleseed Day with the top 10 most famous Johns of all time. That's next here in the Nation. I want to chat DNM leasing with you before we do.
Welcome back, Nation. Hope you're having a terrific day. Baseball stuff's coming up at 440. We'll talk Rangers with you. This segment of the Nation is brought to you by Cars for Kids. Donate today, carsforkids.org, and it's brought to you by the Frankels. Life's unpredictable accidents happen. Franklin Frankel, go-to attorneys for car and truck wrecks in DFW. If you or a loved one's been in an accident, contact the Frankels, 214 or 817-333-3333. Go to truckbreak.com, and here's the chief. All right, we got the Wooly Bully Top 10 list of the day. Zach Wolchuk back tomorrow doing fatherly things today with brand new baby Eliza. All things, I think, are uh, going swimmingly, uh, but uh, the Wooly Bully will be back tomorrow. Happy National Johnny Appleseed Day. Huge day. Huge day. And uh, because of that, we will honor it by uh, doing our Top 10 list of the day, the Top 10 Most Famous Johns of All Time. Uh, this could be in sports or out of sports. 877-881-1053. We'll get to that here momentarily. But uh, an update on the Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight that is coming up later on in the summer. AT&T oh, that's Stadium. What, I was do. what are you going to do? I was going to check on... Get that business together. I was going to check on the credentials. Oh, yeah, because we're, we're trying to get in the building. Yeah, that's what I was going to... All right, go ahead. Talk no, on. we're good. Talk Absolutely. On. Talk on. All right, we'll talk on. Here's Ariel Helwani, a, uh, a fight insider, and uh, he's answering uh, a couple of questions that we uh, that we all have in regards to this Tyson and Jake Paul fight. They're still working on a few important details based <laughs> on the conversations that I've had. Is it pro or is it exhibition? They sure. want pro. Obviously, that's up to the Texas Commission. Yep. We'll wait and see. Um, weight, I'm told heavyweight rounds working on that as well. I saw an interview with Derek Chisora where he said there'll be headgear. I was told there's absolutely no headgear involved. This is going to look like your typical boxing match. It's just exhibition like Mike's last fight was against Roy Jones in November of 2020. Or is it just, you know, a normal pro heavyweight fight that has no strings attached in that regard? Okay, so uh, there is, you know, the headgear stuff. Is this going to be a professional fight? What's the deal? Uh, you know, one of the things that they've discussed is the, you know, the Texas Commission and their, uh, you know, their their regulations in regards to drugs and having to be submitted to drug testing and stuff. Not only PEDs, but also just the uh, just the recreational drugs. And we know Mike Tyson has claimed in the past to smoke like forty thousand dollars worth of weed per month hmm. uh and so i don't know i don't know what that does to the legitimacy of the fight or you know how you can circumvent that but that's something like Keyshawn davis um you know texas had suspended Keyshawn davis for marijuana use late last year uh, and so are they going to do you know how are they going to regulate it in regards to mike tyson so all things to consider it's but, an exhibition right we well, don't know yet well, That's if, the thing. But can they get they want it, it to be a pro bout. Oh. They want it to be. They want championship rounds. That means you're going to like, what, 11 and 12? Like 12? 10, 11, 12, bro? Yeah, they want this thing to be, they want it to be legit that way. Oh, I thought maybe if it was an exhibition that he wouldn't have right. to submit to the drug test. Well, and perhaps they might have to get that way. Because Mike's P is cloudy. Definitely, that's it's definitely cloudy, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to light up. That's going to light up the, the board there for sure. So, and I don't imagine that Jake Paul is necessarily the the cleanliest peer in the world either. Uh, no. I don't. I don't want to be super super speculative, but he sure is big. Pause. If I'm Tyson, I, I want to steer clear of any testing because I'm roiding my balls off right now. You know, I'm trying to look as good as possible, to clean this guy's clock. If you're Mike, yeah, yeah, and then I guess you just allow this to be the the exhibition. Yeah. So that you can just do whatever yeah. it is that you want to do to be souped up. Because either way, the KO is the KO. We're not going to remember in 10 years. Was that a profile? Was that an exhibition fight? Yeah. We just know that you, yeah, Mike Tyson, KO'd yeah. Jake Paul. You're going to get a t-shirt? I'm going to get a t-shirt. 
of a KO'd Jake Paul? No, just like like at the fight. You should. I'm just going to get like... Historic. Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. Historic, yeah, actually, man. It'd be a $100 t-shirt. It'd actually, be worth every penny. I think this is the first boxing match I have ever would ever been to in my life. It would be for me, yes. Wow. I don't think I've ever been to a boxing match. Wow. Well, I'll and tell I'm, you right now, I, it, gets, it goes down in boxing matches, so keep your head on a swivel, because yeah. fights make fights. Yeah. People in the audience like to fight, or gonna, especially after the boxing match, people like to fight. They yeah. might wear a tux and just show, you know, just kind of cool. Just like act like I'm like 1960s Vegas fight guy Heck and yeah. it just show up. Heck yeah. Yeah. Just don't be talking trash to anybody you don't want to fight because uh, that's what they're looking to do afterwards. Oh, no, I don't want no. I'm not going to say that. I'll be friends with everybody. Yeah. These guys we'll are looking. Cocktails and all that. We'll have fun. <laughs> these guys are looking to be inspired. Yeah. And you don't you don't want to be on the wrong end of that. Uh, but that is going to be a ton of fun. I hope you can figure out a way to nail those uh, those credentials because we need to be just, in the building I just here. reached out reached out to the parties involved. All right, ladies and gentlemen, happy Johnny Appleseed Day. Here Top comes 10 Johnny most Appleseed. famous Johns of all time. Who's your favorite John? I'm going to go all in with Johnny Knoxville. Oh, I like Johnny. John the Baptist. Like John, John the Baptist. He's actually the real one seed. Thank you. John yeah. the Baptist is. I just thought I'd let you know that. Uh, Johnny Knoxville, 1B. Uh, <laughs> Lucius, favorite John or most famous John? What is this? Uh, the, it's it's technically what I had. The list I have is the most famous Johns of all time. But if you want to give me your personal favorite, I'm most I'm famous here. Johns: Tiger Woods, Hugh Grant, uh, Eddie Murphy at one time, but he said he was just giving her a ride. <laughs> I knew what he's doing. Uh, Elliot Spitzer for sure. Elliot Spitzer. Uh, for Jerry sure. Springer. That's how he got famous out there. Yeah. Uh, Marv Albert. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, he bit one. That's, he, he, he's, he's bad, bad for business. He's bad yeah. for business. Yeah, yeah. John Malkovich. How about John Malkovich? Okay, I'm stuck with the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to get one in there. I like the way you finished that. I'm trying to figure out what, I mean, I think the context clues with Marv Albert is where I started to catch on. I'm trying yeah. to figure out exactly yeah. what. John, John. He was a John, famous John. Yeah. You never heard that slang of John? I, I'm, I, I'm not familiar with Paying that slang. For it. Yeah. I'd pay for it if I got to. Pay for it. Okay. Yeah. If you're a John, you're Eddie a Murphy good. said he was giving her a ride, but yeah. he, you know, <laughs> there you go. Hugh Grant is a great. <laughs> He's one. a taxi driver. Yeah, yeah. Hugh, Hugh Grant. Good Samaritan. Yeah. Get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Moonlighting an Uber. Yeah, 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 come come on. on. Okay, I would like to get y'all's guesses though on who you think is who do you think actually is the most famous John of all time? Because there's a number one on this list. They'll probably go John Wayne. John Wang. Yeah, never heard of John Whoa. Wayne. <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> Wayne. John Wayne. Is that your final no, suggestion? No, that's what Dawson was trying oh, to say. Oh, okay. I thought this was two different Johns. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Who's your John? Uh, Famous John. Like, actually, could you, yes, could you use Johnny? You could use Johnny, absolutely. I would say in, in the media world, it's Johnny Carson. Okay. You're gonna, well, okay. I thought you were going to Oh, man. I thought you were going to go Johnny Cash, Cash as well. Be, Johnny Cash I thought you were going to go football. Too. Yeah. Who do you think, uh, Lucius? Uh, what's your uh, guess for most famous John? Because Prada said this, I gotta play it. Oh, please. You know who else did a lot of cocaine? Johnny Carson. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Straight snitching, bro. Oh. <laughs> Straight man snitching. ruled late night TV. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, Ca do we say Johnny Cash already? We did. Uh, but if, if that's John guess, Stamos. John Stamos. Yeah, Uncle Jesse. Yeah, Uncle Jesse, bro. It's a good call. He's getting a lot of love here on the fan text as well. Eight seven seven eight eight one one zero five three. Happy National. Johnny Appleseed Day, getting a lot John of love D. for Rockefeller. The, the late great. Okay, little Rockefeller action. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Richest man in the world. John E. Depp. Okay. John E. Depp. Okay, what you doing over there? It's a real person. It's a real person. It's a real person. Yeah. Man, it's crazy that brought us caught it out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, oh, that okay, sir. right past no, my ear. You're the one that brought it up, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Pause. Pause. A lot of John Madden love. Hey. John McEnroe. Boom. John McEnroe. Yeah. John Daly getting some getting some shout John here in the A17. John Denver. Yeah. John Daly had blue lips. <laughs> and that John Denver was really full. He had straight up blue lips. Uh, Johnny Bravo, Johnny Cash, uh, John F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, John uh, Candy. Yes, yes, it's a great Canadian right yes. there, man. Second City. This is all uh, from yeah. all from the text too. How about John Goodman? John Goodman. If John Good Goodman yes. is going to be in a movie. It's going to be good, or at least his character is yeah. going to shine. Yeah, yeah, he's a good actor. Yeah, man, he's great. Great spirit. John Elway's getting some love here. John, Stockton. he got blue lips too. John Elway. Very teethy as well. Uh, Eat him sugar cubes. Horse teeth. John, John Ham. 
Uh, you want a bite? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm good, bro. I'm good. Uh, Johnny Carson is number 31, by the way, on the list, just what? so you know. Uh, he is not, he's 30 spots away from being the most famous okay. John of all time. Sorry. He pegged a guy, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These are just facts here. As we move on, Johnny Appleseed, the man who we are honoring today, comes in at number 28 as the 28th most famous John of all time. Wow. Uh, I would say Carson is way more famous than Appleseed at this point. You would think that so? Appleseed's just a... I don't know, dude. Is that a fictitious situation? I thought he was a make up like yeah. Paul Bunyan did. Yeah. I yeah. believe he is, yeah. Because okay. the picture I have here is oh, like a pencil drawing of... Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> uh, Oak Cliff's very own Johnny Taylor on the fan text. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Last two dollars. Backstory, please. Johnny Taylor? Yeah. Yeah, a blues singer out of the Oh. Out of uh Oak Cliff. Okay. Yeah, he went nationwide. Everybody knows old Johnny Taylor. Not, not this old man. Yeah, yes. All right, That's I good. got you, bro. Appreciate you. John Hancock comes in at number twenty. Hmm. John Favreau. Yes. Good, good actor. And like director and stuff. Yes, like, he's a good actor. One of my favorite movies of all time, Made. Him when uh him and Vince Vaughn made. It's amazing. Mm. Oh, dude! Like, oh my god! I've That's never good. heard of this. I'm gonna you have gotta to watch it. Colton Vaughn classic. is my guy. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, we got John Mayer getting some love here. <sighs> I'm, I'm a Mayer fan, dude. Yeah, I can too. play that guitar. Now. Me too. He can play the heck out of that guitar. He's been running around with the uh, with the Grateful Dead, I believe, for the last couple of years. Oh, has he really? He's been playing as a part wow. of their. As I, did, a part of their I did crew. not know that. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, very well respected. Uh, okay, let's get into the uh, the official list here. A lot of great suggestions. I think, I mean, the text pretty much nailed it Johnny right there. Johnny good, for sure. Outside looking in, uh, some more John C. Riley, John Krasinski, John Legend. Oh, yeah. Friend of the show. And John Bon Jovi. That is all you're outside looking in. Wow. Number all, 10. There's 10 better than the guys you just listed? Allegedly, according to America. John Bonham? Founding father, John Adams, number 10. Oh. I mean, if you're a founding father, I think you... You qualify. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think well, it, I think he was the right place, right time, guy. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> hey, Adams, get over here. <laughs> what? What do you want? <laughs> John the Baptist is at number nine, and Whoa. I do believe he should be at the very, at the very least, he should be at Mount Rushmore. Yeah, he's saving that, lives. Yeah, yeah, come on now. Yeah. John Travolta. Oh. Didn't get enough Travolta on the text, to be quite honest with you. I thought Travolta would be a top oh. fiver, but he's sitting there at number eight. So weird. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny Barbarino, hey, right? Hey, Vinny B. John Denver comes in at number seven. Look Country at that. Road, take me home. Sorry about you there, Dawson, but John Wang comes in at number six. I call BS. John Wang? Everybody no, Wang John Trump. Wayne. Oh, okay. he okay. idiot. Okay. They said John Wang. <laughs> Why would I ever? Because he, he watched dog in his pronunciation. He does right? things like Seriously, that. Seriously, dude. Johnny Cash, number five. Awesome. The Depster. Johnny Depp, who had his bed crapped Johnny on Depp. by that one girl. <laughs> Number four. Edward Scissorhands. Was that a pretty good movie? No. Well, I couldn't tell you. I never saw it. You never saw Edward Scissorhands? Mm -mm. That is a pathetic. I've rom -com. seen Edward oh. Forty Hands. Yeah. Edward Forty Hands is a great bit. That is. <laughs> it's yeah. fun to watch get played. <laughs> uh, John Cena. The Naked Announcer from over the weekend. Oh, stick around for LA Live at 545 for more on John Cena. Conspiracies. Yeah. <laughs> you got to think. he Did he lather up with baby oil before that and crank out some bench press or something just to get everything you got to. right where you, you want have to? I think you have to. You have to. At the bare minimum, you're cranking out like 50 push-ups. Yeah. If I do it before the pool, you have to before the Oscar <laughs> stage. You know what I mean? <laughs> Good call there. John F. Kennedy comes in at number two in your most famous John of all time. None of you got it correct. John Legend. Oh. Or excuse me, John what? Lennon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. I bleeped the dismount. Get me out of here. I did. I, we did miss on John Lennon. You missed that wide open layup, bro. <laughs> you did a Euro step two by yourself and everything. John Rolled my Legend. damn ankle. I was about to say John Legend. John Lennon. The late great singer songwriter. If you haven't heard of him, brought us by now. Then... What, John Lennon? Yeah. Okay. If you haven't heard of him, then that's a you problem. That's a me problem. John Wick got more love than probably anybody, though, on the text. And shout out to John Claude Van Damme, who was Ooh. not in the top 50, but he damn well should have been. That was almost my name. My mom was going to name me Jean Claude. <laughs> man, I'm so glad my pops came in there just like, I got this. <laughs> name after me, man. Dude, he'd have been zooming in about second grade when Bloodsport was out, oh, though, man, with Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, that roundhouse kick. Oh. Yes. Legendary. One of the greatest uh, martial arts movies of all time, I think. It's underrated. Okay, we got to run, though. It's time for baseball stuff. We'll talk more about your World Series champs and how spring training's going for them next. Football's finest coming up at 5 here on The Fan. Coming up Wednesday morning on Sean and RJ, what did the Cowboys...
classic Chevrolet in Grapevine. They are the number one Chevy dealer in the world with more Silverados than anyone else. Go see them today or visit ClassicChevrolet.com. This is Texas. This is Classic Chevrolet. Together, let's drive, relax, and enjoy the difference. Based on new Chevrolet registrations 2023. Thank you, Lucius. Uh, Rangers are in the eighth inning with Cleveland, and uh, Jared Sandler is going to join us probably about 5.30 or so as it goes final. We'll get updates from him and uh, a countdown as we're uh, two weeks and two days now from opening day right here on 105 to the fan. Let's talk some Rangers here with you. I do have uh, the Wyatt Langford situation is what they're writing about today on Lone Star Ball. We'll we'll give you uh, the latest on that. I did throw out a poll question on at G-Bag Nation. Please follow us when you get there at G-Bag Nation. Are you guys vibing with the nickname Wyatt Bangford, a.k.a. Bang Bang for the Texas Rangers rookie? Um, and uh, 51.2% indicating yes in, in a positive way that uh, they're heading in the right direction with it. But I think that's a polarizing nickname. You know, I'd much rather see 85, 90% somewhere in there. I'm not going to lie. I'd like to see 98 to 2. But uh, I got to listen to the Tolos at this point. And, you know, I, I don't know. I might need a little, I might need additional work shopping. You know, for me, I was a big Diamond Dallas Page guy. Uh, you know, so I, I love the, the, the diamond cutter hand signal with the bang, you know. So maybe that's my nostalgia. You know, maybe that's my personal bias based on my my nickname history. But I, you know, I, I like that name. Um, if if you do hate it, just just let me know here in the in the comments on at G Bag Nation, or maybe fire it off on, on text. Let me know how you feel about it. I uh, I do like Bangford. I think there's, I mean, I'm I'm open to you know the suggestion box containing yeah. more options there. But mm-hmm. I can't personally, I don't think, come up with something better. I mean, I've tried to. You know, because he's going to be a power hitter, right? He's right. Gonna yeah, a hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. This dude is he's 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 jacked, and he's just he's hitting no doubters, four hundred and forty plus feet. You know, like yeah. that's the kind of guy he is. He's bringing the power. So uh, I, I think you're I think you're absolutely playing in the in the right ballpark with that particular nickname. I mean, I, I imagine our female Tolos, you know, especially the single ones, the young ladies would would uh, you know, find that to be an appealing idea. You know, the guy's very successful, and if athletic. You're, if you're Wyatt, you probably co sign this. Yeah. Heck. I want to run with that. That's good marketing. Anyway, Adam Morris Lone Star Ball doing some more professional style journalism on uh the situation, talking about how at this point it appears inevitable he'll be making the opening day roster. He is on track for it. Uh, what to expect, okay, and and kind of the history that he's making here. This is not common. Having a college position player up this quickly isn't completely unheard of. The Angels had Zach Neto in the majors two weeks into the 2023 season, brought up Nolan Shaniel less than two months after drafting him. Ryan Zimmerman, number four overall pick out of Virginia in 05, was in the majors that same year. Put up a 2-9 B war in 157 games in 06. Finished second rookie of the year voting. But those are exceptions. Particularly position players making the majors the year after being drafted are extremely rare. When Neto was called up, Baseball America ran a piece looking at how rare it was, noting he was just the 18th player in the 21st century to make the majors by the end of the season following his draft year. So less than one per year happens, and I didn't see any details in all of that uh, consuming of the Adam Morris piece today that guys were making it out of camp. Like if he makes it out of camp, it is almost unprecedented uh, the the year following uh, college. There have been guys who step into the playoff run, mostly in like relief pitcher type roles. But I, I, I'm going with the belief that this is a special superstar type of talent that made very quick work in under 200 at bats last year in his minor league experience. And then, you know, took that knowledge, digested it over the offseason and is now doing things that you would expect elite veterans to do which, oh, by the way, he was already doing last October as the Rangers were in the process of finishing off Arizona. As uh, Next story here, this one from Jeff Passan. As the month of October went on and the Rangers cruised to the AL pennant, Langford continued to flabbergast onlookers working in Arizona, consistently barreling balls at 110 miles an hour plus, territory typically reserved for elite major league hitters. While the stay-ready crew was sent home after Game 1 of the World Series, Garcia's oblique injury suffered in Game 3 reignited the chatter among Rangers personnel to summon Langford. He was right there in the conversation, says Texas bench coach Donnie Ecker. And if he did play, he was going right in the three-hole. 
I think if they'd been able to see what he has done this spring training, they would have sent him. You know, ultimately we got Jankowski. He had the big hit. He had another big play, and you're happy. Obviously, we love Janko. We were happy to see him get the opportunity to play a significant role, kind of be a hero in that World Series. Glue guy. But everything that's happened since that moment, it's clear Langford's ready. And the only reason you hold him back is to get the extra year of control. Because I think as soon as he debuts in the big leagues, he's never setting foot down there again unless he needs a rehab assignment, Brian. Yeah, it, uh, there's just every level that he's played at. You know, he went first time I ever saw the guy play College World Series in Stella Shoe. And I'm like, my gosh, who's this guy? Then the Rangers draft him in, but every level that he's played at, he's had success. I mean, he got fast tracked. And it wasn't just because, oh, let's see what we can do, but he was proven along the way that he was a special player. And now, you know, you you see... And he's continuing all of that. You're continuing all that. He, you know, he had a hit at his last at bat. I mean, it was one of those kind you wipe the blood off and it, you know, it kind of pounded it into the ground, but was able to leg it out. You know, that's the kind of guy you can get the power, you can get the, the small hits. You know, he finds ways to get on base. You know, guys, uh, he's just, he's been a winner everywhere he's been and he's he's always delivered everywhere he's went been. 321 says, Bangford sucks. Sounds like you're being intimate with an F-150. <laughs> I did see that one. I like that one right there. There's a pretty <laughs> funny text coming through right now for the Tolos. <laughs> but yeah, they, he, he mentioned other factors like they don't have young Seeger and Lowe. They didn't have anybody else as far as signings at the position of substance. You didn't bring back Mitch Garver. It seems like maybe they have had a bias towards wanting this to happen as well. Uh, what else do we got here as far as the text? Riot Langford. I mean, not better than Bankford. Uh, why, why Wangford? He's out there walking crotch first and swinging his bat. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, man. The Bang Man. Okay. I, um, Wyatt Longford. Based on the clubhouse interview question, you ask players. <laughs> okay. Oh, how impressive he is from waist to knee. Yes. Um, um that sounds homoerotic. Says the four six nine and stop it. Bankford? Okay, Bankford. I, you know, I, I think maybe you could take it that way if, you know, if, if that's what jumps in your mind when you hear that. I just meant like bang, like he banged another home run. You know, he's maybe he's banging off the wall out there because he's going to he's going to play like, uh, you know, fast and loose. Why does he have to have a nickname, says the 214? Why oh, can't geez. he be called by the name his parents gave him, the okay. name he worked hard to make matter? He could. Yeah. I mean, this is a nickname. It's just, you know, fun thing in sports. Uh, Appreciate that. They screwed Langford out of a ring, excluded him from the rest yeah, of his about-to-be teammates. Yeah, because uh, yeah, George Ruth would have been really good in baseball history. Yeah. Yeah. George, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, what's the best play you've ever seen? George Ruth. I mean, trust me, if he says, guys, I don't want a nickname. My parents named me Wyatt Langford, and that's what I'm going as. Then you 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 tip your cap to that. You say, all right, Bangford, go get him. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, Bangford, we won't give you a nickname, bro. Just get out there and hit some more yeah. dongs. You do what you do. We'll do what we do. Okay, when we come back, it's time for football's finest, Chief. What's the subject matter looking like now? Another linebacker's off the board, but thanks to what this team did, the Cowboys might have an opportunity to take Broadus's guy in the first round. Next here in the nation.
our fan studio, secured by DFWSecurity.com, you're rolling with the G-Bang Nation on 105.3 The Fan. Yeah, buddy, it's our 4 g Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan. The Expressway is coming up in 20 minutes. Jared Sandler is going to join you, and uh, we'll talk about today's Rangers game against Cleveland out there in surprise. It's time now for the Chief in addition of football's finest. Here's Eric. All right, so uh, one last hope at the running back spot. Do you like the J.K. Dobbins name, Broadus? Really good author. Wrote some really good books, right? I think that's Rowling's. Oh, is it? Okay. No, no. he's a badass too, though. No, Don't get me wrong. No, I tell you what. No, I, uh, you know, need to study that. Need to kind of see fit. I'm, I'm always, what I'm trying to do is find guys that aren't going to come off the field, can blitz pick up, can also run with some toughness, maybe have a little bit wiggle, make some people miss. The find, old do, the, the, the do it all back on the cheat. You I'm know? trying. I'm trying. So, <laughs> I yeah, I, I need to, I, I, I would. I'd like to study. Uh, those backs that are all in that one and a half to three million dollar range. Yeah, and, and I see, think and see which one else. Because you guys mentioned Foreman and stuff. I saw him a while, while back. Yeah, but I can't tell you his his game right now. But that's something I, I want to sit down and try and figure out here which one of these backs potentially could be that guy. I think J.K. Dobbins provides the most upside. Yeah, super talented dude who has just been. As uh, as injury bitten as anybody, so I imagine you can get him on the super cheap, and he's going to be a guy that has not been able to make the big bucks in the NFL, and he will be trying uh, like contract year style. I'm doing everything I can to be productive and get my bag, and so you can take advantage of that on a one year cheap deal. 25 years old, he only played one game last year. It was a few snaps before he got injured once again, but yeah. his two previous seasons, I mean, 2022 was like five. 0.7 a carry. Des was endorsing it earlier, and you know he's always talking with the players and trying to break news or say I told you so when it happens. I, you know, he says he's he's hungry and he's destined for a big season with the right opportunity. I would be excited about J.K. Dobbins because I think he has the skill set and the athleticism that he could be a weapon for you and he could make your offense better if he stays healthy in a pretty significant way. Yeah, yeah, it'd be it'd be, it'd be very very boomer bust. It, it's. Low, low financials, but he's a dude that could probably, if he was healthy, I think he would be an upgrade over any of the backs that you currently have, which is really, I guess yeah. at this point, really none. It's Deuce Vaughn. Mm -hmm. Is that maybe Dowdle's coming back? We'll see. But uh, I saw that, you know, one of the names you threw around earlier uh, at linebacker, uh, Devin White, he is still available, but Levante David is re upping with the Bucks. He gets a one-year deal worth up to ten million, base value around nine million. So there's uh, another veteran linebacker that is uh, is being picked up there. But short-term deals, that is uh, that's a, maybe a little bit more than than some had anticipated for him. But for the most part, right uh, right on par. But another linebacker is is now off the market. It's it's just crazy, you know. Some of these names they become veterans at the position i feel like just a couple of days ago or a couple of years ago we were watching these guys walk out of the draft room you know or the on draft night in yes. their amazing suits I yes devin whites and just boom next thing you know they've been in the league five six years and they're on their way to an another team but the thing that really jumps out this year about linebacker uh, on top of that to me chief is just that they're not expensive i thought linebacker a couple of years ago was trending to well over 15 maybe close to 20 million bucks yeah, With Fred Warner, plays. Roquan yeah. Smith, but yeah. that's that's the top tier. Okay, and then it seems like there's a big gap between the next guys. Those top guys can cover, hit, blitz. Yeah, they three can down, do everything. Quarterback your defense, absolutely. I mean, this this should play into the Cowboys' hands, though. I, I think after we get through all these names that you recognize, there should be some guys slipping through the cracks to the Cowboys, and if they find the absolute perfect one, and you find like the J. Ron Kerr signing where for $4 million bucks you damn near get a Pro Bowler. I, I think that's the best we can hope for right now. Aaron Jones went one year, $7 million to uh, to the Vikings, so he remains in the NFC North there after being released yesterday. That was a bit of a surprise, but the Vikings go ahead and nab him up pretty quickly. Uh, I saw Nick Harris point this out, our buddy from DallasCowboys.com, and uh, we're looking for optimism here. Yesterday, the Dolphins, who pick ahead of the, the Cowboys in the draft by just a couple of spots, they were desperate for a center. They went out and and signed Aaron Brewer from the Titans on starter money kind of deal. So the idea 
idea is okay if the if the Dolphins who have been projected to draft one of these centers a couple spots ahead of you yeah. now don't need that guy. Can one of these centers and perhaps the best center in the draft, Jackson Powers Johnson, fall to you? I don't know. That still might be unrealistic that the number one center falls uh, as far to you, but now there's at least a little bit more of a chance of that, and certainly the top two or three guys should be there. It seems like chances are good. Philadelphia takes one as well. They might. I mean, the thing about Philadelphia is they've got in-house candidates too. Okay. With uh, with Cam Jurgens, and you know, I, I think he would be the guy that makes the most sense to move over there. I, Pittsburgh's another team that you have to kind of worry about here as well. So yeah, you're you're going to have to na- navigate a couple of different spots in order to try and get that guy to you. Would be nice though. Would be nice if they can find a way to uh, to make that happen for him. Yeah. Uh, with the Dolphins signing a center, maybe the maybe the the Cowboys get super super fortunate. Now uh, this, are you guys familiar with Luke Combs? Uh, he's a country western performer, right? Bigger guy. <laughs> yeah. I think we met him. I think he was at like an event of ours. Is he? Oh really? Okay. Right. Yeah. No. He's he's yeah. He absolutely is. He's a he's a. I think you nailed it exactly, brought us. He's a country western performer. Yeah. And he's a Panthers fan. And yesterday, after the Panthers traded Brian Burns to the Giants for a second and fifth round pick, after deciding not to trade Brian Burns for a first round pick earlier, uh, like at the trade deadline to the Rams, Luke Combs is frustrated. And he's he's one of us here. He's all caps tweeting at the Panthers. What are we doing? No first round pick for McCaffrey a few years back, and now none for Burns. Are we just firebombing the whole team here or what? I usually don't comment on these kinds of things, but it's just becoming slow torture at this point. Being a Panthers fan would be a nightmare, even for a superstar. And they have been they have traded a lot of big name dudes over the last couple of years from McCaffrey. Now Brian Burns, one of the better young pass rushers in the NFL. We know DJ Moore was was traded away. So they've seen a lot of talent leave that building. And uh, and to not get a first-round pick garnered the anger from even a superstar himself like Luke Combs. And the, the sports fan doesn't matter. When you're a sports fan, you, we can all relate to this kind of deal at some level. Uh, and, and Dawson, yesterday, you at one point, I believe you said it'd be better to be a Panthers fan. Yes. than to be a Cowboys fan. And if Luke Combs yeah. is feeling that way, I mean, imagine how we're feeling right now. I mean, I, I cannot think of many teams that I, I would not rather be a fan of in the NFL. I think Carolina is one, even though they're maybe young and, and naive, you know, but, but going through this list, like Washington probably, uh, the Bears... Arizona, I would I would not rather be an Arizona fan, although they've gotten closer twice this century. Maybe I should reconsider that one. Is that it? I believe so. Jets. I think I think the Jets are so pathetic and the the owner is horrible and doesn't know how to run a professional sports team. So I got three. I'm glad you mentioned the Jets because I'm seeing things about Aaron Rodgers and uh Raiders four. <laughs> Are have you guys seen? I'm seeing like Aaron Rodgers is trending, and there's presidential candidacies being talked about. Um, I believe RFK has said that Aaron Rodgers would be a part of hit, like would be like a, a running mate for him. Uh, that, that's that's happening in real time on the internet right now. Who is who's who, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> going to run for office? Uh, Tom Pelissero of the NFL Network says, "Rod, this is just a tweet that I saw." Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has recently approached Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers and Jesse the Body Ventura about serving oh, as his running mate that's my damn guy. on an independent presidential ticket. <laughs> Jesse was and, governor. And both have welcomed the overtures. <laughs> of course, Aaron Rodgers. He's not surprised by that call. He takes that call and he's like, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you to say this. You're damn right I'm in. I want Jesse the Body to run solo. Without that RFK guy, RFK guy is kind of toxic at this point. Yeah. His own family don't even like him that much. But a very passionate base. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Jesse the body versus Trump in a debate situation. That would be oh, epic. get your popcorn ready, bro. What? Yeah, that'd be great entertainment, man. What? The be- entertainment value would be hey, yeah, a hundred out of a hundred yeah. here. Country's falling apart, <laughs> but are you entertained? <laughs> Aaron Rodgers like, sorry, Jets. I know you've built this whole thing like in my image over the last year and a half, but uh, I'm going to have to bow out of this because there's bigger fish to fry. I'm going to go run with my guy RFK. 
and Jesse the, the body. Boy ball, huh? Yeah. And it ends up being the career of Aaron Rodgers in New York ends up being what we've already seen to this point, which was like 30 seconds of real time. <laughs> oh my gosh, I thought I was being butt cracked on that. I'm still concerned. Yeah, but that I, that's from the legit Pelicero account, dude. I started go I started uh, uh, searching that on X instantly. And uh, I thought for sure you were getting butt cracked at the time that you first mentioned the story. There's a part of me that still feels like I am. I mean, if somebody asked you that's like super famous in the political world, will you run for office with me? Even if you think they have no chance, it sounds like fun for a couple of weeks until, you know, Trump destroys you and you got to like bow out. Gives you a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get a nickname. It's a rap, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to end well. <laughs> Make fun I'd be of your like, family dude, and everything. Let's go after Biden. That guy seems gettable right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? My gosh, dude, that is that is not the news I was expecting to see today. Uh, is that a hail mary by RFK, or is that him really trying to strategize? It's not like he's trying to bow out in this situation. It seems like it's publicity stunts from him. I can than... get Aaron Rodgers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just throwing crap at the wall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jameis Winston is going to be in Cleveland backing up Deshaun Watson for one year, $8.7 million. And that's I think that's great. really bad news for Deshaun Watson because everybody, I mean, everybody's out on Deshaun Watson. The backup quarterback is always everybody's favorite guy. But Jameis Winston is absolutely everybody's favorite guy. So now, I mean, the, everything just got more and more difficult there. To let Deshaun Watson have the first the first game of the season look bad. Yeah. We're going to be Jameis chanting all over the place. It won't just be Browns fans. It'll be the yeah. entire football world saying, we want Jameis. Give us our Jameis. And please get rid of uh, old Deshaun Watson. He's going to be all moody in his presser. And Jameis Winston's going to be outside in the hall, like, making half the team laugh. Yes. Just <laughs> w so likable. Yeah. Okay, I saw this. I also was wondering the the legitimacy of this, but it be, I, I believe it to be true as Antonio Brown. Are you familiar with the network that he's put together? No. Former Steeler, Patriot, and Raider. CTE TV. <laughs> hey, it's, it's CTE. Yeah, you, you get points, and I'm going to give you full credit just because why not, Lucius? You, you basically nailed it. CTE SPN. So he's he's, he's he's wow he's he's doing his his sports insider bit. I mean, his Twitter account is just as ridiculous as anything you could ever see, and he's consistent with it. And it's always hashtag CTESPN. Wow. So he's leaning into it. He's leaning all the way into it. Yes. Did you know that, Lucius? Or was no? That a, I'm kind of nervous for the man at this point now. Because I was being funny, man. It's yeah. real life. It's real life. Oh. He will tell you straight to your face. Oh, I have CTE. So, anyways, uh, I believe him too. I 100% believe him. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we had so Russell Wilson becomes a Steeler over the weekend, mm -hmm. and Antonio Brown had been, I guess, tweeting about it like a day or two prior, like Russell Wilson's going to be a Steeler, and Antonio Brown maybe still having some connections in Pittsburgh, whatever. The CTE so, ESPN exclusive, exactly. Yeah. Or so he thought. Oh no. Adam Schefter breaks the news. Russell Wilson going to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. And so there's a screenshot now that Antonio Brown has tweeted out where he's DMing Adam Schefter. And apparently Adam Schefter is responding. Okay. And it's very cordial. You have Antonio Brown saying uh, he's, he's DMing Adam Schefter after he breaks the Russell Wilson news. And he says, Adam, what good CTESPN or Adam, what's good? Okay. CTESPN broke the news two days ago. I got sources. Can I get credit? Be big for my company. Okay. That's, what, that's what he shoots over to Schefter. <laughs> and Schefter responds, hope all is well, AB. Good work. Russ didn't agree to the deal until tonight, though, but I will keep looking out for you. Keep up the good work, and I hope all is well. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Unlimited. <laughs> there, wow. There is a story from four years ago where Russell Wilson was trying to push the Seahawks to get Antonio Brown. So they yeah. might have some friendship. Um they're and, boys, and yeah, and, opposites attract, uh, right? And maybe maybe Antonio Brown is 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 hoping to angle back into to Pittsburgh. That would be fun, but yeah, I think the best ESPN will do for you is be like, yes, ESPN confirmed it. Uh, that other person's breaking story is right, that's, right? That's how they do it. One hundred percent. I would love to see them credit CT ESPN though on the ticker <laughs> breaking news. Antonio Brown and CT ESPN are informing us, and Schefter can confirm that Russell Wilson is a Pittsburgh Steeler now. That would be pretty awesome. Looks like Debo Samuel, wide receiver for the Niners, is changing back to his college number of number one. So uh, maybe up the jersey sales a little bit for him. And Jalen Ramsey wants to confirm Dolphins corner. 
yesterday he i guess had his uh contract restructured you know not like a pay cut but one of those deals yeah, where flip a switch. you know yeah you flip a switch and you help the team out and the player doesn't even have any control over that it doesn't really matter for the player but i guess he was being inundated by dolphins fans like saying thank you thank you for doing this cuz dolphins fans were thinking like he was taking a pay cut doing oh, something for the team yeah. and so jalen ramsey tweets out rest assured lol i appreciate all the love from fins fans but a contract restructure doesn't mean pay cut dot 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 we getting all that Love y'all though. Yeah. <laughs> so, just rest assured, yeah. I'm still getting all the money that I was okay, supposed to be getting on the front end of this. Yes, sir. I'm not as much of a good Samaritan as maybe you had portrayed me to be. <laughs> Another edition of Football's Finest is in the books with Eric Chiafalo. It's time to hit the expressway. We're going to go commercial free to the top when we get back. All the top stories in sports. Jared Sandler will join us at 5 30. We'll get the recap for the Rangers game as it has gone final, right? Uh, and then. No, we're still going on. No, we're still playing. Okay, this this eighth and ninth inning stretching out here for you. We'll get to it though. And LA Live's coming up at five forty. We'll get to Sands as soon as he's done, and we're back here in the G Back Nation. I want to chat Frankel's with you. Before-